I Studios, the home of Patriots Monday and Friday. 93.7 WEEI-FM and HD1, Lawrence, Boston. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Patriots Friday is brought to you by 110 Grill by Arbella Insurance. Arbella, here for New England, here for good. By Catches Law Group, New England's personal injury pros at catcheslaw.com. By Time Out Market, Boston's best eating and drinking destination in Fenway, all under one roof. By Twisted Tea, keep it twisted, New England. And by FindMassMoney.com, it's fast, easy, and free. This hour of the Greg Hill Show is brought to you by the Ketchis Law Group. New England construction workers, if you're injured on the job, Ketchis has your back at KetchisLaw.com. And now, be curious, not judgmental. Broadcasting from beautiful and safe Brighton, Massachusetts. It may not even be safe, probably not for your workers even. Streaming on WEI.com and everywhere on the Odyssey app. It was, you know, making, a, what do they say, mountains out of mole heads? <laughs> Bold. Oh, so close. Bold. So close. Bold. Oh, yeah. 606. Yeah. You that like was this aggressive at 606. <laughs> this weather's really messing with me. This is the Greg Hill Show. The Greg Hill Morning Show. What's up, G Man? How you doing? Hilly. We're happy to have the Hill Man. I love the show, by the way. It's great. Starring Greg Hill. You disappointed me. You, you were actually quite boring. I, I listen to this guy on the radio. He, <laughs> he's kind of funny. Featuring the original spark of the Pats Dynasty. They jealous of us. Else. Wiggy. At some point, you've seen either of your parents naked. It's an unfortunate thing. Joined by the relationship alpha. I'm Courtney. I'm not really sure I understand that. Courtney Cox. My alarm goes off. I have to shut it off immediately. I can't do anything else in the bedroom. Poor Santo. Poor Santo. He's, he's, he's going to regret, into he's gonna regret oh, getting they, Yeah. And accompanied by Hi. two big brains behind the glass. David Ortiz. Curtis. Did you get one of those things where they have the like cloth at the end of it that you use on your back? What's that called? Where a loofah? Walk? A loofah. loofah. I dropped the loofah. And Shime. Tell Johnny Ringo to go find a new name. That's why he's on Twitch. Now. But we've got to be role models. Right. Oh, God. It's time for the Greg Hill Morning Show. You asshole! Gave them a lot of what for. You just have no idea what you're talking about. On Boston Sports Original. Cheers. Crushing fans and watching the pass. W-E-E-I. When I say Greg Hill and you say show. Greg Hill. <laughs> Greg Hill. Go. Greg Hill. Show. show. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody. Happy uh, Friday. Happy Friday. Oh. Curtis is in the big seat at the adult table because Wiggy's off today. I don't know that I need Jackson uh, sliding his way into the fifth seat as he just did. I, I There are things that need to be done behind the scenes. I did, who authorized Jackson to move into Curtis's seat? Was that you, Shime? Uh, I did no such thing. He just did it. Uh, I Jackson, did this on my own accord. I'm sorry. Uh, have I overstepped my boundaries here? Um, well, I mean, there is work to be done. <laughs> yes, yes, there is. Uh, how are you going to get your work done in the production studio if you are sitting in Curtis's seat this well, morning? Well, I have a fancy little console here in front of me that I can push a button to I, and so I can hear the work that I'm doing on the uh, other system okay. here. I mean, I, uh, you want to vote on it? I, I, I'm fine with it, I guess. I, we might as well give the man his just due. Right. I mean, he is a very talented individual, Jackson. Mm-hmm. Well, so, thank you very much. Um, we might as well allow him to sit in that seat that is normally occupied by Chris Curtis. I, I do have a question for Jackson. I and an believe me, I am not a fashion icon. But you are on a Ripken-esque streak of wearing free clothes to work. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen you in a non-swing juice <laughs> or uh, Fourier sweatshirt or yeah. something else. Is everything okay? Everything's fine. It's a very soft sweatshirt, this swing juice sweatshirt. Okay, good. And yes, I good did plug. get it for free, and um, I'm sorry. Nothing to apologize for. I just <laughs> noted it. Well, Jackson has joined the rest of us and will provide his uh, I- inimitable content throughout the morning he's been sucking up to you too because the post show show where Uh he's talking about who would play who in a movie he's like uh greg johnny depp oh what yeah johnny depp is a very good actor and he is very transformable (laughs) yeah hold on a second i kind of like that johnny depp play would play me in a film Uh absolutely yeah i was i was thinking of who would play who in a in a film about the life 
in times of the Greg Hill show and, you know, Greg Hill in general. Uh huh. And so I, I figured Johnny Depp for you. Okay. Can I take a wild guess to who you cast me as? <laughs> yes. I guarantee I'm like Kevin James. <laughs> Is that who played Turtle in <laughs> oh, Entourage? No, that's. No. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, Kevin that guy James, would be good, though. He was, what was the. He was King was of Queens with Leah Remini? Yes, he was, uh, he was the King of Queens. I, I uh, was going to say a young Danny DeVito from Taxi. <laughs> Or, or right. Shime Same not, ballpark. Shime's not short. He's just no. kind of he's round. I'm a Jerry stocky. Ferrara. Uh, that's who should play. Oh, you're the guy who played Turtle yeah. on Entourage. Yeah. Who, who uh, do you think would play Curtis? I have. A, I think I have the perfect, perfect actor for Curtis. Who? Jim Carrey. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> Jim Carrey would nail Curtis to a T. Uh, no, Bruce no, Willis. Uh, there, oh, there's God. No, that's very kind. There's no. There's did no make resemblance. Bald popular. Yeah. There's no resemblance between. Uh, Kramer and Curtis whatsoever. Oh no, sorry, you're not. You're not. You're saying Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a full head of hair, and he is slender and tall. Yes, I'm kind he, of yes, like an is. odd shaped person. Uh, yeah, but he he can he can transform himself to anybody he imitates, and I feel like he would be the only one who would capture your essence. I I, I feel like I'm more of a Jude Law kind of looking uh. guy. Oh, God. <laughs> God. You know Three hours I mean? and 54 uh, minutes. Uh, he, yeah. he has an English accent, though. He wouldn't work. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. No you know, English actors me. can have non-English accents, right? Right. Oh. Yeah. Jackson texted me last night and said, ah, oh, I know who would play you. Yes, I figured out the perfect. And I'm like, who? He's the perfect like, Courtney. Selena Gomez. I'm like, what? <laughs> Selena Gomez? <laughs> yep. well, maybe. Okay. Sure. Know, I guess. Could be what, worse. Who, yeah. did you have, who do you have playing Wiggy? Oh, uh, Wiggy, the guy that played Aquaman, Jason Momoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> it, Either Wiggy, that or young Billy D. Williams. No, Wiggy carry... is only going to only going to accept yeah. Denzel. That's it. Oh, uh, Denzel would be good too. But I, I was thinking young young Billy D. Williams would be perfect. But you know that's impossible. Well, I'll tell you what. We have Jackson and I have created a new game, which we will debut next week. It involves Wiggy and you, the listeners, and it is simply called. Faxon Jackson. So we'll get to that next week, Jackson. But thank you for being here. You're welcome. And the rest of you, good morning. Happy Friday. Curtis, real quick, some kind of uh, total and utter whiteout conditions coming today. Is yeah. what, what's the deal? We're going to have some real snow in central mass. Looks like about an inch of snow here, coating to an inch. But as you get further west, we're looking at upwards of three to five inches towards the Berkshires and okay. our good friends in New Hampshire. In Maine, well, Maine won't be as bad, but Western Mass, New Hampshire might be a little uh, dicey today. Mm. Okay, and that is starting relatively soon. Oh, yeah, it's about to get going. So, so go to the local hardware store and buy another shovel. Okay, what about milk and bread? Should, no. we, should we stock up on the milk and the bread? Oat milk, please. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess if you, are, if you have to work today, then you may, and you're in Central Mass, anywhere west of 128, then you may deal with some total and utter whiteout conditions. But and a week from today, I'm predicting no school on Friday the 13th. Really? Oh. There's a storm that's coming in on Thursday. We're going to have an Arctic blast. Uh. It's going to be mild up until Thursday, as you know La Nina's want to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Thursday into Friday, we're going to get probably 6 to 12 inches uh, of snow. Oh. Is this an Alberta clipper? It really is. Okay, all yep. right. Good. I don't know if you can I still say those. that. Or I like those. I don't remember. Um, on the show this morning... The leads coming up in just about 15 minutes at 625. And then they said it at 7. They said it is a brief back and forth on what they said yesterday in sports. It's a Patriots Friday. So Devin McCourty will join us at 720 this morning. And Courtney has the news coming up at 745. And there is uh, uh, scheduled for today. Uh, a meeting of all NFL teams to hear some proposals when it comes to a playoff seating solution. I'm assuming that will be a Zoom meeting, as most of them are now. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like the the Goodell compromise, the Goodell solution, would be that should the it, when it comes to the AFC championship game. Should the one and the two seed be meeting in it, then that game would be played at a neutral site. Correct. Mm -hmm. I, my guess is Lucas Oil and Indy, it's it's equally, uh, it's in the central location between Kansas City and Buffalo, should it be those two teams. Mm. Which Wiggy, right again. 
Wiggy what? said this uh, on on Tuesday, and everybody was saying, "No, Wiggy, they can't do neutral site. This is a this is a cash cow for having yeah. people come to their city." Yeah. Wiggy, spot on again. Yeah, I mean, out of the out of everything I heard yesterday being bandied about, it seems like it's the best solution. Although I did like the option that was thrown out late yesterday, which was that the one seed gets to pick whether they get a buy. Or a uh, home field advantage. Or home field advantage. Wow, I didn't uh, hear that. That's that's awesome. I think that's a great idea. You like that? I yeah. kind of like that better. I would take the buy. I don't. I think almost everybody would. You would take the buy? Well, you don't. You I have, would take the home field advantage. No, because then you have to play an extra game. Uh, yeah. Who cares? And like, all, it, all the teams that we're talking about, their home and away records are pretty similar. Like they, they, yeah. neither of them are playing better at home. Well, or any of them are. And also, I think the um, this is an opportunity for the NFL to use this unforeseen situation to make long-term permanent changes. So when I heard they were speculating about adding an eighth play eighth playoff team, if they did that, that would get a, they, they would never go back. When you add something it, like inflation, everything's gone up in price. Has anything gone back down really? Once you hit a certain price point, they just stick there. Oh, I hope so, anything's gone back down. It's so, only going up. Right. So you're going to get – if you get eight playoff teams or if this neutral site game ends up coming to fruition, another thing they could sell to, to host cities. Imagine if there was championship weekend in Miami this year in both AFC and NFC championship games where there's Saturday, Sunday. Okay, what a great you, take. No, it would. I agree with you. It would be, it would be great money-wise. Final four. Wise. It, yeah. However, you're eliminating any kind of home field advantage when it comes to the championship games. Right, I, but the biggest game of the year has no home field advantage. Yeah. And I, uh, they could. this just came to me. The NFL's Final Four. So not only do you get the Super Bowl, you get the games two weeks prior. Wait, would the same city host it? Or would you well, the Final Four is in one city. So yeah. I was just thinking speculative. Maybe they do two cities. But yeah. you get the Final Four, Saturday, Sunday, 6 o'clock each game. And then you get the Super Bowl. That would be a phenomenal weekend. Huh. Um, I, I would th- – there's a great comment in the Twitch chat. By the way, you can watch this show on Twitch. And thank you to every single one of you who does every single day. Our Twitch numbers are gigantic. Mm. They are I huge. I don't know. Is anybody paying attention to that, Shine? What's going on? Oh, I pay attention I, all the time, but uh, nobody nobody wants to listen to me, Greg. I, they only I, listen I, to you. It's I, I cannot thank these Twitch people enough, even Juddy. We we have the your mortal I, enemy. We have arguably the largest Twitch audience in the entire Odyssey company, Curtis. I, it's it is not argue it is inarguable. It's it's a fact. We heard as a fact yeah. uh, earlier this year that we were the most watched streamed show in the entire Odyssey company nationwide. Yeah, and that number since we heard that has only grown. So we're kicking ass in that regard. So Miss Bono says that if the neutral field comes into play this season, I guarantee no future games would ever be canceled because owners will not comply with neutrality, meaning that they lose the home gate. And that's probably right. Work with me here. You sell the weekend like they sell the Super Bowl. Do the Patriots lose money at the Super Bowl? No. When it's half and half, and, no. and it's thirty percent, you know, guys with the visor from Budweiser that are at the game <laughs> because they buy into the NFL. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it. Believe me, the NFL is never going to lose money. And don't worry around here. I hate to say it, we're not going to be hosting any games soon, so it's not really the end of the world. I mean, if this was ten years ago, it'd be a big deal. Yeah. All right. Well, NFL teams will meet today and see if they can come to some kind of an agreement. When it comes to playoff seating, more on that throughout the show on a Patriots Friday. But right now, Courtney, and what is trending this morning? The Rich Keefe Show, weeknights starting at 6. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending now brought to you by Subaru of New England. Some amazing news on DeMar Hamlin yesterday. Doctors said he is awake and able to communicate through writing. Uh, When he woke up, doctors are saying he asked if they had won via some type of whiteboard. The doctors then said, yes, DeMar, you won the game of life. Uh, Nice story. um, That's the first thing. That is what they are saying. That's. They're saying that's the first thing that he said that when he, he was wrote. awake and able to communicate. So. He, didn't want, he didn't want to know where he was or I don't know. I mean, it was I'm just speaking I, from personal I, experience and I am so glad he's improving. And that is yes, obviously it's, it's an amazing story. The most important thing. The biggest thing is cognitive functioning looks to remain intact, yeah. which is incredible. The trainers on the field deserve a, a statue. 
When I was out of the ICU, I don't remember anything from in the ICU. I remember being in an elevator going down, and I asked, where are we going? And my mom said, down, and just said, it's good. And then I was like, I don't remember literally anything from the ICU. At but- the same time, though, if, if, if this was or wasn't the first thing that he wrote, who cares? Yeah. The fact that he did ask and that he is awake is all that matters. Correct. He's still yeah. on a ventilator due to some damage to his lungs. He's still but- in critical condition. Yes. Nonetheless, it appears no neurological uh, in, he, like he's neurologically intact, which is yeah. important. No, I, I, one doctor I, I, said a nice thing. They said it's not only that the lights are on, it's that Damar is home. I've never heard it said like that. There are sometimes people wake up from being sedated or in a medically induced coma or anything like that, and when they wake up, they're not really the same person. Right. No, I, I'm not. I just sometimes I question when things sound too perfect. I question right. them. when everything fits, and especially when they first report that he was talking. And then they had to correct that because he's, of course, unable to talk because mm-hmm. he's on a ventilator. Yeah. But either way, it, the news about his cognitive functioning is sensational. Yeah. And the Bills, they held me- media availability yesterday. Very emotional, as you could expect, uh, as did the Patriots. We can hear from Bill Belichick on the difficulty of preparing for this type of game on Sunday when the two teams meet. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but I'm going to keep repeating myself. I think everyone's doing the best they can. And that's, I don't know any other way to put it. it that covers a lot of ground that's a lot of different scenarios that question could be asked a thousand different ways but i think the answer is really the same whatever it is it's i think everyone's doing the best they can and i guess based on damar hamlin asking who won the game we can end the four-day debate on whether they should have played the rest of that game or not because he would be one who thought they should have i don't know I actually think right. that he can understand that his players couldn't focus going forward. Uh-huh. I think that the Bills, in that case, would be in a severe disadvantage if they were like five minutes, get ready to go again. I mean, uh-huh. the, the looks on those guys' faces, all of them were crying. Sean McDermott said he couldn't continue coaching. Yeah. I think moving forward, there's no question that he wanted them to play again, you know, uh, to, on Sunday. I think the game was stopped to save his life. And it wasn't resumed because of the trauma to the players that watched his mm-hmm. life need to be saved. Yeah. So it wasn't for him that they stopped. It was for the people that witnessed it. For those who might be wondering at home, should the unthinkable happen to me? <laughs> and I wake up and I'm handed a whiteboard. First message, what's for breakfast? <laughs> okay, just want to let you know. Are we near a Waffle House? If it ever happens, what's for breakfast? Where's my eggs, Benedict? What's for breakfast? All right, what else, Courtney? Well, the game on Sunday starts at 1 p.m. in Buffalo. We'll chat with Devin McCourty this morning about that. And a reminder to tune in to the WEI football show on Sunday. It's going to be Gresh and Keith. That starts at 10 a.m. And as for that bills Bengals game, the NFL canceled the postponed game. Uh, As Greg said, they're planning on a vote today. Uh, with the teams across the league to implement two major modifications in the AFC playoffs. The first about that neutral site. The other proposal on the table is that the NFL will flip a coin to see who hosts a ravens Bengals wild card game if the Ravens beat the Bengals on Sunday and if the two teams are scheduled to play each other in a wild card round. Former Browns running back Peyton Hillis is reportedly in critical condition after he rescued his kids from drowning in the ocean in Pensacola, Florida. Wow. Yeah, it's a crazy story. The kids are okay, healthy, everything's fine there. He, unfortunately, is is not doing well. He's in critical condition in the, in the hospital in Florida. So um, a lot of players now kind of while their attention has been uh, on one player that's been in terrible in a terrible situation now focusing kind of on a former Browns player so and you said in the ocean yeah was it like a riptide kind of I, thing or I, I I don't know the the actual how it all went down he went in to save his kids he did just that and uh, unfortunately he, he he suffered the Celtics bounced back in a big way last night 124 to 95 sorry Shime. Uh, Over the Mavericks, Jason Tatum had a triple-double, 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 10 assists. Joe Mazzulla talked about what that team showed with that response. You told us the other night it would be about how you guys responded. What did did they show you tonight? Uh, They showed me they could do it one time, but we have to do it over and over again. So, Shaim? Yeah, you know, I went with the, I took the Mavericks last night. Tough day. It it is what it is. Good Good job by the Celtics. They bounced back, and they bounced back strong. It's, I mean... And Luca was uh, did not quite pop off the way I expected him to. Will you, you be, t- will, will, will you be hammering Lashime this morning on the games this weekend? Absolutely. Okay. What time? Nine. Uh, you want to do it at nine? 
Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I believe right. we also have uh, Nick Costos on this week. Oh, that's oh. right. Oh, man. Ooh, it's been a while. We haven't talked wow. to Nick in the new year. All right, so we'll hammer the shine with Nick at 930 and shine. Yep. All right. And just quickly, the Bruins did win on the West Coast as well. Five to two. Two goals from Trent Frederick, two from Pasta, and one from Marshy. Jeremy Swayman had 27 saves 30, on the night. 34 and four. Yeah. 30. Four and four. That is absolute madness. And it mm-hmm. seems like there was no misstep with Jake DeBrusque being out. Yeah, and uh, that coach, oof, they lost him. <laughs> Going to turn their whole season around. Mm-hmm. Go outside and play in a brand new all-wheel drive 2023 Subaru. Find your authorized Subaru retailer at SubaruOfNewEngland.com. That's what's trending. Here's Curtis with your weather. It's 34 degrees outside. Rain right. Uh, rain starting in Boston. we got snow west of town, maybe one to three inches higher in higher elevations. The exclusive home for Patriots Monday and Friday. Do your job, job, job well. Dynasty continues.
Download the Odyssey app and listen on demand anytime. Friday and Devin McCordy will join us next hour at 720. Wiggy is off and Curtis is sitting in Wiggy's seat. Now. And, uh, <laughs> if you could throughout the morning, an occasional Wiggy impression, I'm sure, would be would be appreciated. If you think about it, I will. <laughs> when you look at... When you look at... Now, Bill, what do you think uh, about the turnovers? Do you like them? Speaking of Bill... We will not talk to Bill again this season unless the Patriots somehow win this football game. So Bill will not be on Monday uh, after a loss. And but I am looking I, forward to the wrap up lunch on Tuesday with Bill. <laughs> That'll be nice. I wish we would have known after you know before last Monday. What, what would you have done? I would have just uh, said you know if this is our last time speaking, I would like to thank you for the season and for all your time. But instead, I will just write it in, in a note. I'm sure you would have been very gratuitous when you said that. Uh, but the issue was is that Greg tried to ask the softball. Of all softballs, which was a great little question at the end about 80 for Brady, and he was like a 10 second pause. And it was such a serious I answer. Love- like, I'm not gonna, I'll let Tom talk about it. I was like, what? It's a movie. What are we talking about? It's not about his career, it's not about anything in, on the field. Listen, the guy refuses to budge even an inch. It's like, could you just say something about the stupid Tom Brady 80 for 80 movie, please, Bill? Please, right? Like, how about like, I'm a couple years away from 80 myself? Yeah. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Like I anything. think I think spoiler, it's he's going to be in it. It's going to be a big surprise. He didn't want it. Yeah. That's why it took him so long. He's I like, what he, do I say? I think I think he said he he kind of immediately said he was asked to be in it or something, right? Did it he, was a weird response. He didn't say that he wasn't. He just said, um, I it's a it's it's Tom's project, yeah. and I'll let him speak about it. You ever hear Lenny Clark and others say, "Oh, when you get with Bill, he's hilarious. He's <laughs> yeah. nothing." Yeah, that is the biggest lie that's ever been told. Mm-hmm. Like. Does that strike you as a guy that sits around telling your mama I think jokes? He has dry humor. Okay, it's I do. Be dry like as like a bone. sitting yeah. with him over a, gla- a nice bottle of wine. I bet he cracks a few jokes. <laughs> uh, maybe. No, I don't think I'll ever have that experience. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Jackson, you have a lead this morning. I, I do not have a lead, but I will prepare one <laughs> in the next twenty-five seconds. I mean, you inserted yourself into Curtis's seat. How do you not have a lead? Well, I, I, I can, I, I have a lead. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So Wiggy's off, Curtis is in the big studio, and Jackson has forced himself into Curtis's seat with Sean. So uh, we'll see We'll see how that goes. You're going to have to get the mouse over here, Curtis. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Caller. that mouse over here. Here you go. Right oh, over man. there. And zoom. Oh, boy. Uh, there we go. I, mean, I, I also feel like I'm having like an epileptic seizure right now because there's a flashing light above yeah, my head. Yeah, I know. It's a real issue. Uh, this is Douglas from Salisbury. Hello, Douglas. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Good morning to you guys, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Friday, Douglas. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a good day to be alive. What's up? Um, I just I, I just want to uh, I want to send out my thoughts and prayers to uh, Demar's family yeah. and um, friends also. Um, you, know, thank, you know, pull through, buddy. We're here for you, yeah. especially in New England. You know, we need positivity going on in the world today. Amen. Greg, I got one, I, I got one question for you. Curtis, yeah. you're supposed to... You're, What's Jackson doing? I, I just gotta say that. What what is he doing? You're, you're supposed to be the man behind the curtain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know. You, yeah, I hear you, but I prefer to be in front of the curtain. To be honest. <laughs> I mean, what, what's the what's the expression? Uh, dress for the job you want, or uh, how does not it, for the yeah. job you have? Right. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I he's got some gumption. He's a he's a go getter. You know, I, I, I like, that's what I like, I like to see. I like Jackson. You all, you all, you all men well together. I got to say that. You know, right, I just got to right. put that out there. Douglas, thank uh, you. And, uh, Greg, thank I you. Wanna, yes, what? I just want to say one thing. Greg, what do you do when life gives you lemons? You make lemonade. 
No, you put it in the buka. Oh. <laughs> I, I was going to tell Curtis to put his earmuffs on, but once he started talking about Budweiser, I was it was a free-for-all on that aspect. <laughs> All right, my man. Well, a positive call to start off the uh, Friday. Hundred. What yeah. a day. Hundred. Yeah. Hundred. All right. Uh-huh. Coming up at 7, they said it. A brief back and forth on what they said yesterday in sports. But before that, we must get to this. This is the Greg Hill Show. Time now for The Lead. Sean, Creedence Clearwater Revival around the bend. Great choice this morning. And Thank you. the lead is brought to you by Catches Law Group. Catches has had the backs of New England's construction workers since 1986. You pay nothing unless they win for you, and they most times do. So if you've been injured, get a free evaluation when you call 508 321 7000 or when you visit catcheslaw.com. And ask for my guy, Sean. Uh, Sean, he's Curtis's guy, too. And he'll take great care of you over there at Catches. Yeah, he was a... The, the story deserves another uh, telling here. Yes. He was an iron worker. Yes. Got injured on the job. Badly injured. And as he was recuperating from those injuries, Mr. Catches told him that he should rededicate himself to get his law degree and do what he just needed, which is defend people and get people their proper due who were injured on the job. And then where he is today. Yeah. So pretty cool. So story. he went and got his law degree and now he is the big boss over there at catches. So yeah. if you have an issue, you ask for Sean when you call Sean. Good morning. Good morning, Gregory. Well, we mentioned them already, but the Boston Bruins are on this absolutely ridiculous pace. I believe they're, uh, the third team ever to win 30 of their first 38 games. And they're two teams that date back to like the 30s and the 20s, being the Canadians and the Bruins yeah. from far before even Greg's time, which is shocking enough. <laughs> and uh, on top of that, the Felino Coyle Frederick line got reunited. And uh, <laughs> Connor Ryan had this tweet yesterday. Prior to the game, they have outscored opponents in five on five play four to one well that's now six to one because Trent Frederick had not one but two goals last night the this team is even losing Jake DeBrusque who is having a great season isn't losing a step they're finding adversity every which direction whether it's getting down early in games or all of a sudden players going down even at the beginning of the season when you weren't at full strength they were still winning games with guys out injured and it is uh, one of the most remarkable things I have seen out of a Boston team in a very long time. Would you say they are a wagon, Shime? I Absolutely. I think. Okay. It, I even think it goes beyond that. They're not just a good hockey team. They are one of these teams that it feels like no matter what you throw in front of them, no matter what banana peel may, may await in the future, they are dodging it and escaping it no matter what. It's because they're doing it for Bergie. I know it. I know he's told them this is it. That's got to be it. This is, I said this during uh, Christmas when you were off for a month, this is <laughs> the 2018 Red Sox. They just changed the coach. Yep. They have a team that's full of veterans, young guys. They meld well, well together. And the Red Sox had the best season in history, 2018, out of nowhere. And this team, with limited expectations, is on its way to the best season in Bruins history. It's awesome to watch. It's All right. Bergeron. <laughs> it's Patrice. Thank you, Shime. Jackson, good morning. Hello, good morning. So, I was doing some research last night for my um, my little bit, you know, which uh, who would play who in the movie mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, Greg Hill's life. And so I, I, I Googled Greg Hill. Mm-hmm. And what comes up is a, uh, a religious writer named Gregory Hill mm-hmm. from California. But, uh, you know, uh, oddly enough, his wife is named Janetta huh. Hill. Uh-huh. 
So what I'm saying here is, are you secretly a religious writer from California and not telling us? Yes, you caught me. And yeah, uh, yeah. by the way, his... My uh, side pen, hustle. My his, side hustle. That's why is, AAF is playing all Christian yeah, music. Exactly. Yeah, that's See, why, you know that's, what? It all connects. <laughs> that's why WAAF went all Christian. His yes. name, his pen name is Malacalypse <laughs> the Younger, uh-huh. okay. but his real name is Gregory Hill. He writes religious uh-huh. uh, books. Huh. Okay. All right. All right. Wow. Excellent, Jackson. You're welcome. <laughs> Courtney just gave you a wow. wow. Uh, okay, thank you, Courtney. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like everybody to go back in time and remind uh, remind themselves about the time that I talked about a very important sport and what I had to say. Here we go. Shime, it went better in rehearsal. Apologies. <laughs> Pickleball is the future. All right, there you go. Uh, It took a long time, but here we are. Uh, And I was spot on right again. CNBC just released a new article and said in 2021, in August of 2021, 5 million or so people played pickleball. Okay. August 2022, we're looking at 36.5 million people. What? We are talking about an uptick of all upticks when it comes to popularity of a sport. 36 million people in the U.S. play pickleball? Yes, uh, anybody under the age of 50? Yes. Really? I am telling you, you could play with your kids. You could play with your parents. You could play with your grandparents. It is a sport across the board that everybody can partake in. If you're looking for a maybe a little bit more lower impact sport, this is it. Huh. it, it courts are popping up everywhere. People are putting courts in their backyards. Huh. It is the sport of all sports for yep. the future. And uh, those numbers were shocking to me. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, we we must have the the next athletic challenge between uh, Foyer and Wiggy be pickleball, Ooh. or maybe between the day parts here at the radio station. Oh, mm. pickleball maybe, tourney! Maybe we should challenge the new afternoon show to some sort of a uh, a pickleball face off or something. I've never like really that. been a pickle eater. <laughs> Well, we have to get the wiggy to fi- figuring out that a pickle comes from a cucumber at some uh, point. Yes, yes. That All was right. shocking when I found that. Yeah, that is shocking. Thirty-six million people. Yeah, no, I was pickleball? I was talking about the the pickle and cucumber oh, pickle, thing, but yeah. Thing. Okay, right. Thank <laughs> you. It's an unbelievable cup. We'll get to it. Thank you, Courtney. Good morning, Curtis. Hey, Greg. So a couple of interesting stats, and when it comes to the roughing the passer penalty in a barbaric gladiator sport, it usually irks people that quarterbacks are protected. Well, I'm going to tell you why that is. This season was a record in the NFL, not for viewership, it might be that too, but for the number of starting quarterbacks in the league this season, 66 when Howell and uh, Peterman start this weekend, they will both mark 60, being the 65th and 66, 66th different starting quarterback. Huh. A record since the 87 strike year, the record for any regular season. Do you know how many starting quarterbacks will have started every game this season of the 32 teams? Oh, I, 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 the way you said it, I'm going to say five. Eleven. Eleven. Only eleven. So a third of the NFL's teams had the same starting quarterback every year. And that's why they have these rules the way they do. The, people don't want to watch Nathan Peterman. They don't want to watch <laughs> Brian Hoyer as much as I love uh, the guy. Uh. So it is an interesting stat, and I think it really is going to serve the value of uh, the quarterback who used to be here because yesterday the first rumblings out of Vegas came out of the Las Vegas Review Journal that he is their top priority, Mm -hmm. that they want Brady in Vegas. So I guess the Josh McDaniels thing may be over. I don't know what Tom thinks about Vegas. But having a quarterback that is healthy and consistently able to start is the most important thing in sports. And only 11, given how protected they are, Mm. only 11 have started every game of season. Excellent, Curtis. Thank you. Any word on whether Ethel will start in the Dover Pickleball Championship on Sunday? <laughs> How about Gladys? Is Gladys okay? I think did you'd like a, it. Did she have like an ankle? Some oh, sort please. Of a I'm sure thing? Echelon the... has a very nice pickleball court, <laughs> indoor right. and outdoor. All right. Um, well, it seems like, Curtis, thank you. It seems like the the very wealthiest individuals in this country may have begun what is being called the greatest revolution in medicine since the discovery of antibiotics. And experts are terrified about it. The Financial Times is reporting today that billionaires are investing their fortunes in science so that they can live forever. Holy cow. Congratulations, Greg. 
Wow. Would you want to live forever? I think the, so. The oh. quest for immortality. The panic is that Bezos, Gates, Musk, whomever, John Henry, will be the only people. Greg Hill. Who will live forever, <laughs> and the rest of us will just expire at huh. a normal pace. I, I mean, is that fair? It, no, is I'm, it fair if billionaires get immortality and the rest of us die on the reg? With all due respect, I think we should give the immortality to the doctors that are yeah. doing life-saving things first before we give it to the guy that gets our, you know, our our paper towel sent to us directly Jeez, to our house. I, that's not what I thought from you. I was I when granting immortal, immortality, I would have thought it was Tom Brady that oh, would grant it to. Well, no. Close second. Uh, you, you, you can't do that. He's already he's already a saint. Okay. But no, I, I I would say the that is a incredibly uh I mean the fact that they said it's what is it groundbreaking, the most important breakthroughs, so yeah. I don't doubt what they'll be able to do, but I really don't want to be looking at Bezos or Bill Gates. And I don't think I'd want to live forever. That's, that seems well, like a lot. Well, do you get to live in your current state? Like, could I live at 30 forever? Or am no, I going to no, be 90 no, no. and, for, oh, and live? like 180, I know, but would you 200? age that way? Like, yeah, I don't yeah. want to I don't want to live forever in a bed. Yeah. And interesting you note that in your lead, Greg, because yesterday the oldest living American passed away at 115. Wow. Did you want to live to 115 years old? Um, I guess probably with, with James now. Without yeah. James, I'm probably looking there. But, yeah, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I I, I feel like it, how are you going to pay for everything forever? Yeah. That's amazing. That's, uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see if they can make it happen. I, I'm fascinated. Immortality. Mm -hmm. All right. So, as Curtis mentioned, that news yesterday, the oldest living American passed away at 115 years old. And that means that the current oldest living American. American is Glenn Ordway. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, Load them up. Are we going to take a quick break? <clears throat> Those are the leads. And I want to remind you on a Friday in which Ooh. you may stay home because it's going to be snowing in a good part of the state that uh, you can listen to this show in many different ways. If you can't listen on the radio, you can stream it at weei.com. You can also download the Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y. And then you can listen to us from anywhere at any time. And... If you can't do either of those things, you can always ask your smart speaker to play 93.7 WEEI, and that's easy to do as well. Have you been diagnosed with spinal stenosis? Or are you looking for an alternative?
obscure reference, Curtis. Uh, one of the great scenes in television history, The Office, wedding scene, everybody coming down the aisle as a group. Right after Jim and Pam got married at Niagara Falls. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you rewatched that show? Oh, my God. Probably four times through. I it's, was, it's the greatest show in the history of, the, of television. I was told last night by my marvelous daughter, Julia Hill, that there is a new show that she believes may be better than The Office, The Mindy Show. Oh, The Mindy Project? Mindy Project. I haven't watched it, but it's Mindy Kaling, right? Yeah. yeah. That's and, not new. It's, uh, oh, it's not? No, it's been out. It's, it has, they have like five or six seasons, oh, I'm pretty they do. sure. Yeah, okay. Greg told his daughter, have you heard the show Murder, she wrote? It's, it's really <laughs> popping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's a Friday. It's a Patriots Friday. Devin McCourty will be on this show in about a half an hour at 720. Wiggy is off. Curtis is in the big chair. This is Mark from Medford. Mark, good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning, ladies. How are you doing this morning? What's up, Mark? Well, you know, I, I, I'm looking at this Bruins team, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I can't remember off the top of my head, of the 2011 team that won the Cup, what their record was at this point in the season. But do you think that this team is, like, a hell of a lot better than that team? I mean, you guys got guys like Trent Frederick. He's, like, on his way to his 10th goal soon, okay? I mean, the, the, the tipping last night was, like, like he's done that forever. Um, the, the fight, I mean, it was one away from a Gordie Howe hat trick. I mean, we're witnessing something special yeah, here, guys. The I, Bruins I, that won the title had 46 wins. They were 46, 25, and 11 in the regular season. This team will probably pass that in a month. Yeah. I, okay, I, can you? I asked Mike Milbury about it yesterday, and he poo-pooed it. Like, I mean, and he he would know. It, I like, heard it, it like it morning. doesn't like it doesn't matter. But they could break the regular season, the uh, you know point record, which I think the Montreal the seventy six seventy seven Montreal Canadiens have. Yeah, I mean, I, well, when you what when you look at what they're doing right now, can you compare this team? I mean, I'm going to a different sport now. But can you compare this team? Is it was it the eighty six Celtics that only lost ten games or eighty five? The eighty five, eighty six Celtics. Oh, I don't think they yeah. lost. I think they lost two games at home that whole year. Uh, yeah, I mean you could. They, they have nine more wins at the same time of the season than the Cup winning team in 2010, 2011. And it just seems like no matter what adversity is thrown their way, everybody keeps saying too. Also, oh, let's see what happens when they face adversity. Uh, excuse me, but. They faced adversity from day one of the season yeah. with the, one of their best players and their best defensemen out. Well, yeah. I would say the adversity they met had nothing to do with the ice. It had to do with the Mitch Miller signing, and they got through that. Yeah. But also, the like, your one concern was, all right, let's see what happens when you have a significant injury. Right. And they do. And they, you know... They've gotten through one of those games without Jake DeBrusque. Yeah, so. and it was reassuring that this was going to be the toughest of these three games uh, on the West Coast. Yeah. So to get through that one is... Um, this is Steve from Fall River. Hey, Steve. Good day. I'm glad to hear we're very happy about uh, the new coaches we have on these winter teams. And we remember there was trepidation going all the way back to Claude Julian. Who are you going to get? <laughs> what are you going to do? Who's the next coach going to be? It's always been that way. I know now, where you're going. I, I know where you're going with this, but go ahead. Courtney did a foreshadowing, Greg, mm -hmm. a beautiful foreshadowing. We didn't get any big, long goodbyes from Bill Belichick, Mr. 500. They, uh, <laughs> coach 500. Mm -hmm. The guy that's 500 without Tom Brady that you people have made into a deity. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to be a 500 team, one game over, one game under this year. And we'll, and the team we're going to supposed to get out of the division is going to smack us down because they hate us because we beat them. So Tom Brady beat them for 20 years. Tom Brady beat them for 20 years. Now they've won three division titles in a row since he left. Two. So don't be afraid of change. I embraced change. I prayed all through the holidays that the crafts would look at this cold and hot as the business people they are and do the right thing and f sweep the whole thing out new. A new broom sweeps clean, Greg. Okay. Don't be afraid. Steve, thank you. I think it's a little bit different coaching in the NFL than it is in the NBA. But – um, that's just me. Yeah, I, um, I think that it is the in-game coaching of Bill Belichick is not the problem. The people Bill Belichick has surrounded himself is. 
And unless you have a better option or alternative out there to coach the team, I understand general manager, we all agree, the coordinator and the offense, we all think that that'll be fixed. That's what they need to do. If you just want to get Bill out of here because you don't like him and you think he's a 500 coach, okay. But you can't just, you have to have an actual alternative. You can't just say, get rid of Bill because who are you going to replace him with? Yeah, I mean, listen. Um, is it likely that they win this game on Sunday? No. Oof. No, um, but I will uh, say there's a comp. Do you remember the, the Rene, Ran- Rene Rancourt Garden Night where everybody took over the anthem? It was one of the great Boston nights in history honoring those that lost that week on Monday. You're talking about the marathon? The marathon. Yes. The, yeah. the, the, the game after the marathon yes. at the Garden. The Bruins lost that game. So it was unbelievable. The crowd couldn't have been more emotionally engaged. The, the national anthem will stand alone in f- f- for history. But the Bruins lost that game, so it's not a guarantee the Bills win. On no, Sunday. I'm still surprised though. It's it's a seven point spread, which is shocking yeah. to me. Like I, I would have had this, you know, the a blowout from the beginning. I would have had it before the Demar Hamlin stuff. I would think that the Bills are going to show out for this. Yeah. No, I think, now, listen, when we get to they said it in a, in a few moments, there is going to be a rallying cry for the Buffalo Bills. There, I mean, there's going the momentum. They have the momentum. But what I was going to say was. If you cannot look at Bill, if Bill is somehow able to get this team to win this football game and to be a uh, to be a playoff team again this year, then in my mind, the guy has done pretty well without Tom Brady, without Josh McDaniels, with that, with everything that he's gone through the last couple of years. So I I, I mean, I, who's better? Sean Payton? I mean, who are you going to get in here that's better? Well, I wouldn't say they've done a good job this year. I had them at nine and eight before this before the season, but it's not the record. It's the inept offensive play calling it's the total mutiny that occurs in the locker room after okay, some of these right, games but your starting quarterback was out for a considerable amount of yeah, time i, I, mean, I don't I, think you should be fired i think that it's crazy to say bill belichick should be fired right now that is laughably short-sighted but i do think that if they win this game on sunday it'll be a huge thing for bill because it'll be the first good quarterback he's beaten all year yeah i i just don't think it's the same thing i mean it's essentially what steve is saying is you were worried about the Celtics when you lost Ime. They're they're rolling along. You were worried about the Bruins when you fired Bruce Cassidy, and they're rolling along. So don't worry about the Patriots. I think it's a completely different thing, in yeah. my opinion. And completely we talk about that all thing. the time when it comes to NBA, at least, that it's more about managing egos than it yeah. is actually the, the play actually on the court. Actually in-game coaching. And yeah, did yeah. Ime have six rings? Did Julian had six rings? No, the guys that were, were replaced weren't. You know, at most had one title. You're not talking about a guy that has the the resume of Bill Belichick. Yeah. Uh, This is David in the car. Hello, David. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, Great show as always. Happy New Year to everyone again. Same to you. Uh, So on on, uh, Courtney's lead, pickleball, it it is ridiculously taken off. Right in back of my house is a tennis court, basketball court, and volleyball court. And that's all you you see out there on Saturdays and Sundays is pickleball. But here's the thing. There's nobody under 45 playing. Oh, uh, <laughs> David. And the reason for that, and the reason for that is because you barely have to move. Like, I, I, I look out my window and I watch these people. And I'm like, they just stand there waiting for the reflex. I'm like, come on, people, go play a sport that you can actually exercise, like yeah. even tennis, like so soccer. You can move. Right. Like, uh, like David. Soccer. David is what well, it's well known. David is a former professional athlete. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. David thinks pickleballs for the he's too old. <laughs> David is like 100. Yeah, you break a little sweat playing pickleball. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a Patriots <laughs> Friday. Devin McCourty coming up at 720 on today's show. Gresh and Fourier. It does look a little douchey, but I would say on the sideline, all Mac does is sit there and stare off into space. So sure, in one freaking game.
to you by Mass General Cancer Center by Zudi. Build any app your company needs in a week by Northeast Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health by Jaws, perfecting the art of fresh and by Town Fair Tire for the best prices on tires. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. This hour of the Greg Hill Show is brought to you by East Coast Metal Roofing. The Greg Hill Show on WEEI. WEEI. Watch us, love us. Just follow WEEI on Twitch. Well, you can tell everybody. Yeah, you can tell everybody. Go ahead and tell everybody. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man Yes I am, yes I am, yes I am I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man I believe every lie that I ever told Paid for every heart that I ever stole I played my cards and I didn't fall Well it ain't that hard when you got soul it is a Patriots Friday, and Devin McCourty will join us at 720, and then Jalen Mills in the midday with Foyer and Gresh. Wiggy's off. Curtis is with us here in the studio. It is a delight to have you here oh, you actually with us, way. Curtis. I can't tell you I can't tell you how great it makes me feel having well, you here in the studio. I got to tell you, I love the Celtics uh, little uh, quarter zip. You just look phenomenal. <laughs> oh, today. thank you. I dragged this one out of the mothballs. Um, all 32 NFL teams will meet today and uh, apparently come to some sort of agreement when it comes to the playoff seeding scenario. And it looks like the front runner would be the uh, – Courtney, you talked about it during trending, uh, but the uh, the one and the, the two seed would uh, – should they get to the AFC championship game, that would be played at a neutral site. So, And I think uh, that's right. I think, like, that with everything that's gone on right now, uh, who's going to complain about that? I know people complain about everything, but you've made it you, – you said it earlier, Curtis. The NFL doesn't lose money. They've made so much money off oh. of fans already this season, both bo- both teams – I, I just I, I think that this makes sense. Uh, this is kind of like so, but you're denying like your most loyal customers, mm-hmm. your season ticket holders. Yeah, don't have a chance to see their team in the AFC Championship. Like well, they, well normally... they do. They just have to travel, right? And if you so wait, they're going to honor all the season tickets at the neutral site. Uh, maybe. Okay. I, I, right. I don't know They'd if they'll be able to do, do that. Well, they would have to do something like that. If you're a season a ticket holder, then, yeah, either a lottery or it needs to – something would have to happen for that. I mean, the loser is the fact that you have to go to Indianapolis. But the, the well, real – situation it's there, it right, hasn't been determined. It hasn't been determined yet. that, no. I saw Pat McAfee. He's in Indianapolis. He was pushing for it yesterday. But the situation is the Chiefs are the one team that, would, that could claim they're getting screwed. If both the Chiefs and the Bills win this weekend, the Bills would host the Chiefs in an AFC championship game. Even though the Chiefs have a better winning percentage, the Chiefs lost at home to the Bills, but the Bills never had to conclude a game they were trailing in against the Bengals, which, had they lost that game, would have enabled the Chiefs to host it right. anyway. But I would say the Chiefs have sort of skirted any kind of responsibility at all over the last five years of any issues, and there have been several with them, so I would have no issue screwing them at all. I yeah. think it would be, especially if it's Allen versus the Chiefs at a neutral site given the incredible game they played this regular season and the incredible divisional game where the Chiefs had 13 seconds on the clock and they tie the game. Shime, what is the Vegas repercussion when it comes to the neutral site? You're removing the at least three points from the line. Correct? Yeah, yeah. right now, home field advantage is generally three points, especially for a team like Buffalo or Kansas City. I think it would definitely be the full three. But at the same time, I don't think there's a massive repercussion when it comes to a neutral side field. I mean... You look at you just have to look at it like you would look at the Super Bowl, yeah. which again is another neutral side place. All right, Devin McCourty coming up at seven twenty. Courtney has the news coming up at seven thirty. Right now, time for this. It's time for Larry Bird's not walking through that door. Fans would not say that I'm Mona Lisa Vito of the football world. They they want you to cook the dinner. At least they ought to let you shop for some of the groceries. Said it. Wake up to Del Bambino and hide me facing. Maybe I'll drill him in the eye. They said it. I'm just gonna say it. Time now for they said it. A quick back and forth on what they said yesterday in sports. And where do we begin today, Shime? 
Well, we begin uh, in Buffalo. Courtney had mentioned in trending earlier today uh, that the Bills had uh, media availability yesterday. Josh Allen was one of the people that spoke to the media. Uh, and here's what he had to say on uh, his conversation or what DeMar's father, DeMar Hamlin's father, said to uh, him and the Bills. Mario talking to us as a team and the things that he kind of told us and really didn't tell us, he demanded us. You know, and you, you can't not honor his, his request to go out there and charge forward, you know, to the best of our abilities. And obviously we'll be playing with, I guess, less heavy hearts now, um, knowing that, you know, today's news was a lot, of, a lot of tears of joy, I'll tell you that. But to know that that's, that's what he wants, that's what his dad wants, I think guys are uh, excited to get out there. Print the T-shirts. They're being printed right now. Mm-hmm. You have the Bills playoff slogan, charge forward. Yeah. Yeah. Greg's slogan is charge him. <laughs> charge, <laughs> charge forward. Charge forward. Charge forward. So, I mean, there's a lot of momentum when it comes to this football team. Curtis, a lot. Yeah. The Bills have a lot of momentum on Sunday. Yeah, it's almost like a Disney movie, the way it's unfolded. But I yeah. feel like they're going to – it's like one of two options, right? The Bills will either burn unbelievably hot and just go on this ridiculously amazing run to a Super Bowl win – or it will end very poorly, very quickly. I don't know, Shime. I I think they're a t- they're a team on a on a mission. There's a lot of angry Patriots fans because no matter what, the Bills have to play on Sunday. And there was a lot of Patriots fans that wanted the Chiefs to get the one seed, no matter what, which would have negated the need for the Bills to go all out. Yeah. So yeah. I. Uh, what if the Chiefs lose Saturday night, though? Would the Bills then automatically? Then be it would the- be. Wouldn't it be Bills and Bengals? No, because well the. Bills would have to have won on Monday for that to be a slam dunk, right? No, because then the Chiefs would have four losses. Right. And if, even if the Bills lose, they would have four losses. The Bengals already have four losses. I don't want to get a popsicle headache. but uh, Yeah, I mean, if maybe just uh, somebody gets it down and figure that out yeah. before Sorry. we start speculating Jackson. about it during they said it. What is the, uh, what's the next one? Uh, well, Josh Allen also talked about uh, T. Higgins, and then we got to hear from T. Higgins. Uh, T. Higgins spoke in the Cincinnati locker room uh, after practice yesterday, uh, and here's what he had to say. DeMar's parents made clear they didn't want anybody to criticize you, that they supported you. What did that mean when yeah, you heard man, that? Because uh, DeMar's mom hit me, texted me this morning um, and told me, you know, about everything. And it made me feel feel even more at home, you know, and, and uh, I really appreciate them, you know, just hearing from them and uh, them having my back as well. So, uh, yeah, it was good. All right. I mean, an awful thing for him, too, and so I'm sure he's relieved uh, when it comes to the condition. Yeah, to have DeMar's parents backing yeah. him, especially after people like Bart Scott are basically saying that, you know, T. Higgins could have some fault for this. What a uh, jackass so Bart Scott dumb. is. Complete it's so jackass. stupid. That football play happens a thousand times a weekend, and nobody bats an eye. Why, why are you trying to pile on a guy like that and, at that at that moment? And hasn't he gotten in trouble in the past for things he said? He said he made comments, I believe, last season about Joe Burrow. There was a whole thing about Bart Bart Scott like uh, talking poorly about uh, about playing against Joe Burrow. He just he makes comments, and some people love it for him. And I guess that's the clickbait of it all. And it, we're talking about him here, here this morning, so that's why people he has a job. But it's just he, gross. All right, finally this morning, Sean. F- finally, we have uh, Jake Peavy on MLB tonight talking about the Raffy Devers deal and giving some credit to ownership. No, it was a necessity for the Red Sox because of what had just happened. Nobody was ready for that, Xander. Xander was a pillar not only on the field, in the community. And like you said, my hat's off to ownership because this is an ownership decision that got made. And those guys said, enough's enough. We know that if we sign this deal, and again, I think it's the best deal of the winter. If he would have been on the free agent market, I can make an argument that he is the most touted guy on that market amongst the names that were out there this year. Wow. Wow. Really? Thinks it could have been the biggest deal of the offseason. Well, I mean. The, mo- the most talented? The- <laughs> what about Judge? Uh, I, I, there, I mean, there's been a debate lately, especially uh, on if you prefer Judge over uh, Devers or vice versa. And a lot of people prefer Devers just because the, he's more consistent at the plate. It's not just a home run or bust kind of scenario. Greg, you have pull with the Red Sox. We got the scoop of the year. I just poo-pooed it. First opening day, first pitch should be the two fans that were heckling Henry because they're the ones that got the deal done. <laughs> yes, they should. Right. I want the pay anyone guy to throw the first pitch before I, the other guy. I love that guy. I, I give pay anyone guy the credit for this entire deal. You know that. You know that. All right. That is they said it. 
Um, and John, pay Raffy. <laughs> pay anybody. <laughs> pay anybody. Pay anybody. We got to bring back the the show that we did on opening day. Where do we do it at uh, at Johnny's? At Johnny's Fenway, Fenway Johnny's. Yeah, we got to bring. We have to bring back that show this year. That was a blast. Uh, I yeah. love that spot. All right. Um, coming up, Devin McCourty will join us on a Patriots Friday. Right now, Courtney and what is trending this morning. Now here's what's trending on WEEI. Trending now, brought to you by One Ten Grill. My mouse would work. But nothing's working in here. What's what's, go, what's going on? My mouse is. Uh, we can't hear you. My mouse wasn't working, but no worries because some amazing news for Demar Hamlin yesterday. Doctors said he is awake and able to communicate through writing. He woke up. He asked if they had won. The doctor said, "Yes, Demar, you won the game of life." He is still on a ventilator due to some damage to his lungs, but nonetheless, uh, he appears to be neurologically intact. Uh, one doctor put it perfectly, saying that the lights aren't only on, uh, but we know that Demar is home. Great. So, now, when the doctor was writing that phrase back, was Demar waiting to see what he had won? Like, so when, the, like, was the mm. doctor a fast writer when he, or was was he a slow writer when he was saying, "Well, you won the." It seems like Demar like, can see. He's like, "What did I win? Did I, I can you get to the end? I wanted to, did, did I win a new washer and dryer? Did I win a new automobile? Like, I was on the Oprah show. Like, what happened?" It, it is right. amazing, and I, this is totally separate from the health of Demar Hamlin. We all want him to be healthy. It all is. We are all thrilled that he's moving in the right direction. It's just that they are trying. It's it's just it's amazing how quickly the American public just buys anything. <laughs> like the notion that you would wake up in a new place with strangers around you, having no idea how you got where you were, probably don't know you're still in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. That your first thing would be who won, and the doctor would say you did. It's you, like no, a, you won the game of life. Right. Like yes. you won the game of life while he's still in critical <laughs> you condition. You guys are miserable. I'm not miserable. You I'm are. Just, no, Curtis. we just question things, Courtney. How is that? If mi- something sounds too perfect, oftentimes it's not true. I, I, I the last thing a, a doctor in an ICU would write: "You won the game of life while he's on a ventilator in critical condition." <laughs> I just can, cannot foresee that happening. Like as I said, it's great that he's alert. There's nothing bigger than the fact that he's cognitively intact. Mm-hmm. The Bills assistant trainer that performs CPR saved his brain for like the the amount of brilliant people that worked are just deserve all the credit they can get but this just was a little much yesterday well it should be interesting to see how the buffalo uh fan base turns out on sunday when the patriots are in town for this one the game is at 1 p.m in buffalo we'll chat with devin mccordy after the break about that and reminder to tune into the weei football sunday show at 10 a.m before the game with gresh and keith as for that Bills Bengals game, the NFL did cancel the postponed game. They're planning a vote today to implement two major modifications for AFC playoffs. The first, as Greg was talking about, uh, about a neutral site. The second proposal on the table is that the NFL will flip a coin to see who hosts a Ravens Bengals wild card game if the Ravens beat the Bengals on Sunday and if the two teams are scheduled to play each other in that wild card round. The Celtics bounced back in a big way last night, 124 to 95. Sorry, Shime, over the Mavericks. Jason Tatum had a triple double, double, 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 10 assists. Joe Mazzulla talked about what the team showed with that response. You told us the other night it would be about how you guys responded. What did you? What did they show you tonight? Uh, they showed me they could do it one time, but we have to do it over and over again. And the Bruins with a win on the West Coast as well, 5-2. to two. two goals from Trent Frederick, two from Pasta, and one from Marshy. Jeremy Swayman had 27 saves in this one. Uh, brought, that was brought to you by One Time Grill, modern American cuisine, and a top allergy-friendly restaurant. You can find it all there. That's what's trending. Here's Curtis with your weather. 33 degrees and cloudy in Boston. The snow is expected to begin in about 40 minutes. Oh. And how much snow? Just according to an inch here, but you're looking at 1 to 3 to 2 to 5 the further west you go outside oh. the city of Boston. Okay, so if you are west of 128. Yep. You're going to need some uh, boots. Like three to five inches of snow or yes. something during the day today. Yeah, it's just during the day, so I might work from home if you're able to. Right. Coming up next, Devin McCourty. And where do I ask, where do I place, and how do I ask the question? Because it has to be asked. And, you know, last time it happened, the result was not good on this program, but I got to ask it. So, Devin McCourty coming up next. The dynasty continues. The exclusive home for Patriots Monday and Friday. 93.7 WEEI. Boston.
Sports Original, WEEI, and Devin McCourty right now is brought to you by Shaw's and Star Market, bringing people together around the joys of food by Catches Law Group, New England's personal injury pros at CatchesLaw.com. By Zudi, build any app your company needs in a week. By Time Out Market, Boston's best eating and drinking destination in Fenway, all under one roof. And by FindMassMoney.com, where even Devin McCourty found money. And Devin joins us this morning on the Harbor One Hotline. Devin, good morning. Good morning. How you guys doing? Long time, uh, no talk. Yeah, it's been a while. How were your holidays? Everything good? They were good, man. You guys got a big vacation time, huh? Well, uh, they forced me to take it. Oh. I, I'm a, yeah. I'm a do-your-job kind of guy. I'm a, I'm a no-days-off kind of guy, Devin. But unfortunately, I had to take a couple weeks. Uh, recharge the batteries, as Chris Curtis likes to say. So, yep. uh, but we're ready okay. to go. Ready to go, and I'm sure. Uh, well, actually, I'm not sure. I, it's been um, a very interesting week when it comes to playing in the NFL. And um, is is it is it difficult as a player to put to, when you see what happened last week to put or this week to put to to put that aside the, when it, when it comes to the risk and go out and play football on Sunday? Um. I wouldn't call it put it to the side. I just think um, you kind of just deal with it. You know, I don't think anyone was able, you know, watching that game Monday night to just be like, yeah, man, like I'm good. I- I'm I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go play right now. Um, I think it's all just been a process of, you know, I think first and foremost, just praying for DeMar Hamlin's health and, and hoping and wishing that he is okay. And, you know, I think it's been uh, a big uplift throughout the whole NFL community, seeing his improvements. Obviously, you know, huge in Buffalo, but I think across the whole league. Um, but I think all the guys have just been trying to stick to their routine and, you know, go about you know what they can control each day of, you know, preparing and going out there and playing. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I know for me personally, like you do, you think about, you know, playing this game, the risk, everything that we've been doing. Um, you don't really think about that being an aspect of what we watch Monday night. So, um, it was definitely scary uh, watching that and sitting there at home. Uh, and I think a lot of players probably felt similar feelings. Um, I want to say it's just as easy as just, like, put it to the side and go on. you you got to find a way to process, you know, what you witnessed and what you saw. When it comes to not resuming that game, do you feel like the NFL made the right decision? Yeah, I don't know who made the decision, coaches, players, whatever, but um, I think it was obvious watching the game and seeing the players' faces that there was no way they could go from that to going out there and competing and hitting like there. I think a lot of people watching, you know, I don't think anybody really wants to see any more football uh, go on Monday night. Devin, I know that Bill Belichick spoke for 10 plus minutes uh, to media yesterday when it came to DeMar and his situation. I know he gave credit to the coaching staff, to you, to Matthew Slater. Uh, Can you talk a little bit about what the conversations were like in the locker room between Bill and the players? Because I think we all see Bill as a very, you know, cold, serious guy. But we've been told behind closed doors he is he, he he he's he has emotion. Yeah, I would say for years I've heard him say over and over again the amount of respect he has 
for the guys in this locker room and guys across the league that decide to go and play football on Sundays. And I think, you know, no matter what, everybody in this building, we're all human beings. So uh, when we came in the next day, it's the conversations were probably like a lot of conversations people had at work or different places um, of just all over the place of, you know, wondering, you know, what was going to happen next, how DeMar was doing, um, what the NF, what was going to happen to our game. Like it was just so many different conversations and things going on. Um, and I think the best thing we had, we just had so many different people in this building that you can talk to uh, that had nothing to do with football, our team clinician. We have other people on staff here that, you know, have some type of medical background and mental wellness. So um, I think that was one of the key parts of just being here and being in the building um, and having those resources at hand. Um, but I would just say, you know, your human side for every individual comes out. Like I know a lot of people see us as gladiators and different things like that. But at the end of the day, we care about each person's well-being, not, not even the guys just on our team, just across the league. And we, you know, none of us ever want to see that when we go out and play a game. If you were on that Bills team, what what would be the determining factor when it came to making the decision about playing this week? And if I'm being honest, with you, I couldn't even tell you. I have like to try and, and put yourself in their shoes. Like I have no idea um, what it was like being down on the field. I can just tell you from watching the TV and seeing some of their faces and their emotions, um, like, it, it, I, I couldn't fathom, you know, making that decision. Like, I have no idea what my reaction would be, what my thought process, um, just because, like, me watching that, it was just like, wow. Like, it was, to me, it was just, it was a, a crazy sight, a crazy scene to see, so I couldn't even answer that. Devin, do you think, I mean, it's just speaking for myself, I definitely was watching that and sort of, realized how much I take for granted this sport I love to watch and the danger that the people that participate it participate in it place themselves. Do, do you, th- are there any play- players that you've spoken to that this was sort of like a wake up call as to the dangers and the perils of playing football in the NFL? Yeah, I would say we know the dangers. I would just say it's, you, it, it would be hard to go out there and play if you thought about, you know, what we witnessed Monday night every time you stepped on the field. So there's no doubt about it. We we definitely take that for granted. And I would say there's a little bit of, for us as players, being, you know, somewhat a little crazy going out there and competing and playing, um, knowing some of those dangers. Because, you know, I think in our minds, we always think like, man, that, that just won't happen. So I think it was definitely eye-opening, you know, for all of us as players to sit there and watch that and, um, to just see, you know, life and death now uh, be a part of the game, you know, I think was it was very chilling um, to witness that. So, you know, I would definitely say there's some type of wake-up call. I just don't know as a player, like, what you do, it's, it's hard to say, like, man, I'm going to do this now um, because that was such a routine play. If there were a player, perhaps, that you knew, Devin, who was weighing the options of playing one more season or retiring after this season, maybe a player that you knew, would this tip the scale in either direction? Uh, no, uh, I, I don't think so. I think um, I think for all players, you know, I think obviously you're talking about me so I can answer, but for each individual it would be different. Um, but no, not for me. I think, you know, a lot of things will, will go into play. Obviously you can't erase this from your mind, Um but, you know, Monday night wasn't like, well, you know, I know this is it because I think that would be hard for me to go out there and play Sunday with that thought process. But um, I will say this, I think Monday night impacted every person that will put on the pads and continue to play and even uh, all the different former players that, you know, are done playing. But I think that, that impacted all of us. All right, let me ask it this way. If that player who might be retiring had a twin brother who traveled all the way to potentially see his last game at Gillette Stadium, would that would, could we indi- could we get any indication from that? Well, no, because if that was the case, he should probably travel to Buffalo in case it's my last game <laughs> overall, too. So and he told me he's not going to Buffalo. So uh, I don't know. I wouldn't take it as that strong of an indication. <laughs> Devin, do you? I know you have a, a young son. Do, 
do, will you stand in the way of him playing football when he gets older? Uh, no, I got two. I got two little ones, and you know, I got a, a little girl, and uh, my two older ones are in flag football right now. Um, they're both competing in it, so no, I, I wouldn't look at them and, and tell them about how great my life is and how big of a role football played in it, and then tell them that they couldn't. Um, but I would, I would definitely let them know, you know, what they're getting into and uh, try to teach them how to play the right way. Devin, to Greg's point, it, it was interesting watching, you know, your family and, and you spending some extra time on the field after the game, Jason being there. Is it difficult when you have games still left to play uh, to, to balance preparing for that, but also knowing that there's kind of this big life decision looming uh, kind of directly after? Uh, you just try to stay in the moment. I think uh, I've done uh, what I've wanted to do in football has far exceeded um, my own expectations. So um, I, I, I'm I, extremely content in what I've been able to do as a player. Um, and I think that, that allows me to stay in the moment and enjoy uh, all the different guys in the locker room this year, their stories, their journeys, the impact they've had on me, um, and, and also trying to be a leader and, and show them the different things that I've learned and then learn from my experiences. So um, I've enjoyed just being in this moment and enjoyed the process. And, you know, I try to let the things that have to be decided be decided when the time's right and, and not worry about that right now and just try to go out here and, you know, win another football game. Has this season been a more difficult season than any other, or is, are they are they all the same from your perspective? Um, just football wise, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, when we've gone we've gone thirteen and three, that that didn't feel as a hard of a season as now. Um, but I would say every season has its difficulties, um, no matter what it is. Um, but this has definitely been, you know, one of the tougher seasons that I've had uh, in my time in the NFL. All right. Well. Um... Any any other anything else that we that we need to talk about with Devin this morning? Well, I think just getting ready for that environment on Sunday. Obviously, you knew going to Buffalo with Bills Mafia and everything like that before the Demar situation was going to be tough. But this added pressure, I guess. Are you expecting that that place is going to be unlike anything you've ever seen? Yeah, I would say it's from an emotional standpoint. I guess we have no idea you know, what we're we're going to be walking into. I think we got to try to stay poised, um, stay in the moment, you know, kind of control what we can control. But, you know, I think from an emotional standpoint, like the game is going to really be, you know, it's going to be something else. And, you know, there's no way of – can't turn on an old game and say, like, all right, it's going to be like this. Like, there's just – we have no idea what we're going to be walking into. We got to just stick together. Um, and try to execute and stay stay in the moment and stay poised. I'm in a no win situation over here, Devin. You know what? You, it, these people are relentless, like the the listeners. You know what they want me to ask about, and I just don't want to do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> they want they want me to ask about the drop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're they want me. They want to get me in trouble. I don't understand why they want that. Oh, it doesn't matter. I think for me. I've said uh, this whole year for me has been a lot of fun of winning. Um, whatever stats come along with that, uh, I'm cool. But I find a lot of satisfaction in watching guys like Doug go out there and make plays. Um, obviously, uh, excuse my language, is a shitty play. But um, <laughs> as long as it didn't, as long as it didn't come with a loss. I'm able. I'm able to be good and, and have fun. So uh, obviously, I'm able to have fun because my brother went on TV and made fun of me right away the next day. So yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, he did. He's relentless, your brother. Having a lot of fun. He's finding a way to make more money uh, after football. So I can't knock it. It was nice before the game, Devin. I'm sure you saw it, the, a little boy asking for your autograph to Jason, though. So I'm sure that was humbling for him. <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> By the way, we have a Ty Law swear jar around here, so that's 100 bucks to the Greg Hill Foundation, the S-bomb that you dropped. <laughs> that Ty Law gives? <laughs> yeah, Ty Law. He'll, he'll donate on your behalf, yep. Devin. All uh, right. No, so should I just keep going? <laughs> no, probably not. All right. Well, um, 
listen, it's been great having you on all season, and my sincere hope is that we're talking to you. Oh, don't uh, start that. Don't start that. We'll talk next week. We will? That's manifestation. Yeah, we'll talk next week. Yeah, there we go. All right, we'll talk next week. All right, I feel good about that. Yeah. All right, go get them, Devin. Thanks for taking the time this morning, as always. All right, guys. All right. There you have Devin McCourty. He just guaranteed a win. Yeah. You can post that okay. at WEI.com. Sure. 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 Manifesting. I mean, Greg's vision board, vision board has little different things on it. It's yeah. mostly just red meat. But. I got to say, though, that's a guy who's retiring. Oh, totally. I mean. You think so? Oh. Sayonara. Uh, talking about what he's been able, like, what his career has been, you can tell that he has, he has taken uh stake in everything yep. and i the way that he answered all of those questions he is just he's a great interview all the time i love devin mccourty i hope he doesn't retire but the way he answered those questions to me that was yeah and i believe him in everything he says and i recognize that they understand this the level of danger that they're placing themselves in far more than i do but you you can't tell me that there are players of Devin's ilk that have had a 10, 15-year career, that made money, have remained intact, are intelligent, and able to do things on TV. Devin can do whatever he wants, really, when he's done. They're not thinking, and the people in their life are not whispering, like, okay, we've made it here. Mm-hmm. Let's, you know, finish out the year, and then let's enjoy the rest of our life. I, I, I would be shocked if there are not at least a half dozen people across the NFL, maybe more, that say, okay, it's been a great career, that this was a real wake-up call. Yes, a bit, a bit of a different tone when we brought it up about Brady, but <laughs> when I said Giselle's probably saying, hey, you've made it this far healthy, we're healthy, let's let's right. call it. Devin is in a much more precarious position than a quarterback, well, but yes. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> if they are somehow able to go up there on Sunday and that, juggernaut of a hostile environment with everything that is going on with that football team and win that 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 is an extraordinary accomplishment by bill and this football oh, team do you think they're packing for two weeks if they yeah. win don't they almost automatically stay in buffalo mm. yeah like i don't know if that's obviously it's a close flight they're not but i mean that would that would be I mean, wild they play in buffalo the potential is if they win they could play there in back-to-back weeks yeah i mean it, like every like you have everything lined up against you like bill is bill loves i mean he doesn't love what happened but he loves this opportunity yeah where he's got one game he has to win win and you're in it's going to be all kinds of emotion i mean i i am so excited for this game all right that is devin mccourty on a patriots friday jalen mills coming up during the midday with gresh and foyer and courtney has the news coming up next Hey, it's Nick Fitzy Stevens talking with Jim Nolan, Chief Operating Officer of Craft Sports and Entertainment and the New England Patriots.
Question. My choice when it came to the co-host on this program. And oh, I, I thought just, it was a listener's choice. <laughs> I just want to flash back to a few moments ago. And Courtney recapping the Devin McCourty interview with this statement. You can tell that he has he has taken uh, stake in everything. <laughs> Stock. <laughs> Stock. <laughs> Taking stake is what I do at Moo. Yes. Take- <laughs> Taking stock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I will, I'm sorry. I am. I will say though, to Courtney's defense, the people that are driving to work, texting in, saying that, like, you know, idiot, it's stock, not steak. It's like, all right, dude. Also, like, if if you are mad about that on a Friday morning, I'm sure there are more people that got a kick out of that than whatever. So if I can just be yeah. dumb for four hours to make your morning great, yes, then here I am. That's why. We, yes, we yeah. are here for it. Yep. We are here for it. You can tell that he has, he has taken. Uh, steak and everything. Taking steak. The Taking awe the, uh, was, I don't know, but I'm going to finish I know. this. I should just stop <laughs> right. when I don't know. No, it's much better this way. No. And, and Greg, by the way, uh, I don't just say this because I'm in here. Uh, that was excellent interview. That oh. was spectacular. Oh. The, the, he was honest. The answer oh. on the difficulties presented by the season. Yes. He is comfortable with this show, with you huh. specifically, and I wow. just think he is a, I, no matter what, I was going to say this when we were late, but no matter what, happens this weekend i would love to have him back yeah. next year yeah. whether he's playing or not yep. yes yes all right let's get to this it's time for and he lost to some dope from boston i couldn't believe it the news i'm sure greg hill does a mediocre job with your host courtney cox i am gonna ride the bailey zappy train and i'm going to ride it hard the news is sponsored by <laughs> northeast men's health the experts in men's sexual health with four locations including their newest in woburn with appointments as early as 7 a.m visit northeastmenshealth.com for more actually <laughs> on weei I'll also say, Razor and I told Greg yesterday that when I was in Greg's seat, I didn't mispronounce anything. It yeah. was like a different me. I, I was told you did a really good job hosting the show. Thank you. I absence. sweat the entire time. I really, I'm, I'm, it's very I'm, high pressure there. You did I'm, great, Courtney. I'm proud of you for that. Thank you. But it's like I have a different personality when I'm in yeah. the, the three seat than when I'm in the one. Why Listen, don't you manifest that chair like it's the one chair? Mm, I mean, I kind of like it. Okay. You know so what? when I retire in a year and a half, who uh, will who will take over? Uh, Curtis. Curtis. Or, well, oh, Courtney, it's well, all Curtis. hers. Uh, I'll just sit here and I'll just laugh at Wiggy. Okay. You're gonna let a girl run that show? No. <laughs> uh, uh, I also, I, a I don't. Year and a half, my ass. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be here for twenty. Mm. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Might be time to hang it up. Oh. What? <laughs> I mean, I, how are the ratings? They are great. Hey, Last Weekly did a 12 2. A 12? Yeah. Jeez. Holiday book, too. That's a giant yeah, number. I'm, I'm, Courtney must have lied about something. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, let's get to the news. A scary story out of Cohasset after a 39 year old Anna Walsh was last seen at her Cohasset home shortly after midnight on New Year's Day. She was celebrating New Year's Eve with her husband and her three kids. The next day, friends say she was supposed to get on a 4 30 a.m. flight to D.C., where she has a second home. She actually works in D.C. in a real estate firm. Never made it. Hasn't really? been seen since. Huh. So uh, they say she's very active on her social media accounts usually. Nothing since Sunday. Wow. Uh, so this seems like a very a story that we will be following closely. Uh, uh-huh. We can hear from one of her friends, Abdullah Al-Mutari. I got a call from uh, her husband asking me if, given the close relationship I have with Anna and uh, 
if I had spoken to her or talked to her or heard anything from her. This is weird. The, yeah, these that's... stories, when, when you have the investigation into the gel, the um, likely murderer in Idaho, yeah. mm-hmm. where you're able to ping people no matter where they are, yeah. Yeah. these missing things just seem so impossible to understand. Yeah, because everybody has their phone at every single moment of every time now. So and everything does... we do leaves some sort of a digital footprint. Yeah. 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 Are we getting to Idaho? Because that stuff. Yeah. Oh, we later, are later? getting to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That stuff yesterday was wild. Wild. Yeah. I have so many thoughts. Okay. Uh, and what a night for Maura Healy. Uh, the new governor was sworn in last night and then with thousands of her supporters joining in in the celebration at the TD Garden. It was a party. Uh, the the theme was moving the ball forward okay. uh, at the TD Garden with a <laughs> yeah. lot of basketball props okay. everywhere. All right. mm-hmm. um, they had Brandy Carlisle perform. I, I've seemed never like, heard of her. Sounds like a lovely woman. It uh-huh. seemed like a great event. Okay. Brandy Carlisle actually married her wife uh, in Massachusetts in 2012. Okay. So there was a little bit of a connection there. Right. We could hear from one of the folks who stopped by the festivities. Way past my bedtime, and I'm a libertarian, but I'm glad I came. <laughs> So it sounded like a good night. Uh, who was that? Oh, just a regular guy a who supporter. was there, and he was glad that he came. Yep. Were they giving All out right. shots of moonshine? Uh-huh. All right. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. President Biden announced a new policy yesterday to deal with the crisis at the border with Mexico. Uh, the U.S. will accept 30,000 migrants each month from four countries, but it will also close the door to those who don't use the legal pathways uh, for the plan. He will travel to the border in El Paso on Sunday, we can hear a little bit of what Biden had to say. I will visit the border myself this Sunday in El Paso to assess border enforcement operations, meet with the local officials and community leaders and the folks at the border sending me what they need that they don't have. I believe his press conference is going to be right as the anthem is playing in Buffalo at 1255 <laughs> before every NFL team kicks off the final game of their season. It is kind of crazy because you have to know that every type of uh, office whether it is uh, political or, you know, somebody else trying to cover up a scandal, a company scandal, they always put them at the perfect time Mm -hmm. where all the attention in the country is somewhere else. What would you guess the number that that game does on Sunday is? In Buffalo, my guess is it is the most watched regular season game in history. But around yeah. the around the country, the issue I mean, is it's, they're all regional this weekend because every oh. team has to play at the same time. Oh, yeah. So it's not a standalone game. But I think in Buffalo, they always do crazy. I wouldn't be shocked if it did like an eighty share. Yeah. yeah. Nuts. Which is what the Ken and Curtis does on every Saturday. Mm. (laughs) The Curtis show. A 16-year-old player from XL High School in South Boston uh, will have to appear in Quincy Juvenile Court on a charge of assault and battery after the student allegedly sucker punched a ref during a game in Cohasset. This story is, I saw this on the news last night. It's ridiculous. The kid just, the ref was like, they were inbounding the ball. He ran up and sucker punched the ref. Yeah, it seems like he had been called for a foul a few times throughout the game. And then Kohasik got called for traveling and the player thought that he was getting called again. I don't know. The the situation seems weird, but if you watch the, the video, he does. He just like walks up to him and... Dex them. So, oh. and in a day and age where we have a really hard time getting any refs to do any type of youth or high school games, yeah, right. it, it, this, this does not help. help. It's not helping. Right. Terrible. Yeah. There should be, I, I've said this before, zero tolerance. If you act out in this way of any kind, if you're berating a ref, mm-hmm. if you're swearing at a player, if you're yelling at, yelling at anybody outside of your own family, you are banned for life. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty easy. Yep. Multiple people were hospitalized last night following a shooting in Miami Gardens during a music video shoot for French Montana and rapper Rob 49. Uh, at least 10 people were injured and had to be transported, whether by ambulance or by the, them driving themselves to the hospital. Huh. Uh, but they were shooting a music video. It seemed like it was at a fast food restaurant uh-huh. okay. and a shooting broke out. Was Rob 48 taken? Uh, yeah, like, what? Rob 49. Yeah, I don't get it. So there was a shooting and a and a and a video broke out. Oh no, it's, it's the other way around. Hi, I'm okay. Rob Forty Nine. This is my brother, Rob Fifty Two. Okay. All right. All right. Now to the biggest story of the week, probably of the year. The affidavit was unsealed in the Idaho Four case yesterday, and I don't know where to begin. There was 19 pages. We don't have enough time for you. I mean, you're obsessed with this. I'll just get to two, uh, three of the things that I found the most. The, the wildest when, when reading the 19-page affidavit. Number one, the ro- one of the roommates, surviving roommates, Dylan Mortensen, she uh, told police after that she actually witnessed the guy 
the Brian Koberger leaving the house. That, in, a, in a mask. Yes, in a mask. She, I, this is ter- I told you I had dinner with Julia and Jen and Brees last night. Julia was terrified by this. You, you must be uh, full of anxiety. She opened her door because she heard noises, and the guy walked by her in the mask. She opened her door three oh. times. The oh. first time, she just thought that one of her roommates was, like, playing with their dog above her, in the, in the on the floor above her. Didn't see anything. Closed the door. The second time, she heard crying, opened the door, heard a man's voice saying, don't worry, I'm going to help you. Oh, my God. The third time, she opened the door because she heard crying. He walked towards her, past her, and out the sliding door. Like, and, and then this girl, and, and I feel bad because if she has no involvement and she was out partying, she's a college student, she's a young kid, and, you know, maybe she, whatever. She opens the door, sees somebody, closes it, locks it because she was in a state of shock and then falls asleep for eight hours. Well, she didn't call. So that happened. At, they believe the murders happened between 4 and 425 a.m. Mm-hmm. And she saw him. Yep. And then nobody called 911 until noon or something the next day? My only my only thought could be if you take, like, I don't know, shrooms or something and you're hallucinating and you think that you're seeing something that you're not and you just fall back asleep. I, I, mean, I don't I guess, know. I guess you could be, like, in a, uh, like a state of utter terror. And, yeah. I mean, and I my black- thought also is if she saw him walk right by her, why wouldn't he just kill her, too? That, well, I know. That's Weird. And people have been trying to look at the layout. Also, Dylan was so, at first. We were told she was on that bottom floor. That that maybe the killer, whoever it was, who came into the house, didn't even know there were people on the bottom floor. She was actually on the second floor, yeah. where two people were killed. The whole thing. There's going to be more. They didn't release the 911 call yet. I but, thought that was going to maybe be unsealed with the affidavit. Courtney, you're our expert on this. Don't you hear him leave at some point? She, she saw, saw him, leave. him leave. So then when you see him leave, don't you go up and be like, what was going on up yes. there? Yeah. And I don't understand any I guess, of this. I guess also, like, it's a college town. There's parties. It seemed to be a party house. Maybe she just thought that it was, like, a frat brother that was over. I, but I would but also... Like he's leaving in a mess. I know, but we've also heard that this was the bloodiest scene of all time. Wouldn't there be... I don't know. How could you go back to sleep, though, after seeing a dude walk by you in a mask? Right. Yeah. The only the only thing that I can come up with is she was on something, as your mom used to say, Greg, yeah. and she was pie-eyed. So she just was passed out drunk. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I can't think of anything else. What was else. the other stuff? That the other it? stuff that was crazy was the fact that before the murders took place, his phone pinged near the location of the house 12 different times in the middle of the night. So clearly this was premeditated and he was, he was stalking, stalking yeah. or surveying the yeah. uh, and something. The last last was that his phone pinged between like 9 and 9 30 the next morning so he returned to the scene i'm guessing this guy has such a big ego he thought he was going to get away with it wanted to see the chaos that ensued once these bodies were found and he thought that it would be you know around 9 a.m when yeah. people usually are starting to wake up on a sunday well, and if, he if, tried to go back to the scene if he was trying to be like the brilliant criminal he's a dodo bird i mean he, he has his phone with him every time he's doing yeah. something. he's really not smart well and he turned off his phone between like 2 30 and 4 30 a.m okay perfect so why wouldn't you just leave your phone at home so yeah. and have it on so it's yeah. pinging in that location it's wild the whole thing's crazy i also because he's a criminology major uh trying to get his phd i do think that the reason he returned to the house at the next morning was because he wanted to be there when police or, or or chaos ensued so he got out to be like let me help so his prince or oh, dna would or, would be would at the scene yeah. and look like he was the trying DNA to help the dna was he left the sheath of the knife there yep. and that's where the dna was yeah on right? the button and of then it. they found the dna they didn't get it from the the genealogy site they went and got the father's trash. Mm-hmm. No way. Yeah. Yes, they got the father's trash, and then they were able to link the DNA to him that way. So that was in yeah. there, too. All right, Courtney, thank wow. you very much. You're welcome. All right, coming up, it is a big game for the New England Patriots on Sunday, and maybe even a bigger game than ever before for Bill Belichick. At least one former head coach. We'll talk about that coming up next. Listening to a Patriots Friday edition of the Greg Hill Show on WEEI. Get a great.
HVAC and home oil delivery pros at McFarlandEnergy.com by Anderson Windows, by New England Spine Care, and by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning. The name to know when your drains don't flow. This hour of the Greg Hill Show is brought to you by Shaw's, the official supermarket of the WEEI Red Sox Network. A Boston original. On Boston Sports Original. The Greg Hill Show on WEEI. 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 I try to be everything that I can But sometimes I come out as being nothing I try to be everything that I can But sometimes I come out as being nothing Is this Bill Belichick, you think, one of his best coaching staff? I 100% I think it is. Because I compare it to the current New England roster compared to what it used to be when I coached against them. There's one player on that team that would have started for those teams, and that's Matt Judon. The roster may be JV, but the coaching's not. This dude has done an amazing job. Might be his best year 
coaching that I've ever seen. And what he does, he, he plays to the strength of his team. Don't want to ruin this one. This type of love don't always come and go. Rex Ryan with begrudging praise, I'm guessing, for Bill Belichick. I agree. I, I, we were talking about it earlier, Curtis. If Bill is somehow able to get this team into the playoffs, it it is his best season by far. I uh, I don't know about that. They think haven't about, beaten. A, think you about think what, just getting into the playoffs. Think about think about what they 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 have had to deal with down there. You got and it's uh, some of it is self inflicted. The but, best quarterback they've beaten is Jared Goof. But but you have dealt with a an offensive coordinator who uh, doesn't have a lick of experience calling plays. Correct. You have a special uh, teams coordinator that's another boob. You've got two block punts. Uh, a uh, starting quarterback who you lost for three games in his second season who you lost for three games right. because then, of an who, injury. And then who you lost in the Monday night game mm-hmm. after. Uh, so, I, I mean, I and and Rex Ryan talks about the, who is currently on this roster and the, the talent that they have. To I, call it a JV team is tough. And to say that there's only one guy who would be starting on one on those old teams to be Matt Junon, it is, it is impressive. I don't think just saying that they're going to make it to the playoffs would be enough for me to say that, that, that this is his most impressive coaching season yet. They got to win it. They got to win. Fact, you have to factor in if you're able to somehow win this game on Sunday with all the the giant momentum on the other team it's an extraordinary accomplishment yeah so basically if they win Sunday obviously his job is as secure as ever and he I think is able to fight off Robert Kraft a bit in terms of the meddling in his staff now if you ask me what I think is best for this organization going forward I would say It'd be best to have some other strong voices. So if that means losing Sunday, then I would tolerate it. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, his ability in game to scheme and to figure out ways to take advantage of other weaknesses remains strong. And so we had a caller earlier in the show, I don't remember who it was, who said they want Bill gone, no matter what Steve, of course. Yeah. But to me, Bill's the head coach, Bill O'Brien or someone else is the offensive coordinator. My concern is basically. That Gerard Mayo, who has been instrumental, according to Bill Belichick, this week, along with Troy Brown and helping these players through the impossible situation in Cincinnati, I think he might be gone. So those are the issues going forward. But for right now, you're right, Greg. If they get a win this Sunday, it'll be their biggest regular season win since Brady left. Well, and the reports are with it when it comes to Mayo is that if he doesn't get the title he wants, then he's out. So that's going to be a big loss for right. you. So I don't think they're going to basically demote his do son. You, but do you think that, okay, you get rid of Matt Patricia, you get a new guy working with Mac, then that's enough to repair the relationship between Bill and Mac? I don't know. I think it's, uh, I was going to use an analogy that's not good, given everything that's going on. I think the relationship is in a tough place um i think the the what we heard from somebody here after the monday night game that max family left in a huff at halftime of the bears game that they were enraged there's clearly been i think some somewhat of a detente between mac and bill they're putting their best foot forward for the team but i think you get over that though i i think mac i think uh, i think max issues are driven by the fact that he's playing for his next contract and he feels like he's been handicapped and i and i don't i you know you know me Number one honk when it comes to Mac Jones, but I I can't blame him for that. I I, I think a lot of the frustration you see, I, I won't use the the uh, boomer D word. A lot of the frustration you see is that he knows he's uh, this is his second season and he's playing for his future, and he doesn't think that they put him in a position to be successful. But look and, at the great quarterbacks in NFL history. Almost all the number one picks go to bad teams. That suck. So you have Drew Bledsoe three and thirteen. You have Peyton Manning three and thirteen. You have Andrew Luck joining an awful Colts team after Peyton was hurt. You have all of these guys that entered. Justin Fields is in an awful situation. Trevor Lawrence is in an awful situation. We don't give them all these excuses, and they don't act like that. I think that's the character issue. I'm not saying it can't be over, over, you know, worked out, but that's certainly something that players have gotten through worse. I have en- I've enraged some who are on the Subaru of New England text line by suggesting. That this would that, that making the playoffs when it comes to this football team would be an incredible accomplishment by Bill Belichick. I I, I don't know why it's so bothersome. Because he did it last year. I yes, and that was a great accomplishment as well. We all agreed, but that I don't was, think in Max's second year that that's all that you can do. And I also think we could say yes if they get a win on Sunday, that would be shocking, unbelievable. You're totally right, Curtis. That that would you know cement 
Belichick's uh, job even more so. But they could have won a million other games throughout the season and not be in the position that they're in right now. Yeah, and to Bill, have to win this one. Yeah, and Bill Belichick doesn't deserve credit for overcoming a staff he created. This is Bob in the car. Hello, Bob. Hi, good morning, Greg. Hey. Um, you can't talk about uh, Belichick without talking about Kraft. I think he's not been a good um, businessman in the last three years, number one. Number two, who let the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL go? Number three, who constituted the coaching staff? And number four, who is the general manager and who put together this team? He wanted to be both. He has failed in at least one. Maybe he's coached better than we thought. But, okay, uh, but, but a let's lot say, of the blame so, has So, to- again, you got to separate the man when it comes to the GM and the coach. And so what Rex Ryan well, you don't. Is, he, want, he wanted to do that. All of that, listen, he all of that happened, and he still has got this team in a position to be a playoff team. That's incredible but it was coaching. all unavoidable. It I'm was sorry. all unavoidable. Yeah, I mean, listen, you and I are going to disagree on that. I I mean, you want to remove him as the GM? Fine. I think the guy, I mean, I think you can argue he's had some really good drafts the last several years. He has. Yeah. The drafting's been much better. I think Casario may have been a problem all along. But if you today fired Shime and myself and brought in, you know, Pudge to produce the show, uh-huh. you can't say, well, look what I've overcome. I have a dog pressing, yeah. pressing the button. Well, first of all, it would be Jackson, not Pudge, and the guy would kill it. That's so, true. That's true. <laughs> Sorry. Bad, bad analogy. Where did Jackson go, by the way? I think He's he went home. back in the production studio <laughs> doing some work. <laughs> you scared him off. He bounces beginning. back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it is... Uh, it's going to be a fa- everything with this team to me is fascinating, but the off season when it begins is going to be fascinating. But you have a point, Greg. If they win on Sunday, then there's the all pro quarterback they beat. Their their hemorrhaging against the Bills is concluded, and they are a playoff team. Given all of the craziness this year, it would be hard to say it was another bad year. I cannot believe, Shime, that the line on that game Sunday is only seven points. No, I think that's about right. I think that makes sense. Really? With it's the Bill Belichick effect. With everything yeah. that the Bills are playing for. What, oh, I mean, what are you going to do? Make Bill Belichick a 10-point underdog? Do you, like The amount of money that would be get, bet on Bill Belichick as a 10-point underdog would be absurd. And they want to balance it out. So seven points is about right. But that means that they be oh, the Patriots would be a one-point underdog at home to the Bills. Right? If we're using the math that it's mm-hmm. three points for... Yeah. So it would be a four-point sure. yeah. plus on the neutral yeah. field, one-point underdog at home. That seems laughably low. It does. I'm, I, if I could I, bet right here, I'd bet everything I have on the Bills. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think given everything, not even I, Vegas must take into account emotion, right, at some point. Yeah, I, I would assume it's uh, it's emotion, it's momentum. It's a tidal it's, wave. Yes, yes. Charge forward. Charge forward, yep. right. as Josh Allen said yesterday. All right, it's a Patriots Friday, and here is Courtney with what is trending this morning. <laughs> Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Well, the good news came for the Bills and DeMar Hamlin yesterday. Doctor said he is awake and able to communicate through writing. He is still on a ventilator due to some damage to his lungs, but he appears to be neurologically intact. And I guess every game that will be going on this weekend, will they will honor him before yeah. the start of it. I've seen some teams putting his number on their jerseys. Um, a lot of... A lot of interesting ways to honor DeMar Hamlin and if he is awake and able to at least communicate through writing that means he is able to watch these games and to see the outpouring of love and support that he is getting across the league it's incredible and a lot of that credit goes to their trainer Denny Kellington who saved his life I mean they are that's the way they put it is that that trainer saved his life on that football field Monday night. I will never be able to understand, A, the aptitude and intelligence required to be someone that can save someone's life, but also the the cool nerves in the middle of an NFL field, in the middle of the biggest Monday night game of the year with millions of people watching to react instantly and have that decision-making and critical thinking to save a guy's life where seconds can change the future of his life is just remarkable to me. Not even in football. I've seen a million people posting, you know, learn CPR today. There are, there are a lot of people that are taking this into their day-to-day life to wanting to make sure that they are prepared if anything were like this to happen, you know, off of a football field, out Ob- of a sporting obscure event. Obscure office reference. I was <laughs> staying alive. Stress relief <laughs> the, where Stanley has a heart attack and they, they totally 
bungle it. They then had the whole office learn CPR with a dummy that had no arms or legs. Mm-hmm. Kevin asked, should we really even resuscitate someone with no arms or legs? Oh, God. And Michael said, Kevin, that's basically how you live every day. So <laughs> carry on. So the Bills and Pats will face off at 1 p.m. in Buffalo. And if you missed Devin McCourty this morning, Greg asked him about this season and if it's been more difficult than ones in the past. Here's what he had to say. Um, just football wise, yeah, I think so. I think when we've gone, we've gone thirteen and three. That, that didn't feel as a hard of a season as now. But I would say every season has its difficulties, um, no matter what it is. But this has definitely been, you know, one of the tougher seasons that I've had uh, in my time in the NFL. Wow! Wow! That was shocking. I thought for sure he was going to say, no, you know, every season has its difficulties and leave it at that. The fact that he said that was, wow. Wow. And if you want to hear the rest of his interview, you can always get that on the Odyssey app. And a reminder to tune in to WEI Football Sunday at 10 a.m. before the game with Gresh and Keith. Quickly, we speculated on what would happen, if anything, if Kansas City loses on Saturday. Curtis found a great little uh, chart to talk about that. If Kansas City were to lose and New England were, were to win, then you'd have to look at the Baltimore and Cincinnati game. If Baltimore wins, then Kansas City would be the one seed. The number two seed would be Buffalo. So that would mean New England would play back, Buffalo back-to-back back 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 times. Yep. If Cincinnati were to win in that game, then they would play Cincinnati. So right. uh, those games both kicking off at 1 p.m. So it'll be interesting to be bouncing back and forth if things are looking good for New England. As for that bills Bengals game that the NFL postponed, uh, it has now been canceled. They're planning a vote today to implement two major modifications for the AFC playoffs. The first would be about a neutral site, and the other proposal on the table would be that the NFL will flip a coin to see who hosts a Ravens-Bengals wildcard game if the Ravens beat the Bengals on Sunday and if the two teams are scheduled to play each other in a wildcard round. The Celtics bounced back big last night, 124 to 95 over the Mavericks. Jason Tatum had a triple double, 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 10 assists. The Bruins also with a big win on the West Coast, 5 to 2. Two goals from Trent Frederick, two from Pasta, one from Marshy. Jeremy Swayman had 27 saves in that one. That's what's trending. Here is Curtis with your weather. Thank you, Courtney. It is drizzling in Boston right now, 33 degrees, but the snow has started in Holden. One of my weather spotters has sent me a little bit of a dusting out there. So oh, I would... you should have people send in their snow pictures this mm. winter. Yeah. So send them right to at the Greg Hill Show on w, on uh, Instagram, at the Greg Hill Show on Instagram, or at the Greg Hill Show on Twitter. I need to hashtag Curtis Snow Spotter. Uh, I love when they do that on Channel 7. They, sh- <laughs> they show how much snow is on the back porch. I've never understood why you watch it TV to see what the weather is out your window. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Curtis. We you will be it. right back. The Rich Keefe Show. I got some intel, which I stand by. The Bruins and David Posternock are finalizing.
Should, you know, Shime or I go down at some point oh, on this yeah. program. I do want to learn. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I go to do that, but. I feel, I feel like the. TikTok. Uh, they have classes. Um, the they YMCA, offer. I yeah. believe. Oh. I learned in high school. Oh, my, my, my dad. Glenn Quincy. Mm. Mm. Um, would you be, I feel like the angst. Ron, someone yells. <laughs> da does, Santa does. The nurse. Oh, he is? Yeah. Shut he works at Mass General. He's been a nurse for like 30 years. Wow. We should do that. Mm. <laughs> um, a few days before he died. Really? Yes. You know what his name was? Heimlich. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know the first. I mean, would you be? It would be a lot of anxiety yeah. involved. Well, like either way. Have but you no. ever seen? Have you ever seen like? A, it's, it's, yes, uh, I've seen a, in a, a body at a wake. I have not. Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, after the Bruins won the Stanley Cup in Vancouver, and all the rioting was going on the street? <gasps> Holy cow! It was it was very disturbing. It was very very disturbing. It, yeah, something you would never ever sir or be able to be around dead bodies, so I could never do it as a profession. And I and to be an investigator looks like the members of the Greater Boston Firefighter. Uh, the, they're saying that we could get Eddie Andelman in to teach you how to host a sports radio show. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, well, uh, and, um, I saw a, dead... a child and an infant are all very different. Which enough I'm pressure. We are. We learned that on the. The ball had up. Going back to Patriots talk, but I was just wanted to help you out, Greg. But you're playing like we've seen the last in a fumble. Like, that's not debatable. Not saying they should. Team, okay, you got quarterbacks. You can. Were, we wouldn't be having this conversation about whether Bill Belichick needs to go or not. They, if they had, they need a new OC. There's anybody. They couldn't make Buffalo House right now. Bills, how, where you have a punt return for a touchdown as time expires. They are, they've had games they've won that they maybe should have lost, and they've definitely had games they lost they should have won. Yeah. They, they're, they are what mediocre you, teams do. I know it pains you to give Bill any credit, but no, I'm you just can telling give, you. I legitimately this, just did that in the last segment. This this is 
uh, his coaching accomplishment this season, should he be able to somehow will this team to a win? Or most accomplished building where we all have to tape our eyeballs. To say that they should be 10-6 and six is laughable. Mm-hmm. Here's Nate in the truck. Hey, Nate. Hey, how you guys doing? What's up? Hey, nothing much. Hey, it's very self-rewarding when you're able to, to kick in action and actually save somebody. Uh, and I had a uh, suicide. You just keep going and going and going, and, and, and people are like, oh, I'll jump in, I'll jump in. You know, you're surrounded by other um, firefighters and police officers, and you try and you try and you try, and some things you don't have control over. But that training, though, um, the best thing – anyone could have because yeah. when you have to kick in that moment you're able to do it you know what i mean and, and it's uh i think we all should have some kind of training like that to be able to that moment to to, to kick it in but anyway oh, that's no. not my i mean my Courtney, main call so, listen um, courtney courtney's been saying that all week and and i think i think she she's been making a great point so yeah uh but you were you were calling about bill yeah i'm calling i'm calling about bill sorry about that guys uh, i just had to, to speak up about that no thanks for helping um, people too no, yeah, no, I, I love my job. I'll be honest with you, Courtney. It's it's the best self-rewarding that money can never give you um, because you can't put a monetary value. But when they're in that, that moment of help and they need it, that you're able to give it to them. You know what I mean? But anyway, um, about Bill. Um, I think with Bill, honestly, I think he's um, he's honestly. We lost you. Oh. Um, he creates coordinators. Um, I think. We're kind of losing yeah. it. But listen, I, I'm just – go back to what I said earlier. Does Got it. But he has overcome it. The- That's one thing. You put your that, – that, that. Good morning, everyone, those people, uh, what they do. So God bless them. Yep. Sunday is example A of why I'll always stand – this game has nothing to do in their spreadsheets and all of that. Pops out and watch this game Sunday. No business in sport. And what they do is always have Belichick this on the field since 12 walked out the door. It's not an opinion. He was like uh, so Tomlin in, didn't... In, in training camp. They started off two and two. Football for the first eight weeks. That's why. Well, if they started two and six, Derek, that means they're six and two in their last eight. Right, right. They started two and six. Curtis, because that guy's an idiot, started that bum, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky, who nobody thought, and the only team were wouldn't let him fill the water buckets on my football team. He is a boob. God, I love you, Derek. He gets a little worked up. Gets very worked I, up. I don't understand. Yeah, they went two and six in the first eight games. They had the hardest schedule in football, and it's not even close. Like, they had the Eagles, the Bills, the Dolphins, the Bucks, the Jets, the, Pat- the Patriots, the Bengals, and the Browns. And the thing is, is that... I- I, I would want, if I ran the Patriots, I would not want people like Greg because I don't want people happy with this. Mm-hmm. I feel like you should be demanding more. The owner said win a playoff game. We'll be in contention for that. But so many of the issues were compounded by by just by it by saying if he is able to somehow win this game on Sunday. That's the key point because if they do that, you're right. It'll be the best win since Brady left. It'll be a winning season with Dumb and Dumber as the offensive coordinators, and it'll be surviving injuries to Mac in a total. But the thing is, is that the clunky Mac thing, as Courtney alluded to, was almost all the doing of Bill Belichick. When I asked Bill if Mac's healthy, is he the starter? And he didn't answer it. That began a month, which Mm -hmm. was great for us. But it started before that with the unnecessary arguing over uh, which form of treatment he was going to have exactly on the ankle. I mean, I... It's just it's self-inflicted a lot of times with Bill Belichick. And we uh, know our audience. We know the fan base. There is no way that people are going to walk away from this season if they somehow get a win on Sunday. Yes, Monday people will be very, very excited. If they get the doors blown off against either Buffalo or Cincinnati. That's a different scenario. It, I mean, I. But it, then it's a repeat of last year and people are going to be pissed and there has to be some serious changes to this team. Because running it back again, this team needs to get better. And, and you can't have Robert Kraft at the beginning of the season before any play started saying it needs to be an improvement on last season for me to be happy with it and have the same outcome. You can't. And well, so if they lose Sunday, are you going to say this is a failure on Monday? 
What, what do you define failure? I'm not going to say it's his best season ever. Are you going to say that this season was a step? I'm going to say that the that he made a ridiculous decision when it came to thinking that Matt Patricia could serve as the offensive coordinator without the title, and that there are questions about Mac Jones and I, that he needs to go out and get himself a weapon or two, a legit weapon for Mac Jones. If he's going to, if Mac Jones is going to remain the quarterback of this football team, then Bill needs to put the pieces around him. And that means a legitimate offensive coordinator, whether it's Bill O'Brien or whomever it is and see, and, and see what next year is. I mean, I don't expect a guy his second year in the NFL to lead you to a Super Bowl. But it's I, a that step was back. Not, it, it is a step back, but it's, but it's, a, but it's not, I don't, I don't put it all on Mac. I don't think Mac has regressed. I think everything around him has regressed. Yeah, that's how I feel on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you speaking of uh, specifically? Just Ken. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think yeah. I don't put it all on Mac. I get what you're saying because I think he was kind of set up for failure this season. But there's been some regression with with his play as well. I just don't. When it comes to the naysayers, I just don't put a lot of stake in what they're saying. <laughs> you can tell that he has. He has taken uh, stake yeah. in everything. Yeah. You're a bully. All right. We will- <laughs> you and Shime, the bullies. <laughs> we, before uh, I stand I, against the bullies. Uh, yeah. we, we take a break. But before we do, I just want to remind you that uh, there are many ways in which you can listen to this radio station. If you can't listen on the radio, you can stream it at WEEI.com. You can also download the Odyssey app. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y and listen to us from anywhere. It's a new year, and Patriot Place has everything you need to stick to your resolutions. Work up a sweat.
on the stage is only one sure way to bring the giant down. Deep the strange amateur things with a one fat foot on the devil's way. Oh, I love working with Courtney. I, I wish there were a hot mic because she just said, what is this song? I didn't say it like that. I what said, is this, is, this song makes me feel something I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> Please what is turn that? it off. <laughs> Torture. Rob, how dare you? That's Rob Zombie. Yeah, well, That's Haverhill's Rob Zombie. Oh, well. Does Rob 49 know Rob Zombie? <laughs> I, I don't know, Curtis. I, I do not yeah, know. Yeah, that type of music, not for me. <laughs> and I know the Patriots fans are triggered because... The Twitch chat, which I thought mentioning Brady was like saying Voldemort. Mm. There's all this Brady talk in there right now. I know. Because they want to say Brady's not good. Well, they want to know why when you're talking about the opponents that the Patriots have beaten being 500 football clubs, you're not uh, referring to the same when it comes to your idol, Tom Brady. I wish you would listen. It'd be very helpful to a radio (laughs) show. I think I have said the Bucs deserve to be 6-10. and They have won games they had no business winning. If the Saints... Don't run out of bounds. If Cooper Cup doesn't just fall down inbounds before the first down, yeah. the Bucks don't win. But guess what happens when you have a quarterback that can come back? You win those games. When you're the Patriots and you have Mac Jones, who is totally unable or unwilling or both to come back in games, you don't win. So you rely on your defense to score touchdowns. A couple text messages of interest on the Subaru of New England text line, which is 37937. Find your authorized Subaru retailer at SubaruofNewEngland.com. Uh, 617 text, the whole discussion is moot because any hope of a Patriots win is delusional. Thank you. (laughs) I don't know if that's delusional or not. I mean, but... uh, Uh, I think chances are slim. Well, the line is only seven points then. Explain that to me. Well, my explanation to you would be it's because they think that Buffalo might get up so big that they start resting players in the second half and the Patriots can backdoor cover. Oh. So they have to make the line lower than 10 or 11 plus. (laughs) Jackson liked to Text for you, Shime. 978 texts. Uh, Texts are concerned with how you're holding up after a full week of work. (laughs) I've been here multiple full weeks, like in a row. So <laughs> you have okay. sort of outside of the week of uh, Christmas into New Year's. But the ghost, <laughs> so the last two weeks. The ghost no, of Ned one. Martin on yeah. Twitch says that Tom Brady. He looks like he's an escapee from a wax museum. <laughs> no one will ever know what I look like because I'm the ghost of Ned Martin, and I am much happier than Tom. <laughs> Uh, what do people do on the weekends when they don't have the Twitch chat to oh, just bitch the, about everything? It, they have it on the weekends. But not about us. No, nope, we don't have it on the weekends. They just amazing. Uh, I sit in my living room and I kick myself in the nuts. Uh, this is Peter from Cranston, Rhode Island. Hello, Peter. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Hill Dog. Listen, my name is Doric, okay? Not like Derek, the other guy. I may sound like an angry white guy, but I'm just... Just a white guy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. Listen, Thank you, Courtney. Yes. Courtney, listen, I got to say, I appreciate that you are a smart, well-spoken, independent woman, and that's probably very triggering for some of our audience members. <laughs> now, I've got my laptop sitting here warming my nuts. I'm ready for Sunday's game. I have 100% confidence that anything is possible. Mm. Who the hell knows, right? I- Am I tell- Hold on. Hey, uh, this is uh, Peter Griffin. I uh, just happened to shut my buddy up. He's such a jerk, isn't he? What a dink. That, guy, that, guy does that seems like the split personality uh, guy. Guys, wait, was that Fitz? From that the... an amateur voice impersonator. I liked Who it. Who knew? I was listening it. in Rhode Island. Yeah. We were at an event. I don't remember which one. And a guy came up to me with a CD. And he's like, you need to listen to this. Mind you, I haven't seen a CD in, what, 10 years? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I would be the best addition to your show. I do every kind of voice you ever ever heard of. <laughs> and he just kept contacting me over and over again. And I was like, I don't have a CD player. I can't <laughs> play it. I have no idea what, whether you're great or not. Make an MP3. We'll was talk. the guy any good? Yeah. I could, I've never heard his voice. If he's yeah. listening, call yeah. in right now. Yeah. Uh, this is Mike from Framingham. Hello, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Uh, earlier, you guys were talking about uh, playing the AFC NFC games at a neutral site. It would just if you go on it, YouTube. It would just be that, the AFC Championship game, but go ahead, yeah. Okay, or, or either way, if you go on YouTube and you put in AFC NFC Championship uh, neutral site, they explained why. The, the biggest thing, because it was back in the 80s that they actually proposed it, one of the fans, 
because who's going to go to an AFC championship game and then if the team wins the Super Bowl, you know, have the money and the time to go to a Super Bowl also? Ah, um, I don't know. So, again, all 32 NFL teams will meet today virtually, I'm assuming, and determine what the compromise is when it comes to playoff seating. And it looks like the most popular is – that if the one and the two seed end up meeting in the AFC championship, that game will be played at a neutral site. Curtis was suggesting when we talked about this during the seven o'clock hour that they ought to do that every single season. But that's a good point. Yeah. When fans, but I mean, w- w- I, I, how many fans legitimately get to see their team play in a Super Bowl anyway? <laughs> it's I not. Think, it's not. not many. It's. I mean, it's 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 a reasonable amount. But by the time you go through uh, NFL-related tickets, be it players and families and sponsors galore and uh, those who are just, you know, gamblers who are spending money on big money with secondary ticket brokers and such, I don't know how many fans, legit fans, actually end up getting to go to a Super Bowl. And the fans that go are usually, you know, the top fans, like the ones that are in the Putnam Club and have I wouldn't say top fans. I would say wealthiest fans. Sorry, I was trying to go against that that narrative, but that's what I meant. And the ones that, you know, fly on a Patriots flight down to wherever it is or out to wherever it is. I think that if you are going to an AFC championship game, regardless if it's a home game, it's still a pricey ticket. So uh, they're going to spend money. They're going to spend money. Yeah. I mean, this isn't going to impact the Patriots. I, I just, it is, the NFL is nothing if not um, a capitalist organization. And this is an opportunity because of unforeseen circumstances to do a test run Mm -hmm. on what this would look like if it works. If it doesn't work, it's no big deal. Next year you go back to the way it's always been. But this has the potential. Uh, You don't think the NFL would like to sell a final four? You don't think the NFL can look at the NCAA and watch how those fans travel right? week after week? This is Hatley. Hello, Hatley. Hadley with a D. Oh, Hadley. What's up, Hadley? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really enjoy your show. Good job, y'all. Thank you. All right. So so one of the things that I have to um, take up with y'all is this matter of uh, Mac Jones' regression because you don't talk about his season in context much. The guy has thrown nine touchdowns and had one interception since October 30th. Look it up. Uh, And that's in the context of an offense where tight ends are running into each other on the field, literally. Okay? Um, An offensive line that really can't protect him regularly. He's not making bonehead mistakes uh, because of the situation that he's in. And I think that's something that fans tend to overlook. So because he hasn't matched his totals of last year, as a result of a really bad situation and missing four games, he doesn't have 22 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. But in context, yeah, he's playing well, and he's proven that he's an NFL quarterback. Now, um, has he proven that he can uh, bring the team back in a late-game situation like Tom Brady used to do back in the day? No, he hasn't proven that just yet. Uh, But for the moment – I'm fine with going forward with him as the team's starting quarterback because of his decision making. Yeah. I so in 10 people, games, he has nine touchdowns? That's a, that sounds really good. A lot of people spend too much time analyzing his actions on the bench or on the sideline and whether they're douchey or not. Yeah. That's what the Mac haters do. You're like a ball Shime guy. And Curtis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Time and your out. guy Boomer. I, and Boomer. That's interesting. <laughs> and Wiggy. I do not resort to the uh, douchey attack. I resort to he's just not that good. All right. Uh, it is a Patriots Friday. Jalen Mills coming up sometime with Gresh and Foyer or Foyer and Gresh. That program begins at 10. 937. I love EEI, man. 937 WEEI. <laughs>
Boston, always live on the free Odyssey app. Patriots Friday is brought to you by 110 Grill by Arbella Insurance. Arbella, here for New England, here for good. By Catches Law Group, New England's personal injury pros at catcheslaw.com. By Time Out Market, Boston's best eating and drinking destination in Fenway, all under one roof. By Twisted Tea, keep it twisted, New England. And by FindMassMoney.com, it's fast, easy, and free. This hour of the Greg Hill Show is brought to you by Shaw's, the official supermarket of the WEI Red Sox Network. Get Boston Sports Original on the go wherever you go. Just download the Odyssey app. Now, back to the Greg Hill Show on WEEI. Mario talking to us as a team and the things that he kind of told us and really didn't tell us, he demanded us. You know, and you, you can't not honor his, his request to go out there and charge forward. You know, to the best of our abilities, and obviously we'll be playing with, I guess, less heavy hearts now, um, knowing that you know today's news was a lot of a lot of tears of joy. I'll tell you that. But to know that that's that's what he wants, that's what his dad wants. I think guys are uh, excited to get out there. Josh Allen yesterday, and the starting tight end on this show is unable to play today. So next man up, it's Foye who just stopped by. Yeah, so. man, I, 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 you know, I feel, you know, I feel like you know Wiggy's presence has been missing, and what I don't even know what happened, but I think somebody must have. Uh, his, uh, I think his his wife's mom. Passed, oh, okay. Passed yeah. away, so it's a so. serious situation. Yes, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, oh, serious. Cool. I'm good. I can. Uh, you know, I heard you guys needed a tight end. You yeah. needed a sub. Nobody, nobody, Are we going, we going nobody half, said that. You, we're going you, half personnel. Nobody said we're that. We're going you half went, personnel. You barged right in here. And That's not turned true. Turned around, flexed his true. buns you to gave, talk we, about tight ends. Yeah. <laughs> and his new yeah. Viore sweatpants. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah. you want some, you know, chicka bang bang, chicka boom boom, <laughs> whatever you guys want to call it, uh-huh. go get yourself some silky smooth Viore sweats. And really? I guarantee wow. you. Oh. Wait, you didn't feel them. This Hold should on, be a paid ad. I don't know if I want to feel your sweats. All right. Oh, nice to see Oh, those are nice. The yeah. most hilarious oh. thing was listening to you and Gresh yesterday talk about how you wanted a one shot of your camera because Gresh doesn't like oh. to be on Twitch. So yeah. you like to look at yourself. Well, right. n- first of all, of course I do. Uh, <laughs> second of all, I really like the traffic updates is what I like. Mm. I like when I, you know, if, you know, ending at six, I used to always be so hyper focused on, you know, what the traffic was like on the pike. So yeah. and that would determine where I would go, how I would go home. Yeah. I'd take a different route if I saw the pike all jammed up. And now at two, being done at two, it's kind of the same thing. You get screwed either way with traffic. Why, why doesn't Gresh like being on Twitch? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I think we may have to ask him. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't. Right. I don't know. Maybe right. he didn't shave that day. Yeah. I'm a big Twitch guy. I like the Twitch interaction because it feels like a real show. You guys are doing something on your show. I hear the. I'm obviously hearing it, and then I like the visual. Right. Mm-hmm. I like the payoff. Right. Same. Like, right. You know, that's me. Yeah. Like if I'm at home listening to the show, I'm on Twitch. Any chance? That the Patriots win this football no. game? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, I mean, you don't get into the weeds on it, but based on the fact that DeMar Hamlin is up, you know, he's, he's you know, they did the whole Zoom call. 
Like people were like guys uh, in the locker room when his dad did the Zoom call with the players, you know, in their like team meeting room, and they were cheering and crying at the same time. Like they were, it's like it was like okay for them to smile again. Yeah, it was okay for them to be happy again and to commit to playing football again. I don't think there's a chance in hell that they win this game. I, Not I, a chance. I asked I asked Wiggy this. I asked Razor this. I'll ask you because you actually played the ga- the game, the professional sports game. How big of a factor can emotion be when it comes to momentum? Huge. It can? Huge. I just huge. Really? Now listen, it could it could have a negative impact, right? Like you can sit up there, you know, I'm gonna you know run out there with your hair on fire and try to run through a brick wall. But then also you forget that you have you do have responsibilities mm-hmm. and you do need to be disciplined and you need to be mindful of like what your job is, not just you know running somebody over because they could they could go against you now. So um, there is a fear in that respect, but under these circumstances, based on how good this team already is, based on how much they, they this team owns you. The Buffalo Bills own the Patriots. It's not even close. Well, even that last game, they were up like seven to six in like the first quarter or something like that. And then they said, okay, we're done. Like, we've had enough of this. Let's like stop toying with them. Well, you guys had momentum. You were on those two teams, 04 opener, 05 opener, where you raised the banner. 04, you had Elton John pregame, which yeah. must have got you guys going. You beat oh, the- absolutely. Tiny dancer. That was the Vanderjack miss kick. And then 05, I don't know who you opened against, but were those different because you had no, the banner and everything? No, or not really? those, that's a, more of a pain in the ass than anything because. I remember they they uh, they said, "Hey, we're not going to get into this whole thing. You know, we're not going to be part of it." But we had to run out. So one year we actually we ran out through the banner, and you know that the at halftime they go through like the little side, yeah. you know, like so we ran everybody. Okay, let's go through the tunnel. Went through the balloons, ran under the middle of the field, and took a hard left and went straight back into the locker room. <laughs> like that is like it was like a quick parade, right? Okay, waved to everybody. We went back into the locker room. And then we were introduced a second time. Huh. I think that was like oh three. I'm not really sure what it I was. I mean, is it possible that Matt Patricia has some extraordinary game plan that he's been saving nope. just for no? Nope. Just for you think he's got <laughs> like this, for, this magic? For, it's like okay, now it's the time to ever, unleash it. I've been I've been working on it for a whole year. Now you guys release the hounds. Yeah, but but Greg, Greg didn't even need to finish his question to you, and you already had your exactly answer. Was but ask. when you talk about players, you hear Bill say that we're doing the best that we can, and he feels like that's the case across the board. Are players feeling that way? Like, oh shoot, when we uh, go into this place, there's no chance. Just to be honest, like the, the Patriots really aren't affect it like any other team there's a quick little like oh man it's so thankful to be alive and you know hug your children and thoughts and prayers and but they're re- i see them dancing around having a grand old time like they're they're obviously aware of it you know and i heard Devin mccordy on he's great by the way you're right and that was cringeworthy when you kind of roundabout asked him about that drop that's a whole nother thing i almost i almost called in i was like man I you got ha- some balls on i me. had to you out oh the, the text people are dying for me to do it Devin. Um, <laughs> i was like don't do it were you don't surprised do it. the way he answered the most difficult season question no he's here's the thing uh, when you have as much security and credibility as him and you're old you say whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Like, he's the best at it. Like, so he just says what he wants. He's honest. He's it's not being held against him. You know, I, I he's careful, though. He's like, you know, since you asked me the question, I'm going to talk for myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but he answers for everybody, really, because everybody's hoping that he says something like that. There's other guys on that team that just won't do it. They just won't. Like, there's so many older guys that I just, like, I just can't stand them. I just he, can't stand the fact that they done. just won't answer the questions. You think he's done? Yeah, I think, I think it's time. So. Yeah, I think it's time. Most guys play too long, and they just, you know. But that's what I was told. Warren Moon came to me like he was on the Seattle Seahawks for two years, and he was like 42 at the time, 41 or something like that. And, you know, and uh, he was still playing. He's like, listen, as soon as you are mentally and physically done with this game, as soon as you cannot take it anymore, as soon as you hate this game and you hate going to practice, as soon as you des- decide that you are done playing football, Get two more years. <laughs> like that was his advice, and that's exactly what happened yeah. with me. That's I got what two more says years. To me. Yeah. Curtis yeah. says that to me, Greg. You're mentally done, not physically. Yes, he says right. you look great. Physically, yeah, you do but, look, you know, yeah. better, <laughs> better. 
<laughs> he loves he Twitch. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. loves uh, it. All right. Well, I'm, it. I'm excited about the show today. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yes. We got a lot going on today. You Jalen Mills. Today? I'm not sure. It may okay. be Jalen Mills, but uh, Fourier playlist will be going on today. 14 oh. strongs, 14 songs that I will be bringing you in and out of breaks Whoa. with my p- personal oh. playlist. With your personal Selected playlist? Selected songs. Your genre oh. of choice. All over the place. Really? But you got to have a favorite. Right now, I'm really vibing on Miley Cyrus for some reason. Oh, wow. wow. Great choice. Uh, just, wow. I'm a, I'm a, it, was I'm Dol- it was her Dolly Parton uh, concert nah, at New Year's. She's just the right amount of crazy and hot. Ooh. You know, like if you kind of I merge like, those two. I, I will say I do like that Wrecking Ball song that she has. <laughs> I like Straight the up. video. Rejoin. Oh, oh, eight video. years we ago. Have never sounded more better. ancient. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> what, do you agree with her crazy and hot scale? Like if you kind of oh, too much crazy, woo, too much hot, eh, yeah. she's right in the middle. That's she's why, too old for Greg. Yeah, she, she's she is too, too old, old for Greg. Yeah, she, she aged too out. Old for me, probably. All right, that's it. I just saw. I literally just saw Emily Ratajkowski yesterday say that she can't find a decent guy. Well, What's you, the you thing in the NFL? Did you see the story? Yeah, she said that, f the NFL. I saw that. She did. She yeah. must be yeah. dating an NFL what football player. What did she player. say? She just said f the NFL, and it's this cryptic message. Yeah. Really? I think it was directed to Sosi, but I'm not sure. <laughs> she's um, dating a football player. But how can honestly? See, she's the right. She's too much hot. She's she she too a much hot, crazy, though. But and, you, and too much crazy. Yeah. I mean, Do you agree but, with Greg? He says the Veronica Rajic thing and Brady's total nonsense. I think there's a the, shot. The no. blonde, the Instagram blonde. Yeah. All she does is talk about how much she's obsessed with Brady. Brady is not going for some thirst monster. Nobody asks <laughs> if we're dating. Listen, there there is this little <laughs> gap one one. between. Uh, <laughs> there is a little no. gap. I'm not a thirst monster. No, you're not a thirst. No one monster. even knew when I dated athletes. Kept it under wraps. Wait. I Go was. back. Yeah. Uh, Start over. Yeah. Uh, uh, you see? did the athlete tour? Oh. Did you do that? Uh, all, every, all four major professional sports. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but see, people don't even know. Santo must be so self-assured. Oh, he's Just confident. like such he a high he's self-worth. A he's got to be like, he's got to well, make a lot of money. he turned me down the first time I wanted to go on a date with him because he said, all you want to do is date athletes. <laughs> And I said, and, and that, that year, is, actually, he was correct. That is amazing. <laughs> That's yeah. why you and Greg get along so yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like Santo even more now. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We can keep him. Yeah. Oh, All man. right. All right, that's it. We'll see we'll you at 10. We'll be tuned in at 10 yep, sir. for Foyer and Grash. That's what I call it. What's the official name of it? It's working it, title. Okay, what do we do? Working, <laughs> all right. Sports. All right, sports. Yeah, speaking of that, here's Courtney and what is trending. Your home of the Sox. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Well, the news of the week, DeMar Hamlin yesterday, doctor said he is awake and able to communicate through writing. He's still on a ventilator due to some damage to his lungs, but he appears to be neurologically intact. And players and coaches are talking about assistant athletic trainer Denny Kellington. He's being praised by head coach Sean McDermott for saving DeMar's life. To find out that it's the assistant uh, of the head trainer, yeah. one of the assistants, and for him to jump into action like Amazing. that, it's, I Amazing. mean, that guy needs, I don't, you can't retire a number. I don't know what you do when it's an assistant trainer, but. That is, as I said, that is so, I can't even fathom the ability to do something like that, let alone in front of the world. Yeah. Interesting thing that Christian just said there when it came to the Patriots playing against an emotionally fueled Bills team. And he said, you know, if you're the Patriots, your thoughts and prayers are there. But otherwise, you know, you're dancing, you're singing at practice. Nothing really changes for you. Well, it was interesting because Mac Jones talked about playing against a team who has the emotion uh, behind them, like the Bills. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, I think, like I said earlier, it's all about DeMar and his family and obviously you know, him being on their team, that's that's a lot of motivation and just to play for him. I mean, we're all playing for him, right? We all want to be out there and um, compete, and that's what he does when he's out there. I mean, he's all over, the, all over the tape. You see him making plays, and it's just tough to see, you know, that he's hurt so bad. But at the end of the day, we got to go out there and, and compete and um, really just honor him on both sides of the ball and obviously have a respect for the Bills and everything that they've been through this past week. It's, it's really tough, obviously. So it'll be interesting because he's basically saying we're all playing for him. It's not just the Bills. Obviously, they have a closer connection, but we're all playing for DeMar. They'll face off at 1 p.m. in Buffalo. Reminder to tune into the WEEI football Sunday at 10 a.m. before the game with Rush and Keefe. Quickly, we speculated on what would happen, if anything, if Kansas City loses on Saturday. There are different scenarios. It'll go to the uh, game with Cincinnati to see if they win or lose. That'll determine if New England were to win, if they play Cincinnati or if they play Buffalo uh, in that first in that first week. So I guess, yeah, if the yeah. games are going on at the same time. So if if they do play Buffalo, I guess you just stay out there. 
Yeah, they're going to, the Bills are going to, it's going to be a wild weekend, but we will have a clear understanding of what's going on around four o'clock on Sunday. And we will hammer the shine with high energy Nick Costos coming up in about 15 minutes or so at 9 30. I'll be interested to hear about his New Year's Eve plans because I bet a guy <laughs> with that high energy, he went all night long. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. The oh, Celtics yeah. bounced back in a big way last night. 124 to 95 was your final over the Mavericks. Jason Tatum had a triple double 29 points, 14 rebounds, and 10 assists. The Bruins also getting a win late last night on the West Coast. 5 to 2 your final. Two goals came from Trent Frederick, two from Pasta, and one from Marshy. Jeremy Swayman had 27 saves on the night. That's what's trending. Here is Curtis with your weather. Thank you, Courtney. It's 35 with rain in Boston, but the snow has started. Western Mass. I believe a weather spotter oh. has sent us in oh. some snow. Yeah, so if Darlene. you've never seen snow, oh. Ethan, Darlene? if you could put yep. up Darlene's photo here oh, momentarily. I, I didn't realize till earlier this morning that Chris Curtis, just like all of the weather smokes, has his own snow spotters. Yeah, well, I mean, don't trust me. Trust what the world is telling people out in the audience. Right there, snow. Yeah. Yep, Darlene, that is for in Templeton, Mass. That's Templeton. We're expecting another 2.43 inches the rest of today in Templeton. And Mrs. Bumpus in third grade gave me a great lesson. <laughs> big snow, little snow, little snow, big snow. Hmm. Meaning the bigger the flakes the less total accumulation, the smaller flakes actually will accumulate far more. Wow. Very interesting. Yep. Uh, By the way, Ms. Bumpus, the nickname given to Courtney's friend after the wedding. All right. Thank you. It all goes back to the wedding. We will be right back. (laughs) You are listening to a Patriots Friday edition of the Greg Hill Show.
you were bopping. To go from Hannah Montana to that is yeah. unbelievable. You have, to have, you have to have nuts to cover Blondie. Blondie is uh, a, uh, once in a generation talent. I, I don't. <laughs> um, it's okay, Shine, but I don't it's know. It's very good. In a million years, I never thought I would hear the phrase, you have to have nuts to cover Blondie on WEEI. <laughs> Curtis See? said, who is that? Aren't you delighted? You had no idea when you started working. You've opened up me. your world you to had, me. You, yeah. had no, you had no idea, Curtis. Um, we will hammer Le Shime with Nick Costos coming up momentarily. This is Ryan from my adopted home continent of Maine. Is it snowing there yet, Ryan? Oh, they're what out conditions. All right, excellent. What's up? Oh. Thanks for calling. And now you have to have nuts for lunch, right? Yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, sorry for that. Um, so I want to compliment Jackson. He is the um, the most polite call screener I've ever heard. It's he's awful. very, uh, he's very, very nice good. Guy. He's a very accomplished call screener. I will uh, I will say that about him. The guy is. Uh, he is spot on when it comes to screening calls. He's user friendly at it for a long time now. Yes, yes, Fourteen yeah. years or something. Fourteen like years of call screening. Yeah, okay. um, that's so, uh, that's so my- twice. By the way, that's twice as long as uh, Shime has been slaving away in the industry. He told you six years. Six he deserves long, hard years. Yes, six <laughs> long, hard years. It's been arduous. Yes. Uh, all right. What's up, Ryan? Um, so uh, I listening all morning. It was on Twitch. It was kind of, you guys are great. It's awesome to watch and then jump in the truck and drive and listen and blah, blah, blah. But um, listening to McCordy this morning, I, I got a few nuggets and I'd like to propose that we change the term nuggets to steaks in uh, support of you, Greg, and we'll call them steaks, not nuggets. Okay. All right. But um, I, uh, I think the, the point coming out of that is, is the focus of the Patriots going into this game and uh, the emotion, I think, will give the opportunity for the Patriots to have a chance. I think Bill uh, will maintain focus, and I think that will come across on the whole team. And I think that uh, McDermott might let it, you know, the emotions get the best of the Bills, and I think that's our chance to sort of swoop in and take this game. Okay. Well, I mean, that's uh, – Foyer was talking about how powerful the emotion is when it comes to momentum, but he did say that it can be a negative. essentially a negative. I don't – I, I don't right. see that happening in this case just because uh, after listening to the media availability yesterday, I think that this team is roaring hot, ready to go. Yeah, it's the, what Bill's going to have to do, is, which is what he's done almost all year, at least of late, withstand a tough first half, and then you're going to have to, in the second half, come back with some sort of a special teams defensive touchdown, mm-hmm. something like that. I don't know. It's not going to be easy, but stranger things have happened. Charge forward. Charge forward. Mm-hmm. What's the That's weather supposed to be like in Buffalo? Funny ass. It's going to be high of 36. Dew point's going to be around 28. So humidity's not going to be a problem up in Buffalo. Do you, have any of your, do you have any of your weather spotters in Buffalo? I do. Oh, I have okay. um, uh, two members of Bill's Mafia working undercover for okay. me to get right, the weather. Excellent. Okay, good. Right. A, a cool thing that players are now doing across the league. I, I just see Leonard Fournette just tweeted that they're auctioning off jerseys with proceeds going to DeMar's foundation now. I mean, that foundation has raised so much money. But yeah. uh, Leonard Fournette. Your chance right now, Curtis, a Brady jersey and a Fournette jersey that they're auctioning off today. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look at Ooh, that. Curtis. Yeah. People were asking, what has Brady done for DeMar Hamlin? I don't know. We gave $10,000 and he's sending an autographed jersey. What are you doing? <laughs> this is st- <laughs> this is Stephen from Connecticut. Hello, Stephen. Hey, guys. Love your show, guys. We'll see you guys every single morning. Thank you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I'm calling to piggyback off of Courtney and uh, 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 what are you guys are saying. Uh, the Bills, I'm a lifelong Patriots fan, but the Bills right now have the fire lit underneath them, and there's no way they are going to let their team, their teammate down while he's in the hospital. I worked with guys, I played sports my whole entire life, and when someone goes down, everybody tries that much harder to make that person who's in the hospital feel that much better and to get them out of here. Lifelong Patriots fan, but I don't think that we stand a chance against the Bills this weekend because they have that fire and they're playing for somebody, one of their teammates, one of their brothers versus the organiz- organizations in themselves. Now they're playing for somebody that they love and they respect as a teammate. And I don't think that we're going to stand a chance with them at all. Yeah. I have an idea for how to rally the troops. Work with me here. Bill Belichick takes Mac Jones aside and he says, you went on Sunday, you pick your offensive coordinator next year. 
Win just one to fire <laughs> Patricia. Mm. I mean, that... I pr- prove me that you're invested. Prove to me that you're all in. Let's get to the playoffs. Buy in this week. We get there. You get to pick Billy O, whoever you want to be your yeah. OC. Yeah. I also think when it comes to the Bills, and, and I hope that this can happen for them, uh, now that we know that they did the Zoom with uh, with DeMar's dad, you know that what they're probably doing, if DeMar is up for it, and if DeMar's asking, you know, did we win, whatever, there will be some type of video message, uh, him holding something up for the team during yeah. pregame that will come out that they did something with him. Yeah, it's going to be a close to impossible for this Patriots team, I think, to to beat the Bills. Yeah. Well, you it was going to be difficult anyway, and then you add this factor in it. Uh, you know, but that's why I said if somehow, some way, Bill can will them to a win. It's an extraordinary accomplishment. And you think about it this way. If they win, they will be in the playoffs, and they will likely play the Bills. And Again. what better rallying cry that you know you just beat them in the yeah. game that was the most difficult game yep. to foresee to win ever. You yeah. can do it again. All right. Time to hammer the shine with Nick Costos, the host of You Better You Bet and an Odyssey sports betting insider. Insider calls are presented by BetMGM. Go check out all the latest lines right now on the BetMGM app. And make sure you listen to the You Better You Bet podcast for more of the analysis of Nick. Nick is brought to you also by Kentucky Owl, the wise man, American straight bourbon whiskey. Happy New Year, Nick. What's going on, guys? Happy New Year to you. Great to be on with you. How, how was everything? How are the holidays? Holidays were awesome. I got absolutely no complaints. 2023 is going to be a great year. We got a, a great time on the sports calendar here. National championship game on Monday also, so raring to go. How did you and the Mrs. ring in the New Year, or the soon-to-be Mrs. ring in the New Year? Uh, well, you know, I, this is the unfortunate thing about like doing like what we do for a living, like all of us collect and maybe even like specifically me is that you know with especially this year with the holidays landing on weekends like I, I had to work on Sunday morning on New Year's oh Day boy. like 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 as a, a regular NFL Sunday so went boy. out to dinner watched the end of the Michigan TCU game kind of at dinner came home watched Ohio State Georgia simultaneously as the ball is dropping mm-hmm. to ring in the new year the Ohio State kicker is lining up to to Mike Vanderjat the kick and shank it and miss it by a hundred yards so conversation about like where do we change the channel to what are we gonna watch so we had nice little argument to ring in the new year based off that but uh but yeah basically had to work and you know the college football playoff is either going to be on new year's eve or new year's day moving forward so i i like can never go out on new year's eve for the rest of my life Uh, i'm also almost 40 and that's okay the little lady is not don't ignore the little lady don't become a workaholic and ignore what's going on on the home yeah keep the home fires burning nick let her watch andy and anderson gosh uh Uh, nick have you guys settled on a past hors d'oeuvre yet what you guys are going to do for the wedding uh we are we're doing we're we're doing like a untraditional wedding, like cocktail hour style wedding. So we're getting married, based not like getting married, or getting married at a church, oh. but we're doing it at at this restaurant in Bryant Park in Manhattan. And the food is going to be awesome, and they basically have carte blanche over like how this is it's all going to go. Ooh, wow! Uh, yeah, it wow. should be it should be it should be pretty blank awesome. Che- you're saying blank check? Oof. Uh, well, not from me, but yeah. <laughs> wow, you're uh, also almost forty. I've looked you up. You don't look uh, you don't look close to 39. forty at all. Yeah. Thank you, no. thank thank you very much. When I was like nineteen and would get the kids menu at restaurants, it really sucked. But it's uh it's pretty it's pretty pretty cool now. <laughs> yeah. That happens to Greg now for a different <laughs> <Sure>. reason. <laughs> And, uh, and Courtney, I would say one. that uh, that her show of choice right now, she's obsessed right now with the After movie series, which I had never heard of. Oh. So she watched all the movies, and now she's in the process of reading the books also. Mm, oh. Netflix. Oh, Very okay. good. All right. So listen, we were just talking about Sunday, uh, and I – Shime gave me an explanation. I want yours. Why is why is that line at seven only? It's a. I don't know. I disagree with it. Uh, I think it's a great question. Um, I I don't know why the Patriots would be getting bet in this game. Maybe people are like trying to get ahead of um, like Buffalo's heads, maybe not being in the game after what we saw happen on Monday Night Football. I can tell you that if this is like a normal game between the Bills and the Patriots, and the game's in Buffalo, and the Bills are going to have something to play for now. So let's say like the owners, like the the majority of the owners approve like the uh, what, what Roger Goodell proposed last night, right? And uh, and uh, the whole convoluted thing, which I don't have to kind of explain, but I'm sure you guys have already talked about this morning Buffalo is going to have to play to win the game to avoid being the three seed and having to go on the road to Cincinnati in the divisional rounds of the playoffs so no matter what Kansas City does on Saturday I think the Chiefs might actually are in danger of losing that game but whether Kansas City wins or not Buffalo has to win this game so this is going to be an important game for the Bills and that's bad news for the Patriots I think the one time recently that we have seen the Bills unable to move the ball on the Patriots defense was the win game last year that they played on Monday Night Football otherwise Josh Allen marches this offense up and down against the Patriots here 
I think the gap between these teams is significant. I make the Bills a 10-point favorite. Uh, I love Buffalo minus 7 here. If people want, I know no one's going to want to get bet against the Patriots in your neck of the woods, but you could tease Buffalo down when the number goes up. I just think like, it's like a dynamite bet. Uh, I love the Bills in this game on Sunday. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, for me, it feels like, too, that they're worried about the Bills dominating so much in the first half that they have to sit players, or they just decide to sit players in the second half, and they had to kind of bring the line down. But it's weird to me that, so I, from what I'm seeing, the majority of the money is on the Patriots right now. Can, can you explain that at all? Because that makes literally no sense to me. Yeah, I don't know. I guess like people are dumb. I don't really know like what else what else to say about it. Um, <laughs> and I would say down. like for the, for the thought that I, I, being honest, um, and that, that and look like I could be dumb. Like the Patriots could win oh. the game. I mean, you know who knows? But oh. you know, let's remember the Bills played the Dolphins a couple years ago in Week 17 at the time in Buffalo. The Dolphins needed to win to make the playoffs. The Bills had nothing to play for. The Bills beat them 56-26. I'm not saying that that is like a harbinger of things to come here for the Patriots. I don't know that the Bills are going to let up just because like, hey, like we are in. It's going to be an insane crowd on Sunday, even more insane than usual. Look, it's any given Sunday. The Patriots could win the game. Right. I just think it's very likely that the Bills roll. Uh, is there any line on the board, Nick, that you just absolutely love that you're salivating and ready to, or you've already placed a bunch of bets on this week? Sure, I think like a lot of these games have moved, and like, we can talk about it because I still think there's a, there's ways to play a bunch of these games here. Um, let's do. How about this Tampa Atlanta game? So this is a. I, I don't do this often. I think this is a great live betting game, and I'm going to explain to you guys why I think this is the case. So. On the Bucks have the four seed locked up, right? They won the NFC South. They can't improve their seed. They can't drop. Right. They're going to be the four seed, very likely to play the Cowboys on Wild Card Weekend. And if you want, we can talk about like what the spread of that game is going to be and like what to do. It's a Brady game. It's extremely interesting, right? So the thought was Tampa's not going to play any of their starters. They have nothing to gain from the game. So Bucks head coach Todd Bowles, who has that classic glazed over look in his face, he's brutal, <laughs> says on Monday, we're going to play the starters in the game. Tampa Bay immediately gets bet in the game. And I'm thinking, like, we're doing this live on the air on Monday on You Better You Bet while this is happening. And my co-host and I are like, "What? why are... Why would people be betting Tampa here? He's going to treat this like a preseason game. There's a 0% chance that Brady and the starters play the entire game. And then news starts to trickle out throughout the week. Well, actually, Blaine Gabbert's going to play the backup. And well, actually, the second the second year uh, rookie uh, quarterback, Kyle Trask, he's going to be active and he's probably going to play also. This is going to be a preseason game. So right now, Atlanta's a four-point favorite at home. Atlanta's going to play their starters the entire game. They're trying to instill a winning culture, get a win with the young quarterback, Desmond Ritter. So here's what's going to happen. Let's say Tampa gets the ball first, goes down the field and scores a touchdown. The live betting, like the number in the live betting market, is not set by a human being that is aware of all these things. It is based off a mathematical algorithm off the closing spread of the game. So mm. if you're watching this game or you're watching Red Zone and you see that Tom Brady's got the baseball hat on and Blaine Gabbert's got his helmet on and is ready to come into the game, that is when I'm going to bet on Atlanta live in the game. Because that's when you're going to get the Bucks backups for the rest of the game. And the point spread of the game moving forward is not going to reflect that. Because it's not a person that does it. So I would say watch out for that scenario coming up on Sunday with the Bucks and Falcons. If you want, we can go through some of the other games with playoff implications. I just think that's a really interesting one from a betting perspective. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so the other thing I would have for you, Nick, is right now you can kind of make you can approach a bet two different ways, right? If you think the Steelers make the playoffs, which I am kind of under the impression that they might sneak in, because it just makes sense in this really weird NFL season, like something this stupid would happen that the Steelers would get into the playoffs. So you can bet them to just make the playoffs straight up at like three and a half to one, or you could just parlay the teams that need to win in order for the Steelers to get into the playoffs. Uh, and that's a little bit better. You're getting it at plus 380 instead. Is that something you like to do? I, I love to like sprinkle money on a scenario like that where it's your multiple teams, you're rooting for it, there's playoff implications, certain things need to happen, and it's just weird enough that the Steelers might sneak in. Yeah, sure. Here's the issue with that. And like a couple days ago, I would have said like that's a bet that I'd be extremely interested in making. And basically that is like the Bills to beat the Patriots and the Jets to beat the Dolphins and the Steelers to beat the Browns. Correct. Right? And at the time, a couple days Days ago, Pittsburgh was favored, like like favored in the market, probability wise is going to win. The Bills are huge favorites against the Patriots, and the Jets and the Dolphins were literally a pick 'em, like a coin flip game. Well, news came down yesterday, and there is like there are whispers that Mike White is not going to play in this game for the Jets with his rib injury. He was downgraded yesterday in practice to limited. Um, so 
Maybe he practices today. Maybe he plays in the game. I'm just saying that, like, generally, where there's smoke, there's fire with the stuff. The Dolphins immediately got bet. This was a pick em, and now it's gone up, like, right to the edge of three. And once, like, we know that it's going to be either— And here's the other thing. We know Zach Wilson's not going to play. The Jets might just play Chris Streveler, the kid they activated off the practice squad. Like, what do you gain from playing Joe Flacco here? Like, nothing. You might as well see what you've got in Streveler. This might be a Streveler, Skyler Thompson game for the seventh seed in the AFC. I'm sure that's Roger Goodell's dream scenario. So I think the Dolphins— are going to keep getting bet. So I think that's kind of like the red herring here, the fly in the ointment, is that if it's going to be Chris Trevler, the Dolphins are very likely to win the game, and then Pittsburgh doesn't get in. All right, Wiggy's not here, but looking ahead to the national championship game on Monday mm-hmm. and his Georgia Bulldogs, where are you at on that game right yeah, now? Yeah, I think Georgia's going to smash them. Um, oh. t- yeah, I, not, you guys don't like that? Or? No, no, I just I thought you were going to give me some, some euphemism with horn frogs. I was all ready for it. <laughs> it's too early in the morning, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't know what I can and can't say because I've got something like loaded anything. here. No, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to say it. Yeah, um, nobody's here. <laughs> I, th- I think George is going to smash them in the game. Uh, think about what TCU needed from Michigan in order to win that game. Michigan, two pick sixes. Insane, like, I don't know if Jim Harbaugh like, took acid before the game with some of these play calls down in the revenues. <laughs> I mean, we're all watching the game, right? It was like actually like insane what they were doing here. And also, yeah, busted coverage after Michigan cut it to three, and then you got the 75-yard touchdown. TCU was able to move the ball on the Michigan defense. Like, the Georgia defense ain't that. And I know that Ohio State played off. Ohio State should have won the game. C.J. Stroud looked incredible. Uh, he's going to be a top three pick in the draft. Like, I don't base entirely off that, but that's what's going to happen now. He was incredible in that game. The TCU offense is good. It's not that. Like, Marvin Harrison Jr. is like baby Randy Moss. TCU doesn't have that. They just don't. And the one thing that I think we can feel really confident in in this game, what's the best unit on the field? I just wanted to say that. Uh, Georgia's offense. Oh. Georgia's going to score on this game. There's absolutely no question about it. So for the people out there, this is the question you have to ask yourself if you want to bet this game. Can TCU score enough to cover the spread here? I say no. I laid it with the Georgia Bulldogs. Numbers 12 and a half. I like that. All right, Nick. All right, Nick. Great job. Before you go, if there were anything that you would wish for us, what would that be? Like for you guys? (laughs) I don't know. Health, health, happiness, and success. No, I'm trying to get. He's setting you up. Come on. Come on. Trying to get you well, 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 he, well. Here's the problem with right. that. It's like we just had the new year, though. So if this is like any other week, I would be like, okay, I get the cue. But that could be like, hey, it's the new year. What are you wishing for us? Am I'm I right? Trying, Fair I'm point. Reasonable you... doubt. Yes yep. or no? I'm Fair trying point. to get you into your your uh, award winning slogan. Is it award winning? Yes. yes. Right. It sure yes. is. Yeah, I'm wishing everybody minimal sweats, winning bets, the absolute very best of luck. And wish me luck, guys. Uh, my uh, my second of three tattoo appointments here coming up on Tuesday for my new one. Tramp oh. stamp? Are you going tramp stamp? No, I am not. Although, oh. although that may be like the next step in my midlife crisis. You strike me as like an interior, inner bicep type of guy. Well, no, I have my um, I have a left half sleeve, and I'm doing finishing my right one right now. Wow. All oh, right. Nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All, so right. I was All right, Nick. Good right. luck. We'll talk to you next mid, week. Mid, and, then, and then I'll go to the Porsche dealership right afterwards to continue the midlife <laughs> crisis. Uh, <laughs> did I do the slogan already? Minimal sweats, winning bets, yes. the absolute very yes. best. Crushed yes, it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, yes. Nick. Good luck. Crushed it. All right. That is Nick Costos. I love it. You I, better you bet. I love him more and more every week. You I do? really didn't like him the first time he came on. The yeah. more he comes on, I'm uh, like, this like guy is fungus. great. Curtis hates him. I love him. I, 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 I love the <laughs> he guy. He hates Curtis. <laughs> yeah, he hates me. I have that effect on people. <laughs> All right. He's an Odyssey Sports Betting Insider. Insider calls are presented by BetMGM. Check out all the latest lines right now on the BetMGM app. This is Ty Law, Pro Football Hall of Famer. 110 Grill is the perfect place for a get-together with friends.
man, is that it? Four hours? Huh. What happened? What happened to the time? I know. Flew I mean, by. Uh, it flew by this morning. <laughs> I also, apologies if I was a little low energy today. I have had been having stomach issues all night, oh, all morning. Too oh. much information. No, 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 not like that. Just like I don't feel well. What? I had a dinner last night. I think that I ate something that was really? not good. Oh, where'd you go? Taco well, Bell? No, nope, not <laughs> saying the name. <laughs> oh. You can feel free to expose them. No. I, mean, I, I don't, don't even have any juice there, so I should, but. Uh, nah. uh, oh, oh, that's unfortunate. They're, right. they're well, too powerful. That's maybe in the post show podcast. Yeah, Jackson, I'll sit down I with mean, you anytime. Come on in. Yes. I'm invited. <laughs> I, I have a fun stat if you're ready for it. Yes. It's Brady related. Okay. If Brady wins against the Cowboys a week from s- Sunday, he will have three home playoff wins the, the win last year against the Eagles, the Super Bowl win, and that. The Patriots. In the 41 years prior to Tom Brady taking over for Drew Bledsoe, had three home wins three in the home playoffs. Wins. <laughs> Think of that absolute uh, banana land. Uh, and they won't have another home one for a while. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is Cody. Hey, Cody, what's up? Hey, not much, man. How you guys doing? Doing good. Where are you calling from, Cody? I'm from Orange, Massachusetts. Orange. Where, how's the snow? That's way out there. Yeah, it's uh, it's going down pretty good. I'm luckily, luckily the roads are actually halfway decent. All right, excellent. So. I have a weather spotter who just sent me eighth, and whenever you're ready on Instagram, Patrick Gaffney sent me a, a big image of some snow in New Hampshire. So wow, you have a lot of weather spotters. Yeah, Is well, it some kind of a club yeah, or something. Out, in, out here in Western Mass, it's it's definitely it's coming down pretty good, but it looks like it's letting up. Yeah. All right, what's up? Oh, not much, man. I want to talk about the Bills and Patriots game real quick. And by the way, this is my first time. It's, it's truly an honor to talk to you guys. You guys are awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, what do you guys think about the uh, Patriots going up to Buffalo? Do you think they have a good shot, or do you think Buffalo is going to, you know, tyrant them all over? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, know. Um, I, I don't know how much. I can't figure out because I didn't play the game how much of a factor the emotion is when it comes to physically uh, – uh, willing a, uh, a team to victory, so I I can't I can't figure that out. I don't know it. I don't, I don't think they had uh, much of a chance going into it before this happened. So I don't think they have much of a chance. And Sorry, it's only going to get harder because Sham Sharania just tweeted out a blessing. The breathing tube is out of Demar Hamlin as of this morning, awesome. and he has begun talking to Buffalo Bills teammates again. So that wow. is awesome. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. I mean, God. it's they, they're going to do something to honor that trainer right before yeah. the game yeah. that will bring the house down. Yeah, yeah. My, it'll be. I mean, could you imagine? I don't know anything about Denny Killington. Is the the yeah. trainer's yes. name Kellington? I think. Kellington. Yeah. So I don't know anything about him, but you're you know probably making not a ton of money. You're an assistant trainer for the Bills. You study, and like, and you have this moment now that you will will define the rest of your life out of nowhere. You save this guy's life. You give him an opportunity. Not only to like you know maybe play football, but to live a normal life cognitively the rest of his life. It's just unbelievable. And to be able to breathe on your own just days after that happens, when they say that that was a lot of the damage was to his lungs, is unbelievable. I don't think anybody expected that to happen so quickly. Do you think he? Do you think he plays again? Uh, I would say the. I would say, let's let's. I hope he does. I hope he's yeah. able to make it. Whether he plays or not, I hope he has that as an opportunity for him that he can would choose. you? No, you wouldn't. Well, I mean, if I were as good as Demar Hamlin, I don't know. I would def- depend upon my financial security in life. If I needed to play to, you know, if I'm making eight hundred thousand dollars a year and I can't do that elsewhere, I would I might. try to go into coaching. I think, but you I, would? yeah, I think that would be it for me. I, I bet he's. I, if he can physically, I bet he's back playing next yeah. season. Just such an incredible story. From where that was Monday, we're not even off the air on Friday, and he's got the breathing tube out, tube out, and he's breathing. That is so awesome. Yeah. Wow. All right, well, uh, it's a Patriots Friday all day long, Mm -hmm. so you'll be able to talk about it throughout the day, and we will be back on Monday, maybe with Bill Belichick, maybe not. I know. It'll be a big one on Sunday, though. Everybody will be tuning in. Have the Devin McCourty mentality. Greg, you'll talk to Bill on Monday. Yes. That's true. Manifest. And he may just call in anyway. I think he likes the show, even if they lose. (laughs) I don't. I mean, what would he be doing? Like, I you're just uh, sitting around the office bored. He's and he walking Nike. To call it, could to call Eating his in, breakfast. To call into the it usually radio. Usually sounds like cereal. Linda's sending him to yeah. Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Curtis. I don't feel like that is. Oh, well, Greg uh, gets his. We learned this today. I won't say the company. He gets groceries delivered. Oh yeah. Well, what's the big, well, his... Everybody gets. Gro- will you stop with this nonsense? Uh, everybody in the uh, world gets groceries delivered, and they what is have the to go deal? schlep them up the stairs or the. 
elevator from the front. Not you. Uh, do not mix <laughs> poultry and cheese, please. <laughs> oh, echelon people, just bring it up to your front door. What? Do you, do, do you pay them extra to stay and unpack? And I'm a great tipper. Put them away. <laughs> I say, wait, I don't get. I like, like literally. Greg like, has to tell when he lies. He looks down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He goes like I like literally. What is the, I don't get the like. It's a normal thing. Like people deliver not normal, something. not normal. What, what's not normal? Uh, usually, when you live in an apartment complex and something gets delivered, you got to go meet them outside. Right. They don't. And, and it's normal for people who have kids and work in normal hours, like <laughs> nine to five. You can go to who the grocery store Trader right Joe's now. Who don't have two over or Shaw's on your way home no, from work? It's not trade. I like Wegmans. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I, I mean, I like every. I like every single grocery store. You're like um, an so air one when I'm you go at, to L.A. I, I enjoy everybody. Uh, yes. Well, I love you, Greg. Thanks for the yeah. opportunity to come here today. I had a blast. All right. Wegmans is way too overwhelming for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> and they have a lot, a lot of variety. Jackson, you should. I'll tell you where you should go. Is Have you gone to the, uh, the star market that is below the garden? That place. It's and it's everything you want is right there at your fingertips. I'll take you over there later oh, on. All right, let's We're go. We'll buy you like a week's worth of groceries. We'll go right now. We'll go to Star Market under the TD Guards. You Excellent. Pay? Yeah. Huh? You paying for Jackson? Uh, yeah, I'll pay for Jackson. Oh, I'll take drive. him up on it. I'll, I'll, take him. I'll drive. You pay. Oof. All right. I'll be coming to you live from Jupiter tomorrow on the Ken and Curtis wow. Show. Wow. Jupiter. Oh my God. When'd you get a rocket ship? I'm sorry. Yesterday. <laughs> Going to Florida again? Oh, well, you know we're uh, we're we're heading down. Well, they're already there. I'm just joining them. So must be, a- be nice. Yep. Well, he wants to make sure he keeps nice. that tan all winter long. I know. I got to go out and walk the beach. All right, Gresham Foyer next. We'll be back on Monday. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching this show on Twitch. You can tell that he has he has taken uh, stake in everything. Gresham Foyer. Out of all the positions, can can I feel real comfortable telling you?
Boston, always live on the free Odyssey app. This hour, Aggression Fourier is brought to you by Eagle Bank. Patriots Friday is brought to you by Mass General Cancer Center. By Zudi. Build any app your company needs in a week. By Northeast Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. By Jaws, perfecting the art of fresh. And by Town Fair Tire. For the best prices on tires, nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Previously on Gresh and Fourier. Out of all the positions can, that I feel real comfortable telling you who should be in, it's strong safety. Okay. You see him all the time. Troy Palomalu was a freaking rocket ship. Steve Atwood, Atwater was big, strong, and you name it. John Lynch, out of all of them, was the least intimidating. And he's in the Hall of Fame. Rodney Harrison, no doubt about it, 100% should be in the Hall of Fame if you're going to include these other guys. This is Gresh and Fourier. The Celtics sweep the season series for the Dallas Mavericks. They extend their lead as the best team in the NBA going to 27-12. But more importantly, chicken soup for the Celtic fans' soul after Tuesday night in OKC. The very definition of a bounce-back performance. Andy Gresh. The Bruins' overall goal difference is plus 61 through 38 games. The 1-2 gap going into tonight was bigger than the gap between number two and number 16. That is a dominant team. Christian Fourier. If there is an AFC championship game in the end that involves teams that don't have the same amount of games played, where Monday night's non-result factors into who gets home field advantage, we're not going to have any home field advantage this year. We're going to play the conference championship game on a neutral side. Gresh and Fourier right now. All right. Let's go. On WEEI. All right, it is a Patriots Friday. Well, I just did a, for those watching on Twitch, I just did a slide right into the camera shot. I did the uh, the Chris Collinsworth as if it were Sunday night football. Well, we still have the uh, headphone jack issues. We're going to have to get to uh, worry about it. We're going to have to get boss man Laird on that. I want you to, uh, oh, here we go. Christian's checking all sides of himself to make sure that he's okay. (laughs) I had to do my hair before the show, so it was up for TV, so I was ready to go at 2.30 and all that. We're looking beautiful today, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) And if you're listening to us anywhere across New England on Boston and New England Sports Original, WEEI, oh boy, do we got a lot to get to in Fourier. Let's get right into it, brother. Celtics beat the Mavericks last night. They did. They pasted them 124 95. Big bounce back for the Celtics. Um, and really, it was the Tatum Luka Doncic battle that a lot of people were focused on going in. And big advantage, Jason Tatum, with a caveat. And we will get to that caveat. But Jason Tatum last night, Foyer, 29 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists. 
that was the kind of performance in a showcase game that could win you the MVP in about three months from now. Yeah, I mean, no contest. If you're going to call a winner, I feel like, you know, it, it just ended on a draw because, you know, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, Luca was like, I mean, he was not himself. He was missing every single shot he took from the beginning of the game to the end. I mean, he was you can obviously tell he wasn't feeling right. He was coughing into his shirt. He just it was he was off. He had to leave at one point in time to get his ankle retaped. Then he took a sweet time getting back in. And then he decided he wasn't gonna play defense, wasn't gonna do anything. So he scores twenty three points. I mean, like with all that being said, like he still scores twenty three points, but mm. his shooting percentage sucked. Seven of twenty three. Yeah, he couldn't he didn't hit a three pointer. Listen, the entire Mavs team couldn't find the basket at all no they the, the Mavs are not a good team no they're not I mean think about this like you, you when you look at the um when you look at the defensive rebounds the Celtics had 42 42 defensive rebounds which means that they were clanking left and right and they had extra opportunities to get rebounds that's way too high of a number the Mavs shot 21 percent from three uh, 37%, uh, percent, uh, 38.7% shooting um you know uh, combined that's like the worst, one of the worst shooting performances of a team the Celtics have played against all year. Well, how much of that was because of the Celtics and actually playing some level of defense that looked like last year? Well, I mean, sure, I'll give them credit, but there was a lot of open shots that they were just missing. Mm -hmm. They were just missing open shots. Hell, the Celtics were missing a bunch of open shots. You know, ball moving, ball moving, bank, clank. They couldn't find it. But the fact is, like, can you imagine if they were hitting their shots? Oh, if they were hitting their shots, they would have hit 160. Yeah, they would have put 150, 160 up. You know, it would have been yeah. like, you know, so to me, this was such a predictable outcome based on how bad they had played in the past, how embarrassed they were. I was just, you know, they didn't start off well. Like, Tatum didn't start off strong. Brown got into early uh, foul trouble. He couldn't find the basket either. I mean, it just was to me. It was a clunky game, like that was like you know, if you compare it to like a football game, like you see those 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 games where the other team is worse, but the good team just can't put them away because they're playing bad. Also, it's like watching Baltimore and Denver. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like God, jeez, what are we doing here? Somebody win this game. No one could really like twenty points seemed like a big lead, but then sure enough, the Mavs would kind of chip away at it. You're like, oh, it's going to be a game. No, it isn't. Right, they would get life. They go on a run. Celtics never let him back in. The no, game, really. there was really no hope. They tried to make it, you know, make it interesting. But to me, this to me, this wasn't uh, like Luca did not have his best game. So whatever. But Tatum was not having a great game either. But he found other ways to contribute. And that to me is what almost, stood out. And it almost ended up yeah. at thirty when it was yeah. all said and done. Now there is the guy that you, Christian yeah, Fourier, mentioned yesterday, and that is Jalen Brown. So after the game, <laughs> we find out that Jalen Brown wants to guard Luca, and he set the tone and shoot around. Here is Joe Missoula after the game. I mean, I thought our bench stepped up. Um, I thought Grant, I thought Malcolm were great. Um, you know, the great thing about Jalen was he asked for uh, to guard um, Doncic tonight. He got three fouls, um, kind of took him out of his rhythm in the first half, and I thought he did a great job in the third quarter of not forcing it himself but playing the right way and, and finding the right play for him and for his teammates. And so um, I thought the team really fed off of that. When did Jalen approach you about taking on the Doncic matchup? What was that conversation like? I'm guarding Doncic. I said, okay. <laughs> And when, when did that happen? Was it shortly before um, the game? Was it? Uh, no, it was that film this morning. <laughs> what's your thoughts on that? What, what's your, I mean, hard -o move or just a little bit yeah, because right? Jalen Brown knows going in, as noble as the <laughs> offer was. I'll do it, guys. Jaylen, I'll take him. Right. Jalen Brown also knew going in that all eyes were going to be on Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic. So what I is like the way – for Jalen Brown to interject himself into that? Well, I'm the guy that slowed him down on defense. Yes, and it went horribly wrong quick. He got two quick foul fouls, came out of the game early in the first quarter, and then he hey, threw off his rhythm. You know, he just, to me, like, that was the bigger disappointment, like, you know, as far as the matchup was going to be the matchup, and obviously Tatum won that matchup. Uh, but I think, uh, obviously, I don't know if Jalen Brown was the reason why Luka couldn't you know, make routine shots like that he always makes, like the fadeaway pause jumper that he shoots, right? Like he couldn't make, even at the rim, he couldn't make anything. And he still ended up with 23 points, but he, hell, he shot like crazy. But Missoula was right. It wasn't for 
for Grant Williams rolling in, coming off his crappy game against OKC, not we, having a point, we and he jumps, right yeah. he jumps right in. Yeah, he jumps right in. Hauser comes in, he hits a three, and it was like, all right, you're you're giving us a cushion, you know, until the other guys kind of figured it out. But you're right, the Mavs are not a good team. Like, and I know they were bragging about this winning streak that they had, but you knew that was going to come to a crashing stop based on the fact that the Celtics are so much better. When you see the Celtics rotate their bench players and you see what the Mavs rotate, you sit there and go, there's not a chance in hell. Not even close. Not, it's, it's not a competition. If the Celtics were playing better and were making their shots, like it wouldn't even be close. Well, we also had Brad Stevens making money moves, literally. Noah Vonley traded to San Antonio. Okay, it's just Noah Vonley. Why is that important? Well, two reasons. Number one, you can now start to sign players to 10-day contracts. Number two, it does open up a roster spot for the Celtics for maybe a two-for-one trade down the line or something like that. But the other big deal is that you save $7 million in luxury tax and, you know, what, I almost said fees as if it's like going to school. But you, you're saving about $7 million in luxury tax and you free up the roster spot so that it can be transient. And I just love the way Brad Stevens has kind of managed this team, managed it. Again, Noah Vonley. And by the way, San Antonio's cutting the guy. So who knows? Maybe the Celtics <laughs> could bring him back or string him out on 10-day contracts or whatever. But it's saving a chunk of money and allowing yourself to make moves down the road. Let's get to the Bruins. And for those of you listening on the Odyssey app, you know you can take us wherever you go. But the Bruins beat the Kings Five to two, Foyer pasta with two goals, including an empty netter. Yep. Power play goal for Marshy. Trent Frederick scored two goals. And look, this is a weekend run here for the Bruins on the West Coast, where on Saturday they get San Jose, who stinks, and then on Sunday they get Anaheim, who stinks worse than San Jose. So this is a great start, a great bounce back. I know that – well, not really a bounce back. It's a It was a much more complete game than what we have seen from the Bruins as of late. Jim Montgomery even noted it after the game. But Pasta moves up. Taylor Hall moves up. Coil line comes back together with Frederick and crew and bingo, bango, five goals. See you later. Yeah. So again, that was like, oh, that's that's like the the story of the day. How are they going to react? How is it going to affect them? Well, it doesn't affect them at all. The thing that stands out to me, Gresh, I was going to like update my notes here because the I third love period, the, the you are old school with I your know. handwritten notes. Yeah. This what is, do you do? I know. I can't. I, dude, I can't type. I I know you can't. That's well, why. That's that why. True. That's why. Print slash. So if you could type. You would just type it all out. Mm. See, you wouldn't. I don't know. You you're better. I, under, I have notes. a I have a philosophy here. I I sometimes I, I quarter. Don't it all mess off. with it. No, don't, I'm not going no, to. No, you're great. You're good. So what 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 do you have? Well, the thing the, is, like, it's to me what stands out to me. You and Bill Belichick are gonna have to take all your notes and put them in a book and sell them. <laughs> I should start saving my notebooks to see if you can transcribe them. I don't think you can actually transcribe them and actually actually interpret them. That's you're, better. You're a chicken scratcher? Yeah, you can't. Okay. And, I, and you know what I have? Lots of happy faces. Lots of doodling. Lots of doodling. Yeah, that's that's actually a sign of something. But Is it? Well, yes. Really? I think if you Google it, they'll be like, oh, that means that you either like. You mean I'm a narcissist? Can't think. Narcissist, ADD. <laughs> Lots can't of squirrel moments. Still, worried, totally. about, worried about traffic driving in. Absolutely. <laughs> All the things I should not be thinking about. Okay, back to the topic. Third period scoring. I had like a whole number here that I kind of looked at. They just do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. They're down. It's 2-2 in the second. And they say, okay, boys, let's go. And they just they just score three goals in the third period. Whenever they want to just take your heart out and take the life out of you, they do it. If they want to like, uh, you know, toy around and do a lot of jousting in the first two periods, it's fine. As soon as they need to kind of flip the switch and get into another gear, they do it with ease. And hang I think on. the other team knows. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you saying, Christian Fourier, the Bruins have a killer instinct? Would you call it that, though? Yeah, if you're saying that in the third period they have the ability to but flip they, the switch, dial it up, and separate from but another But it feels team? different, though, than because a killer instinct would say, I see a little lamb over there, a little baby lamb. I know I'm a wolf. I'm going to go take that that little lamb out in the first period. I'm not going to just throw it up in the air and toy with it and just let it think that it's going to live. I'm going to kill it right away. That's a killer instinct. But it's I feel like it's maybe uh, – because really, like if, if, if you really just start out like you end 
these third periods, like they would be out of the game in the first period, and they would just there would be no life in them whatsoever. But it's really, to me, the killer instinct in the wild is what you said. The killer instinct in sports is final period, final quarter. Okay. That's I'll give the way. You that. All right, that's fine. Sure. You that's, know what? The Bruins have a killer instinct. All right, so have you ever uh, have you ever heard this before, Fourier? What? Omaha! Omaha! Oh no, we, we got we have a uh, are we alert are we an alert at the line of scrimmage? We're, we are on alert right now, right now. And look at the time. What are I we doing? Know. What are we supposed to do? Joining us now on the Harbor One Hotline Tell is to hold on. Patriots <laughs> safety Adrian Phillips on this Patriots Friday. He's brought to us by Town Fair Tire for the best prices on tires. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody by Zooty. Build any app your company needs in a week by Anderson Windows and your local Anderson Windows dealer, and by Shaw's and Star Market, bringing people together around the joys of food. Adrian Phillips is back with us on the Harbor One Hotline with Gresh and Christian Fourier. Adrian, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Good, good. And let's uh, start with, obviously, the news of the day. Everyone in the NFL community has been, I don't want to say Adrian in mourning, but there has been an overwhelming level of concern for DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. You've played this game a long time, from high school through college. You've been a pro for a while now. Just sort of what has gone through your mind the past couple of days after what we saw on Monday Night Football? Yeah, it, it was it was super tough seeing that. You know, it was a, like a tragic event. Like you never want to see one of your NFL brothers on a on the ground like that and going through what he went through. And you know, for a, that night and in the next day or so, you just thinking about him. You checking for the updates. And, and hoping everything's okay and hoping that you hear, hear or see the news that, you know, he's pulling through. And once you get that, you know, you feel better and everybody continues to pray, but you feel better about going forward and about playing. It's, it, it's tough. It's something that I've never personally had to navigate through before, like this being my first time actually seeing something like that. So, you know, it was tough to see, and it's tough for your family members, too, because they're thinking at any given time, like, that could be their loved one. So it's just, it's just tough all around. So, Andrew, were, 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 was your game prep altered at all, either from an emotional standpoint or a physical standpoint up to this point? You know, uh, it, it was a little bit. You know, I was – Obviously, we were getting ready. We're getting ready to play those guys Sunday, so I wanted to watch the game versus Cincy, see how they did st- stuff, and still, you know, have my iPad out and uh, do look at other stuff that they do throughout the season. But once that happened, it was just kind of it for the night. You know, I just was kind of done with football for the night being, and then you come in the next day and. Uh, we're still prepping just because we don't know what the league is is going to say. But, you know, everybody's just kind of really taking the time to talk about what happened and check in with everybody and see how their mental state is. And, you know, you don't know what the future holds for the for the game or for him. So you're not really worried about football at the moment because you're worried about a human being, like you're worried about someone who's fighting for his life, and he's the main focus and he's the main priority. Yeah, I, I know, and it and it is obviously a crazy set of circumstances, but there is this narrative where the Bills, almost like the Patriots, like you guys have a little bit more of an advantage based on like you are connected, but you're not necessarily affected. Do you feel like that's true? You know, it definitely. Uh, affects us way, obviously way different than it affected the Bills. You know, they were the ones directly affected by it. And, you know, we were just we were just the unfortunate team that had to had to play them next. So at, for the time being, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, like, we weren't even on their minds, as we shouldn't have been, you know. But at the same time, we're still thinking about our playoff implications and stuff like that, and and going in there and ending the season the right way and getting it with a win to extend our season. So it definitely didn't affect us the way that it affect them in terms of, you know, playing football and going out there for a game. But emotionally, I think we were we were kind of 
it, it's hard to say on the same page, but I think we were all around the same wavelength because when you see that, like everybody who plays the game is affected by that. Who's giving you the business in the background there? That's, I got. I say McCordy. <laughs> How do you know? I could tell. You, you know? I was like, that is such a McCordy yell. It like, did I, sound like I a heard McCordy. it right away. <laughs> How did you know? That's crazy. <laughs> he does that all the time. Well, he's got to get it in because if this is his last game on Sunday, I mean, Devin McCordy could be walking away. So while you have a moment here, Adrian, McCordy's giving you the business there in the background. He joined our morning show earlier today. He is definitely a red jacket guy here in New England once it's all said and done. But if it is Devin no McCordy's last game, what will you take away from being a teammate of his? Man, if this is his last game, one, I'm gonna be pissed off because I, I just feel like I came here too late and I didn't get to, you know, experience all the great years that he's been around here. Like it, him, Slate, like those guys are like great teammates. And once I first got here, like you, you hear about how great of a teammate they are and how, you know, connected to the community they are. But like seeing it firsthand and Dev specifically seeing it firsthand and all the stuff that he actually has a hand in and that he takes part in. It's it's amazing to see and it and it motivates you to do more because you see him out there doing everything he can off the field and still balling on the field. So, you know, I don't want to write him off. I'm not writing him off until he writes himself <laughs> off. <laughs> He's so, probably so. sitting right next to you saying, don't you give away my secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, okay, so, uh, so, you know. so, so game talk, right? So it's safe to talk about the game, game plan of the game. Big game for you guys. You win, you're in, right? Controlling your own okay. destiny. Like, what do you – you guys have – the defensive side of the football has just been, you know, been fantastic, especially non-offensive touchdowns. Do you guys feel a little bit more pressure as opposed to when talk about, you know, complimentary football? Do you feel like does the defensive side feel like they need to do more because the the offense struggles at times and can't get out of their own way? You know, we always feel like we could do more, and, and I think that's just the competitive side that we all have and the standard that we all have for each other. Like, when, when we watch the film throughout the previous games and stuff, and, and we see the defensive touchdowns, we're like, yeah, we're happy about that. Or what, we did something with the franchise record. Yeah, we're happy about that. But there's so much more that we could do. So, it, you know, fortunately for us, it all boils down to this. You know, win-win. If we lose, we go home. So I wouldn't say there's more pressure on us, but everybody's hyper-focused and and wants to be able to take the next step to – to be a, a great defense, to be able to affect the game and affect the outcome of it. And there's no better chance to do that against a potent offense with 17 at the at the head of it. Like, like what more could you ask for? You know, if you, if you don't love football, you run from this moment. But to be able to do this and go against this team on Sunday – with the way our defense is at, with the way our defense has been playing, and with the opportunity that we have, like we're all ready for it, and we all want it. Adrian, last time out against the Bills here in Gillette, you guys did a really good job of making sure that Josh Allen didn't run around and make plays necessarily, but it kind of it felt like you were sacrificing maybe the ability to slow down the much more traditional run game, gave up a lot of run yards to running backs. What's the fine line of taking care of Josh Allen but not compromising your ability to slow down that Bills run game? Yeah, I think – the main thing is just getting off the field on third down. If you look back at our last game, there were plenty of times that we had them dead to rights. You know, we, we were off the field, whether it was a, a flag or whether uh, someone dropped covers and he ended up dunking it down and they ended up getting the first down. And then after those, after those plays, that's when you saw, like, the run game really starting to be an issue for us. So our main thing is is when we have the opportunity to get out the field, we have to we have to jump on that and capitalize on that. And as far as the run game, it's just a do your job type of game. When you when you play a team that has a running quarterback, it's do your job. And we did our we did better against Allen without having him run around the field, but at the same time when they got on the center you know, we weren't technique sound with guys 
playing, you know, playing the doubles, coming down, taking the doubles off, you know, staying, staying in your gap if you're a safety, coming up feeling if you're a corner for the correct place. Like, that's where we lost the game in terms of the run game. So we got to make sure that we do a better job on that and capitalize on third down, and then we won't have those situations arise in the red zone or at midfield. Last one for me. As far as, like, tackling goes, you're really sure tackler, and, and especially in open field. Is Josh Allen the toughest football player to tackle for you, or is he one of the toughest tackles, right, the, you know, in the NFL? You know, I won't say he's the toughest, but he is definitely up there. Like, when he gets in the middle of the field, like, you don't realize how agile he really is. And he does a lot of stuff, like, with his head, like the head faking and stuff like that. So if he breaks through the through the middle of the field and you're looking at his head like you're dead because he does so much stuff. He looks left. He looks right. You know, he's he's triple sticking. He's doing a whole bunch of stuff. And then on top of that, well, he's 250. So he's able to, he's able to run through you at, at any given time. He's definitely – a tougher tackle in the league, but you got so many guys out there like Lamar in the open field, you know, uh, Tyree Hill in the open field. That's another non-quarterback. Even Mahomes in the open field is, is hard to tackle. I feel like uh, any mobile quarterback that can break through the line and, and just kind of make you stutter just a little bit is going to be a tough tackle for him. So, you know, he's definitely up there, but it's hard to say like he's the he's the hardest is there anything else with the bills offense that you guys need to really be aware of on sunday to be able to slow them down yeah um they always have something that you've never seen before so when that when that play comes up when those situations actually come up we have to limit those because every t- since I've been here, every time we play them, we come to the sideline after they've, they've done some type of play, and it's like, where did that come from? Like, what is that? We haven't seen anything remotely like that to film. So when when they do, I'll just call it a, a trick play. It's not really a trick play, but just for the sake of conversation, I'll just call it one of their trick plays. We have to be able to minimize those as much as possible because if they – if they capitalize on that, we're gonna we're gonna continue to see tendency breakers all throughout the game, and and, it's, and I think that's when it gets tough. Great stuff from Adrian Phillips. You have been awesome this year, man. I hope we talk to you more and more. Stay safe out there on Sunday, and uh, tell who McCourty knows? bye. You guys get a win. Yeah, tell McCourty bye. Listen to you. They get a win, and maybe we talk to you next week, Adrian. Thanks a bunch. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. There Thanks. we go. Uh, have a good one. There you too. Uh, Adrian Phillips, man. Great breakdown there. Yeah. And at the very end, he gave us a couple of nuggets in there. There's a couple things that, listen, I have a totally different uh, perspective on this game now. From him or because of well, what we're hearing just, about DeMar Hamlin? Well, just all the more information, the more video that we see. You know, I, met, I asked him, uh, do, you, do you guys feel, I basically wanted to say, do you guys feel like you have the advantage? You practiced all week. They have it. You're affected. You you know you're you're not as you're connected but not affected. That's different. It's you a good have, way of putting it. You have the high ground. You have you have an advantage. They're not practicing. Well, they may, but they're not concentrating. And you, you look at them, and the, you know they're you know McCordy yelling and screaming. They don't. They're not emotionally. Uh, they're not an emotional wreck like the Bills are. Interesting. Totally different. Well, let's. Well, that's where we start to unpack this game because the most the emotion is going to be a big part of it. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. Thanks to the Patriots for getting that in. Now here's Billy. Billy Lanny is ready to tread. Your home of the Sox. Now here's what's trending on WEEI. The Celtics snapped the Mavericks' seven-game winning streak last night with a 124-95 win in Dallas. Jason Tatum's triple-double led the way for the Seas. The Celtics now head to San Antonio to face the Spurs tomorrow night. The Bruins got two goals from Trent Frederick, two goals from David Pasternak, and a goal from Brad Marchand to get the 5-2 win over the Los Angeles Kings last night. Forward Jake DeBrusque has been placed on long-term IR with a broken fibula and a hand injury. He's expected to miss four weeks. The Bees are in San Jose to take on the Shocks tomorrow night. The NFL has canceled the Bills-Bengals game. The league will vote today on the modifications for the AFC playoffs. 
Bills head coach Sean McDermott and quarterback Josh Allen addressed the media yesterday and said they will be ready to face the Patriots on Sunday. Kickoff will be at 1 p.m. According to Sham Sharania, the breathing tube is out of DeMar Hamlin as of this morning and has begun talking to Buffalo Bills teammates again. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEI and WEI.com. We will start to unpack this Bills-Patriots game with you next. 93.7 WEI.
partners, you know, when, when he asked, did we win? The answer is yes. You know, Damari, you won, you won the game of life. Uh, and that's probably the most important thing out of this. And we really need to keep him at the center uh, of everything else that's going on. And we really want to ensure a good outcome for him. So those are the doctors of the uh, University of Cincinnati Medical Center who have now confirmed that Damar Hamlin's breathing tube has been removed. He continues to progress remarkably in his recovery, according to the Buffalo Bills. The neurological function remains intact, and he has been able to talk. Yeah to his family and his care team, Ooh. and apparently he has been FaceTiming teammates. That's a game changer when it comes to the emotion of this game. Is it not, Fo? It is 100%. Uh, we were just – I mean, there's so many things that advantage Bills, right? You know, like based on – because I was asking Adrian Phillips, like, listen – You've had all the practice time. You have it. You've dealt with it. You've been watching it on TV. But what? What do you? I mean, listen. You're not like it's not your teammate. I mean, you're. It's the whole NFL community thing. But your practice hasn't been disrupted. Your your coach is still in town. I mean, this is like you should have. You should be prepped and ready to go. They're the ones that are like mentally displaced. Not anymore. Because now again, we we kind of touched on it yesterday. Like the better he feels. And the more vocal and the more of a presence that he can become for this team, they're going to play at a high level. They're going to play. It's like, uh, you know, we mentioned the, uh, you know, that DeMar Hamlin's dad doing the Zoom call with the team. They were cheering. I don't know if you heard this. Like when the the reporters that they were cheering and clapping and like getting all excited because it was like, okay, it's okay to smile now. It's okay to play now. That's what they were waiting for. Yes, yes. The bubble burst and they can breathe again. They can breathe. Yeah, I feel like that's so significant. I feel like this is going to be, unfortunately for the Patriots, like a massive beatdown. Yeah, I was of the the Patriots are going to find a way to win. The Bills are distracted, all that kind of stuff. And there was a lot of uncertainty as of even really 24 hours ago. But I hate to just lean on emotion. Because emotion is fleeting. Like, they'll tell you, you know, they, meaning if you listen to self-help people or something like that, it is the, hey, there are certain things you got to let go so that you can move forward. But in this instance, you throw human emotion in there, and until you really knew DeMar Hamlin was okay, then it was the Bills moving forward. No one else. I think the way you put it, you're connected but not affected. And I think, but what is it going to be? Here's the thing. If DeMar Hamlin is now breathing tube out and talking and all that, don't you think that if he is still in that hospital in Cincinnati, there will be the, hey, Bills fans, three minutes before kickoff, here's a message from DeMar Hamlin after the national anthem, and that place is going to get whooped up. Those players are going to get whooped up. And we even said yesterday, I said to you, boy, if you're Belichick and you win the toss, you might think about taking the ball. If you're the Bills... That is exactly what you're doing. You win that toss, you're taking the ball, and you're trying to keep the energy in that stadium. Can I more? Can I give like a morbid, just real uncomfortable? You want to go strategy? Undertaker? Undertaker on me here? <laughs> oh yeah, really? Do I, I, would, am I your Paul Bear? I would. I would hold off on the Demar Hamlin, uh, you know, big screen address. Well, see, here's my thought: <laughs> big screen address. This well, yeah, week, you mentioned to the fans like this him, week. In the building next week, if possible. Not even next week. So you're waiting until an AFC title game? I'm holding on to it. What if you don't get there, though? Well, I would, you know, listen, if I don't get there, I would make sure I'm using it for, I'm not using it for the Patriots. I could beat them on my own. But isn't it also about the fans as well, who also reacted overwhelmingly in filling the coffers of DeMar Hamlin charity to the tune of, what, seven and a half yeah. million? Now, I know it's not just Bills fans, but still, I <laughs> wonder how much of the – and I'm serious about this, because you and I are going to focus on the uh, the emotion of the football team. But on some level, all those fans who went there and – Prayed at one Bills Plaza or whatever it's called, and who you know there were Bills fans that were at the game that went to the hospital. I wonder how much of the hey, listen, since we're 
a small community. We battled through snowstorms. We're battling through this. Here's your guy, Hamlin. Turn around for 30 seconds of him. Or even if it's him just there and his dad is like, thank you for everything, Bills fans. Ah, yeah. Okay, so the peanut there's, butter out there going crazy. <laughs> there's actually, I mean, this is the sick part of this sport. Because now you're talking about I need every advantage I can get emotionally, real or fake. It doesn't matter. So, yeah. So, if he's able to talk, I think you're right. You're probably going to see a, a thank board. you from a big board thank you from DeMar Hamlin. And Bill's family. Mafia, I love you, right? Yes. Then what you do, Gresh. Okay. Then what you do, it's, uh, it's plain clothes, on the field, coin toss before the game. You're actually walking out to the middle of the field. I don't know what they do. A lot of these stadiums, like Seattle, they do the whole 12th man. You know, here, they, they I don't know. What is it? All aboard? Is that what they do? Uh, yeah, I yeah, guess. They play stupid. Crazy Train. Or crazy something. Train, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Some other teams do uh, that. Song. What is it? Uh, in Minnesota, they do the whole horn. All the skull. <laughs> the skull, right? Yeah, they do that. No, but they also have an ex-player come out and they blow that big freaking horn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that. So other teams have it. So Some other teams have like a, they have like a bell. Philly has a bell. Um... But they I hit each other with. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to happen, Gresh. But write it down, clip it. This is going to happen. They're going to. I'm not writing it to like, hey, look at us, you know. But like, this is part. I say this is part of it. The right? immediate emotion. This is part of it. You, you know. You and it's also just like to confirm, hey guys, we're in this together. Look how united we are, and look how close we are. Hey, look at fans, Bills Mafia. We're all in this together. You know, like, look how much we've been through, and we're still standing. Yep. Girl. Yep. yep. Eight feet of snow. Now give me the table. Now let me jump through it. There you go. Light me on fire. Peanut butter. Well, don't go all ECW. <laughs> I'll have to show you some old extreme championship wrestling, because you were in the NFL wrestling other people back in the day. So, but the whole, you know, lighting yourself on fire, it is funny, and it is trite, and it, but those, those fans are going to be whooped up. And are you feeling now like us? In terms of the emotion is going to carry the Bills to an elite type performance. Well, I thought if it, if this didn't happen, I thought the Patriots are going to lose anyways. Um, comfortably, I thought they would lose. Uh, what's after comfortably? Like what's what's worse than that? Like, uncomfortably. Uncomfortably. Yeah, it's gonna blow out. It's gonna be uncomfortable for him. I do. Is this a? Is this a? Hold on. So you were thinking, let's say Bills win by ten to thirteen. Yeah, what do you that, think? Is that so, would that be comfortably? Well, no. Okay, so last last time they played, it was December first, whenever yeah. it was. The score was twenty four to ten. Right. It was. Uh, you it know, was seventeen seven in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So it was. Uh, you know, right, it was so, seven to three, and you're like, oh, okay, it's fourteen. Uh, the the Bills score fourteen points in the second quarter. So they were is they were toying, but the my felt I felt like they were toying with you. They were just like having you know like whatever. The, the, there's no threat there. We're not really freaking out about it. If we want to go all little Boston Bruins in the third period, okay, we'll have the killer instinct and we'll get a touchdown. When we feel like we want one. I don't feel like I feel like they weren't as uh, as aggressive as they could have been. It's gonna be different. Double that score. Double it. Okay. I think that's what you're gonna so get. So forty eight to twenty. The one you know the game when I when I think of like atmospheres in Buffalo. I'll tell you what, if I, the it, Patriots give up forty eight, I will eat my shoe. That's a lot for them. Do you think they're going to put their foot on the on the break? Uh, the Bills? Yeah. At some point, I think they might. Oh, because we're all in this together? No. Let's not embarrass our no, brother? No. That whole thing? The head coach will start to think about optics, I, how I, it looks like. I have to be prepared for scenarios I can't control. Meaning, if they're up, say they're up 30 to 10 in the early fourth quarter, why are you playing Josh Allen if you don't know you're definitely going to be the number one seed and get a bye? See, that's where the Bills are in a bit of a tricky spot. And I know you and I are going to unpack all the scenarios a little bit later yeah. on, but. I think Sean McDermott has to be aware of the guys that are dinged or that he wants to protect if they do get a big lead like that because it's not it's not automatic that the Bills are going to be the number one seed. If they knew they were, then I'm with you. Spite and malice but kicks is, in. Let's let's go is, run them over. It is a thirty burger though, right? Oh yeah. It is a so do you do you feel the same way I do? Do you feel like the I don't the know small if the ball maybe is big. But you, say again. Yeah, I said I, I don't. You think don't the, think the gap's that big? I know. I don't think the score will be as big as maybe you're predicting in terms of the gap. But yeah, I think the Bills are gonna. They beat they, 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 they the, the Bills beat the Patriots at home here in Foxborough, yeah. twenty four to ten. And the only reason why they, they got a, they got a field goal in the fourth quarter, okay, like a nothing 
point, a nothing kick. They couldn't move the ball at all. They had one good drive, and that was it. So, And now you're telling me they're going to go back home where they care and they want to, you know, they want to like make send a message, not necessarily like or we're one to be reckoned with, but just emotional message. It's gonna be 36, 37, close to forty. They may not score a touchdown. Yeah, I'll tell you, I don't know about the Patriots defense completely collapsing, but let's get to you at six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. We've got all kinds of news coming in. Damar Hamlin is doing great relative to his situation. Will the emotion carry the Bills to a blowout win over the Pats? We will continue with you next. Ninety three seven W E E I.
you go. Just download the Odyssey app. Many men wish death upon me. Blood in my eye, dog, and I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be. And trying to take my life away. Maybe not a great choice. The Fourier Friday playlist in full effect, ladies and gentlemen. Send all your bitches on Twitter yeah, to me. at Christian Fourier. I tell you where to go on Instagram, but his wife doesn't want to hear it, so <laughs> <laughs> I know we share an account. And it's private anyway, so I don't even care. We did I did I, it's just a family Instagram account. If you want to really bitch at me, you know, why don't you do get a real Instagram? I don't want to manage you, it. You're always you want to be one of the beautiful people. I, I don't want to manage my, it. No, I need to see myself on TV. Yeah. It's like now, I mean, you can't just I just want to watch, but I don't want to I don't want to like create. I want to just want to watch everybody else's live. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to join in. You know, I you, watch. you were watcher. on me for not being a joiner in her yesterday. <laughs> Different though. <laughs> Your way is like, yeah, it's like weird. Like you won't be into that, but you're totally into the other one. Well, be, let's put it this way. Like I want to be like if, a, if I don't we, want to be a provider of content. If we were not in this business, would we really be on social media? I would never be on it. I probably wouldn't. I be don't either. have a Facebook right. account. I never have. I don't ever want one. Although I do look forward to the day of building up a base on both, and then once I don't do this anymore, really hammering people and just being rude and mean. Oh, okay. See, my thing was... <laughs> turf <laughs> like that. <laughs> See, the Instagram thing is... The thing I don't like about Instagram, like, I like just, like, you know, it's an easy way to stay connected to my friends who I don't see. But then, sure as hell, one day, like, I was, like, scrolling through, and next thing you know, all these, like, like, like you know, half-naked women showed up, like, on our page. Joint... Joint page, okay? It's my page that I share with my wife. Oh. My daughter's in the background going, what are you looking at? I was like, whoa, I don't know. It just popped up. It legitimately just popped up. Like, it's, hand to God. I have no idea the algorithms and how it works, but she must have been looking at bikinis or something. And sure as hell, all these, like, naked butts. You know what's really coming funny? Up, I was like, whoa, this, well, I'm just looking at Instagram. Meanwhile, if I come across one of those and I don't show my wife and say, "Hey, look at these things," I would get I would get chastised. See, like you say, if we're walking it's down, say if we're in the mall and yeah. we're walking down the mall and she's like talking to me or yeah. whatever, and I am listening, <laughs> but if I also see something that she would need to see, yeah. If you know what I mean? Yeah. Naked junk right there. I, I just kind of like nudge her and be like, look over there. Yeah. She'll be like, holy Moses. Yeah. I feel the like the conversation comes right back I, up that's again. A good, that's a good philosophy. I feel like that's a nice little clever trick to make sure you don't get in hot water. Oh, yeah. I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I, well, you know, I still. Little, I have little uh, interpersonal skills on that end anyway. <laughs> Like I'm the least, I'm the least the likely most, person well, to do you anything wrong radio? like that. You're so antisocial that how are you providing so much content and opinions to people? You're it's a it's a social job because I'm working with three people that I like. Mm. Otherwise, you're talking into wait. There's four people here. Wait, who's you're, am you're, I the guy you don't like? Or is it one? Two? No, I said I'm working with three that I like. <laughs> I don't like myself. I don't <laughs> include myself in that. Come on, now you should know better. Self loathing. There you go. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. Bills and the Patriots on Sunday. Me and Keith and uh, Tom Kern will be aboard as well. WEEI Football Sunday begins at 10 a.m. And, of course, you can catch Foyer on WBZ TV at 10 or 1130, yeah. excuse me, so that you can stare at him staring at himself in mm -hmm. a camera. Yep. Always uh, look at the monitor. Let's go to Eddie in the car. First up today, regression, Foyer. Hello, Ed. Hey, guys. How are you? Christian, up, you're beautiful. It just popped up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, um... I, let me tell you, nobody knows how Buffalo is going to respond against the Patriots. I mean, these guys, were, what happened to them, they went through something that was extremely emotional. These guys may not be ready to play football. I mean, it's easy to say. And by the way, you know me, I'm not a big Patriot fan right now. I'm not happy with them. But the Patriots actually could get down there and literally shock them because until they show us how they're going to respond, so what happened to them last week? None of us know. You know what? I, Eddie, I can't, I, I, I understand the essence of what you're trying to say, but I can't buy it. This was different. And, and we've got the audio for you watching Josh Allen yesterday and Sean McDermott as well. Sean McDermott to me looks, looks like a emotionless, heartless I'm just an NFL coach. This is what I do when I don't do anything else and da-da-da. 
even that guy showed humanity yesterday. And Josh Allen was broken up still talking about it. It affected this football team in such a way that there's no way they don't get an emotional bounce. Now, does it last a quarter? Does it last two, three, all four? Do they continue to lay the hammer down on the Patriots if they get a big lead? All of that stuff factors into the end result. But to think that in the first quarter there might not be an overthrow <laughs> or maybe a missed tackle yeah. because everybody is so jacked up, yep. I, I can't buy that. It's going to be no, going to be I, I am I am like I listen I, I agree with you but I'm going to put I'm going to put it on focused uh game plan is pretty simple we're all vets we're really good anyways We know how to beat this we team know how, We we listen we own they own the Patriots they own them you, you if you just go back to the last 3 games going back to the last playoff game and the last regular season game last season when they didn't punt, and even in the first game, December 1st, at Patriot Place, I mean, the running joke was, one of the Bills going to punt. Sure as hell, they punted sometime in, like, the second quarter, and it was like, oh, right. holy punt, everybody. And then they got a turnover, yeah. and then they got more, and it was like, holy cow. We're going to continue breaking down this game. How much do you think emotion plays into it? And we will let you hear from Josh Allen. How emotional is it, even as of yesterday in Buffalo? Well, the Josh Allen comments say it all. Gresham Foyer, Hour 2 on a Fourier Playlist Friday, next. The Rich Keith Show. On the table yesterday.
you by Shaw's, the official supermarket of the Red Sox Network. Patriots Friday is brought to you by New England Kubota Tractor Dealers, by McFarlane Energy, the always reliable HVAC and home oil delivery pros at McFarlaneEnergy.com, by Anderson Windows, by New England Spine Care, and by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when your drains don't flow. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Type that into your app search, then download. Gresh and Fourier on W-E-E-I. I'm living in that 21st century, doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody you ever seen. Do it. Screams from the haters. Got a nice ring to it. I guess it's you, did you notice the siren? Nobody picked up on the siren. It was more the person doing the singing. Oh, yeah. I forget. Wow, my choices are whew, very uh Well, here's what I was told. Give him enough rope and see how quickly he hangs himself or ties himself <laughs> in a knot. And this was one of those exercises. Uh, the foyer playlist today, yeah. folks, for a uh, Patriots Friday. We already talked to Adrian Phillips. No, but in all seriousness, uh, things are very much changing with this Bills-Patriots game. Uh, Bills head coach Sean McDermott told his team he had a treat for them this morning when they went to the facility and Damar Hamlin popped up on the screen via FaceTime or Zoom or whatever. Uh, the entire team stood up right away and started clapping. This according to Ari Mirov. Hamlin made a heart with his hands and said, I love you, boys. Mm. Real emotional stuff. Yeah. And yesterday, Sean McDermott and Josh Allen gave the first press conference after this whole deal. And I find it interesting for two reasons. Number one, it wasn't just the head coach. They also put Josh Allen out there. It is head coach and leader. Mm -hmm. Almost like here's the head coach who McDermott was very deferential to players and let Josh Allen kind of speak for the players. But Josh Allen recapped and recounted, let's say, what it was like on the field in Cincinnati where he's watching DeMar Hamlin get CPR performed on him. You want to know how emotional the room is in Buffalo? All you need to do is listen to this. You never put yourself in that situation until it happens. Um, and I want to thank our, I know Coach mentioned it earlier, but our training staff for going out there, not knowing what's going on, but going through a checklist, working as a, a single cell symbiote, like saving his life. You know, and is being on that field, it, <clears throat> you, know, you, you you lose sleep, you hurt for your brother, um, a lot of shared grief, but to the question before, getting updates and positive updates eases so much of that, that pain and that tension that you feel, but coach handled it as, as perfect as anybody could. Powerful stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was um, very moving, very just inspirational. Uh, mm -hmm. I commend him. It takes a lot of courage to go out there and just really just, you know, speak without a net, you know, forget about people, you know, judging you and crying and showing your, you know, your emotional side. Um, and you're also the leader of a, you know, a football team. So um, I'm glad they did it. Like, I I'm glad he was the one that did it. Um, they needed to. Yeah. They, I feel like, listen, if he wasn't, feeling better if he wasn't I don't think I don't know if you would have, would have gotten that I don't know I mean maybe I guess eventually you would have had to uh, but the fact that you know even at the end of this press conference they, 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 they found some time to kind of laugh and joke about some of the things that were going on so you can see that there is obviously a huge sigh of relief like this just burden or this like that was just that they were carrying around of just grief that has finally been removed and then since it's been removed, I feel like they've gained a lot of strength mm -hmm. and confidence and unity. Like, they didn't need it anyways. Like, they didn't need confidence. I mean, they were the best teams in the league. You know, the you know, like everyone's like, you know, Super Bowl favorite. So they didn't need any of that stuff. 
now you're adding it to the mix, and I think it makes them even stronger. So uh, both Sean McDermott and Josh Allen were asked about being ready for Sunday. Now, this was yesterday before DeMar Hamlin popped up on the screen at you know the, the Bills facility via FaceTime or whatever, and here's how they both – what they both said is important, but Sean McDermott and how they – he handled this I thought was pretty good. Do you truly believe in your heart that the Buffalo Bills are ready to play a football game right now? Well, I'll start. Um, I do. Yeah, I, I do as well. I mean, the news we, we, we received today in particular was, was a huge lift. Um, and again, I, I, I'm, I respect these guys are the ones on the field playing. I'm standing on the sideline, Dana, so it's, it's, it's different for me. What do you expect the atmosphere to be like if you do indeed take the field on Sunday? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of three jerseys, three signs. Um, you know, it'll, it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a little surreal uh, to be obviously at home last week of the season. Um, yeah, we're... Obviously, there's some stuff that we need to still talk about as a team and get through, but uh, going to have a good good week of practice. The last couple of days have obviously been tough, but they've been better, and we just got to keep moving forward. I know that McDermott has to be deferential, but for him to be like, listen, all I do is stand there. <laughs> These guys, yeah. that is that that goes a long way because, and you would know this better than anybody, having uh, extensive years in the NFL. Mm-hmm. There are some coaches who think they're the show. Yes, there's a lot of there's a lot in college now too. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't even talk about it. Don't talk about it. I don't want any proof of what I'm going to talk. What I was going to say. All right. So uh, yeah, the the one thing I ke- I keep st- I'm stuck on the on the atmosphere now because like when when like I remember when, like when when I won the Super Bowl the couple the two that I won there was two different emotions from guys. Guys that were like laughing and screaming and excited, and then there's others that were crying, right? And I was like, "Dude, why are you crying? Let's get drunk! Like, let's have a, let's have a blast!" So the word that comes to me for for the stands, <laughs> spend that playoff check. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> quick, as Sorry. soon as I got it, it was gone. It was gone. It was already spoken yeah. for. You were yeah. hoping you won versus yeah. lost. Sorry. Um, uh, jubilation. Is what in the jubilation? I was like, oh, let me, what, what's the Webster dictionary definition? A feeling of great happiness and triumph. Like that's what you're going to get in in Buffalo. You're going to get jubilation. You're going to get cheers. You're going to get you know happiness. You're going to get maybe a little bit of both. But I, I think just by the fact that reporters are asking Josh Allen about, hey, what do you think the atmosphere is going to be like? Like what the Bills Mafia wants to do is to whatever you think it is, they're going to double it. So if, if if the highest you can go for most stadiums is a ten, theirs goes to eleven. Like that's that's the kind of vibe that you're gonna get. Oh yeah, you thought we were loud before. Wait till you see this. You yep. ain't seen nothing yet. That's right. because they take it as a challenge, right? Those guys, those nuts up there, they take it as a personal challenge. Oh, there's no question that I think Bill's Mafia will be very motivated in their own way. Yeah. To make sure that A, they are a part of setting the tone, yep. but also B, that's why I think the organization's going to be like, we know these people are going to bring it. Let's give them something. And I'm not just talking about the on field stuff, but it is the, if you can get to our hand, whether it's a photo, a message, whatever it is, it's took a, a day and a half to be able to get something like that, to be able to play for those fans as almost a reward for them as well. And then, oh, by the way, we kick it off and those people go nuts. Here's the other thing I thought about. I want you to give me your opinion on this. What do you think? What do you think the Sean McDermott? pregame speech will be and or should be i think it is simple i really do it's something like this we've been through a lot this week this is our payoff this is where we show everybody that while everything that went down on monday night happened we're together we're a group and we're focused let's go win boom turn around and go same Simple. Same. I think it's, he doesn't need you, to say really to, much. No. Right. By, what I wrote down was same thing, the same opening line. We've been through a lot. Yep. Obviously. Okay. Um. You know what to do. 
Open the door and let him go. Mm-hmm. You don't need to do a damn thing. You don't need to right. oversell it. You don't need to pile on. I mean, I, I was thinking about it in my head because we have the TVs on and, and he's talking again. Please don't be the hardo like, you know, Dan Campbell guy. You know, you, you don't need it for this. You don't need a mean on. You just need to roll out there and just open the door and say, go get him. That is it. And get out of the damn way. Honestly, that's that's all they need to do. The 413 on the text to 37937, there will be, and I'll clean it up a little bit, there will be phallic objects everywhere. Or will this be a week no, where... No, they keep it clean. You're keep it clean? Yeah, you got to keep it so clean. Too. Come on, show some class. Now, it's a divisional Bill's round mafia. playoff game, they're going to be <laughs> yes. throwing wangs all over the place. And, and, and oh, by the way, you're winners now. You're the good team. Like, the Patriots should be throwing that stuff out you in the what? field. That you is don't need true. to lower yourself to that. Well... It's well, who they are they as people and fans. I know, but look at us. God forbid they win a Super Bowl. How classy can they make it? Oh, Lord. <laughs> that would be something. 617-779-7937. Not following on Twitter and Instagram. I don't know why. Gresh Fourier, W-E-E-I on Twitter. Gresh and A-N-D. Gresh and Fourier on Instagram. Neil in the truck on the Bills Patriots game with Gresh and Fourier. What up, Neil? This is Neil in the truck. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, how are you guys? Good. How you doing, Christian? Good, man. How are you? Um, not bad. Listen, I, I hate to be negative, but you know, I think Buffalo, if they take the ball in the first position, they may have a little bit of too much emotion, and that that might you know sidetrack them a little. But after that, with the adrenaline of the crowd and everything else, I think they roll. I think the Patriots are in for a, a real whooping. I mean, I'm thinking like 20 points. I really am. I don't think they have any shot. And if anybody does, they're going to be delusional. This team's going to be so high. It's going to be ridiculous. Uh, look, I, I don't think it's being negative. I think it's being realistic, and it's what we have been talking about, Neil or Steve or whomever it was. It was a little muddy there. I couldn't hear the name. But, yeah, I, I, I think there is almost the – in fact, if you're the Patriots – and you're Bill Belichick in the private discussions with whomever it is, right? Matt Patricia. And, you know, Bill went out of his way to mention Troy Brown, Gerard Mayo. Those are two guys that are players that I listen to. Maybe this is one of those games where it's Bill and Troy and Gerard, and it's, okay, how do we how do we deal with or try to harness the emotion that we know it's going to be on the other sideline? Because that's a I don't, player question I, this, that, you know, Matt Patricia wouldn't be able to answer for Bill, I don't think. Yeah, we asked Irvin uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other day. I was like, how do you match it? It's like, you, you, really, you don't. You can't, even, you can't even attempt to because you don't even have, I don't know, the right to. Well, don't you have to like, manage you, the wave of it? Meaning, hey, guys, if we get rocked in the first quarter, don't stick your head up your ass. Who like, is, are you talking about the Bills? Bill, no, Patriots. Oh, that I, I think it's the, always me. Hey, oh, interesting. You know, you remember the 2000, uh, the um, uh, Laura Malloy, uh, they, they cut they you cut slash traded you to the into Buffalo. That game, 31 to nothing beat down. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what my gut is telling me it feels like. Ooh. You know, because that to me was like a crazy atmosphere. It was a one o'clock game. We were already, we were like just all mad and angry and whatever, name an emotion. And they just. They hate their coach. They hate their coach. Yeah. they it, We got embarrassed. Like nobody wanted to play because like the, it was like it was almost too much for us to kind of, it was a we, it was a whole weird thing. Whereas in this instance, it feels like the Bills are starting to build toward they can't wait to play. Yeah. That's I think a you're very there now. different feeling. I think it's just, this is. This game, I'm actually amazed I didn't try to flex this game and make it like and it's swap it out with the lines and the backers. I think it's with you. I think it's the whole too much too much uncertainty. Well, during now, the week. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they have enough Plus, issues going around with scheduling and you know you know alternate sites and all this other stuff. Well, they're sending Nance and Romo and Wolfson, I do believe, to do this game. Really, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a this is a Nance Romo game, so CBS Whoa, protected it. Brought it. the heavy hitters. It did. Yes, it did. And it'll be real interesting to hear Romo on that. We'll continue with you on these phones. We have to get to uh, not only some of the big games of the weekend. But the possibilities now that the NFL has decided they're not going to replay the Bills-Bengals game, we'll get to that. We have so much going on. Your lunchtime parlay as well, including a special Fourier football-related shot in the dark. That's all coming up at around 1145. Right now, here's Billy ready to trend. 
The Rich Keefe Show, weeknights starting at 6. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. The Celtics with a 124-95 win over the Dallas Mavericks last night. Jason Tatum led the way with a triple-double. The season now, the C's now head to San Antonio to face the Spurs tomorrow night. Bruins got a pair of goals from both Trent Frederick and David Pasternak and a goal from Brad Marchand to get the 5-2 win over the Los Angeles Kings. Forward Jake DeBrus has been placed on long-term IR with a broken fibula and hand injury. He's expected to miss four weeks. The Bruins are in San Jose to take on the Sharks tomorrow night. According to Sham Sharania, the breathing tube is out of Demar Hamlin, and as of the, is out of the the breathe. Sorry, the breathing tube is out of Demar Hamlin as of this morning, and he has begun talking to Buffalo Bills teammates again. Bills head coach Sean McDermott and quarterback Josh Allen, Allen addressed the media yesterday and said they will be ready to face the Patriots on Sunday. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. The NFL has canceled the Bills-Bengals game and will vote today on modifications for the AFC playoffs. Trending brought to you by the 110 Grill, Modern American Cuisine, and the top allergy-friendly restaurant. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEI and WEI.com. So what's going to happen with all of the playoff scenarios here? We'll try to explain it all and continue talking Bills Patriots with you next. The Six Rings Post Game Show.
might be the first acceptable song that is really? on your playlist. You Mary, mean, Mary J. Only, Blige is really good. Yeah, we've only heard like four of them, right? Three. Oh, this is only the third one. Yeah, well, one got was, 11 more. One was by a duplicitous, I mean, you but know. Kanye? Could you, have, could, you have, could you have picked the... Uh, I don't know. What did Jeffrey Dahmer didn't do a song? You couldn't get that in there. Or something do people like that? still listen to Michael Jackson? Uh, he is very different, though. Than yeah, he's worse. Michael Jackson is yes, worse than what Ye he did, what as he, a what person. He, what he did was worse. What he was alleged to have done. True. All right, All right fine. You win that argument. Thank you. <laughs> I was just gonna say that's yeah, a. Although I lean towards this to the other side. Of <laughs> course. No, you lean towards it because you like the song. No, I lean toward, you know, they're, uh, hey, listen, anyone who marries a Kardashian, you really can't, sometimes you can't blame them for what they do. They're like mentally, you know, oh, affected yeah. you're, by the fact that they're a Kardashian. You're Look on, at Lamar Odom. Yeah, you're on board with the whole, <laughs> I know what I'm signing up for uh, and getting into kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, I think that yeah, you enter into a relationship with a Kardashian, you sort of know what it's you're a, it's, getting it's into. It's a love hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even a hate hate relationship. Well, there's aspects of it that I would really love. Yeah, the money and oh, of course, the ample rumpus of <laughs> yes, the Kardashian yes, of ladies. Course, yes. All right, and then that's about it. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. That's then it. I'm, then I'm then I'm done. Draw the line. Then that is it for me. Well, uh, the NFL has said that is it for the Bills Bengals game. Um, so the Bills and the uh, or the NFL has decided that uh, Bills and Bengals they are not going to replay it. And I'm feverishly trying to get to the uh, trying to get to the press release here of how they're going to handle all of this no, hold on here yeah I'm because there, there is a, um it's it's less confusing than i thought it was going to be i'll put it that way because initially i thought this was going to look like it's like like you know something crazy uh, if this happens that happens like you know you see these uh you know playoff projections playoff seedings yeah what ifs i feel like every if this person wins and that person loses and this person goes uh unless this happens it just confuses the hell out of me. All right, so here we go. I'll try to blow through this as quickly as possible and not lose everybody along the way. So you were giving me the, like, what is this actually? You're giving me the so playoff the, scenarios based on the league We're going to educate everybody. Okay. Yeah. Now, by the way, the owners are scheduled to meet this morning to vote on what we're about to kind of go through. Okay, the three options, right? They, yeah, the three options. Okay. Now, there was a report out there that the Bengals were trying to, this sounds like uh, trying to get a Speaker of the House of Representatives know, right? elected, right? They're going right? to vote it for a 12th time. Everybody's going to go, <laughs> no. And uh, so apparently the Bengals were trying to drum up some no votes because the Bengals could uh, lose home field on a coin flip, as you're about to hear. So, it's like high school. The NFL clubs will consider today in a special league meeting a resolution recommended by the commissioner and approved today by the competition committee consisting of two elements. Number one, the AFC championship game will be played at a neutral site if the par participating teams played an unequal number of games and both could have been the number one seed and hosted the game had all AFC clubs played a full 17-game regular season. Those circumstances involve Buffalo or Cincinnati qualifying for the game as a road team and are listed below. So they could go neutral site. So scenario one, Buffalo and Kansas City both win or both tie. A Buffalo versus Kansas City championship game would be at a neutral site. Okay. My guess, Indianapolis. Number two. Okay. Well, because are it's, we, we going to cut the difference? Are we going to be like, hey, what's what's right in the middle of the two? Kind what's, of. So each, you want, each fan base has mm -hmm. the same amount to travel? And you're in a dome, so you don't have to worry okay. about weather Weather's not and a things factor. like that. Okay. Scenario number two. Buffalo and Kansas City both lose, and Baltimore wins or ties – a Buffalo versus Kansas City championship game would be at a neutral site. So that's the other scenario. Scenario three, Buffalo and Kansas City both lose and Cincinnati wins. A Buffalo or Cincinnati versus Kansas City championship game would be at a neutral site. Okay, so those are just for the AFC championship games, which me, quite honestly, 
Those are down the road. This is the one that is a little nutty. Okay. If Baltimore defeats Cincinnati in week 18, okay. it will have defeated Cincinnati, a divisional opponent, twice, but will not be able to host a playoff game because Cincinnati will have a higher winning percentage for the 16-game schedule than Baltimore will for the 17-game schedule. So, if Baltimore defeats Cincinnati, and if those two clubs are scheduled to play a wild card game against one another, the site for that game would be determined by coin toss. Okay, that's why I said high school. I feel like in high school playoffs, you have like uh, the coin toss, you know, solves everything. Like, you ever seen the movie Friday Night Lights? I haven't, but I'm generally aware. Yeah, at the end of it, like, you know, they have to you know, they have to flip a coin to figure out, and the only way the team gets in to get to the whole dramatic ending is because of a coin toss. Um, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Making the best of a bad situation. Yeah, what are you going to do? Thing? So um, I'm actually surprised they didn't, they didn't do that. Maybe because the, the Baltimore um, Cincy is a little bit more contentious. So maybe it's a little bit more. Well, it's for a division title. Yeah. That's the other thing, too. So is how it, do you really. Are you printing merch? Almost division champions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Indianapolis Colts. Okay. We kind of sort of accomplished something, but not really. Right. So wait, so just reading those one, the one I think the option that the league wants. Well, actually, maybe they don't the want option, this. The option the league wants is to not have to move the AFC Championship game. They I don't want they a can, neutral site. They can live with a Cincinnati Baltimore coin flip. Yep. What you don't want is welcome to the AFC Championship game played here in Indianapolis. Okay. So, but the the reality is the most likely outcome is going to be I think it is option 1 where both Kansas City and Buffalo win. Correct. Uh, Kansas City beats the Raiders, and then Buffalo most likely beats the Patriots while they're playing at home. That pretty much guarantees you an AFC championship game at a neutral site if both teams advance. Mm -hmm. Because they're assuming the only way these two teams are going to meet, obviously, is in an AFC championship game. which, which That is probably what's going to happen. Both teams are going to win. You're going to have a rematch of a rematch. It's going to be, you know, what with this? So you had the AFC Championship game, or what, the divisional championship that game last year when they scored like you know 35 points in 10 seconds, something mm-hmm. crazy, you know. And then they had obviously the game where Buffalo beat them. So this would be the third one at a neutral site. So that's going to happen. So uh, I just googled equidistant city between Kansas City and Buffalo, and what comes up. The town that marks the exact halfway point is Warren Hills, Indiana. So that's a stadium why, there. So that's why I say that Indianapolis might be because a. Oh, well, so what? Do, how far are we being, driving? How stop, long of a drive is that? Uh, it say? I don't know. It didn't say. Oh, okay, okay. But it's a couple hundred miles before uh, for each of them easily. Oh, but that's no big deal. But if you think about it too, you know you're going to get the building unless it's booked up with motocross or something yeah. crazy, right? There's no like Big Ten championship game. Uh, it's already <laughs> done. That's right. They're not hosting a college yeah, football playoff, holding, okay. and that's Monday night anyway, yeah. which oh, is probably true, something true. you and I will sink our teeth yeah. into on Monday. But I would think Indiana, and and even with it's Cincinnati and Kansas City or something like that, like it would also make a lot of sense. Do it in an AFC city. It's a place that's held a Super Bowl before. They got a building that you don't have to worry about. Mm-hmm. You got an owner who might not even know there'd be teams playing a game that day in, in <laughs> Ursa. So you're right. The scenarios aren't as terrible. It's like the one that makes me icky. It's like, ah, the come coin on. Toss. We're going to make Cincinnati and Baltimore do a coin toss. And by the way, Baltimore might have beat them twice. Yeah. No, no, I, I know. It, so the real, so the, the good thing, because that's why my my issue was like this is going to be so complicated. It's, there's going to be so many different scenarios, so many traps. But no, it really only affects three teams. Well, actually, uh, well, it affects. Well, if it, you include, well, I think it the only big question: Cincinnati and Baltimore this week. But to your point, in terms of those AFC Championship game scenarios, the only teams. It's it's likely that it's Cincinnati, Buffalo, Kansas City. Two of those three are yeah. going to be in there, and those are the three that are really affected the most. Yeah, so it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. You don't need to move everything back. You don't need to. And this is the NFL competition committee, right? Because it's all about fair play, you know, making sure nobody gets screwed in the process. As sure as hell, here comes Cincinnati trying to back channel their way to make sure that it's not a, <laughs> that they get like, somehow get an advantage, which I knew would happen. And which, oh, by the way, them. do you, bud? I'm glad you said that because I was going to say, do you blame them? 
Now it's time to think. Now it's time to be selfish. Now it's right. time to do what's best for your squad. That's right. We did the right thing. We turned our city into the colors of the Buffalo Bills with thoughts and prayers. We donated. Okay, again, affect it, not connect. I'm sorry, connect it, not affect it. I feel like that's the the phrase of the day. If I can get it line. right, eventually, because yes, we feel terrible, but okay, now he's doing better. Now we know he's gonna like he's out of the woods and he's gonna be healthy. And maybe you know what? Maybe he plays again. That's not out of the that's not out of the realm of possibilities either. So think of this too, okay? Eventual, there are people talking right now, years before their contracts are up, that Cincinnati is not going to have enough money or the owner won't be willing to spend the money to keep both Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase at some point because guaranteed money has got to be put in escrow. And Mike Brown, I mean, when he opens his Start wallet, moths stuff. fly out. Start right? selling stuff. So you, miss, so you miss, your team is really good, but then you miss a home playoff game and all the monies that come with that because you're losing on a coin flip. Now, again, I know we just look at it and be like, well, all the owners are really rich. Well, the Brown family are a little different. It took them forever to sell the naming rights to the stadium. They're not one to spend money, and I don't think there is a ton of money flowing out of either that family to where they're de- – or are they motivated to say, hey, I'll you know rob from Peter to pay Paul or I'll raise $100 million so I can put it in escrow for all this guaranteed money, which, by the way, is stupid to begin with, and we can get to that later. But if you're Cincinnati, you might lose a home game from a coin flip after you've had a, a, a season where you yeah. might win 12 games. I'm nah, with you. What a yeah. kick in the this ball. Is, this is professional football. We have a lot of money. We can do anything we want. We can we can do better than this. A coin toss, a flip of a coin, no. Okay, let's have it at a neutral site also, and let's share the you know the the, the, the parking or and whatever. the revenue, yeah, the yeah. gate receipts. Let's do that. And it, win or lose, it doesn't matter. Now, the winner gets more money. Like the player who wins. Actually, no, that's not true. They both. It's get, all flat now, right? No, well, I think you you it gets up when you advance. Right, so you do get more money the farther you go, but so that so the player it doesn't matter about the players they're going to make the same amount of money no matter what it doesn't matter where they play but ownership has got to be sitting there going well my bottom line says I need an extra you know two point five million dollars I do need you know concessions parking uh, you know a suites you know I, I'm selling these tickets to my you know to my my ticket holders you know we have a lottery every year so that's the one where I'm like we can do better than this. Mm-hmm. You can do better than a than a flip of a coin. You're telling me my future, my livelihood is uh, as a as a grown adult male uh, or female in this business. You're gonna like, and who's gonna flip the coin? Is it gonna be a whole ceremony thing, or we're we gonna do it in like the parking lot somewhere? So for 2022, uh, for the wild card round, uh, division winners get uh, forty six thousand five hundred per player. Other or first round buys, you're getting forty one thousand five hundred. You make the divisional round, it's forty six five to your point for a conference championship sixty nine grand. Super Bowl, the winning team, each player gets a hundred sixty four K. Losing team gets eighty two thousand per yeah. player. Your whole max out when you played was probably around that one forty six, even winning the yeah, Super Bowl. It was right? I mean the yeah, about you know, a hundred and a half, right? I took every last dime <clears throat> that I made. <laughs> no, this is the this is the okay. uh, this is the disciplined smart foyer. This isn't the young stupid one who took his fifteen thousand dollar check and just blew it in Vegas like a dope. Um, oh, another I took, layer of the Vegas. Story. I took every last dime from the two Super Bowls that I won, and all the playoff money and Super Bowl went, uh, money that I made, and I put it in my kids' five twenty nine account. That a boy. Every last dime. Very smart. I just said, listen, they were so young, it made so much sense, and so yeah, so yeah, so now like my daughter, you know, where do you want to go to school? Now all care. your kids are getting scholarships, and you don't have to worry about it now. But I'm, then they get that money, to me. right? Well, now I get taxed that, on it. I was just gonna say, now you're that's, gonna get taxed on it. They've you know been sitting what? on it for idea. twenty years. It's gonna have another kid. Don't we have another kid. What, you want to be Gary Tangway? You want to be 69 years old wheeled <laughs> right. in in a wheelchair for a high school graduation? Go <laughs> Junior! Like Tangway had that one. Gary, <laughs> you're going to be like Souvenir. 68 years old for yeah. crying out loud. <laughs> wheeled in. <laughs> I'm an actor. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that, that no, I, plus, you know, your wife would have to sign up for that too. So No, d- nothing works anymore anyway, so it doesn't matter. All the piping is shut off. Uh, too much? Too much? Yeah. <laughs> 
What do you uh, mean? We should be doing reads for that. No, it's hey. It's, do you not want to? Are you sick of having kids? We're only. Can, can you not control yourself? We're only day four, and I don't know what jokes I can make. Well, so give it a month, and I'll know the appropriate should, response that I know of what I can you. say and get I, away with. I can sell this. Give me you a doctor. Can sell this. Give me. A, listen, hey, are you sick of having kids? Can you not control your own? Uh, you know. You know what I mean. Can you not control yourself? Oh, is your is your <laughs> wanging hanging? Oh, let's get that thing turned off. Good. We're lord. gonna close up everything. <laughs> but no. Ooh, what's that smell? Oh lord. It's flesh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's go to Tom in Rhode Island. Sweet Jesus, Tom, help us. <laughs> All right, Tom's not. Wouldn't it be easier for them to just have the Bills lose the game? Um, since Cincinnati was winning, and wouldn't it have been easier for the league if they had done it that way? Uh, I don't think it would have been in the um, – it would have been tough to say to a football team, you played, what was it, about five minutes left on the clock? So just because you were up 7-3, to three, you know, you it, after playing 10 minutes of football or so, like, it, it would have – Honestly, it would have felt punitive towards the Bills, and I think a lot of people would have revolted publicly if it would have been, well, the Bills were losing the game at the time, so they're done after just 10 minutes of football. And given that it was life and death, I don't think you could have gone down that road. You know what? It's funny. What well, isn't funny? I should make sure I clear that up. Because now, like, now that the DeMar Hamlin looks like he's safe, he's going to be healthy, he's, maybe he gets, you know, released you know, uh, from uh, the hospital. Maybe they um, let him go home. Maybe let him go back to work. There are some rumblings about he might be able to get out of the Cincinnati hospital that he is in relatively soon. Yeah, I, this is my point is like this is why teams just keep playing. They keep playing. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is why they move the drill. This is why they say five minutes. Look, he, yeah, yeah, he's fine. Look at him. There's nothing wrong with him. I was a you know brief scare, but yeah, four days later, he's walking around. He's going to play. That's why they. That's why they usually historically keep playing. Mm-hmm. Like as bad as it looks, as terrible as it is, you know, the guys usually for you know for the amount of you know plays that happen, like you know they 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 usually you know who knows about like lifelong issues. That's another story. But I'm just sitting there going, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who are saying, well, this is why they should have just kept playing. Mm-hmm. He's fine. They let their – or the other aspect of this was that if this was under a different set of circumstances, if this wasn't a electric atmosphere, two good teams going for playoff seating, if it were one o'clock Monday on night Sunday, game, if it were one o'clock they, Sunday afternoon, would okay. this be the case? Mm-hmm. Would they keep playing? I don't think so. Because there was already a, a lot of, a, you know – the crazy attention and you know the atmosphere was insane and there was a lot of buzz around town and then there were the opening monologue from you know Joe Buck and you know Joe and um, uh, um, Aikman was like you know all about how intense this game was how they excited they were I don't know I, I think it's a, a fair you know question would it be different if this was a one o'clock game where nobody was paying attention to it? if this was one o'clock Houston uh you know Tennessee or or Houston I don't know. Give me another crappy team like Philly. I don't know. And, and Jalen Hurts. I mean, uh, you know, Justin Field. Uh, Jalen Hurts wasn't playing, or, or Chicago, where Justin Fields isn't playing. To me, this isn't about who was playing or when they were playing. It's about the fact that a guy had to be revived on the field. This is what happened. Like this guy, I do believe technically, when you think about the heart stopping and all that, this guy was technically dead. And they revived him on the field to get him in an ambulance. That feels like a scenario in which everyone would have been like, okay, the game doesn't really matter anymore, which is what we saw. I I hear you. I get it. But if it were maybe two lesser teams, no big spotlight. There's there's, there's an aspect of, like, being, like, you know, barbarians. There's an aspect of being barbarians and, like, the whole mentality that that's a real thing. You know, that's a real thing. So I, I mean I can I can easily see this happening again, same thing CPR and saying okay let's go, 
But look, remember the last time they were fine. Like, stop worrying about it. Don't you think we'd be a little more desensitized to it, considering we just saw it? I know every time and there's a, that a, every of it time too. a situation comes up like this, and then someone tells me like things have changed. I always get reminded that as as much as they they do change, they stay the same. They stay the same. Well, the last time this happened was 1997 when someone had to get CPR on the field and they scraped him up and said the game went on. But this one didn't. So it did change. It just took 25 yeah. years for an example. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I know they, they're they making a, a point of emphasis now moving forward. Um, just like we make a point of emphasis of trying to help you win some money. And, of course, the Friday lunchtime parlays are always rooted in football, at least for now. Foyer has his own four-leg shot in the dark parlay. We'll give you our lunchtime parlay that'll actually win next. 93.7. I love you, I
You go, Gresh and Fourier. On WEEI. This sounds like they're doing the intros for the ladies of the AVN Awards. <laughs> May. I mean, I would pick this song. Hey, the third song's for free. All right, get your, get your 20 seconds, get your ones out. Let's go. Hey, Mercedes up on stage right now. Hey, give her a round of applause. Hey, coming up with the next song, Sam Smith. That's the way they speak, by the way. Who's this now? Like the the, the, the DJs DJ, in yeah. the strip clubs. Hey, wait, hey, wait, hey, wait, hey, That's what it sounds like for uh, legs and eggs at the Foxy <laughs> yeah. down there. Is that Never what been. it is? Never been. I think it's a little more like uh, how we do it, everybody. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go smoke some cigarettes out back while you watch a Mandy on the main stage. <laughs> Maybe you're right. It's been a while for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's sure. been a while. No, uh, it has been a while. It is time for the lunchtime parlay, ladies and gentlemen. And yes. Christian Foyer has himself a shot in the dark parlay, but let's start with the amateur professionals, first and foremost. Uh, last night's lunchtime parlay, or yesterday's, yeah, not so good. I hit a winner with Vegas, and uh, one bucket caused Billy Lanny to not go over with Jason Tatum. One friggin' bucket. That's all he had to do. Get to 31, couldn't get there. And uh, the Mavericks did not hold up their end of the bargain of pushing the game over to 32. So we're back up on it again. And it's all football. And I am going to go off the grid. Uh Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, on Sunday afternoon, you know you're going to watch a bunch of professional football. However, in Frisco, Texas, there will be the FCS National Championship game between South Dakota State, the favorite, And North Dakota State, who's won it about 20 times in the last 21 years. Give me North Dakota State plus five against South Dakota State. I think South Dakota State's going to win. Ain't no way, in my opinion, North Dakota State gets blown out. So uh, give me the uh, North Dakotas versus the South Dakotas plus the five. Billy, what do you got, Ben? Patriots at Bills. Give me the OVA. 42 points. Why was what's your theory on that? Just quickly, because Buffalo could put up 42 by themselves. Well, there is that, and the weather's going to be okay. Oh yeah, uh, cold but uh, clear. They can deal with that yep. absolutely. And as our guy South Sports told us, Sal Capaccio from WGR up in Buffalo, he was like, "Well, all the snow's gone now, so everybody can move about and all that rain. stuff." Uh, Terp, what do you got, babe? Give me the Packers minus four and a half over the Lions. They're playing host Sunday night football. Packers are playing great football. Jared Goff have to go to Green Bay and upset the Packers. I don't see that happening. I'll take the Packers minus four and a half. I dig it. All right. So those three games themselves, North Dakota State plus five, Patriots bills over, Packers minus four and a half, $10 will win you $59.58. So a multiple of almost six on your $10. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have established here on the new uh, Gresham Foyer program that Foyer doesn't know nothing about <laughs> gambling. However, the man does know football, and uh, the Foyer shot in the dark is a juicy but themed four-leg parlay. Yeah, Foyer, actually, walk I, us through this. I actually call this the Foyer fo- I call this the Foyer four-way parlay. Okay, that's what I'm calling it, right? Because. This theme because because we all know that there's a, there's two ways for the Patriots to get into the playoffs, right? Win and they're in. Beat the Buffalo Bills, you're in. Okay, they're not going to do that. So the only other option, okay, is for three of the other teams that are playing over the weekend to lose. Okay, so that's what our bets are going to be themed around. So you start with Tennessee at Jacksonville. Okay, and we're going to use the money line for every single one of these games. You pick, so I got picking winners. That's, that's right. So I got Tennessee over the Jags at plus two twenty-five. The Pats at the Bills. Take the Bills. Take the Bills because you got to take the Bills because you know they're going to lose uh, at minus three hundred five. And then the Jets are traveling down to Miami. I don't know who the hell is going to play quarterback. I don't even think it even matters. Miami is done. They started eight and three. They thought all their problems were solved, but sure as hell they can't win a game now. So take the Jets at plus one thirty-five. And then the Browns at the Steelers. This one is probably like a kind of a toss-up, but I'm thinking that the Browns are going to be able to do it, and that's plus 120. There's your Fourier four-way parlay. You bet $10, you make $189.57. Wow! That is, oh, no, I'm that telling you, is I, 
Burn. would make this bet. If you really want to, like, test yourself and do something that can actually happen, take Tennessee, take the Bills, take the Jets, and take the Browns, and then call me on Monday and then send me my share. Well, that's not how it works, but okay. What? Wait, it doesn't? No. Wait, so... Really? You're helping people. So I get people. nothing. You're helping people. So I need to make – I am going to make this bet. I'm going to make this bet. What if they gave him the buy-in? They gave him – say they put $10. They give Fourier the $10. No, no. Ten. We're Buy all – we're givers here. We're givers. That's I what will, it is. I will give – I will bet the 10 bucks if you make the bet when you're in Rhode Island. When oh, I could home. do that for okay. you. I yeah. want to make. I would actually. I got plenty in my I account. I would put a hundred on this. What would a hundred make us? Well, a hundred would then make you one thousand eight hundred ninety dollars and fifty-seven cents. I would do cents. this in a second. This are is going to happen. Are you good for the hundred, or am I going to be chasing you? I'm going to have to have to tackle you, you in the hallway. If you put a hundred on there, okay. You put a hundred on. Give me a hundred back, and then uh, we will we will split the winnings. Oh well, now you're scratching where I itch. Okay. We will split it, guys. You, you and I. I'm in. I'm okay, in. we'll split it four whoa, ways. Whoa, 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 whoa! You said split with me. I split with them. Well, I, I rose. What's going I raised on my here? Hand and I went you like raised this. your hand because I'll you're take lunch. <laughs> well, okay, right, listen. We'll, there you go. We He's... will split it. No, and you'll we'll buy you get lunch. lunch. I'll get lunch. Yeah, I'll do it. I have a protein shake. <laughs> I will Venmo you hundred bucks like right now. I don't have that. Oh God! What is wrong with you? What is wrong with me? How do you? How do people send you money? Uh, like either with a check or a, a wire check? transfer or whatever. Gosh, you strike me as a book? cash guy. No, no I don't. Really? No, 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 not really. You don't have Venmo. Gonna, no, I don't have Venmo. I think my wife's got that stuff. I don't worry about it. Oh, it's the best. Especially if you want, if you want to bet. Who all would stuff? I be transferring money to? I if don't I know. Do that, like that's me, right. You and I. So like all back I got and forth. It, when it's time for me to put money in my sportsbook Rhode Island account, you know what I do? I, I it's all set up. It just plug, pulls oh, out my hundred bucks or I whatever. Venmo you money. It's so easy. It takes two seconds. Like, Bam, Gresh. Give me your wife's Venmo account. I'm gonna send her a hundred bucks. I gotta figure that out. Oh my god. I don't know. Off You're top worse my head. than I am. No, you I are know worse than I am. I know it's there, but how do I have a Venmo account and you don't? Because you got twelve kids. Well, true, <laughs> true. You got mine kids. Are, mine are older, but they're only they're mine when I want to claim them. Man. <laughs> That's the good part about being a step. Sometimes they tell you to get out of the room, and sometimes you can walk out of the room. That's why she's got the account to send them the money, because that way it keeps it from me bitching at her. There's no trace of it either. Well, there is that too. What still, what, there's no paper trail. I was just going to say, now what are we doing? Are we going to Antigua now with these uh, bank accounts? Oh, man. We roll into the lunchtime hour. Patriots and Bills for a playoff berth. We continue breaking down this game with you next.
WEEI-FM and HD1, Lawrence, Boston. Always live on the free Odyssey app. This hour aggression for you is brought to you by FindMassMoney.com. Patriots Friday is brought to you by 110 Grill by Arbella Insurance. Arbella, here for New England, here for good. By Catches Law Group, New England's personal injury pros at CatchesLaw.com. By Time Out Market, Boston's best eating and drinking destination in Fenway, all under one roof. By Twisted Tea, keep it twisted, New England. And by FindMassMoney.com. It's fast, easy, and free. Watch us, love us. Just follow WEEI on Twitch. Gresh and Fourier on WEEI. Oh. Lunchtime hour, aggression, foyer, 12.04 is the time. Hello, New England. Snowy New England. Is it snowing right now? You see on the uh, Twitch chat, a little bit of uh, spitting snow. Huh. I figured that uh, you'd be all over it, and I'm assuming this was not your pick. This, I'm going to guess that what? that song no, no. that you just played <laughs> was the one that your daughter chipped into yes, you when you yes, asked yes, her the yes. other day. Who's that? Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, she's got some... Decent stuff, you know, but yes, it was a group effort. I think I'd give you your $100 back if you could name one other Olivia Rodrigo song other than the one we just heard. Uh, then again, I don't know any of them, so I have no idea. I, I tell you what, I couldn't name them, right? but I would easily recognize them and it could sing along. Oh, okay. I mean, I've taken road trips where That's every single song, replay, replay, Alexa, play, Alexa, play, like that, that thing in the morning all the time. Here it comes again. She's always upset at some guy that's doing something dirty to her. Or, no, wait. What? Not something dirty. What? To her. Doing her dirty, like bad. Doing it like being mean, being nasty, like being a so jerk. So it's yes, it, not it, doing something the, dirty to her. It's the Taylor Swift model of the <laughs> "You did me wrong, so I'm gonna write a song oh about it." Oh my god! Yeah, it's, it's like a if she was a country singer, she'd be a modern day George Jones. $10 shake in the Twitch chat said she's a smoke, just not a fan of her music. Yeah, that's fine. I can uh, I can buy that. J-Lamp in the Twitch chat says a good heavy snow falling up here in New Hampshire. Okay. My so they're state. supposed to get it a little, uh, a little uh, north, but I know you're focused on the traffic in the Twitch chat and everything, so I saw that it's at least spinning out there. It's not bad right now. It's not bad, but I got to um, – what you'll learn from me is that one of the things I hate more than life itself is traffic. I despise it. I hate it. I grew up in it. It was part of my daily routine going to school. I, I, I hate it. And I've not have to, I haven't had to deal with a real bad traffic situation in a long time other than the last three, four days. 
Starting to lose it. Again, it's the first week. It's not going to get any better. It won't get better till the summer. I, That's I can, when it gets better. It lightens up in the summer. Why but there, are you, different, there are different ways to manage it, though. That's what I You gave me some suggestions. Yes. I took your advice. Yep. And it was a little bit better. Jay Lamp says, uh, two days in a row for you complaining about traffic. We don't care, buddy. You live in a city. We have no sympathy. I don't, here's the thing. I don't live in a city. I live in, like, the country. I live on a mountain. <laughs> no. At the top of I a live, mountain. No, I don't. Where my children will get married there and you won't be invited. No, there's animals. There's lots of, you know, like, coyotes. There's deer all over the place. Like, there's nothing to do where I live. Like, absolutely nothing to do. Like, it sucks. <laughs> I want to move. Here I would move go. to the city. Now we're going to If I had my way, if I had my way, if I had my way, You'd I would live, live right, right across the street. Absolutely. Oh, my God. I would walk to work. I would get here. I would take me three minutes to walk here. I'd press in my little button to get into the gate, and bam, there we go. So here's what you do. You try to sell your family on having the apartment in the city. So that way you look, can Like, just, I have my own, like, yeah, getaway. Not flop a house. chance in hell. No farm way. animals? Anybody into farm animals? <laughs> <laughs> I would have my own. No, nope, not going to happen. Uh, Patriots and the Bills are going to play on Sunday afternoon in Orchard Park, New York, and it will be emotional. Sean McDermott told the story uh, earlier today as I look up and see on NFL Network with our duplicitous pond scum friend, Mike Giardi. <laughs> there he is. Who's uh, been there all week. What a great place for Giardi to be stuck. Actually, we love the guy. He's a no, really good dude. I great. love picking on him. But yeah. uh, I know that uh, Sean McDermott told – uh, the assembled reporters about the team's reaction from hearing this morning from Damar Hamlin, who popped up on the big screen in the team meeting room, and apparently he did the old double bicep pose. I love you guys. All really? that. And McDermott told the story of, hey, he kind of did the double flex and things like that. And you and I have talked all week about the emotion of this game. And now it feels like it's going to go to another level now that DeMar Hamlin has had the breathing tube removed and his teammates have heard from him. Seeing him is one thing. Hearing from him is another. Uh, today's Friday, right? Today's Friday. It is. Getaway day. No, actually, On... you're supposed to be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. You and Curtis can so, do a show. Kendall take yeah. the day off. On Wednesday, who, which team, Patriots or Bills, had the advantage in this game? On Wednesday? On Wednesday. Patriots. How about Thursday? Mm, it was teetering, but still Patriots. How about now? Bills all the way. Absolutely. It has swung. The pendulum has swung. And that, to me, is such an important aspect of this game. It's something that the that the the players needed to see. Hey, it's okay to smile again. It's okay to be happy again. It's okay to not worry about me again. It's okay. Like Even like yesterday... You know, during that press conference, like Josh Allen was just talking. Like one of the quotes, and I'm paraphrasing here, was like, "You replay it in your mind over and over again." Like he talked about how many times he replayed that moment in time in his head, and like how much it was still affecting him. To the point where I was like, "Uh oh, maybe he's not recovered as much as I thought he was." But now it's today. Now they're talking again, and he's more of this, more of that, and everybody's happy, and everybody's kind of. I think everybody's like comfortable saying that he's going to be okay. Uh, I agree. Or at least you as a player or a teammate of his can start to feel that way that, hey, this guy may never play football again, but he's going to be walking among us. Yeah. And I think for those guys in that room, that is very much a big deal. Now, Michael Irvin joined us yesterday. Playmaker yep. for your first chat with the playmaker Love here. Him. My he's, favorite guest. He's fantastic. And uh, he did, though, say maybe all that emotion could backfire on the Bills. I fully expect those guys to be at an all-time, I mean an all-time high level of playing in emotions and everything. And we're playing this game for DeMar. We're going to do it for him. We, we're keeping them in our thoughts the whole ride on this whole journey, this whole playoffs. I expect them to be riding high with that. And boy, that that is going to be a tough, a, a, a tough emotional high for the Patriots to reach. But sometimes you even go in a situation like this, you're so emotional by game time. And I'm not saying this to be the case with the Buffalo Bills. I don't know, but by game time, you, you, you can be exhausted because there's so much emotions that have gone into the whole week 
all week you think about all the emotional rides, the emotional roller coaster, man. You get the game this Sunday, you're exhausted. So it can swing both ways. What do you make of that, that they could burn out early first quarter, meaning the Bills? Yeah, so I, I, I thought about that, and I was like, okay, if they were a young, inexperienced team, absolutely. Don't know how to handle it. Too immature. Can't handle the can't handle the moment. So if it were Jacksonville, let's absolutely. Say. If it was a uh, Houston, whatever. Name a team that hasn't accomplished anything that doesn't have real strong leadership. The Jets. The, absolutely. Um, not the Bills. Not the Bills. Strong, strong um, locker room. Strong leadership before this. Um, a lot of purpose before the season even started. Uh, a, a head coach that has a the ability to kind of explain himself. And not get caught up in you know things that don't matter, um, and uh, yeah, that's so. I say no. I say this makes it you know worse for the Patriots. I'm like, uh oh, you had an advantage because you were connected but not affected, and that doesn't mean that you don't care. It just means, well, I mean, we're paying attention to it, but I don't know him. I've never met him. He's not in my locker room. He's he's not in my meeting rooms. I don't ride the bus with him. I don't see him at dinner. I don't see him at pregame meal. I don't know his wife. I don't know his kids. I don't know his family. So I feel terrible for the situation. And, yes, this is an NFL community, but I am not really affected like the Bills are. So I have an advantage because I can focus on my playbook. I can practice without worrying about something. And uh, coach is telling me to practice and, you know, play like we're going to play the game. I think we're going to play the game. Not anymore. I think I think, I think think uh, it was going to be a tough Game for them to win under normal circumstances, I am like convinced they will just get just get beat down. The I Patriots, do. will. I think the Patriots will lose convincingly. Last time you played them, it was twenty four to ten, and they scored a the Patriots scored a touchdown in the first quarter, and it took them till the fourth quarter to get like an oh by the way here's three points. Nick Folk kicked the field goal, okay, but it was out of reach. It was never really you know in doubt who was going to win that game. I felt like the the Buffalo Bills were just toying with you. Like, they, could, if they wanted to kind of pull, like, a, you know, just get real mean and nasty, they could do it. Well, there's a uh, texter out of the uh, 774. Yeah, we get it. Momentum. You've talked about it for hours. We get it. Buffalo will play tough. This is a different kind of emotion, though. This is really, and Michael Irvin hit on it, it's going to be the play for DeMar throughout the whole playoffs. <laughs> but when you're coming off of, Six days earlier. Now, I don't know about the 774. Maybe he just steps over dead bodies in their line of work and doesn't even think twice. Or maybe you're a pet cremator and you don't care. You don't look at the dog's face, you throw it in the oven. Maybe you're one of those heartless people, 774. But they watched their teammate die on the field and then brought back the life who <laughs> is now crazy. talking to them. That is a level of emotion that really... No other team in NFL history has really ridden before. That's why it's such a big deal. That's why it's so important to this game. Because in a lot of ways, it's not... If the Patriots have a Herculean effort, they could play their best game of the year and still lose. Yeah. The real question is, will the Bills come out and be overwhelmed by everything that they went through? That's why that side of this really matters. Because you know what? There might not be anything the Patriots could do. They might score 40, but lose 42-40 because of that emotion. Then again, if it's a tough game, how are the Bills going to respond? You know what they're going to do in the fourth quarter? They're going to say, we watched a guy die that we love, and they brought him back to life. We're not losing this game. You cannot manufacture that on a week-to-week -week basis. That's why 774, it matters, regardless of your objections. 617-779-7937. Celts played Dallas last night, and Foyer sent us a screen grab of something during the game that perplexed him. We will get to all that next, but here's Billy ready to trend. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Jason Tatum's triple-double helped give the Celtics a 124-95 win over the Dallas Mavericks last night. Tomorrow night, the Seas will face the Spurs in, in San Antonio. Bruins got a pair of goals from both Trent Frederick and David Pasenak and a goal from Brad Marchand to get the 5-2 win over the Los Angeles Kings last night. Ford Jake DeBrus is expected to miss four weeks after being placed on the long-term IR. 
The Bees are in San Jose to take on the Sharks tomorrow night. According to Sham Sharania, the breathing tube is out of Damar Hamlin as of this morning, and he's begun talking to Buffalo Bills teammates again. Sean McDermott and Jason Josh Allen addressed the media yesterday and said they'll be ready to face the Patriots on Sunday, kickoff at 1 p.m. The NFL has canceled the Bills-Bengals game and will vote today on the modifications for the AFC playoffs. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEI and WEI.com. Celtics played Dallas last night. Foyer's got an issue, and at 1230, we'll talk some Bruins with Andrew Raycroft. That is all next. Patriots QB.
original everywhere you go. What the hell is this? Let this one go. It's like a cow. I feel like I'm watching a show on Nickelodeon. Where's Keenan Thompson to come out? You don't like this one? I like this one. It's literally called Din Dada. <laughs> Din Dada by George Krantz. Pasternak will like this. All right, now he that I'll agree with. He would like this. You mean? You're like, let it play, boys. You let mean it go. he'd be standing there with his glow sticks <laughs> yeah. doing his oh, thing? Oh, he would love this. I'm surprised he doesn't, like, you know, skate out to this or something. Now, I know that when NBA teams go into Atlanta, there's always the worry that stuff like this will be playing until 6 in the morning in oh, one yeah. of the players' hotel rooms. And, you know, there might be a fake DJ in there or <laughs> or a bodyguard with a bunch of ladies that are there to entertain. Let's put it that way. Uh, and, you know, Atlanta has some trappings. I don't know if Dallas is that way. Yes, it is. Houston definitely is. Dallas is, absolutely. Uh, but uh, the Celtics had no issues in Dallas last night getting a win 124 95 in the battle of Tatum versus Luca chalk up a big one for Jason Tatum Luca Doncic 23 points nine rebounds three assists Jason Tatum a triple double 29 14 and 10 so not only foyer do the Celtics get the win but in terms of the folks nationally they got to see a big difference between Tatum and Luca last night yeah I mean I still would say, like, if, if you were going to say, okay, pick uh, Luca's worst game, that was probably it. He didn't hit a three-pointer. He was off from the beginning of the game. It looked like he was playing up this whole what, whatever it was he had. He was really playing it up a little bit. He had an issue with his ankle. He leaves the game. He comes back. They retape it. Then he takes his time coming back in. Then when he comes back in, he's just – nothing was hitting. You know, he still had 23 points. But, again, like, his shooting percentage was terrible. Hell, the entire Mavs team's uh, shooting percentage was terrible. It was one of the worst opponents' shooting percentage the Celtics have gone against all year. Yeah, you have to go back to the early days of Luka in 18 and 19 to find him playing as bad as he did last night because in November, right before Thanksgiving, uh, Luka had 42 and 8 rebounds in a game against the uh, Celtics again right before Thanksgiving. So you're right. They did the, the end. It was Jalen Brown who wanted to play defense against old uh, Luka Doncic there, jamming himself into that discussion. Oh, the MVP candidates? Well, let me find a way to wedge in. So you feel like he wasn't part of like the, the, the pregame graphics or the, you know, the TNT discussion. So he's like, huh, how do I stay relevant? I know. I'll take the best offensive player in the world right now. I'll take a Luka for, you know, four quarters. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Sure as hell. Game starts. He gets two quick fouls. Then he gets a third. And then that was kind of it for him. But it didn't matter because it was like, like I don't think Luka was disrupted because of Jalen. Like, he was drawing fouls and he was hitting his free throws. He was disrupted because he just couldn't. He was just off. I yep. think it was more about him being off than it was defense. Yeah, I think uh, the defense played in it a tiny bit, much more team defense. You know, yeah. Celtics hold a team to under a hundred, which is the first time that they have done that in a while in a game where they blow doors and play the way they did offensively, putting up 124 points. However, and for those of you watching on Twitch, hopefully we'll be able to uh, bring this up for you. Christian Fourier in our Twitch chat, or in, in our, excuse text me, chat. in our text string at, uh, <laughs> I was up early this morning, 558 AM. Uh, were you up? Who was up? Raise your I hand. was up. Raise I was in the shower. Billy, all of us were up. Yeah. You know who wasn't? Wow. My wife with my phone on the other side See, of the room on saying to me, who is effing texting you at 6 AM? So well, you guys, you, wait, on you guys one. are texting late at night, and I had to like shut it down. I like, I'm like, uh, -uh I'm done. The last one I sent was like 10:30. That is not, and you responded by the way. You Did were I? awake, yeah. Huh. Anyway, I don't remember. So Fourier <laughs> saw something during the game that yep. uh, made him say, "Wait a minute, I thought people hated a certain NBA player." Yeah. So the All Star voting, I guess the the prelims. Would you call it the prelims? For the All Star voting, uh, and they 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 showed this graphic on the screen, and it says All Star voting returns. Okay, then it has the East front court, 
with Kevin Durant uh, being the leader with 3.12 uh, million votes, and then Giannis, and then Joel Embiid, and then Jason Tatum with 2.18 million for the East front court, right? They label it front court even though, I don't know, like is Jason Tatum a center? It looks like they're all centers, but whatever, doesn't matter. And then you have the East guards being next, and Jalen Brown is last with just over a million votes. But the number one guard with the most votes from the fans is Kyrie Irving. At two point zero seven million, I listen. I thought every. I thought we were supposed to hate Kyrie Irving. I thought Kyrie Irving was supposed to be canceled. I thought he was a terrible human being. I thought he was disconnected from reality. He is. I thought all he cared about was himself. He does. But sure as hell, he's the number one vote getter amongst guards in the NBA in the East. The number one. I know. Listen, he's playing good. I'll give him that much. But I always felt like this was more of a a popularity contest. Mm-hmm. I felt like the fans were going to vote for the people who, you know, obviously you can't have any issues. You can't have any national attention. You can't be suspended for being insensitive. Like, that was him less than, like, over, a little over a month ago, wasn't mm-hmm. it? And then they went but on, now- what, an 11 or a 12-game win streak? And they play in Brooklyn. When did Brooklyn become, like, you know, Chicago or L.A. or Dallas? But like, you're- it's Brooklyn. It's not the Knicks. It's right. not... But you're, Madison Square Garden. Well, first of all, you want to find, hey, go find a Nick fan. They hate that team. They <laughs> hate their owner, all that stuff. I know, but it just. Well, here's the thing. Wait, am I off? Um, A little because I think the all-star voting, like there are people out there that are vocal that don't like Kyrie Irving. But, you know, just like me running again, 2024, lots of people out there love me. I lost with 75 million votes. I'm not making fun. What I'm saying is is that there's a lot of people out there and a lot of people that are going to stuff the ballot box. And you know what connected with me when I saw that graphic again? There were two guys from Philly, two guys from Brooklyn, two guys from Boston. Three of the bigger cities. So I don't necessarily Mitchell. So I don't necessarily think it is a stamp of approval on the scum that is Kyrie Irving. It is the the contrarian vote a little bit as well. And he plays on a team that kind of got hot. And, oh, by the way, plays a Kevin Durant. I just feel like it's just amazing to me who's, like, how we pick and choose, how we cherry pick who's still allowed to be part of the, the group effort. Right? Oh, yeah. And who isn't. So well, you cherry we pick quickly. this guy. You forget about that guy. Yeah. Like, you just we literally do. just said, oh, you what? I don't remember. He's really, I like him now. Like, it's like he's beloved, yet he's a pariah. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. No, it Just, is. It's, it's it stood was, out to me as weird. Listen, I'm the glad you brought it vote, up. The number one vote getter, Gresh. Not like of third guards. or fourth. Of right. guards. Yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. crazy. No, you're right. It does go to show how. That's why the guy's going to get another shoe deal. Oh, yeah. That's right. They took away a shoe deal. They took away all this stuff from him like over like a little less, like, less than two months ago. And here he is, the, the most popular guard in the East amongst by fans, fan voting. It's amazing what an 11 or 12 game win streak will do for you. It's like uh, Antonio Brown playing with Tom Brady. He doesn't look as bad as long as Brady's there. Until he takes his shirt off and well, just goes crazy. If you had those abs, you would too. It was the greatest go suck it you know, exit in the world has ever seen. The great take this job and shove <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, the best take this job and shove it. It oh. really was. Like he should have just gone all like bad news bears, like taking off his pants too and climbed up into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen the bad? You ever seen the bad news? Well, I did. Okay, but what's he? What would he be pointing with? Uh, it was the center field, though. <laughs> That's right. He made a couple errors. He ran up into right? the tree, uh, and then because yeah, uh, he didn't think Hank Aaron made errors. That's right. <laughs> Hank Aaron made a hundred twenty-five errors one year. <laughs> Let's talk hockey. Joining us now on the Harbor One Hotline is our friend from Nesson, Andrew Raycroft. He is brought to us by Shaw's and Star Market, bringing people together around the joys of food. By John Sewer and Drain, cleaning the name to know when your drains don't flow. And by Frank's Red Hot. Visit franksredhot.com for great hockey and football watching recipes. Let's frank it up. Our buddy Andrew Raycroft, the Razor, on the Harbor One Hotline with Gresh and Fourier. Razor, I'm going to say that when you uh, left the team that you played for in Italy, that you went Antonio Brown and took it all off and skated off. Your thoughts? <laughs> um, almost. I mean, I, I, I definitely didn't bring any of my hockey equipment home. That all stayed over in Europe. It, it was just left there. Um, but, but I did keep my clothes on until uh, I got off the ice. Hey, I'm curious, real quick. Sorry, Gresh. The um, the voting for the you know NHL All Star Game. How does it work with the players? Like, is it 
is it is there one guy that rolls around and says vote for this guy, vote for this guy, or is that or has it changed since you were playing? No, it's changed. The, the players don't really don't don't have any say at all. This year they just changed it again. They change it every year. Wait, you, wait year, the- you don't have a say on who plays in the All Star game, like at all. There's not like a no. team vote to say who should be the you know the first center, the goalie, especially no. since you have all the experience to to figure out who is the best. No, I mean that's 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 way too easy to actually ask the people that really <laughs> know who the best players are to to put people in it's obviously these NA, these all-star games I, this one's going to get out of control because this year the the league picked the top 32 or one from each team so Linus Hallmark was chosen yesterday for the NHL all-star game for the Bruins and now they're letting the fans vote on Twitter and everywhere else uh awesome. for the next 12 spots so we're gonna like there's a like go vote for me. Let's see if you can get me <laughs> into the All Star game. All right, let's let's uh, see if we can get me can into the All Star game. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so that there's gonna be probably twelve fourth liners that that end up. It's I, it it gets nerve wracking <laughs> from watching from afar to see what what is actually gonna happen. But but vote Razor for All Star game. Oh man, what, what was the guy that wasn't there? Some dude, John Scott. Yeah, yep. that's it. They voted oh, the him big in. Guy, yeah. yeah, amazing. They voted the goon in, and then he won the truck. Like, like <laughs> the guys decided to keep feeding him. He had a hat trick in the game. He got the MVP. They carried him off. Like, <laughs> what a debacle! <laughs> it's gonna happen again. Oh, oh, that would be amazing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nick Foligno, your All Star <laughs> yeah, Game MVP. Exactly. <laughs> oh no, exactly. Oh, listen, hey, exactly. if you want to send a message, though, I mean, we're kidding right now, but if you want to send a message of like how irritate the players you know, make a mockery of it on purpose and then teach the you know teach the owners a lesson exactly exactly um uh, i'm all for it i mean just get let get the best guys in it. if some of the guys don't want to like alex ovechkin and Sidney crosby have been going for 20 years like maybe give them a break let the young guys go and do a fancy <laughs> move in the shootout let sid and ovi go sit on the beach for a couple of days like Switch it up. Well, Trent Frederick looked like an all-star last night. Two goals there, Razor, uh, in the Bruins 5-2 win against L.A. I know that with Jake DeBrusque out, we had Pasta moving up. We had Hall moving up. You reunite that uh, group with Charlie Coyle, and all three lines, I thought, looked pretty good last night. However, I do not have trained eyes like you do. What did you see in last night's win? Well, it was that it was their best sixty minutes in a few weeks. They played really well. I know a lot of people didn't stay up last night. I, I probably wouldn't have either if I hadn't needed to work. So they they played a full sixty last night, and coming off the Winter Classic and and all the pomp of that week, to be able to dial it back in and go out west, fly six hours, and and, and dial up a really good sixty minutes is what is why this team's so impressive. And and it goes to Jake DeBrus, the top right winger uh, on the top line I should say maybe not the top but uh, the right winger comes off the top line David moves up Trent Frederick checks in on the third right wing and he scores two goals gets into a fight gets the team going it's just how good this team is how much depth this team has and 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 how they can again score three goals in the third period their goal differential in the third period now is up to plus 34 in 38 games and in the last five games, they've outscored teams 10-2 to 2 in the third period. Um, these are crazy numbers. Like, the NHL is a really hard league, guys, and to score in the third period should be really difficult in tight games, but the Bruins make it look easy. Yeah, and that was going to be my question because, you know, hockey, you know, us, us hockey guys, us insiders, you know, yeah. we, like to, we like to come up with cool <laughs> nicknames. <laughs> we like to come up with cool <laughs> nicknames for our lines. You know, and the, the thing <laughs> – the thing that stands out to me is like the third period. You listed all those crazy, they're like unheard of. These stats are, these third period stats are unheard of. So, you know, when Gresh and I were talking about it earlier, you call it like a killer instinct. I, was, I feel like it's this, like a light switch period. It's like, all right, okay, let's put them out. Hey, guys, hey, boys, let's flip the switch, huh? And let's go get them. I mean, I feel like <laughs> that is what they do. And I feel like there's got to be something about that that, uh, it, that allows them to believe that that's always in their back pocket, okay? We're not, uh, we're playing good, but you know it's it's tied and it's two two and sure as hell in the third period they just just take over. Yeah, and, and so the, the analogy I was thinking of this morning, uh, I talked to my buddy, huge Cowboys fan, and he's been he's been not sleeping for three weeks, knowing that he's gonna they're gonna end up playing Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. 
And if they're not up by 24 points going into the fourth quarter, Brady's coming back and beating the Cowboys in the first week of the playoffs. <laughs> That's what the Bruins are. You have to be up on the Boston Bruins 3 nothing minimum going into the third periods to beat them because otherwise, if it's two goals, they're coming back and then they'll win in a shootout. They're going to win in overtime. If it's one goal, forget it. If it's tied, you have no chance. And so it feels like the 2008 Patriots where – if you're not up by 25 points, these guys are coming back, and, and they're never out of the game. And that that mentality, that ability, that confidence goes so far in, in the game of hockey, especially that that's where these guys are at right now. And it's just they're just so hard to put away. Uh, Andrew Raycroft of Nesson here with Gresh and Foyer on WEEI, and of course you can get us anytime, anywhere on the Odyssey app. Uh, Razor, I watched uh, Marshy get tripped and then uh, lose his mind. He smacked his stick on the ice. He yelled at the ref. He got an unsportsmanlike for his actions. Uh, your thoughts on not only the way Marshan reacted, but the fact that he got an unsportsmanlike. Well, no, it was it was good. It was Brad's been he's been grinding. I thought his first period last night was awesome. The trip was a legit trip. Now, sometimes we've seen Brad go off the rails for minimal things. This was a legit trip. He was mad. He wanted to get the guys going. He broke his stick into a hundred million pieces. Took the unsportsmanlike, and and it really changed the game. It got guys going in the second. They were down one nothing at the time. They killed the penalty. Brad came out and had four amazing shifts and assists, and then he scored the goal uh, on the power play five seconds in. So it was good emotion from Brad Marshawn. That's, those are the, the unsportsman likes that, that make him the player that he is. So uh, this road trip, I'm just thinking here, okay, so they got San Jose on Saturday, and then they go to Anaheim, right? They go, it's weird. They go north, so they're south, yeah. they're north, and then they go south again. Um, your favorite road trip would be where? Well, L.A. is right at the top. If, yeah. if you can find a – even better, usually when I went out there, we'd make it – it was like a four- or five-game trip. So this one this one kind of stinks for the guys. It's pouring rain in California all week. So to go to L.A., then up north and then back to Anaheim. But the good trips were when you would go out on a Wednesday and play, you know, Friday night in L.A., Saturday or Sunday in Anaheim, then San Jose and then Phoenix maybe. Uh, those that they're going out west or, or the Florida trip, those were always the best in the curfew. NFL. Do, they, do they give you curfew? I mean, I, I mean, they do in the NFL. I'm curious, like, do the, you guys have curfew yeah. and bed check? No, no bed check. There was a you know, the night before, don't be a knucklehead. But if you had a couple days off, you, you, you knew what the flashing green light was when you went out to LA. It's kind of that. You, you get to have a little bit of fun <laughs> if it's a few days in between. <laughs> oh man, that I just brave. figured. I, that's, no, that's I just brave. I just figured when you went to the West Coast on a road trip like this, you brought your golf clubs and got in as many as you could. Well, I did that. I, I at the end of my career, I we were in we were in Dallas. We had a good golf group, so we could get the 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 clubs underneath the plane without the coaches knowing, and we'd have it all teed up for for a few road trips. Um, especially in the West Coast, because you're going to you're coming east a lot. So we got some golf in at the end of my my career in Dallas. I'll tell you what, Doc Rivers was so into golf and that whole big three. He was just like, yeah, load them up on the plane. Everybody brought their yeah. stuff like they did. Doc was just like, yeah, I want to go play too. I don't even understand that lifestyle. Like, honest to God, I can't even comprehend like how a hockey hockey players. It, I mean, I'm assuming you're driving a cart, but still, I feel like do I want to be on my feet all this? Like, I feel like that would drive that would like wear you down. No. Well, it's only on day. You're not playing day. Well, some of the legendary guys played day of, yeah, um, but dude. but we weren't day of. We would be the in between days, and you'd practice, and then go ahead. You know, walk around, have a couple, and, you know, get get some fresh air. Better than better than the old sitting in a movie theater all day or something. You're yeah. actually being active that and, and getting ready. That, that, was, that was our. That was me. Before you went to the mall a lot, I did. I did. I just Lots walked of around shopping for for your significant others no no i didn't buy anything i just literally just walked Fruit. around <laughs> look at that Ooh, sharper image let's go cart. let's go sit in the uh, uh reclining massage chair let, again. Me, <laughs> let me go buy a let me go buy a who farted t-shirt the boys will love this <laughs> right spencer's into spencer's exactly Raz <laughs> razor we know you've been busy this week buddy thank you we appreciate it i know we will uh, catch you next week and we'll get uh, right back to the tickle trunk at the uh, normal time on thursday 
Sounds great, gang. Have a good weekend. There we go. Thanks, Razor. Andrew Raycroft breaking down a little hockey and a little grab ass here (laughs) with uh, Gresh and Foyer. We see you on the line talking about Damar Hamlin, everything with the NFL and Roger Goodell and Phil in Maine. Would maybe do the Patriots have a chance? But at some point, we are going to have to ask the question. Is this the final game for Devin McCourty and Matthew Slater? We'll get into all of that with you next. 93.7. I love you, man.
All right, let me ask it this way. If that player who might be retiring had a twin brother who traveled all the way to potentially see his last game at Gillette Stadium, would that would, could we indi- could we get any indication from that? Well, no, because if that was the case, you should probably travel to Buffalo in case this is my last game <laughs> overall, too. So and he told me he's not going to Buffalo. So uh, I don't know. I wouldn't take it as that strong of an indication. <laughs> So that was Devin McCourty from earlier today on the Greg Hill Show. He was all uh, chuckle up Jones about, uh, hey, good movie ha, 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 maybe it's not my last game. Maybe it is. Oh, even when we were talking to Adrian Phillips, hey, P, what's up? He's in a good mood. They look like uh, they're all down in the dumps and really bummed out that we had to let that song go. But anyway, it's one of my favorites. But uh, he's not down in the dumps. He's not upset. He's not, like, preoccupied. Right? Seems like they're, you know. No, they're okay. And I think, hey, look, we now have the Cincinnati Bengals. And there's a, so, you know, just quickly from uh, Zach Taylor on this from uh, Kelsey Conway, who I guess covers uh, Cincinnati out there. Zach Taylor on the playoff scenarios. What's in front of us is to win this weekend. From what I'm concerned, we just want the rules to be followed. Bengals are not happy the NFL changing the rules and not going by winning percentage. It's black and white. It's in the rule book. So to your point, it was at first, let's make sure that DeMar Hamlin is okay. Now, if you're not a Buffalo Bill, it is let's get back to the business of what we do. Do you think this is Devin McCourty and Matthew Slater's last games respectively? I definitely think that it's Devin McCourty's last game. I think he is done. I think... You know, like some of these other, you know, professional, successful, well-respected, lots of credibility players, they move off into the media, but not like a, like you know, an, uh, not like an ESPN, like you know, two a day, twice a week analyst. We're talking, you know, Michael Strahan's type level. You know, his brother's on five days a week, all over the place, or sending him all over the place for Good Morning Football. McCordy's got that type of ability. Now, maybe it's a. Maybe And I don't think he wants to call games. I don't think that's a, hey, let's call games type of deal. I think he has will have more options than most. And then th- the reality is could probably make just as much money doing TV and other things, you know, in, in media uh, than he is playing football. Michael Strahan playing football earned just under $60 million. Right now with all the media stuff that he does, pulling in $18 million a year. A year. He's I making saw, more money, yeah. but that's why you play the game. Well, so I, they, and you're a great example. But, but look at know, all the stuff you get to do now because you played here at a lower level, at a lower level, but, but still. still. But the work you put, regardless of the money you make, the work you put in as a pro opens doors for you to do things that you probably could have never imagined. And I would say guys that like, wow, would be like. The standard for wow, that's it's almost an unreachable goal is Michael Strahan and Nate Burleson. Nate Burleson is the other one because they cross over to be able yep. to do other things than just yep. football. So Nate Burleson was just NFL Network, and then he became, uh, then he did uh, Good Morning Football, and then he was in the they were they were he was in the same neighborhood, right? He may even be in the same building because uh, then CBS snatched him up, and then CBS says, "Hey, we're gonna have you do uh, you know what our Sunday shows and our you know Monday through Friday shows." And then Nickelodeon jumps in, and then I see him all over the place. Great guy. Hand to God. I got some great stories about this. He is authentic as authentic as authentic can get. The way he is, what he's about, the life that he lives, that's as real as it can get. And I have examples to prove it, but I won't share them right now. So with McCordy, like he, I don't know if he's that level because I feel there's like maybe one or two in the world like that, you know, like the crossover oh, to like that type but, of. But you know, the other thing to remember too, though, is a part of the difference is you know, a guy like Strahan. He's a Hall of Famer who made sixty million because of the era that he played in. But you know, Devin McCourty's a guy who's probably made what eighty five, ninety million now with his long career. Here's the other guy I was thinking of. Here's the other guy that did it, but then screwed it up. Okay, let me give you some hints. Okay, um, to see if you can guess. Another former player. I'm not going to give you the position. Wow, it was off. Only $45 million minus playoff Ooh. money for McCourty. Oh, okay. He ain't hurting. They're not gonna no, be, none of them are not going to be holding bait sales for Okay, him. so the other player that is in the Nate Burleson. Um, let's see if you can get this. The Nate Burleson. 
Michael Strahan category, former football player, my era, made it to the top of the top, like was in a was in um, you know morning TV, good morning type shows, like the those shows, like uh, Today Show, Good Morning America. Mm-hmm. Um, they you get, said your era, otherwise I would have gone to Renthal Simpson. Uh, I would say was a running back, um, has and also has a twin. And we mentioned his name yesterday. Oh, yeah, my uh, friend Tiki Barber. Yes. Yeah. He was a host of the Today Show. Well. He was the co-host. Well, that's why they went and got Michael Strahan. No, no, no. That's he why was they – No, he was, he was, he was a there co-host. For, he was there for five minutes. They were why, like, and, oh. then, and then he got his hands – he got his hand caught in the in the cookie jar, and then, mm. they, then they kicked him to the curb. But he jar. was on his way, and he was really the first that I could think of that reached that status – like, you're on a Today Show? Dude, yeah. you were running back in well, the NFL. But he played in New York City. True. If he played in Kansas, like his brother, yeah, Rondé, true. playing in Tampa, true. never would have been considered for anything yeah, like that. Yeah, because Tiki did a lot of stuff. Like, he was in plays. He was on Broadway. He did a – Eddie George was another one that I thought would have crossed over into – because he was real active and well-respected, good-looking guy, spoke well, people loved him. Yep. Had a good reputation. But he's coaching college football. What are we doing? Well, people find their way in life. Some people enjoy the grind. Some people are okay being a – Well, my point is is that – $400,000 offensive – a year offensive line coach in, uh, you know, Temecula, New Mexico or whatever. Oof. Or how California. Re- you know how hard it is to recruit in Temecula, California, oh which my is basically God. Mexico, by the way. I was just going to say. It's basically Mexico. It's it's uh, east, southeast San Diego County. Hey, Tijuana's not far away, guys. <laughs> There's Listen, your number one recruiting tool. Again, uh, when we hop on the Great Space Coaster, okay, when we officially. It's too late for the Space Coaster right now. However, I'm not saying I'm hopping on it right now. I'm not hopping on it. But Fourier's Great Space Coaster, where can it go? Okay. Anywhere. When I do hop on it, Tijuana will be one of the places we go. Oh, really? Okay? Yes, I will take you to Tijuana, yes. Not Ooh, in story. In Billy, story. can I bust out my donkey now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never saw one of those, but those are some good ones, too. <laughs> what was that? We had the uh, we had the pig squeal in there, so we got to get the old donkey in I there I love well. the Great Space Coaster. It's better than Squirrel, and it's better than uh, Bright you, Red Ball. Because we have no idea have where no you're idea. going when you're just on hold, the Space Coaster. Just hold on. Just hold on. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, Slater, final game. Yes, uh, no? No, I think he's coming a, back. I think he could. He looks freaking great, dude. He does? And how long did his dad play? Like 21 uh, years? 20-something years, yeah. Oh, I think he's I think he's got more in him. I'm, uh, I'm with you on that. Less All impact right. on his body, too. We will get into Patriots, Bills. We're coming to you on the phones. What happens in Buffalo? Can the Patriots overcome the emotion of the Bills? Final hour, Gresham Foyer begins next. <laughs>
93.7, WEIFM and HD1, Lawrence, Boston. Always live on the free Odyssey app. This Our Aggression for you is brought to you by Eagle Bank. Patriots Friday is brought to you by Mass General Cancer Center by Zudi. Build any app your company needs in a week by Northeast Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health by Jaws, perfecting the art of fresh and by Town Fair Tire for the best prices on tires. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. This is Gresh and Fourier. The Celtics sweep the season series for the Dallas Mavericks. They extend their lead as the best team in the NBA going to 27-12. But more importantly, chicken soup for the Celtic fans' soul. After Tuesday night in OKC, the very definition of a bounce-back performance. Andy Gresh. The bronze overall goal difference is plus 61 through 38 games. The 1-2 gap. Going into tonight was bigger than the gap between number two and number 16. That is a dominant team. Christian Fourier. If there is an AFC championship game in the end that involves teams that don't have the same amount of games played, where Monday night's non-result factors into who gets home field advantage, we're not going to have any home field advantage this year. We're going to play the conference championship game on a neutral side. Gresh and Fourier right now. All right, let's go. On WEEI. Final hour of this edition of Gresham Foyer on a hold on a second here. It is a Foyer's Friday playlist that also included the uh, Foyer. What was it? The Foyer four pack of uh, no, picks. no, the no. Fo- Tag Foyer's it right. It's, Foyer four leg parlay. Four way parlay. I call it four way. Four way. Yeah, and I, there was a slight mistake. So in case you were listening earlier, here are the games that you need to pick if you want to. Bet ten dollars and uh, make one hundred eighty nine dollars. You need to beat. Need to bet uh, the Jags beating Tennessee, which I actually think is going to happen. That's a great chance. Tennessee ain't beating anybody anymore. The Bills are going to beat the Patriots. The Jets will uh, beat the Miami Dolphins, and then the Browns will travel to Pittsburgh to beat the Steelers. So that is the foyer, foway parlay. That Jets game is going to see uh, Joe Flacco against Skylar Thompson. Your yeah. thoughts? Joe Flacco against Skylar Thompson. For a game where, by the way, each... Well, I think the Jets have been eliminated by now, but Miami could still find their way in. Miami could. um, And I think that's the other thing. When you look at... Everything is predicated on the Patriots. Like, the Patriots win, they're in. It doesn't matter what Miami does. doesn't matter what uh, Tennessee does. It doesn't matter, right? They win. You know, everybody else's dreams are gone. Because the let me see, so the Steelers, the Steelers need the Dolphins and the Patriots to lose. That's how they get in, right? So the Bills can do all these other team a solid by beating the Patriots, and then each team will have a better better odds of actually making it to the playoffs. Um, I don't know what it is for the Dolphins. I don't know. I have no idea. But Skylar Thompson and, and Joe Flacco, I, I'm betting the Jets. We saw Skylar Thompson. A quick little taste of them. Mm-hmm. The Dolphins are banged up all over the place. They were eight and three. Suddenly, they just—it's crazy. Like they were eight and three, and they it just they can't win a game. You know, Mike McDaniel was like, you know, the talk of the town, and now like nothing. So I do think it's interesting that you know at the end of the day, uh, all these games are actually relevant. So the league did something right. I know a lot of people didn't like the extra game. Did you like the extra game? Like do you uh, like the fact that they added that they actually they actually no. they added an extra game and they added an extra playoff game like an extra team gets in so instead of six or seven instead of two teams having a first round bye only one team has a first round bye yeah I'm uh, I'm not a fan of the seventeen game regular season honestly I'd rather see them go to eighteen because uh, a they'll end up getting some expansion teams and if you go to eighteen in the AFC eighteen in the NFC then if you have a seventeen game regular season now no one in the AFC and NFC touches until the Super Bowl I think it would sort of reinvigorate the Super Bowl a little bit the NFL would love to collect a couple billion dollars for a couple of expansion teams and whatnot and to be able to really if you're going to do a seventeen game regular season then just expand it out 
and turn it into AFC versus NFC. And then you're building your teams differently. You're, it's a different thought process. Again, it reinvigorates the Super Bowl a little bit. Not like it needs reinvigorating. But imagine if we got Buffalo and San Francisco or Kansas City and San see, Francisco uh, and you didn't see it during the regular season. As a, as a playoff uh, game, right? So, so you mix the conferences and you just see them like you would in college, no. one to ten. Oh no. no, it would be AFC NFC. It'd be like the old school setup in Major League Baseball, where the American League and the National League champion never saw each other until the World Series. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the okay. NFL could add four teams, two in each conference. They'd probably collect nah twenty billion dollars. Well, that's not enough. By the time it's all said and done, and yeah. saddle up and ride, and there yeah. you go. Plus, it would give them more markets to get a bigger TV deal. It would make the Super Bowl more special again. Again, for me, I like the business of sports it's thinking about how can they expand the pot a little bit but on the whole i wasn't a playoff expansion i could get because it's only seven in each conference so it's 14 out of 32 you're not at that nhl level or the nba level where it's silly i think the only way the nfl expands the playoffs from here on out is if they expand the league which by the way they will do within 10 years yeah, so There's oh more yeah, teams abs- oh, absolutely. They, it, oh, you're gonna the, have a team in Europe. The value, you're have a team in Germany, Mexico. I don't know about that. No, I think I Mexico City could probably end up getting one. But uh, Phil in Maine has been hanging foyer because he thinks the Patriots goose is cooked. Phil, kick off the final hour. Go ahead. Hey guys, thanks for taking the call. Mm-hmm. This has been a little while since I talked to you. Yeah, man, what's um, up? Uh, Patriots are screwed. They're screwed, man. Uh, there's no way in hell they're winning this game. I mean, honestly, if it was any other coach, they'd probably think about forfeiting, but it's Bill Belichick, so there's no way in hell that's happening. Um, but it, it's just there's too much emotion now, especially, with, and it's great news, don't get me wrong, with DeMar uh, you know, coming back and now being able to verbally talk and be there with his team in some fashion, forget it. The Patriots definitely already were at a deficit. They're screwed now. The only question I have outside of this, though, guys, Christian, they keep having you do advertisements. You did it at the beginning of the week for, um, like, anything to do with sex, basically. I'm going to go out there on the limb and say it. And you're always advertising it. You did it at the beginning of the week. They had to read one. Um, And, obviously, you made us aware that now your plumbing doesn't work and everything, which is thank you very much. So what the hell, guy? Like, like, are you Bobby Boucher? Because in your, in your advertisement last, at the beginning of the week, you said they'll have you do sex anytime, you know, like doing sex. Like, who, who verbally, like, says that? What kind of advertiser, writer? puts it out there I like don't, that. I don't, don't remember, I don't Phil, so. I don't remember any of this. Me I don't. Either. I don't remember you saying have, it hey, that way at all. You will be able to do the sexy time. Yeah, your name is Jeff. Uh, oh, you like to do the sexy time. I, I don't yeah, remember. That I don't either. remember that uh, either. Yeah. My name is Jeff. Thank you. Uh, let's go to. Uh, well, let's go. For, let's see how bizarre we can get. Uh, our guy Rafi in Belmont with Gresham Foye. Rafi, good afternoon. Hey guys, my take is very simple and it's different than everybody else. I believe you know the guy we're gonna pay the heavy price for that whole situation is the commissioner because I believe this man turned into Coach Klein in Waterboy <laughs> when the situation happened. Oh, and God. I believe the league is not going to pay Coach Klein $40 million to be afraid to make a decision because the league went, went along because this guy did not make a decision. The players and the union make a decision that is complete violation of the agreement, the bargaining agreement, because the minute the player says we're not coming back to play, if the commission that said go back to play, the bargaining agreement is void automatically. All the contract, everything is gone. So I believe because the commission that was so slow was running with cement shoes, so the league has to swallow it. And I believe he's going to pay heavy price this offseason. Mm. I will leave it to you guys. Okay. Thank you. Interesting uh, angle, Rafi. I don't think the uh, cart will be overturned because right now everybody is making way too much money. 
and there's too much money on the schedule that is on the books with the new TV deals that are about to start. So I think that while the players and I just saw something from D. Maurice Smith where there was there's been chatter out there, Foyer, about adding an eighth playoff team to each conference D. Murray Smith said yo we have not we would have to approve that no one has come to us with that but if there's one thing the players have always caved to and you can speak to this oh, great. Money. it's money yeah hey cap's gonna go up uh 15 million dollars uh per team guys if we do this where do I sign yeah uh so that'll go up uh, it'll, it won't be as much as you should get, but you'll take it because uh, you think it's a lot of money and that, and they'll convince you this is a good deal for you. And then you will get that playoff check if you make the playoffs, even though you'll have a losing record. Like right now, we look at some of the teams. Think about this. The AFC South is going to be decided by two teams, the Tennessee Titans, who didn't even play any of their guys because that's that second to last game didn't even matter against mm-hmm. the Jacksonville Jaguars. Neither team is going to have a winning record. You could have the Patriots. Not not completely true. If Jacksonville wins, they're nine and eight. Sorry. Sorry. Now, Correct. thank it, you. It, it, that's the whole one game over, but nevertheless. Well, even um just think about it, like all these five hundred teams are one game above five hundred or one game below five hundred, whatever it is. Like the teams are and I feel like we all knew this was gonna happen. That that seventh seed, that seventh spot was gonna be a team that, you know, really shouldn't be making the playoffs. But my point is that it doesn't matter. It's relevant. Think about if the season would have ended last week. Well, the Patriots would have made the playoffs at Correct. eight. Correct. Yep. They would have made the playoffs at eight and eight, and it would have been great. And they would but have now, won. Uh, and they would have won against a team that would have been competing for the final playoff spot with to go to the playoffs. Yeah. Just quickly. So I just feel like it's um the fact that the games. So your Sunday night game, okay, the last game of the regular season of the 2022 NFL football season is going to be against the Detroit Lions. And the Green, Green Bay, Bay Packers, Packers, who are so, both eight and eight, who are both trying yeah. to get into the playoffs and need some help from the Rams. But, one, Seattle. but this game is not, first of all, the Lions need the Seattle Seahawks to lose. Yep. So if the Seattle Seahawks lose in the earlier game, this will be a play in for both teams. If the Seattle Seahawks win, well, Detroit's just playing for pride and trying to ruin Green Bay's record. Green Bay is just like the Patriots win and you're in. Detroit needs the Seattle Seahawks to lose. Now, that would be awesome because you would have both teams. It's a playoff game. It's a playing game. It's a real-time Major League Baseball playing game Mm -hmm. that just naturally happened. I think that's what they wanted. I'm with you. I think the NFL realizes that even if they went to an eighth team in each conference, it'll all kind of shake itself out in the end because even though if it's teams that are one game over 500 – you could have made the argument that they earned their way in. Like if New England in the last two weeks of the regular season beats Miami and Buffalo, they will have earned their way in, even though they whizzed it away against the Raiders and and the Bengals and teams like that. That's where I think I can wrap my head around it is that, yes, I understand that it says you're average, but if you kind of, you know, if, if the Patriots make it in at eight and nine because the Jets beat Miami and Cleveland beats Pittsburgh and all that kind of stuff, that's going to feel weird. But if you at least win to get your way in, I guess we can kind of live with it. What I don't want it to do, I don't want it to end up looking like the NBA, where you have legit just you're just throwing teams in just to get to get games. The play in is ridiculous. Just, just, That's you're talking about crappy teams that yes. have no business. But uh, you know you need to fill a spot, so you create this new opportunity for them, and it's all convoluted and stupid. Thirty win teams should not be no. able to play their way it into. Be, you right. know what? A thirty win team shouldn't be in the hunt. There you go. Uh, speaking of some of the games that Foyer and I just touched on, we will get to those. We'll continue with you on the phones. Do some pad. Don't go anywhere. 617-779-7937. By the way, make sure you're following us on social media. On Twitter, Gresh Foyer, W-E-E-I. And on Instagram, Gresh and Foyer. Spell it all out. Here's the land man ready to trend. Your home of the Sox. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Celtics got a 124-95 win over the Dallas Mavericks last night, thanks in part to Jason Tatum's triple-double. triple, triple double. The Seas will face the Spurs in San Antonio tomorrow night. The Bruins also got a 5-2 win over the Los Angeles Kings. Forward Jake DeBrusque is expected to miss four weeks after being placed on the long-term IR. Bruins are in San Jose and take on the Sharks tomorrow night. 
Sean Sar- Sham Sarani has reported that the breathing tube is out of Damar Hamlin as of this morning, and he's begun talking to Buffalo Bills teammates. The Bills addressed the media yesterday and said they will be ready to face the Patriots on Sunday, kickoff at 1 p.m. Ian Rappaport has tweeted out that the NFL owners have voted for the proposed changes to the playoffs. That includes a possible AFC title game on a neutral site. I'm Billy Lanny. That's what's trending now on WEI and WEI.com. More Bills, Patriots, Chatter, and the other games of Week 18 in the NFL next. I'm Michael Jenkins helping you beat the books with Ben
now we got something here. For the record, you said, I said, give me something that you like. And you said, uh, I like everything. You got a little bit of everything today. You got absolute. The only thing I did throw in there was a country song, and I was going to, but I decided not to. Nah, and that's okay. But again, just because I like everything, I, just because I'm okay with all different genres of music, doesn't mean you picked good music. What would you? Okay, we are going to grade Billy Laney. Okay, uh, at the next break. Okay. Oh. Give me your. Give me a grade for my uh, Fourier Friday. You were a solid C plus. Uh, Turpin. Better than I, so good job. <laughs> you got more compliments than I ever have. Turpin does not want to talk. Turpin, period. He what does g- not no, want nope. to talk. No, no I do. That. I do. Just I'm just happy saying. to be here. That's it. No, no, I, I'm the... fine with talking, but I, you've gotten more compliments on the Twitch and on the text line than I have gotten the whole week. So, so I didn't ask you what they were saying on the Twitch. I said, give me a grade. <laughs> All right. Um, B minus. Okay, see, here, text, text 37937 and it. in the Twitch chat, grade uh, Christian's music picks today. Okay, uh, Billy, you're up. C, flat C. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Had some good, had some bad. What are okay. you going to do? Listen, all right, just remember. It's week one. I'm next. Rough coaching. Listen to this. I'm look at, next. Look at, look at Fourier's face I'm next. on the rough coaching. Yo, what, what, to grade my trending? Yeah. That's right. I'm next. Oh, it was great. The trendings. Oh. Yes, great. I'm grading his his trending, and he's grading my you know well, Friday just, playlist. Well, just do it now then, instead of waiting. D for minus. Just, oh, what? what? A, a How G, about that? A D minus. Stop yeah. It. All right. Yeah. I'll try to be better next week. Stop We're, it. D minus. Give me a C. You should have went first. Oh, there we go. See, there's right, okay, what it no. is. All right, you know, strong. B. I, you know, I hate solid that. B. I hate that solid position B. coach because he solid didn't B. give me enough pluses. Yeah. So he got it. He got to be solid B. No, I'll has, tell you he what. Has, he had some screw-ups. He flubs a couple that I thought were kind of funny. And but humorous, that's but. that's the whole point of it. And that was the uh, that was almost like the gimmick from the very beginning. Because when Anderson knew he was leaving, he was just like, uh, Celtics lost, Bruins won, Taylor Swift's great, uh, that's <laughs> trending. And it was like, I oh. think Billy is very nervous when he does trending. He nailed Shams. Yeah, I don't even uh, know how to say it. Shams Sharania. Shams Sharania. Yeah, he nailed that. Uh, Billy, are you, but do you get nervous? I feel like you're oh, yeah, No, out. no, no, 100%. He you know does. what it is for like talking with you guys, no problem. But when I have like something in front of me that I have to read, I turn it to the kid in fourth grade who just wants to put his head down and get through it. I didn't so know I have that. To worry, about Billy. I have I to can, worry I about can, my I pace. Can, so here, here's the thing. Because I'm sure at some point you listened, you were like slow down, or at least the listeners were like, you are going way too fast. I, uh, <laughs> I, I would love. I can't wait for like the Back hockey the playoffs, <laughs> and like you know, you have to kind of give a whole quick little breakdown of like all the goals and what happened. Oh, all hockey the names, all it. the hockey names. I can't wait for that oh that actually will be good no we get that there's a wink and a nod about billy doing these because his accent is by far so boston the thickest on the radio station easily. it's not even close easily but that's what that's what i love about him because people listen and there's like dude that's a guy it's like me he does that's a guy billy who eats, he eats grinders billy does have a little ish in him he's got a little ish in him you know what you know you know what i mean by ish uh vaguely he's like I can't even say it on air. So I'll, I mean, he's like, well, I'll use, I'll use, good. I'll use, uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll change it, right? I'll jerkish, right? But it's like, wait, it's not. No, it's in a good way. It's like, uh, it's actually a compliment. It's actually smart ass. Yeah, it's a little bit. You got a little ish, and you need, use all your words. It's like, yeah, I'll be there around nine ish. So you just take any word you know uh, that you want to use, and you just put an ish at the end of it. It's a compliment. Jerkish? I don't know. I felt like D-minus D minus and a jerk. Got I it. felt like we just took a ride on. <laughs> <laughs> this does not count. This does not oh, count I mean, at all. Hey, hold let on. Me, this let doesn't me, count. I didn't even tell a story. Let me make a reference that I can't use on the air, and then you guys got to help me fill it in and all that. We just took a trip around the sun and back. That's this. Well, I guess technically, I guess you're right. <laughs> we used to have a guy there was a guy that we played with he was so out of it he was so nuts and he couldn't and he was literally you remember the show space ghost remember the I show do, space yeah. ghost like his nickname was space ghost again mm-hmm. no not much context to the, to the nickname but i just made me think of it there you go play the music See, I mean, no yeah play, there we go there right it is. Is. yep there it is Fourier off the rails. Here it is. Take the ride on the Great Space Coaster. We need to find the instrumental of this, Terp. 
I just, I'm sure we can find it. Because Foyer is never going to be able to tell a full story whenever he's taking us on the space coaster. I if just, there's all the music I don't, underneath. Maybe you just play the beginning, but I like the, hearing the words to the song. We have a uh, Christian's music is F minus minus minus. No, stop it. A B plus, a D, a C minus, an A on Christian's music today from JT out on the Cape and the Island, and a C plus from the 508. I did notice every song had words because he wanted words. He requested yes. that earlier in the week. But every also, song has words. Also, some some of the best ones I had, like we just Gresh went right into the you know to the topic at hand right out of the break, and we didn't even get to really you know. You know, soak it in. You know, but okay, that's fine. You know, this, like I had a, I put a Chris Cornell one in there. This in will, the beginning of it. Play the Chris Cornell one real this, quick. This will not be the show that will be like, oh, let it ride, and then pick it up two minutes later. That's not no, us. No, that's We're fine. gonna get no. into it. No, listen, we you're very disciplined. It's just, I find I, I find like I, if I was at back at school at Catholic school, this one. You don't like this? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, stop it. There was one that was just like mumbling. you have to understand this about me. <laughs> I am, it was mumbling. I am it's normally unaffected. I'm normally unaffected by an overwhelming majority of human emotion, and music does not strike me the way it does other people. If I like a song, I like it, but it isn't, oh, this is the, when I had a case of the sads and I sat in the shower and cried, this is the blanket of words in which I wrapped myself in to be able to get through the horrid days of what I was going through at that time. It's like, Jesus, God. Wait, so you don't. song, you, shut up. You don't have a Desperado song in your back no. pocket? You don't have one of those. You don't have. No. I had one. I There's was like no sappy this, song that comes no, on the radio. No, I feel like oh, sometimes. Really. No. I love playing. I, sometimes I love playing a sad song. I, give, I'll play it on purpose. You give me Phil Collins against all odds in the radio. I will there's, belt it out. There's, I, there's, I don't even care if the windows are down. Listen, I'll tell you what it is for me. <laughs> you picture Billy now, like yeah, because, bawling. Yeah, it's like what's he crying about? Right, eating eating chicken, <laughs> <laughs> just crying in my double whopper oh, in a red yeah. light. What's your what's your emotional support animal? An eight piece, <laughs> That's a twenty mine. piece and a double quarter pounder. Twenty piece and a double Q. Like I mean, if you're if like if you're if like what would you want played at your funeral? Like would you want would you want some? Wouldn't you want some sappy? You know what's really song funny? Played at your funeral. My wife and I are going through the whole like estate planning process, and you yeah. have to put what you want done. This is no word of a lie. I said I want to be cremated, small ceremony. Family only donations made in in lieu of flowers, whatever. Candy. Like I, I don't want any of that crap. You don't, don't want to no. In you fact, you don't want a you don't procession want of like you know no. music playing. You don't want anyone talking about how much they loved you. No, how what you meant to them. You don't want you don't want no, any Christian. song. What no, no nothing. You want nothing. You if, want people to act like you never existed. If I allowed, if I allowed the public to come to my funeral, you know what you'd have. A bunch of people with water bottles lined up because they'd be waiting to pee on my grave. No, That's you would all. have your friends and you can have friends and family. How many with, friends do I have? Like you good, think? Uh, well, I mean, I would like to go. I mean, if, if you feel like, I mean, there's a lot of people here if, that like you. Not really. But if you had to, if you had to play a <laughs> not song a, not at enough. your death on your deathbed, no, your wife says, "Honey, I know you didn't want anyone, but I would at least like to play a song." What song do you want to leave uh, us with that best represents the, who you are no. and what you what challenges you overcame and, and messages to all your friends that no. are still alive? I can tell you he wouldn't pick this one. Yeah. The reason... <laughs> that one was horrible. That was pretty bad. I love that one. My The reason I married my <laughs> wife is because my wife would know not to ask me that because even if I only had three words left to say in life and she said that to me, the answers would be a swear word that you can't say on the radio. Hell no. Then <laughs> keel over dead. See, the, the real way I want to go is like on television or in a spectacular <laughs> way. Like I'd love to have one of those moments where it's like, oh my God, I think that guy just keeled over. And yet there's video for it to show because that would live in posterity. You're that would live forever other than, oh, a bunch of people who kind of knew you because in life you have friends and you have acquaintances, right? Have you? Have you? In the work world, you do create friends, but more yes. often than not, they're acquaintances because people go their separate ways and stuff like See, that. See, that, 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 there lies another debate. If we work together for a long period of time, 
we are not, and we share like personal stories. We, you know, uh, you know, call each other when there yeah. issues are going on. Like you become friends. Yes, acquaintances. Okay, are we friends or acquaintances? No, we're friends because you and I have also known each other for a long time. The guy I worked with in Hartford, an acquaintance. Well, I mean, the he, guy he didn't like with, him anyway. But again, though. but it was two years. But that's the thing, right? Like, you you don't love everyone you work with. Lord knows this place was a part of that for, I don't know, probably a decade, you know, and it happens elsewhere too. I, you know what Have it is? Have you ever? Here's what it is. <laughs> You're much more sensitive, I think. Oh, and needy. Because Very needy. you are. I am 100% A, that needy. is you, but also, <laughs> like, you have daughters. Yes. So your sensibilities are a little different. Well, they've, they've, they've matured and adapted okay. with the girls in my, in my house. But you also, your sensibilities, like, for me, it was crossing over into just parenting kids, even though they are my stepkids. They're still mine. They've been with you since they were mine. little. Yeah, seven and five, right? So they would also know, by the way, oh, would, uh, I've told this story before, that when my Wikipedia page got vandalized and they came up with the whole uh, want a taco eating contest joke <laughs> and the whole, uh, I was a semi-pro, uh, uh, no, I was a semi-pro sumo wrestler in Warwick that went by Fat Eddie. So my kids every once in a while will say, Ed or Eddie. Funny. If my if if you said if my kids who are just predisposed right now, one's at school, one's at work, and the other and yeah, they're like, oh yeah, oh he asked Ed on the radio about uh, what song he'd want to play. Even they would be like, Christian, you have no idea. They would know too. I'm not hard to figure out. I'm pretty easy to please. I am pretty easy to deal with. Shoot me straight. Realize I cuss a lot. Realize I'm not well adjusted. I I I have a feeling. A feeling? One. And that is what? Rage? No. I have a feeling. It can be hurt. It can be aggravated. No, that's the thing. I have one feeling. That is it. It's hard to hurt my feelings, all that kind of stuff. Yes, I snap back at people. I'm not hard to figure out. I really am not. I I don't even stare at myself on Twitch. If you were being psychoanalyzed, I'm just curious how, like, if you had to lay on the couch. And the, someone, some like, you know. I wouldn't waste my time. Some like, you know. I'm totally comfortable with who I am as a human psychiatrist. being. psychiatrist. Like, no. what would they say about Gretch? I don't care. That's the thing. <laughs> well, like, I believe you. People who, I still want to know. No, but people who. You, here's, here's what it is. You want me analyzed? Yeah. I can analyze myself real quickly. Okay. Most people I can deal with, <laughs> but I don't want to deal with them. There's a big difference. Okay. If there's some idiot who uh, can't use the self-checkout at Stop and Shop, it would aggravate me. If that guy turned and looked at me and said, can you help me, sir, I would act like I was deaf. (laughs) And then I didn't hear him. Right? That's messed up. I'm just saying. Uh, I'm just being real. But Uh, that's the thing. Like, I get it. I know how I am. I know who I am. I know what I am. And it's okay. Like, here's, you know what? A spastic friend of ours who yes, can't I know think you're talking sometimes, about. I know right? what you're talking about. You know what he said to me once? Hmm. The world needs a-holes, too, just like ditch diggers. And I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm nowhere near as bad as I used to be. Billy can can attest to that. Because he saw some parts of me over at the other place where I'd be screaming at people. So you grow up every once But again, I've grown up, okay, but I'm comfortable with who I am. If people don't like me, great. I'm not going to go sit in the shower and curl up and listen to, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever p- sad music. Pick something. Some, like, Taylor Swift breakup Great. song. Great. Whatever. Fine. Maybe, like, a Sarah maybe McLaughlin. Like a, oh, Sarah McLaughlin. I'd be more. How about, a, how about a Billy Joel slow piano concerto? No, no, I'm not going to have a sad. Like, it's just him and the pin is no. in his piano. Here's what I might do. You know, if you have a bad day. I'll rip a blunt or two or maybe three. It's legal, by the way. Get a cigar. Light also. light my fire at the fire pit. Maybe sit with one or two people that I could tolerate being around, and then just get away from everything. That's all. That's all it is. Like the hardest part of the hardest thing in the world is being comfortable with yourself. Would you say you're completely comfortable with yourself? I would oh, say I'm completely insecure. Right. <laughs> and I, you. So this is you and I are polar opposites. Yeah. I'm so secure. I'm like, whatever. I don't care what you think. You know, now what? it doesn't work for me all the time, but nevertheless, you learn how to manage it. Do you know what you just took a ride on? I did. <laughs> 
you did. I'll buy your loads up too. You opened the bowl, Snickin. You're the one who led you? me there. <laughs> you didn't lead me there. Aren't you the one who said, oh, what sad song would you put on? I did. Oh, I wrapped myself in the emotional blanket of words I know. while I stare at myself on you Twitch, did. hoping that other people will look at me and say, my God, I was so beautiful once. What a handsome man who played in the NFL. You took, listen, hey. The coaster is always there if you want to take a ride, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It's not just for me. Billy, you know, Terp, whatever, hey, hey, callers, you want to take a ride on the great space coaster? So somebody just texted in, if a woman fell in front of him in an airport, Gresh would pretend he's, in, he's on the cell phone. Now, that's an extreme. If I could stop laughing, I would come over and help pick her you up. You know what first. you need to do, or at least hold it in, and then be like, "Are you okay?" Help her up, and then turn around and be like, Brah! "Here's a here's real a- distress is different than distress of not knowing how to work self checkout." Bingo. Here's a life. Thank hack. you, Billy. Here's a life. I hack probably could have said that, and we probably could have taken a bunch okay. of calls. Life hack for you. Okay, I don't know if you've ever done this before. Well, I need one. Yeah. Uh, headphones. Yeah. Earbuds. Never have them on. You always have an excuse. I oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. I oh, sorry, I didn't hear. You. What is this I'm going normally on? Normally, am I, listening to something. I, well, I'm just saying. But though, people when will you're touch not, your arm. Well, when you're not, that's where I'm like. I do this. I do this at games. I have the headphones in. I have the earbuds in because I don't want to interact with anybody at games. I just want to focus on the game. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do any of that stuff. So I keep the earbuds in. And so people like when they when they kind of like try to get my attention, I'm just like I act like I don't see them. They're like, oh what? Oh, I take it out. I'm like, oh, uh, I oh, sorry. Real, hold on, real quick. And then they just walk away. Mm-hmm. That's my, like, getaway life hack. You can use it. Uh, I'll get you some earbuds. A, who says I don't. If you checked my uh, center console up top, you yeah. would see the earbuds uh, in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Earbuds in there with the connector for different phones, by the way. So that you make sure that you're not, because nothing is worth them walking around. Then the jackass has got the headphones on, but they, like, tuck it down their shirt or whatever. So that way you can't really tell if it's connected to anything. Oh, no, no, no. I make sure it's connected. I, I want all plausible denials. It doesn't even connect to anything. It's just a wire. Yeah, in his right. Pocket. He's just walking around with like he's, the music, the playlist in his head. <laughs> it's in my head. Exactly. There you go. Again, I'm just, you know. Okay, you took a ride. That's I'm, all I'm saying. No, it's but just look, not for me. A, you led me There's there. And B, two. yes, well, you willingly, willingly. The, the hardest thing in life is to just be comfortable with yourself and own it and admit it. Yeah. I am convinced of that. Good. Because too many people worry about what other people think. I'm just happy that you said we were friends. Why would you think otherwise? Other than what Lou Voodoo was saying in the Twitch chat, that oh, these guys hate each other. They'll be dead in six months. It's like, stop it! Idiot. People who hate each other don't see like get you along and I. Well. You, and, and you and I've known each other for a yeah. long time. Yeah. No, I know. I'm not like Lou to you. You know, you and Lou became really close over yeah. the years and stuff like that. Yeah. But nevertheless, you know, it's not like we had. Oh, hey, nice to meet you first day, and then sit down and try to do this. I don't even know. Like, we got a break. I know, but I'm trying to figure out when was the first time I met you. I know when it is. <laughs> oh, there you go. I know what it is. You do? Comcast Sportsnet. I don't even remember. Oh, Comcast Sportsnet. Was it? Oh, way back in the I way, feel way, like way. It was probably Fox. It used to be Fox Sportsnet. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a whole deal, FX right? Something or yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Same building. Fox. Yep. Oh. We would it would have been there. Huh. And through Zip Zipperman and all that, too. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, that no, whole yeah, yeah. Okay. group and all that stuff. All right. All right, well, good. I remember, like, texting your show years ago when I was still playing. Like, you would do it. I don't know why. I re- See, I remember more about your show than you do, to well, be honest with you. Well, since the legalization of marijuana, I mean, I've also saying. forgot. Plus, I've also, you know, had a couple of rough years where you want to kind of forget everything, too, yeah, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. Okay. So well, you know what day it is, fun right? Fun way to manage. It is hump day? No, it's, no Friday. it's getaway day. Oh, it is getaway day. Yes. So, Oh, so that is the indicator, Billy, that <laughs> Foyer is getting ready to Pack it run up. right out of here at one fifty four thirty. But I'm not done yet. But you're not done yet because Are You Done is next. <laughs> you got a friend in me.
Time for Are You Done? Sponsored by Unified Office. If you run a business, you know the rough impact labor shortage can have on your customer's phone experience. Unified Office specializes in keeping businesses from losing income and customer calls and revenue. Learn more at unifiedoffice.com. Billy Lanny, are you done? I'm not. Just a quick little on this day. So back in 1994, 29 years ago, Tanya Harding's bodyguard took out Nancy Kerrigan after practice. Man. Do you remember the name of the bodyguard? Oh, I do. Was it uh, Jeff Galuli? Yes. Well, yes. There was, was that or was that? Or was oh, that? oh, no. That was her boyfriend. There was the clubber. Oh, Sean yes. Eckert. Oh, nice. Good job. Good pull. I went straight to Galuli. Right, Galuli's the boyfriend, right? Yeah. Galuli, uh, yeah. He's in the sex tape. Galuli was the one who got to nice. actually, yeah, got to be carnal with, uh, or have coitus with <laughs> and video a figure talking. skater. That was like one of the first like celebrity sex tapes, right? It was. It's disgusting. Right? I can't remember what year the Pam and Tommy Lee one was, but I think that was one of the first one that and you know, and you at least comb the early internet's looking yeah. for. I think with the Tanya Harding one, it was, boy, look at that flexibility. I don't know if anybody was grading flexibility on the Tommy Lee tape, if you understand what I'm saying. No, Are no. you done? Yeah. Are I, you done? Yeah. I'm. I, I'm done. Nancy recovered, won the silver medal that year. Harding finished eighth. Terp. I'm not done yet. So, for a, earlier this week, you said Uh-oh. you'd be interested in being a referee of some sort in high school or something. Oh. Now, <laughs> you might want to rethink this. In Cohasset, a uh, 16 year old student athlete attacked a referee, sucker punched him, and that is why there was a shortage of referee. Do you still want to be one? Here's the thing. Um, I'm assuming this is probably a non-threatening, smaller individual that has no street, you know, reputation. Andy I, Hart. I, yeah, I have a. I don't think that a ref is going to challenge. Well, I mean, listen. I what, just would you handle it happen. differently? Well, Wouldn't just eject yeah. him. You mean to tell me you would have grabbed that kid by the goozle pipe and been like, "Get out of here, Junior!" And, right. And what player is going to go after a ref the size of Christian? That's, That's my true. point. So they just. Like, a lot of these refs, most of the time at my son's games or my kids' games, it's always the same group of refs. Like, I, we know each other. I recognize them. So I'm hammering those guys all the time, you know, as, like, as, as, as much as possible. I would be, um, you know, fair but strict. Does that make sense? Or firm? Or is it firm and fair? Fair and firm? Like Either way. It's like I want my Either bed to be yeah. firm and strict and firm. I don't know. Are you done? Are you done? I am done. Uh, I am not done because, okay, so who has dogs here? Anybody have dogs? Oh, I got a Everybody? golden retriever. Nobody's... I love oh, my okay. dog. Okay, Mego's got a dog love right here. Love dogs. Mego would actually like this. I should have brought Mego in dogs for this Dogs over people. All right, so my we have a dog. Uh, my dog's name is Charlie. Okay. Oh. Beautiful dog. Very loving dog. Obsessed with my wife. Wherever my wife goes, Charlie goes. Like, if you were to, like, it, Charlie would be one of those dogs that if my wife was buried in some cemetery, she would be the dog that, like, lays on top of the cemetery, like, right by the headstone. Oh. Okay. Do you have a song picked out for that, too? Uh, not yet, but thank you for the, uh, you know, the idea. So my wife sends me this text during the show the other day. She says, uh, do you think that Charlie, my our dog, would want a taxidermy of me? Do you think the dog... Because the dog would be devastated if my wife was not around anymore. She's like, do you think Charlie, our dog? And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then I saw this story uh, from the New York Post about like how this husband created a life-size image of his wife. Like it wasn't a taxidermy. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like, you know, animals that you shoot and stuff like that. But it was like a lifelike, you know, recreation of his wife that he put like a statue in his house. So we can always have a visual. And I was like, huh. So I guess the question is, would you be willing to do that? Would you leave? A, a, would you, if you loved your dog that much, would you leave some sort of like no. representation of yourself that wasn't a picture? That because, wasn't, uh, you know, like a song? Because if you were stuffed, you know what the dog would do? Sit Pee there on wait. it. No, <laughs> the dog would sit there waiting for you to move. Wait, how come mom's not feeding me? How come mom's not petting me? You'd be very me? confused, how right? How come mom is very stiff? Yeah. It'd just become another piece of furniture That's for the dog. exactly right. And the, yeah, and the dog would be looking and being like, oh, my God, this is mom. What are you doing? Why are you abandoning me? I think that it would, would, would psychologically scar the dog forever. Well, I mean, even the guy that, like, got the, the lifelike representation of his wife, 
Like, if you ever see some of those, like, little, like, uh, there's, like, the, the, the waiters where they look like humans, right? And you walk into somebody's house and you think it's a real person. Like, I've seen a bunch of those in some of these I don't have highfalutin homes. friends like I, well, you. I, the crafts had one, okay? We, go, we sit in I the had, garage in lawn chairs yeah, in my house. Yeah. But it was interesting because that would that would freak the hell out of me. Um, yeah, my wife has died. My Whatever, is, somebody in my life is, is gone, and I recreate that person in a lifelike image of them i'm not done because i'm going to tie into what you said my nutty wife uh, had a rescue dog named naz it was nascar because she let the kids name him and the kids are really young it's a thing the dog made it to like 14 years old he was a rescue he was a stray i can't tell you the amount of work i had to do to make sure that my wife did not have that dog stuffed and her 21 year old blind cat stuffed Imagine walking in and there's the dog there with the like uh like in Family Guy with the clicker sitting right on it. <laughs> the, the cat was twenty one. Yeah, the cat was twenty one. Went blind. Oh yeah, she was I awesome. I don't remember Biscuit the dog. I remember Biscuit the end table. Thank you. That's right, Biscuit the end table. Nobody wants that. And on that, that's it for us for this week. Great first week. Very absolutely fun. good job, We're, boys. Uh, we are off and running. Yeah. Oh, A plus is now all around yeah. from well, the I easy mean, as grader a, as a group individually. Oh, okay. Like, actually, I, I build off that my D-. grade that I gave myself. You know, really kind of brought up the grade of everybody else. Sunday, don't forget to catch Christian on TV at 1130 <laughs> on Channel 4. Don't forget to catch me and Keith on Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. for WEEI Football Sunday. Mego and Arcan are next. By the way, if something went wrong, blame Terp and Billy because they produced this thing. Foye and I will be ready at 10 a.m. on Monday for a rousing round of the Patriots season being over. Are you done? Are you done?
Friday is brought to you by New England Kubota Tractor Dealers, by McFarlane Energy, the always reliable HVAC and home oil delivery pros at McFarlaneEnergy.com, by Anderson Windows, by New England Spine Care, and by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when your drains don't flow. Time now for Arcan and Mego on WEEI. WEEI. Hey, how are you? Welcome in. Good afternoon, Sports Radio, WEEI. It's Christian Arkin, it's Megan Adelini, Arkin and Mego here, taking you up until 6 p.m. Uh, nice to have you with us today on a uh, snowy winter wonderland of a Friday. Uh, Merry Christmas, Mego. Finally, we got a white Christmas What's going on here. out there? It's pretty. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty nasty. We've been in a cloud all week. Yeah. In many ways, and now it's just like puking snow out in Boston. Yeah, pretty ugly. So uh, be careful out there on the roads and um, get ready. Because uh, I have a feeling this weekend's not going to get any better anytime soon. I'm not talking about the weather either. I'm talking about what's about to happen to your New England Patriots. We'll uh, go ahead and start there. As we do have an update, we have an update on Damar Hamlin. We have an update on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, we've heard from many Patriots today, coaches, uh, players, etc. Let's go ahead and start with what we heard from uh, Ian Rappaport this morning. It was a tweet, and then I saw him on TV. Uh, apparently, Damar Hamlin, the uh, breathing tube is out of his mouth. He is communicating with the team via FaceTime. Here's Rappaport. And it has been building toward this. It, nothing but good news and good news and good news and then even better news. This morning, the breathing tube has been out this morning. He has spent the morning. Damar Hamlin has FaceTiming various teammates, many, many teammates, people he's known uh, from his youth, people he's known growing up. Friends, he has spent basically the entire morning on FaceTime. And now my understanding is right now, guys, there is a team meeting involving the Buffalo Bills, DeMar Hamlin, on FaceTime, addressing them for the very first time. Uh, this has to be emotional. It sounds amazing. I wish we could all listen in. Uh, we will all have to imagine instead and then uh, listen to what the Bills tell us later. But, uh, but truly an incredible scene and a big development uh, for the Bills' safety. Okay, so there you go. Not only is he awake, not only is he communicating via writing, the tube is out now, and he's making uh, he's making FaceTime calls with the team. Um, <laughs> can I bet the Bills by infinity this weekend? Like, is infinity a bettable number? I don't know. I don't know if that's even Completely. possible. Completely. <laughs> and we will preview the Patriots-Bills game that's happening on Sunday with right. all this great news. And we're going to talk to Andrew Callahan from the Boston Herald, my old buddy, in about an hour and a half. So, He's down at Gillette right now at practice, and we'll be there for all the media availability. So we'll get the latest from the Patriot side of this from him. I do have to say, so he's he's in his hospital bed. He's able to talk again. He's able to breathe on his own. All of this is incredible. 
What do you do if you miss a FaceTime call from Hamlin? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> that's if tough. you're on the other side. You're like in the shower or something. Yeah, and you get out and you're like, wait, oh, oh, oh. I would imagine you go through something like that, there's a lot of people you got to FaceTime, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's going to be a whole thing. They said thing. not just his immediate teammates. And right. then I, he, as Rappaport was giving that report recently, he was going to FaceTime the whole team, it sounded like, the, the locker whole, room. Yeah, his old friends from when he was but a then, kid. Yeah, he's like, obviously. Third grade science teacher. Like, well, probably people. not them. I mean, I don't, <laughs> it's like, then do you try to call him back? I mean, that line's busy the whole time. I know. You that's probably tough. feel like a dirtbag. It's a tough one to miss right there. I missed. I missed Tamar's call. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Uh, we'll get you. We'll get you back later. Anyways, um, as we've been sort of saying for the last twenty-four hours or so, it's hard to imagine that the Buffalo Bills, the uh, fans, Bills Mafia, the team. You know, there's going to be a, a probably a video up on the jumbotron of him. I remember we talked about this yesterday, uh, Kevin Everett. Uh, the tight end of the Bills, who in 2007 was paralyzed on the field, and then um, Dr. Cappuccino was his name. Dr. Stop Andy it. Cappuccino. That is his name. You, you are obsessed with this doctor. He's the Buffalo Bills spine specialist. It just happens to be his name, Megan. Like I can't the help Starbucks it. Starbucks spine center? Yes. <laughs> like... Who froze his spine? That's what he did. We're he put a, a frozen, he put frozen saline through his spine to Stop to get it. the swelling down, and that's what saved him. I swear to God, that's what happened. Anyway, the, he shot a video, and they played it before the Patriots came to Buffalo, and the Patriots still crushed them. And I think that that sort of is the thing you have to remember here is that all the emotion and all those things that's all well and good, and I think that'll play into what happens on Sunday. But this is also a, a, a matchup of two very mismatched teams. Yeah, it was already it was already really really favoring the Bills. I want to echo something that I heard Fourier say in the midday show to Gresh, and he he called this morbid. I don't think this is morbid. I think this is just kind of strategic. I don't know. Maybe I'm callous. You can tell me. But the the video message from Demar, I feel like you hold off on that. You think so? You don't need it Sunday. No, you don't like, need it's it. It's great, but may, I feel like Sunday you bring Demar's parents out so that everybody can recognize. You know, they were there at the game and mm. everything. And then you hold that off into the playoffs, you get DeMar there in person. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously going to be a big deal seeing him if if he's able to. The you simplest know. explanation is the obvious one. Like, you're going to win this game. I mean, I'll, I'll get into later the It's not about winning the game. Like, in which case, I know. I think it's, it's like, about something for the fans who have all been sort of going through this with the team at the time, and wouldn't it be, you know. And also, just, Hamlin. Can, can you let him relax? Well, if he wants to do it, then you got to let him. Of course he's going to want to do it. He woke up asking if they won the game. Sure. So if he wants to do it, what are you going to say? No. Sorry, Damar, we're not going to let you d- d- deliver yeah, an you inspirational do message. He wants, to but the, I, if I'm if fans. I'm in the room with Damar or I, or he's Facetiming me, I'm going to say, you know, when you know when this would really, really, really get everything going. A couple weeks from now, Damar, ooh. Game Seven of the Stanley Cup Finals. <laughs> when you're at that, <laughs> come out, wave the flag. When you're at that neutral site, <laughs> listen, we don't need the juice to beat the Patriots. They're exactly. pretty bad. Yeah. We're going to need you in the AFC Championship, though. Save this for like a real team. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I know that this, I guess a trash bag team. <laughs> this sounds pretty dark, but it's kind of true. You know, it's, I don't know. That, that's just where I'm coming from it. Um, yeah, I think uh, everybody's got sort of a sort of a d- different take on what this is going to be like and how it's going to go. The Patriots have had two extra days of practice, so I mean that's one that's one advantage that you might say they'll they'll have here. I don't know about too many other ones I that they have. I mean, given how they've prepared for this team just a yeah. month ago, it, it, I'm not sure how much of an advantage that those extra days are going to be. They could have had a bye week, <laughs> and it still wouldn't matter. They're not. They're. I don't know. I, that's just where I stand in this game right now. Uh, Greg uh, Hill talked to Devin McCourty this morning and um heard uh, the news obviously like everybody else he had some thoughts about it we know the dangers i would just say it's you it, it would be hard to go out there and play if you thought about you know what we witnessed monday night every time you stepped on the field so there's no doubt about it we we definitely take that for granted i would say there's a little bit of for us as players being you know somewhat a little crazy going out there and competing and playing um knowing some of those dangers because, you know, I think in our minds we always think like, man, that that just won't happen. So I think it was definitely eye-opening, you know, for all of us as players to sit there and watch that and um, to just see, you know, life and death now uh, be a part of the game, you know, I think was it was very chilling um, to witness that. So, you know, I would definitely say there's some type of wake-up call. I just don't know as a player, like, what you do, it's, it's hard to say, like, man, I'm going to do this now. Um, because that was such a routine play. Um, So when Devin said that this morning, it got me kind of thinking about this game and the rest of the playoffs. 
I think there's two scenarios here that could make people pretty uncomfortable. Uh, number one is if there's another injury, and not like an injury like what happened to Hamlin, but any injury where a guy doesn't just get up right away. And there's a bunch of those, and I feel like every single game. You know, yeah. sometimes a guy twists an ankle. Sometimes a guy's knocked out. Sometimes a guy tears his ACL, sometimes like whatever. It's preemptively, the player is told that to protect himself. Right. You know, you suffer a big hit. You're not sure what happened to you. Just lay down, time out, wait for the trainers to come out. Yeah. Like, part of that is just even if then... You know, oftentimes you see that guy able to get up, everybody's clapping and walks over to the sideline, but we've seen that. And yeah, I think that will make for tense times. It definitely will. And I'm not talking about for me and for the viewers, because honestly, we're just viewers, but for the Bills. You know, we all talk about how pumped up they're going to be and how excited they're going to be in the stadium and the stands and all that. If some guy, you know, and I mean, God forbid, some guy gets hit in the head. And uh, and goes down with a concussion, down on the ground. That's gonna that's gonna be maybe a problem for them. That's all. It's just something I was I was thinking about. Also, if somewhere down the road Buffalo and Cincinnati have to play again in the playoffs, Ooh. I mean that's very likely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's a very likely scenario here uh, from what's going to happen uh, once everything gets all sorted out. And we'll get to that. We'll get to uh, all the different scenarios here because the NFL they all took a vote and they decided on a coin toss and certain scenarios okay. and a bunch of other crazy stuff. So, so we'll, we'll get, get to, to all that. that. But yeah. that that. Just broke at noon. Right. I'm pretty sure the league just met at noon. So all of this has been developing. And now they've, seems like, written up some new rules about how they're going to proceed in the playoff seating given this unprecedented event, which it was interesting because I didn't realize until the end of the day yesterday when we were talking about this in real time and then I was catching up on some of it on my own. And that when we talked to Tom Kern yesterday and he said, hey, it's just got to be about winning percentage. And then you go to the rule books, and that's in the rule books. Mm -hmm. They have the rule for it. Yep. So they kind of, you know, we're tossing out. That even makes me feel a little bit grosser about the eighth seed thing. Because someone from the league, seemingly, if you believe that report from Florio, just tossed that out there to see if, like, there would be any biters. Yeah. You know? Like, the water, any right? takers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, what about wait up, everybody just plays another game? Yeah. You know, like, or there's just another game in there. And it's just... It's like you, you had the answer already in the rule book, and we'll go into this in more detail, but I didn't account for that yesterday because up until today, I hadn't sat down and read the constitutional bylaws of every playoff scenario in the NFL rule book. By the way, you can Google that if you want to. It's, if you want to. <laughs> it's really, really gripping stuff. I think you had like an Article X. Article XX is yeah, what we're talking Article about. XX. I don't I don't know what those Roman numerals are. 20, I don't know. It's 20. You it's guys, 20? Article 20. You guys Article may 20. feel different. That's how stupid I am. When I look at like a legal document like this that says whereas on it a lot, like whereas, this, so, this, this, whereas, resolve, this, 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 in all like the legal, I swear, I can't get like two sentences in I only it. know it from covering the Massachusetts State House because okay. everything that they put out is in this legal language. <laughs> Hence to forth with on this, this all you have to know. My eyes glaze over month. immediately. That's what, like, uh, I can't do it. It says whereas <laughs> at the beginning of every graph. Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. All you have to know is skip through all the whereas because that's telling you what you already know. It's yeah. basically laying out the situation. When you go to the resolved, and this is a document that the NFL just put out uh, like an hour ago about what they're going to do with the playoffs. But when it says resolved, if you want to look this up, that's when it's telling you this is the decision we've made. Yes. It is resolved. Okay, good. Well, Whereas was... that was the situation in the past. <laughs> Whereas now... time waster resolved. But we've resolved the good it. stuff. Thank you very much. All right. Well, at least now that I'm a legal scholar that I know all exactly. these things, I can uh, go ahead and read it. And we'll read it to Christian you as a matter Arkand of fact. Christian Arkand Esquire. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, we'll get to all of that, all the different scenarios, everything that could possibly happen. Uh, we will discuss with you right after the trending. Gresh and Fourier, weekdays 10 to 2. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Well, we touched on both things here in this opening segment of Arcan and Mego as we were talking about the NFL owners have voted for the proposed changes to the playoffs that include a possible AFC title game on a neutral site. You know, uh, the possibility of a neutral site AFC championship game and a coin toss to determine where a Ravens Bengals wildcard game would take place. It depends on uh, part of on how the Week 18 matchup between the Bengals and the Ravens falls out. Lamar Jackson, he has already been ruled out for that game. Uh, good news continues with DeMar Hamlin. He has addressed the team via FaceTime. The breathing tube is out, and he spent the morning speaking to various teammates on FaceTime, and he was also delivering a message to the entire group. Meanwhile, speaking of entire groups, the Patriots had their full 53-man roster 
Uh, they were practicing today in the rain, the sleet, the snow, and everything else that's fallen out of the sky as they prepare for their 1 o'clock game at Buffalo. Full injury report probably at the uh, 4 o'clock hour. The Celtics, they bounced back in Dallas last night, 124-95 over the Mavericks. They are in San Antonio with the big Noah Vonley revenge game Saturday night. And the Boston Trent Fredericks had crushed the LA Kings in the third period. They finally won that game 5-2. to two. The Bruins West Coast trip continues tomorrow night in San Jose at 10.30. We touched on it and now we will get a little deeper into it. Arcan and Mego explore the possibility of a coin toss determining how the playoffs fall out right after this. WEEI Football Sunday. Will it be the final w-
Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Back again. That's right. Luda. <laughs> Feel this. It gets meaner and meaner each time, baby. <laughs> Feeling real good, too. Him, what up, Uncle Face? Yeah. <laughs> Sports Radio, WEEI, Arcan and Mego, 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. Looking for the number one spot. That's what we're doing. And uh, the NFL... All the owners got together, had a little summit meeting, and decided whereas they would resolve all their problems. And uh, it's interesting. The The big headline here is that there could potentially be a coin toss to determine where a wild card game between Cincinnati and Baltimore that is, of course, if uh, Baltimore beats Cincinnati on Sunday, which they're probably not going to because Lamar Jackson's not playing. But if they do, then uh, the wild card game, the site of that game, could be determined by a coin toss, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Uh, let's start from the beginning. You want to, uh, uh, the stenographer? I'm not going to go through all the whereases. Okay. Because I think everybody listening all know to this the show is. can understand what happened earlier this week and right. why they're in a position where they have to talk about what they're going to do now that the Bengals Bills game has been canceled. So Basically, start- they just want to make sure that any team that didn't play the same amount of games as another team has a fair shake when they uh, when it comes to playoffs. So season. they tailored this new rule or these two new rules, I should say. The first is resolved for the 2022 season only. The AFC Championship game will be played at a neutral site to be determined by the commissioner if the perci- the participating teams played a different number of regular season games, which probably will be the case. Mm-hmm. And the lower seeded team in the championship game could have been the number one seed in the AFC if a full 17 game regular season had been played by all AFC clubs. And further, that unless both teams could have been the number one seed in the AFC and host the championship game had they played a full 17 game season. Uh, the game shall be played at the home stadium of the higher seeded team. So this is the first part. This is about the specifically about the AFC championship game comes down to the seeding between the Bills and the Chiefs and the situation there now that the Bills and the Bengals team, I mean, the Bills and the Bengals game has been canceled. And if it comes down to that for the championship game, they'll probably move it to Indianapolis. Yes. Yeah, probably. That's what the reporting has been, that the neutral site, for whatever reason, the NFL is obsessed with holding events in Indianapolis. Hey, mm. Quentin, what's up, man? Yeah, man. And, Come and on over here, bro. And it's roughly 480 miles, 490 miles yeah, from Kansas City right, and yeah. Buffalo to Indianapolis. So it is truly neutral. And it's indoors and yada, yada, whatever. This is where, to me, it gets a little more interesting. Okay. So I'm going to read the legal language here, and we're going to try to translate it. For All right. You. So, this is the second part. Mm -hmm. This is about Cincinnati. (laughs) If Baltimore defeats Cincinnati in the game between the two teams on Sunday, this coming Sunday, and Baltimore and Cincinnati are scheduled to play against one another in a wild card game the following weekend, the site of the game will be determined by a coin toss 
supervised by the commissioner. Yeah! Unless both conditions are met, the site of any wild card game involving Baltimore and Cincinnati shall be determined by Article 20 of the Constitution and bylaws. By the way, that's just winning percentage. Right. Um, I, irrespective of where a wild card game between Baltimore and Cincinnati is played, all teams will retain their seating as determined by regular season winning percentage throughout the playoffs and other competitive determinations. So basically, if these two things happen, if Baltimore and Cincinnati, if Baltimore without Lamar Jackson on Sunday beat Cincinnati and crazier things have happened, mm-hmm. I don't think that's going to be the case, but crazier things have happened, especially at the very end of the regular season. You've seen enough of it yeah. with the Patriots in Miami. In past years. And then Baltimore and Cincinnati are lined up for a wild card weekend. They could determine who has home field advantage just by a coin toss, which apparently is going to happen somewhere where Roger Goodell is just staring at the guy flipping the coin. He's not going to flip it. He's going to supervise the flipping of the coin. It says it's supervised. They're going to get a special. Supervised by the commissioner. Like a professional coin flip. Let's go. (laughs) So... I mean, I, I don't think it's going to come to that because uh-huh. I do think Cincinnati's going to win on Sunday. But again, you Oh, did I hope just, it does, though. Don't you hope oh, it my, does? Well, what are they going to do? I mean, they have to televise the coin toss, You have right? to televise the coin toss. It we're has s- to we're be selling a, advertising, a 30 right? Minute, advertise, a 30-minute coin toss extravaganza is what I want to see. Can you advertise for the coin toss? Can absolutely. Can you tie maybe you absolutely can. a certain kind of what we call like an earworm? Yeah. Whopper, 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 Junior. Triple Whopper, Impossible yes. Bacon Whopper. I rule this day. The and coin toss, toss didn't go your way. No. You lose. Um, yeah, there's going to have to be a whole thing about, you know, uh, the history of coin tosses. They have to, you know, they have to set the stage. What did they do for uh, LeBron James? The the whole thing it was like an interview, right? It was a whole big interview, and then at the end, are you end, talking about the decision? The decision, right? It was he was up at a at a like podium with not Jim a podium, Gray, but it was like a club. table thing, right? Tom. And Jim Gray has yeah, LeBron. So can you teach guys how to grind, or is that innate? <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, LeBron, where, where are you? Where are you going to take your talents, LeBron and Tom? Um, and that Tom. was that was at least a half hour. If you can stretch a half hour out of LeBron James saying, I'm going to go play in Miami, you can stretch a half hour out of a coin toss. Absolutely you can do that. Of course you can. No question. You got the coin toss pregame show. Uh, once the coin goes up in the air, hit him with the whopper, and then, you know, we'll, we'll let you know what happens when we come back. And the coin goes up. We'll be right back. <laughs> and then the whopper song. Get a and then you come back, back out, out there. Put Rex Ryan and his giant teeth out there. You mm-hmm. know, get the whole ESPN family. Yeah. Get that uh, sports science guy to track the trajectory of the coin. Oh <laughs> like, no, I want got all sorts I want the NBC khaki guy to break down like all the percentages. What's the, I can't. Oh, Cornacki, yes, Corn- Steve yes, Cornacki. Cornacki. Of course. It's, it's a perfect opportunity to, to worm Steve Cornacki in there with his big board and pointer. Um, yes, absolutely. All right, there's a question that needs to be asked here, and that is uh, not so much with the coin toss thing, but with the number one seed thing. Is this fair to everybody? Is this fair to the Chiefs, for example? Because you can make an argument that maybe it's not, and that maybe the Bills are getting the, slightly. The, neutral site the neutral site the, thing yeah because there's two pieces of this so for everyone paying who maybe is just tuning in the first part is the neutral site for the afc championship game which is maybe bill chiefs mm-hmm. and then they'll be sent out to indianapolis to the dome right or and then the other side is that home field advantage for wild card weekend between the Bengals and baltimore assuming they'll have lamar jackson back at that point could just come down to a coin toss you're going to be in cincinnati or baltimore yeah no, it's not fair. No. None of this is fair. I don't really. understand why for this particular season they're rewriting these rules. I mean, especially after watching what the league went through during COVID and all the weird stuff that they did in real time just to try to get the games in as much as they could. I'm not saying they shouldn't play the Bengals Bills game. Like that that's done. I'm they're, fine. I'm not with them talking not about that. that. But to make it these arbitrary ideas that they're just putting out there instead of just following what they have here and accounting for these situations Mm. in which like okay so in a week 17 game if Baltimore without their starting quarterback somehow upsets the Bengals like that undoes all the work that the Bengals have done this entire season yeah one win like one one bad win at the or one bad loss in week 17 which so many teams we've seen in the past in week 16 and previous seasons just sit their guys anyway because they have the buy or whatever like it's just bizarre to me yeah like, it you're, is you're overcorrecting you're doing too much i also have heard people say well why not just say it was a tie 
Why not just call that game that didn't get played a tie and move on and have it be a tie and neither of them get the win, neither of them get the loss? That's, in theory, maybe more fair, but it's also not really because that game wasn't a tie, and that does affect your schedule. That was going to be probably a win for somebody and a loss for somebody else. So now you're saying, no, it's neither of that. It's something uh, you know in between that for both of you, and that's not necessarily fair to them either. So I think that uh, they're, they're trying their best here, and as far as the AFC Championship game situation is concerned, I think the Chiefs and maybe the Bengals to a lesser extent do have a bit of a gripe, but they're not going to say anything. No one's going to actually come out and say it. No one from those organizations – are going to come out and complain about it. They may do it behind the scenes. But I think that uh, this is probably the most agreeable thing they could all come up well, with. Well, so apparently this is from Kelsey Conway, who is a Cincinnati Bengals reporter for mm-hmm. Esquire and USA Today. Uh, Esquire and, has a Bengals like, reporter? Exactly. <laughs> what? See, like, she's got the blue Who's Esquire's she's, Patriots reporter? She's got a real blue check mark. I think she's a bit of a freelancer. It's the power of Joe Burrow. Got it, yeah. She, um, she from Zach... Zach Taylor today from the Bengals said, what's in front of us is to win this weekend. From what I'm from what I'm concerned about, we just want the rules to be followed. She writes, the Bengals are not happy the NFL is changing the rules and not going by winning, winning percentage. Quote, it's black and white. It's in the rule book. Again, I can confirm. I read that legalese in the rule book before our show. You know, show prep. Yeah. Well, somebody had to. Is this real? Oh, my goodness. What? There's a little bit of breaking news out of Buffalo, and it's not great. Do you see this? Do you guys see this? What? So apparently the voice, the play-by-play voice of the Buffalo Bills. Hold on. Let me just double ch- uh, make sure I'm, I'm not yeah, getting uh, get... fooled here. Because, uh, no, this is from no, the official this from Bills. The Bills. This is from the official Bills account. My God, this team. Uh, John Murphy, the voice of the Buffalo Bills, suffered a stroke last weekend, recovering at home with his family, making progress every day. John and the Murphy family are grateful at the excellent care and staff and doctors at Buffalo General Medical Center. They just tweeted this out five minutes ago. Um, is that the radio play-by-play? That is the uh, radio, yeah, Bills Radio Network. The voice of the Bills Radio Network had a stroke last week. My God. I mean, wow. <laughs> what I don't you know say? Bills by say. infinity? Is that what you're trying to That's, bet? The, he's not that, that, He's not that? very old. He's 67. Really? I don't. I mean, I don't That's know much about devastating. him. Devastating. Jeez. Uh, I don't know how severe it was. I don't know anything else. I'm just telling you, the Bills just put this statement out right now uh, from the Murphy family. John Murphy, voice of the Bills, suffered a stroke last weekend. If as if they didn't have enough to play for. I mean, this is uh, this is a lot. I mean, this is a lot for a team and an organization to have to go through here in just one week. My goodness. And you you talked about this yesterday, man. I forgot about all the stuff. They had to dig themselves out of two blizzards already and play games in Detroit. And there was that awful uh, shooting at the grocery store at the very beginning of the season. This for Buffalo has been a nightmare year in so many ways. I mean, really, the team's been good. And that's ultimately, you know, what fans and NFL fans are, are sort of talking about here. But for that community and that That organization, this has just been, oh, my God, it's overwhelming. I mean, really, that is an overwhelming uh, series of events. It's really, really upsetting. So are we all rooting for Buffalo officially now? Like, if we didn't need any more, like, I don't know if I can, like, consciously go, oh, yeah, that's that's really tough. Go Pats so we can go to the playoffs. Like, I don't know if in my heart I could do that anymore. I might be a Buffalo Bills fan this weekend. Hmm. I mean, really, it's uh, it's hard to root against them right now. That's Are for sure. Are you a bad person if you root for the Patriots this weekend? I feel like I'm going to be a bad person if I root for the Patriots. <laughs> I know, this I kind of do too. Like, I feel like, what are they going to say? You know, like <laughs> we've been ta- we we talked about this a little bit yesterday too. What do you say in the locker room? How do you pump the team up? What do you do? I think the only thing you can say is, listen, they're not going to take it easy on you. You know, there. This is a football game, and once you get out there and start playing the game, I'd have to imagine it's muscle memory, and a lot of that stuff will kind of just fade away. You won't be thinking about it. But the lead into that game, oh my god, like that's <laughs> just that's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of heavy stuff that's getting uh, it's getting dumped on this team. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven is the phone number. Let's go to the phones right now. Talk to Chris, who was in Boston. Go ahead, Chris. All right, guys. So if it comes down to this coin flip thing, they need to do better. If if it comes down to that, I want to see like like televised. I want to see a game of horse between both kickers to determine it. Like give the people what they want, or like the two strongest offensive linemen like arm wrestle each other, like something. That's a good idea. But you know two fastest I mean? players one, race one each other. Yes, yeah. exactly. I'm Thanks, into it. See? Like th- these millionaires, these billionaires need to like really think out outside of the box. And no one's want to sit there and watch Roger Goodell stare at, at at someone like, "Oh, here's Timmy from so and so who's gonna flip a coin." Like, let's go. No, that's, oh, you're that. so right, Chris. Yeah. Thank you for the call. Let's do Hi, Roger. Sophie Schneider.
But you know that they're going to do that. They're going to, like, parade someone out there and, oh, it's going to be bad. I do want to, before we go back to the phones, I want to update this because Zach mm-hmm. Taylor apparently spoke uh, extensively about the coin toss. Really? He said it's opportunities lost for us. We had control. Now we don't. This is from Pro Football Talk. There are a lot of positives for a team, for a lot of teams and negatives for us. He says uh, he doesn't want to hear about fair and equitable solutions while rules are being changed at the last minute. Bengals executive VP Katie Blackburn wrote a memo to the NFL to NFL teams saying that, quote, the proper process for making rule change is in the offseason and that it is not appropriate to make changes to rules on the fly. Taylor called it awesome to see that someone has to fight for you. It's clearly not coming from the league. Okay, so I guess I take back everything I said about no one complaining. (laughs) Yeah, so Taylor said, let us play. This is Zach Taylor. He said, let us play seven home games and nine road games and then try to take a home playoff game away. That's what this team is built for. Yeah. They're Um, pissed. Yeah. Even just at the very possibility of this. Yeah. Taylor said, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we just want the rules to be followed. And when a game is canceled, turn to winning percentage and clarify everything so we don't have to make up new rules. There's been several instances this season where the club is fined or people in our building got fined and we're being told to follow the rules. It's black and white in the rule book. So now when we point out the rules and are told we're going to change that, I don't want to hear about fair and equitable. He's not wrong. I mean, he's really not wrong about that at all. Um, They are going away from the winning percentage thing, which is what a lot of people football insiders tommy curran uh burt breer yesterday i mean a lot of people were saying this is where we think this vote's gonna go but apparently they decided the coin tie you know why you know why because uh you can't televise winning percentage <laughs> you can't Stop. televise a winning percentage it's just oh well there it is you can televise well, a coin toss oh, but you could televise arm wrestling with two offensive that's linemen. right that's right i you- don't get it because uh, uh twitch chat wants them to play horseshoes is that what you say play horseshoes yeah you know, toss, throw, toss, some toss, shoes. toss some shoes. Toss a couple shoes. Hey, you could make it like a whole relay event, you know? Um, yeah. How about a punt pass kick? You could just do one of those, right? I like that. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, These are all infinitely better ideas than a coin than toss. Than the coin toss. The coin toss is the idea is it leaves it up to fate, but I feel like whatever the competition is should reflect both of the teams. So Cincinnati at this point in the season is a much better team than the Ravens are. So if they even if they lose that final game in right. some kind of fluky way or ridiculous way, I mean the Bengals have been through a lot since Monday night too as a team. Like we haven't really talked about that as much outside of T Higgins, but they were there. Like they're probably traumatized in a similar fashion to the way that the Bills locker room is yeah. having been there. And the Bengals too, I mean, they were in an awkward spot because they could have pushed for a forfeit. They could have pushed for, you know, the something else happening with the game. They were uh, respectful. They're getting screwed. And they said, no, we're not going to do any of that. And then they voted and now it's a coin flip, even if yeah. they have the better winning percentage. Like that's, you're right. It's not fair. It's not I fair I understand to them. Zach Taylor coming out and saying that. I mean, he's saying some pretty strong stuff. And I, you know, he's known for a little while too. Like, Probably Tuesday, Wednesday, not the day to go. Listen, I think we're about to get screwed here. I got to speak out against this, but I think you know Friday, with the circumstances being what they are, he he's not nice Zach Taylor. Understanding he's Zach Taylor anymore, and now he's Cincinnati Bengals head coach Zach Taylor. It's just bizarre. Let's yeah. go back to the phones. Here's David in the car. David, hey, you're David. on. Hey, good afternoon, guys. So uh, why don't we just do uh, rock paper scissors? I mean, uh, come on, you know. It's pretty much the level we're really at. Important. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So here's my a couple of things on, on this whole situation. It's sad that it got to this, but you know, the, the whole neutral site for the game, I, I, I disagree. Now you have facilities that are losing out because they're not given an opportunity. Maybe they should have a coin toss for that. What facility is going to host it? Because there's a lot of money to be made on, on when that game takes place at this neutral site. Uh, so a lot of people are going to be losing money. You know yeah. what, David? And, you know, they, Sorry, go ahead, Arkham. Uh, yeah, thanks, David. Thanks for the call. I'd say for the AFC Championship game, if that's what you're talking about in the neutral site, it doesn't really matter what neutral site it is because you're not going to have the hometown audience. Like, there's going to be people who come to the game. Like, I'm sure the Colts or, you know, Indy's going to have plenty of fans who come in and people will travel and all that. But it's not the same as when you have the game at a home 
site with the fans who all live there and who all go to that season ticket holders and everybody else. I mean, that's just there's there's no way to replicate that in a neutral site. So I don't think, you know, flipping a coin for that is really going to make much of a difference. Like, uh, you know, if, if they if they think that, you know, Indy's the best because it's the equidistant and it's indoors and you can sort of be OK with the conditions there, then fine. I don't I don't have too much of a problem with it. I wonder if that matters to Buffalo. You know, they're used to playing outdoors. They're used to bad weather. You know, would they want to be indoors? Well, it's very Patriots like, yeah. you know, I mean, whereas some of the strengths that you have and it's. It's also just knowing your it, people talk about the comforts of home and everything, sure. but also in terms of the game. I mean, the amount of time, if you ever ask Bill about it, about the way that the wind circulates through Gillette Stadium and how that affects everything with special teams. Oh, yeah. and Like, that stuff is real to them. <laughs> Any weird advantage that you can gain, aside from appointing an actual offensive coordinator. Right. Like, he is looking into. He talked about the wind uh, in the kicking game. Multiple times, yes. Like all through the preseason, the other day, like there, were, I forget which game it was, the home game. He was talking about, wow, that wind, you know, in the kicking game down there in the south end zone, uh, with the lighthouse being built two, and all that. Like that's a big thing. I yeah. would say they're two outdoor teams. If right. it's if it if it is Bills Chiefs, so I think it's more like you lose the, uh, you know, the atmosphere of your fan base. Those are both great, rabid fan bases, absolutely, and especially in Buffalo, but the Chiefs on in their own right as well. So it's more like. I mean, I know that this is so far down on the list of priorities with figuring stuff out with this game, but doesn't it feel kind of oddly sterilized? It does. If you send it to Indianapolis. It I should mean, you're be. just in that big dome yeah. in the middle of the country. Like, it, it, I understand it's neutral and everything, but for people to have to essentially travel 500 miles to get there, it is the AFC championship game. But, I mean, these teams have been there before, and you're just wanting – if you're a fan of one of these teams, you might just be waiting to say, like, they actually going to be in the Super Bowl. Right. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. And I bet you a lot of remember those tickets when, are... Remember when Patriots fans used to think that way? Absolutely. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I, I bet you, like... Uh, do we want to splurge to go to Indy for the AFC Championship game? Like, it nah. feels very sterilized. Nah, we're we'll going to be in the Super Bowl Go to in Houston for the anyway. Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. Go to New Orleans. <laughs> uh, by the way, Ian Rappaport spoke with Rich McKay, who I believe is the Falcon CEO, but he's also the competition committee chair. Uh-huh. Uh, according to Ian Rappaport, uh, he says, when asked why they didn't stick with the rules, quote, we don't capture everything in every room rule when you face uh, situations you have to try to make adjustments not that different from some of the covid related issues which i take as a bill belichickism we're doing the best that we can given the circumstances yeah by the way uh i just want to say on twitch apparently we're on in a barbershop right now so shout out to wes who is getting his hair chopped off? Right All now. right, very nice. Hope it turns out well for you, Rex. Yeah, hope it's uh, hope, hope it's a we nice didn't clean just cut. Just distract your barber. <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> twitch.tv slash Boston W E E I. There you go. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. There's your phone number. Um, a lot of things are going to be hinging on the uh, arms of a lot of quarterbacks this weekend, including potential uh, ins for the Patriots. Even if they don't beat Buffalo, there are so many garbage quarterbacks playing this weekend. We're going to go over them and wonder just how bad the starting quarterback problem in the NFL really is that's coming up next 93.7 weei boston sports original
Just download the Odyssey app. We're right back to it. Arcand and Mego on WEEI. Sports Radio WEEI. We're Boston Sports Original. It's Arcand and Mego here. Taking you up until 6 p.m. The week starts tomorrow. We got the Raiders and the Chiefs at 4.30. Jaguars and Titans at 8.15. One of those two games could uh, determine not the fate of the Patriots, but the fate of the Patriots if they lose to Buffalo. That whole thing can be uh, iced out if the Jaguars beat the Titans because if the Patriots lose to Buffalo, the Titans beat the Jaguars... The Dolphins beat the Jets, right? Or is it the Jets beat the Dolphins? Dolphins have to lose. Dolphins have to lose. So the I Jets have the, to beat the Dolphins. I thought that the Jags were supposed to beat the Titans, and that helps you out. Right. I thought that if you're a Patriot, you said the other way around. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. The yeah. Jags have to beat the Titans. Right. Yes. Jags have to beat the so Titans. So you should root for the Jags tomorrow. Yes. If you're a Patriots fan. You're rooting for them. You're rooting for the uh, Jets and... I hate to tell you this, New England, but you're rooting for the Browns, which means I'm you're rooting out. for... Deshaun Watson uh, okay. and the Cleveland Browns to beat the Steelers. And if those three things happen, even if you lose to the Bills, you still get in. How, how do we feel about that? Not great. <laughs> you have to root for the Patriots against the Bills this weekend yes. as a Patriots fan. And you also have to root for Deshaun Watson. Well, no, because if the Patriots win, then, then it's Watson all doesn't matter. But either way, like you won't know that. If the Patriots lose. What, what time do the Browns play? That's a 1 o'clock game, too, so it'll be going yeah. on at the same and time. Yeah, simultaneously. Yes, let's go, Deshaun. Yeah. Come on, Deshaun. Yeah. You're our hero, Deshaun. Like, did you say Deshaun? No, no, I didn't say Deshaun Wipe Watson. Wipe him up. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's go, Deshaun. Play a clean game. <laughs> hey. Be here all week. Um, there are a lot of garbage quarterbacks playing this weekend, like a lot. Um, let's go down the list because I don't think that I don't know that there is there might not be two starting quarterbacks playing each other this weekend. I'm not kidding. Like I, this can't be that bad. This list that you have, this can't be. Stidham Mahomes is the first one. Dobbs and Lawrence is the second one. That's Saturday. Okay. Dobbs your... versus Lawrence sounds like a Supreme Court case. <laughs> <It does. laughs> Joshua Dobbs of the mighty Tennessee Titans. Right, and after that, Citizens United. Um, let's see, uh, Ritter versus Bray. Ritter, I barely know her versus Brady. Who the Brady. hell is Ritter? Desmond Ritter. He's the quarterback of the Falcons. Uh, came in for um, Mariota when he got benched. Oh my God. Um, there's, of course, Mac Jones and Josh Allen. It which... always blows my mind when someone is named Desmond see? off of the show Lost. <laughs> there you go. You got two starters right like there. A little Mac baby Desmond. <laughs> um, Mac Jones and Josh Allen are, in fact, two starting quarterbacks. So that's not a, that that ruins my theory. But yeah, there you that's go. still you a big one. mismatch. Um, how about this one? Try this one on for size. Kirk Cousins and Nathan Peterman <laughs> is your matchup between the Bears and the Vikings. That's a one o'clock game. Uh, Ravens Bengals, as we mentioned, is going to have Tyler Huntley starting for the Ravens against Joe Burrow. Texans and Colts. Uh, do you even want to know this one? Yes. Mills and Ellinger because uh, Foles is all done. Um, I guess Matt Ryan could maybe play in that game, but I heard it was uh, going to be Ellinger and Mills. This is fun. Nice AFC East matchup here for uh, all the marbles. Jets and Dolphins. <laughs> Joe Flacco and Skylar Thompson. That's your uh, quarterback matchup there. I kind of hate the way that you wrote these out because they are making them seem more obscure than they are. I mean, Flacco, of course, but I'm like... Thompson. Oh, Skyler. Skyler Thompson, yes. When you have Skyler as a first name, like you're always going to be Skyler. True. Um, that's uh, that's an important game for the Patriots, but certainly a matchup that sucks. Um, what else? Do, oh, by the way, very nice Zach Wilson. Can't even start in a game that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'd yeah. imagine, I'd oh, imagine yeah. he's not long for that team. And I believe uh, Salah said something along the lines of just trying to get him into the offseason. Yeah, we're just trying to get him <laughs> away from everyone. That they start, I couldn't believe it. They started 6-3, and three, and I had 
had these memories of like, hey, I think the Jets are actually pretty good. I think the Jets are. We were, we were talking about all four AFC East teams making the playoffs, and since then they've gone, I think, one in six. Yeah. Salah basically just said, just trying to get him out of the building. <laughs> Just trying to get him away from We don't want people to associate him with the Jets anymore is what we're trying to say here. Um, Panthers and Saints try on Sam Darnold and Andy Dalton for size. Uh, After that is the Watson-Pickett matchup, which unfortunately, if you're a Patriots fan here, you're going to have to be uh, rooting for Deshaun Watson. Um, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, there's two starters right there. Um, Russell Wilson, what a tremendous year he's having. Uh, Let's see, what else? Eagles-Giants, that would be Gardner Minshew versus Daniel Jones. No, I know Um, Nick Sirianni did say that Jalen Hurts is trending in the right direction, but I don't think it makes any sense if they're going to put... I don't think they're playing for anything, so why would you put Jalen Hurts back? No need to put him out there. Here's maybe the best one of the whole weekend. The Cardinals in San Francisco. David Blau versus Brock Purdy. <laughs> hey, don't hate on Purdy. I'm not hating on Purdy you the are person. Hating on Purdy. I'm hating on the name and the quarterback and the status and the fact that all of these games have at least one ass quarterback playing in them. It's unbelievable. The rest of them, Geno what Smith versus Goff Baker versus Mayfield. Ro- Goff versus Rogers. Prescott and Hal. I think Goff sucks, so I consider him garbage starters. too. They are both starters, but I mean that's rare. There's three games where it's You're two starters the playing each other. On this right now. Three games out of all the ones I just read have actual two starters playing in them. Every single other one, there's at least one, if not both of them, backups or third stringers. This is this is gonna be a a brutal weekend of football. Goff I hate to versus tell you Rogers would have been a great game four, or five years ago, <laughs> no not kidding. in 2023. Right, this Once, weekend is missing Andy Dalton. Oh no, he's playing. Oh, no, he's in he's there. He's playing for the Saints. Darnold no. versus Dalton. Oh. Yeah, Darnold and Dalton. Well, I know beautiful. where I'm going to be. Don't that's you worry, beautiful. Coop. You'll get your Andy Dalton. That is beautiful. Does Desmond Ritter have family in the New England area? Um, I don't know. There is one. What horrible thing are you going to say? Five oh eight number on the the chat that is so freaking pissed off. That I called Ritter a no name. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. How do, you not, how do you not know about Desmond? <laughs> AAC, Put some respect on that man's name. AAC Offensive Player of the Year in 2021. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> um, he was a third round draft pick out of Cincinnati. I mean, I don't know a whole lot about him <laughs> exactly. either. Exactly. He was a backup to Mariota, oh who God. sucks all year. Like, come on. <laughs> What do you want? I mean, these guys, and it's the, here's the other thing: not all of these are injuries. I know the, at the, the end Ritter of the year, the Ritter stands need to calm down. Yeah, relax there. Uh, the Ritter hive needs to relax. But uh, I would say these aren't all due to injuries. Some of the, you know, Tyler Huntley and some of these guys are in because the starter got injured. But a lot of these guys just got benched. A lot of the starters are in uniform. Zach Wilson's in uniform. Matt Ryan's in uniform. Mariota's in uniform. The play has been so bad. They all sucked and they got benched. And that's why the NFL has a bit of a starting quarterback problem. I'm sorry. Uh, 617-779-7937. There's the phone number. Um, Let's take one call here before the top of the hour. Andy is in East Providence with a uh, proposal for Roger Goodell. Go ahead, Andy. Sorry. No, it's Eddie. But that's Eddie, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no problem. Uh, 14 and 3. Uh, Kansas City, thirteen three Buffalo. I know what the rules say that that, that it has to be Kansas City percentage, whatever. Apparently, he can overrule that. Uh, it, you know, he's got that authority. Mm-hmm. Would you guys and I? Because I think Buffalo should be the number one seed because they kicked Kansas City's butt. And I understand fourteen three. You know, better record. They weren't allowed to complete. If you were Goodell, would you? say you know what i'm sorry the rules of this but you know what we're gonna have to change the rules in next year but this year buffalo is going to be the number one seed no. i want your opinion I, andy I, I, eddie sorry i don't understand the where your heart is it's when andy. you say that andy eddie he said eddie, he said oh, okay. eddie. It, doesn't, Whatever. it doesn't matter um eddie andy whoever you are i don't i understand your heart's in the right place with all of that and i understand wanting to do something for the team that had to go through this traumatic thing but you can't just give them the one seed you can't just <laughs> hand it to them i'm sorry like that's that's you know what? I mean? It's still a competitive business. You know what I mean? There's still there's still people competing. You can't just hand something to someone. I'm sorry. I, I don't I don't think that that would uh, be fair to anybody. And I'm not even sure that Buffalo would want that. Wouldn't you, you know what I mean? Are they gonna want to? Are they gonna want to say, yeah, just give us the number one seed because this bad thing happened to us? Like yeah, like some charity case. You know, like that's not what the, I don't think that they would want that. Maybe maybe they would. I don't know. I I think that that's not happening. Uh, and, that again, way. your NFC teams would be 
BS about that too. As I was just totally. informed, the Eagles are, are actually playing for something. If they win this game, they get they lock up the number one seed home field advantage. If they lose, I believe uh, San Francisco can jump them. But yeah, if I'm an NFC team, I'm, we're just handing out buys now. Yeah, come on. Um, 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're actually going to preview this Patriots Bills game. I know I've said a lot, and so have you, Megan, and so have you, Ryan. Everybody has basically said that the Patriots have no chance. Are we being hyperbolic, or is there maybe a path to victory here? We'll get to that next. 93.7 W-E-E-I Boston Sports To you by 110 Grill by Arbella Insurance. Arbella, here for New England, here for good. By Catches Law Group, New England's personal injury pros at catcheslaw.com. 
by Time Out Market, Boston's best eating and drinking destination in Fenway, all under one roof. By Twisted Tea, keep it twisted, New England. And by FindMassMoney.com, it's fast, easy, and free. We're back, Arcan and Mego on WEEI. Download the Odyssey app and listen on demand anytime. Three o'clock here, Sports Radio, WEEI, Christian Arcan, Megan Ottolini. It's Arcan and Mego here going until six. Spent the first hour discussing all the various playoff uh, implications. The coin flip, neutral site, all that stuff. But as far as the Patriots are concerned, really all that matters is uh, what happens on Sunday in Buffalo in a game that I think they had very little chance of winning before all this happened, and now I think they have even less of a chance of winning. However, um, the Buffalo Bills despite their ownership of you, uh, Patriots fans, have shown some vulnerabilities this year. It's not like they've been some wagon that's just been rolling everybody over and uh, destroying every team they face. They've had some ups and downs this year, to be sure. They're still the best team maybe in the conference, definitely in the division. But uh, you go back and look at some of the losses that they've had and some of the performances that they've had, even in that first game against you, they only scored three touchdowns. Like It wasn't like... It never really seemed like it was all that close because you couldn't score, but I wasn't super impressed with the Buffalo Bills and their offense that day. I didn't think that they looked like some superhuman team. They did a good job. The Patriots did a good job that game. I was at that game. Uh, Containing Allen, I thought. like Because the the flip side of this, and I remember the pregame of that, I was so focused on how awful they had looked. The Patriots had looked against Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields leading up to that, and I was like, oh, my God. What is Josh Allen going to do to you? Right. I thought they did a good job for the most part containing him on the run and his ability to extend plays and all of that. But it also just looked like it looked like the varsity team scrimmaging against the JV team where they I don't think they had to push it that much. Like and they certainly they the the Bills certainly took their foot off the gas at the yeah. end of that game. The one great drive or I would say competent drive bizarrely that the Patriots kind of strung together towards the end of that game was just because the Bills were essentially just in a holding pattern yeah. until the end of the game when they could walk away with a win in Thursday night football. <laughs> Patriots had like a 20 play drive. It was bizarre. And, just and then the just goal. had a field goal. <laughs> yeah, like just, At least just they get were into moving the... the ball down the field. <laughs> I will say, you know, we've talked a lot about given everything that happened earlier this week and the great, positive progress right. updates that they're getting and especially today i mean where they've come through in the last 24 48 hours with demar hamlin is so inspiring i wonder in particular with josh allen if there's a part of him where it might play into the negative with him specifically because i think this team will i know this team will be incredibly juiced up to get yeah. out there with this in their home stadium and with all their fans there and everybody just you know like, they've just gone through a miracle. But Josh Allen, if you remember back to earlier this season, he went through some kind of weird stints where it looked like we were talking about, is it possible that he's having some regression even in just his judgment? Right. He would get into the red zone in the middle, kind of middle portion of the season. And part of it coincided with the elbow injury that he was dealing with at the time. But even after that, when he looked healthy, he was trying to do so much. And I wonder if... Him getting overhyped for this game could, I'm kind of grasping at straws here, but we've seen that side of him where he tries to do too much. He gets a little too hyped up. He overdoes it. Mm -hmm. He makes some really poor judgment calls like we saw him in his first couple years in the league. Throws some interceptions to a very um, pickoff happy Patriots defense. You could, if you're going to be in this game at all, you're going to need one of those special teams or defensive touchdowns which this team, this Patriots team, has been able to manufacture yeah. for most of the games this season, which is incredible. But that might be one area where you can get like at least a foot in the door with this offense. Absolutely. Josh Allen has 13 interceptions this year. He's one of the league leaders. I don't think he's the league leader, but he's right up there. Um, this has been, for him, uh, not a great season in terms of ca- taking care of the ball. It's been a fine season in every other way. He's got over 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, but you know, and his QB rating's pretty high. But uh, I, I don't, I don't think that that's a that's a thing that you ignore. And I'm sure that that's something that Bill Belichick and you know Stephen Belichick and May, all these people are emphasizing is, hey, you know, we did an okay job on Allen in that last game. 
Our offense couldn't score. Remember, the only touchdown they scored was Marcus Jones, I think, on the screen, right? Wasn't that the only touchdown they yep. had? So, like, their offense wasn't doing anything, and that may not that change. Was, and that was incredibly fluky. Yeah. That was the first time we had seen Marcus Jones in that kind of way. Like, right. since then, we the know we yeah. know how many different things he can do, but it was so out of nowhere for everyone at the game at that yeah. point. This is his first offensive snap, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean... It was a fluky play, and I know he scored some touchdowns since then, but it's not like he's out there lining up with the offense and running wide receiver routes and everything else. Um, Maybe they'll uh, try and get him the ball. I know he was back at practice yesterday. I'm not sure about today. I do hope he plays, though, because they certainly need him. Um, On offense and on defense, I mean, let's be honest here. Uh, Whatever it is, he can can contribute. The Buffalo Bills uh, defensively, presented all sorts of problems for the Patriots. I mean, the Patriots offense was really, really stuck in the mud in that game. And uh, that's something that I'm just having a hard time envisioning getting any better. You know, I, I, I don't know exactly where the Patriots can can improve on that. I think they're going to try and run the ball a lot like they did in that first game, keep it out of Allen's hands. It's just eventually you have to score points. Eventually, if you're going to keep up with the Buffalo Bills, you have to score points. And everyone keeps saying, well, you can't fall down early. You can't fall into a hole early against the Bills. I agree with that. But the Patriots, early on in these games lately, haven't looked organized there either. I mean, you remember those first two uh, series against, um, not against Miami, but against, uh, against the Bengals. They didn't know what they were doing. Mac Jones was trying to throw a screen pass. No one was ready to catch it. And on the first passing attempt, that's when the Henry and Smith smashed into each other. Like they're not ready to go at the beginning of these games. So I'm not. I'm not sure unless the defense can really shut Allen down and uh, and keep them in it that way. I don't know where the points are going to come from. So if anything, with this game, you know, even if you, as we detailed, even if you lose this game, you can still make it into the playoffs. I guess I just want to see, and we're not going to get this. But I really just want to see, you know, grip and rip from this offense. Mm. And I bet you that that is completely, we know, Mac Jones, the last... The last Bills game, that Thursday night game, was the the quick game effing sucks game. Right, yes, yes. That was when he was getting so frustrated because he wanted to be aggressive and attack the Bills' defense. The Bills are just so strong on both sides of the ball. I do think that their offense is stronger than your Patriots' defense, and that's not to, to denigrate the Patriots' defense, who are very good. Their offense is just that freaking good. And going back to... Mac Jones and this offense, don't you just kind of want to see with some of these guys? It's the last game of the season, of the regular season. Mm. It is probably the last game of the season. Don't you just want to see if they can draw something up and execute it and have Mac actually hit Adelor down on the sideline, like on a deep route, keep throwing Tyquan Thornton in there? Like, keep actually having Kendrick Bourne back on the jet sweep again Mm. or going up across the middle? Like, Oh, if they just trot it out there and it's Stevenson and Harris handoffs through the whole, you know, through three downs of the first, whatever they draw up yeah. to Two make their debut, pass, like, for it's all just, the, yeah. I'm just going to be so frustrated. Mm. They go out there and it's like screen, 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 you know, and I think that will be the approach that it's going to be conservative because they're just going to try to keep the score down. They don't want to get into try to get into any kind of shootout with the Bills, and I get that, but it's just, what is the point of this then? Like, don't you want to see what you have? Don't you at least want to test it out and try it a little bit? I mean, last year we saw a lot of that conservative play, and I think a lot of people were frustrated by it, including Mac Jones. And for that to carry over into this season, due in part to the fact that they had to strip down their offense from what they initially uh, put in because it wasn't working and it didn't, you know, didn't really make any sense, and the guys coaching it didn't know how to coach it like that. That sucks. That really does suck. And that is, I think, led to what you see here. I think Mac Jones is capable of more than what he's done this year. But it's just, you know, in some ways, I think his performance came up short personally. And in a lot of other ways, I just think the coaching and the play calling has been so detrimental to him. And, uh, you know, against against teams that score a lot of points, listen, the defense can hold them down sometimes. Buffalo's only been held to under 20 points twice this year. And it was the other two AFC East teams. It was the Jets and the Dolphins, the only two teams, two of the three teams that beat them and uh, just happen to be in the division and when you think of division matchups Megan you think close games you think hard-nosed teams that know each other and they're really familiar and it's going to be you know even if one team's better and the standings are still going to be a tough game it's not like that with Buffalo and New England anymore it's like that with the (laughs) Dolphins and the Bills the Jets beat the Bills Zach Wilson beat the friggin' Bills this year 
I know he didn't do it, but you know what I mean? Like, he was the quarterback, and they beat the Bills. <laughs> and the Patriots are nowhere close. The Patriots, like, stand no chance when they get on the field with them. So one thing that we talked about before was if you're getting up for this for this game as somebody in the Patriots locker room, as a Patriots player, as a Patriots coach, like, how do you do it against all the off-field uh, stuff that's happened with the Bills over the last couple of days? I guess one thing that you could turn to is just looking at the – the captain Slater and McCordy mm-hmm. and saying like, Hey, you don't want to, you don't want to go out on something so sour for them. Right. And we're going to get to Gerard Mayo, I think in a couple minutes, because you're going to look around the locker room and around Foxborough. And this is most likely going to be the last game for some of these longtime guys, yeah. like these longtime locker room leaders. And so I guess if you're trying to in the intangible stuff, get the, team up for that i know that can't come from slater like he can't be like oh yeah win for me <laughs> you know like, how do we feel about me <laughs> yeah oh yeah like, i mean it's got to come from other guys in the locker room but i would feel i would feel awful for those guys if they go out and they lose like 40 something to 10 yeah you know that'd be tough That'd be it's a tough just, way to go out. <laughs> we gotta leave with all oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah how we feel is. about getting the dub today oh! There you go. I'm going to Cancun. <laughs> How do we feel about cleaning out our lockers today? <laughs> um, oh, yeah! um, Mike Giardi had uh, some interesting thoughts on what Buffalo is going to be doing here, how they're getting ready for this game, because they've had uh, less days of practice than the Patriots certainly have. Yesterday they had their walkthrough and a bunch of team meetings. Um, here's Giardi with a little bit more on that. I don't really think they know how they're going to react and how they're going to feel and and how much they're going to have playing in terms of energy and preparation. And look, they've admitted they're playing for DeMar, and that's what he would want. Uh, That's, as Mario Hamlin said, that's what he would want. Finish your goals. Go after what you set out to be. Sean McDermott said we've overcome a lot of obstacles, and we have to overcome this one. But I I am really curious to see how this team re-energizes itself as they have to get ready for a game, it's I, I, very difficult. I, I can't I can't imagine what they're what they're going through trying to do it. And I think they kind of gave us a window into the conflict of emotions and energy that that's necessary for this. So I mean, Jardy makes it sound like it's really to their detriment. Mm. You know, in terms of being in the Bills locker room, we're all talking about it like kind of like it's the Disney movie ending. Right. And, hey, come on, they're they're at home. They're already the much more talented and better coached team overall. And so they're going to go out there, and it's going to be this incredible celebration of what the team just went through. Giardi, I think, is looking at it from a little bit of a practical standpoint of they spent the first half of the week in basically post-traumatic stress yeah. and are probably still very much in it. And suddenly have to turn themselves, their focus and their energy energy towards this Week 17 game. Yeah. Luckily for them, it's just the Patriots. Exactly. Playing they don't have to <laughs> so be it comes back to that. Yeah. So there you go. 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. We got open phone lines if you'd like to jump in. When we come back, we'll hear from Gerard Mayo, who uh, spoke to the media today, called this a trash bag game. Not because he thinks the Patriots are trash, uh, or maybe he does. I don't know. But uh, it also may be the last time that we uh, hear or see from Gerard Mayo. Um, if he uh, ends up going elsewhere. Also, we'll talk with Andrew Callahan of the Boston Herald. That's all coming up next segment right after trending. The Rich Keefe Show, weeknights starting at 6. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. It is official. The NFL owners have voted for the proposed change to the playoffs that include a possible AFC title game on a neutral site. Uh, which could lead to a coin flip, which would determine where a Ravens-Bengals wildcard game would take place. It depends in part on what happens in Week 18. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he's already been ruled out of that game against the Bengals, and uh, the latest injury report indicates Tyler Huntley was also limited. Uh, Good news continues with DeMar Hamlin. He was addressing the team via FaceTime. The breathing tube is out. He spent the morning uh, speaking to various teammates through FaceTime and uh, actually delivered a message to the entire group. On the Patriots' front as they continue to get ready for their 1 p.m. matchup in Buffalo. Full attendance from the 53-man roster at practice today. We expect a full injury report in the 4 p.m. hour. The Celtics had a great bounce-back game against the Mavs last night, knocking them off 124-95. Their trip continues there in San Antonio Saturday night. Trent Frederick had the two deciding goals in the 5-2 win over the Kings last night. The Bruins' West Coast trip continues tomorrow night in San Jose at 10.30. The Red Sox 
Seahawks, they've officially announced the contract of Justin Turner in order to make a room for Justin Turner on the roster. Darwin's and Hernandez has been DFA'd to make space. I'm Ryan Garvin for uh, Arcand and Mego. What is the future of Gerard Mayo with your New England Patriots? Plus, the show talks to Andrew Callahan at 3.30. We return right after this. Gresh and Fourier. It does the- We'll be right back. 
Take Boston Sports Original everywhere you go. Is this Black Betty? Yes, Who's playing this? It's a cover by a group called Spider Bay. Pretty good. Crank this up. I like this. Brian Garvin, ladies and gentlemen. That's him singing. It is. It kind of sounds like him. I sound like him. It does. <laughs> sounds exactly like him. This is good. This is good stuff. All right. All right. You can turn it down now. 617 779 Turn it off. 7937. There's your phone number. Um, it's Christian Arcan. It's Megan Adelini here with you going until 6 o'clock. We'll be joined by uh, Andrew turn Callahan at 3.30. <laughs> you can keep it in the background. Play that the was, whole segment. That was back when I thought that uh, Udoka was going to the Nets. I was very angry. We all Shelby thought Yudoku like, was going very to the Nets. Mad at me. It was probably the most angry that I ever got. Uh, cool, Turn off that music. What was he playing? Hmm? I was what probably was playing? playing something Oh, okay, you started playing the flute music. The, like, drunk recorder music. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> you started playing that when I was, I was reacting in real time, <laughs> reading a report. And I was so mad, and you started playing it, so I flipped out. That. This. Is this you? No, this yeah, isn't this me. Is. Yeah, this, that's is this is her theme playing. Song. This is her playing. <laughs> You've never heard this. I've heard it, but I didn't know who was playing it. No, it's not me. Megan Adelini plays this song. It's my. This is what they used to play when I had all my notes out for my betting info. Okay. When we did Mutt versus the show. Very good. <laughs> I like it. Um, six one seven 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 nine. Anyway, seven ninety three seven. There's your phone number. Um, as uh, as we get ready for uh, Callahan here in about uh, five minutes, I just wanted to briefly touch on something Gerard Mayo said today. Uh, do we have this Gerard Mayo talking about uh, this uh, upcoming game with Buffalo? Honestly, you win and you're in, and and that's the mentality. Like, you, there's no speech or anything like that a coach can give you. It's look, either you win and you're in the playoffs, or you lose and you go home. So, plastic bag game. What does that mean? That means if you lose, you get a big plastic bag, trash bag, trash bag game. <laughs> and the trash bag is conceivably to get all the crap out of your locker and to go, which they can't do in Buffalo because that's not their home locker, but right. you understand what he means there. Uh, the Patriots used to play hat and T-shirt games. Now they're playing trash bag games. <laughs> it's, it's a good a, point. It's a fall good from point. grace, to say the least, but uh, that is that is where they are. This also may be the last we see of Gerard Mayo on With the Patriots the, yeah. sideline, you know, that may be the last time that uh, he coaches for this team. If the Denver Broncos, and I know there's other uh, potential head coaches out there that are um, popular and, and may get a look, but Gerard Mayo was uh, someone that the Denver Broncos were definitely interested in last time around. They went with Hackett instead, which was a terrible mistake. And uh, they may be into him. Another team might be into him. Um, what do you think? Is this it for Mayo? It feels like it. I, so. I I don't have any information on this, but he's been such a popular candidate for head coaching jobs. And I wonder if it wouldn't even be a head coaching job that sways him to somewhere else. He's loved being here, and obviously his career has been here. And as a player, as a commentator, as a coach. But I I could see him going to a really strong program somewhere else where he gets the defensive coordinator title. Yeah. And then he springs from that right into a head coaching job. And that's the problem, I think, and what's been the problem with not giving him that title here 
is that now he has incentive to leave. All they have to do is say, you're doing the exact same job. You're going to do the same job you're doing in New England, but you're going to get more money, and we're going to call you the defensive coordinator, which means you're going to be on a faster track to being a head coach someday. Well, Unless yeah. he gets a head coach offer somewhere else, which well, he might. Well, the thing but like, with the head coaching is yeah. that the defensive coaches are just not the sexy pick right now. Especially, I don't think it matters so much that he doesn't have the defensive coordinator title because everybody – has known him for years at this mm. point, so I don't think that that instills any lack of confidence in them in the process or anything. Um, and they like him as a guy and as a leader of men, as everyone likes to say. Sure, but I could just see him getting a little impatient. And I, it seems like he and Steve Belichick have a great relationship. The players like Steve; they think he's a good coach. Yeah, you they know? like him. I think Steve Belichick gets a little bit of unfair treatment in all of this because people look at the nepotism he's and the coach's kid. He is the happen, coach's yeah. kid, yeah. But it's like you know, I, I the he's a good coach in his own right. All I heard was blah blah blah, Matt Ryan, blah blah blah, mobility. And the players like him, yeah. and they respect him. They do. So I don't think it's like a matter of that, but I could see him, to your point, just going somewhere for more money and then leveraging that into a head coaching job down the road. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I know people know about Mayo, but the optics of the situation that he's in right now aren't great for him. Mm-hmm. He looks like he's a defensive coach who is there because uh, he has to babysit the coach's kid, and he's not the defensive coordinator because they don't want to, you know, upset the uh, upset uh, Steve over there. Not to mention, everybody but he thinks it's Bill who runs the defense anyway. Right. So not only is he like a step down below the sun, it's the head coach is the guy who's in charge of all this. Yeah, I can so, confirm that. Exactly. Thanks, Bill. So like it makes Gerard Mayo seem like he's, you know, not even forget the defensive coordinator. Like he's he's answering to the Belichick the father and son there. By and the that's, way, you know, not a great situation for him. Yeah, even day to day. Being mm-hmm. an assistant coach in Foxborough is hard. Yeah. And it's hard compared to the rest of the league in that position. You know, for the most part, all you hear about is The time that you get under Bill Belichick is priceless, but it's not a lot of pay and compared to those jobs elsewhere, and it's a grind. Like, you're expected to burn the midnight oil every season and in the offseason. So if you can work a little less, get a little more money, get a better title somewhere else, and then leverage that into something, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, it it makes plenty of sense. I do think it's funny that they're both linebackers coaches. You know, right. like they're bu- both of those guys coach the linebackers and linebackers are obviously a very important part of the defense. I'm not trying to say that they aren't, but I don't know that that's like the strength of this team this year. You know, no, like I feel like the D line, I guess uh, Judon's technically a linebacker. He's an edge rusher, but you know, whether you want to call that a linebacker or not, like I look at the linebackers on this team and I think like, are they really, <laughs> are they really the ones carrying the load here for all these guys? I don't know if I'd say that necessarily. Well, I feel if you, like if you, Listen to Belichick. The titles don't really mean anything. Of course So it not. could just be like a random, oh, just call it a linebacker coach. I mean, it's essentially like it seems that uh, Gerard is the guy who leads the meetings and Steve Belichick is the defensive play caller. Right. So that's just maybe meetings coach and play caller. Yeah. There you go. Um, 617-779-7937 is the phone number. Um, we'll get to your phone calls here in just a moment. Uh, we'll also be joined by Andrew Callahan of the Boston Herald, who's uh, just about to jump on with us right now. He had a, a nice piece in the uh, in the Herald today. Um Actually, I think the Herald's been turning out some pretty good sports content lately. I Why do really, you have to say an actually in front of that? Because I Come haven't on. been reading it much lately. I haven't, Come on. I, I haven't gone oh, and grabbed a copy you. of the that's Herald much the lately. Herald. Well, no, it is on the Herald because it's sometimes hard to read their website. You click on one of the articles, and sometimes you don't get the article. Have you noticed that? What Once you in try, a while. I tried you get to, an ad? I, no, I tried to click on a Karen Garigian uh, article about Bill Belichick the other day. I clicked to it, and it says you need to be a subscriber, which I am. And when I went to log in, it took me to a, a different portal site, and I could not access the thing no matter how many times I tried. I tried on my laptop. I tried on my phone. I could not read this uh, Karen article. Arkan, I know that's not a newsroom you particularly want to call. But you can always, you're, you're a former Herald employee. That's true, You can always call up, like, the IT line. I may be like, persona. Hey. Are open. Thank you very much, Bill. I may be persona non grata uh, over there. I don't know. They um, talked about you so much. Is there even you. an office to call? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think you had to call Lowell. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, is uh, Callahan ready? Let's uh, yes, go ahead is. and talk with Andrew Callahan of the Boston Herald, who joins us uh, here on the program right now. Andrew, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm lost in the same portal you were just referencing, trying to get back into our own site. So Thank you very much. I, I'm trying to read your content. It's not always easy. Um, but I did think, uh, in particular, uh, I, I really enjoyed what you were, uh, what you had to say today uh, in terms of the run-up to this game, what it's been like for the Patriots, and uh, in general, what would you say the uh, overall mood and feel is like in that locker room? 
I think today has been a stark difference from yesterday. We didn't get to speak with any players on Wednesday when the Patriots canceled all their interviews, including a Bill Belichick press conference. But today, I think as the news has gotten better with DeMar Hamlin, so has their mood. They feel freer to focus on football. The message about, you know, focus on what you can control and all the resources that have been made available inside the organization for players who want to talk, coaches, team chaplain, team psychologist. I think that's all taking into effect. And I think their spirits are up just like they are in Buffalo. So, Andrew, looking at towards the game now and the way that they've been preparing for this, do you get any sense that uh, this team has found anything in themselves, this Patriots team, that will be so different than what we saw in early December on that Thursday night game? Uh, no, I do not. And <laughs> okay, partly great. because, you know, we, we, we can get into the emotion for Buffalo, you know, and the atmosphere that will be supercharged there from a fan standpoint. Obviously, the players and coaches playing for DeMar who FaceTime with Bill's players uh, today, you know, I I think at some point that emotion is going to wear off and it's going to come down to two teams that are familiar with each other. And the Bills have won five of the last six. And since Sean McDermott got there in 2017, the Patriots have averaged fewer than 20 offensive points per game against them. And that includes three Brady years. So this is a team in Buffalo that knows how to play the Patriots, hold them down like a bigger brother. And I think we're going to get more of that in a headlock at the end of Sunday. Um, Andrew, the uh, division matchups here with Buffalo have been interesting this year because they lost to Zach Wilson. They lost to Tua. Um, they uh, ended up beating uh, the Jets again later, and uh, obviously they own the Patriots. But why is it that they seem to have trouble with the other AFC East teams and not with New England? I feel like every year in every division, the matchups are always pretty close, but they're not really close with these two teams. Well, I think part of it is circumstance, right? Like, you go all the way back to that Miami game. I think it was week three. They're down in South Florida. It's over 100 degrees, and players are all but collapsing on the field because they've been under the sun in those dark blue Bills uniforms, and they just literally ran out of gas. So that's a one-score game. You know, they do lose at the Jets. You mentioned Zach Wilson. The bigger part about that was Zach Wilson was coming off that loss to the Patriots where he literally just threw the game away in the second half. So when he wasn't doing that against Buffalo – and Josh Allen hurts his UCL and his throwing elbow, that became a real problem. The Jets' defense is great, much more talented than a lot of defenses you'll see in the league. I would say probably more so even than the Patriots, so the Patriots have been playing well. So I think it's just you lose kind of a coin flip here, some unusual weather, and then, you know, Zach Wilson plays, let's say, out of character, and that's that's what happens. We're talking to Andrew Callahan of the Boston Herald here on the Harbor One Hotline. So, Andrew, given that kind of approach from the Jets, do you expect a conservative approach from the Patriots on offense like we've seen them roll out so many times this year? Oh, no question about it. I mean, I think the only way to exploit this Buffalo defense is really to force them to tackle in space. And guys, I hate to break it to you, but the best way to do that might be to throw more screens. So this oh, is going to be right. Matt Patricia's wheelhouse, you know, because you just you need to get the ball to remind Ray Stevenson, and dare I say, you know, the ghost of Kendrick Bourne, um, because that's the only way to do this. I think they're going to try to play keep away, a time possession game, shorten it, give Josh Allen fewer possessions. And you know what? Here's the thing. They did that almost successfully in the last game, though it was Buffalo with possession because Patriots said, we want you to run the ball and run clock. And the Bills played that game, and they won anyway. So I think they just need to sustain drives a little bit better and ultimately try to do the same formula that kept it to 24-10 to back on December 1st. It's just hard to see that, you know, working over four quarters in Buffalo. Andrew, uh, DeMar Hamlin obviously was uh, was a backup who was playing when uh, when that awful thing happened this past week in for um, uh, Fitzpatrick, I believe, and now he's out. Is there, a, uh, is there a weakness maybe in that Buffalo secondary? Yeah, aside from the tackling, it really is in the safety. So DeMar Hamlin had been for Micah Hyde, Pro Bowl Hyde, right, safety, sorry. probably the best safety duo, duo in the league with him and Jordan Poyer. Jordan Poyer didn't practice on Thursday. Now, they listed him as, you know, veteran rest. He's also got a knee injury. But let's say Jordan Poyer's not at 100%. There's a way in which I think they try to attack those safeties with a lot of different play action, you know, some misdirection or some kind of high-low concepts where you just want to spring a guy like maybe Tyquan Thornton deep. But, I mean, again, this, this Buffalo defense overall is, is very disciplined. It's zone heavy. They understand what the Patriots are trying to do. And, you know, even if you have a third-string safety index to Jordan Poyer, you know, the, the Bills know exactly how the Patriots want to attack him, and I think they're going to put themselves in a position just to insulate that player from getting isolated too many times so that the Patriots have to go elsewhere. Andrew, on the other side of the ball, uh, Josh Allen's been turning the ball over a lot more this year, it seems like, than in the recent years past anyway. What do you suppose the reason for that is, and can the Patriots take advantage of it? 
I mean, that's just how Josh Allen lives his life, right? I mean, that's it's part of it, I think, that he feels the need to create on his own when you have Stephon Diggs and then Gabriel Davis, and Gabriel Davis isn't having to break out that seemingly every single fantasy football owner projected in the summer. So he says, I need to create more. I need to force these passes deep. And so sometimes it's fumbling. Sometimes it's throwing balls deep. And even in the first half of that Patriots game, like he was actively trying to give the ball away, mm. and the Patriots just couldn't hold on. So I think you're going to see more of those plays where – Josh throws on a Superman cape, doesn't really know how it works all the time, and sometimes crash lands. And if they're there to take the ball, you know, in Bill's territory with a short field, I think they're going to have opportunities to convert there. It's just a matter of, like Devin McCourty last week, are you going to be able to catch that ball that lands in your lap? Because they're going to get a couple chances from Josh probably trying to do too much. And I would say probably in the first quarter of that game with all the energy coming off of, you know, Tamar Hamlet's good news health-wise. Andrew, uh, we were just talking about Gerard Mayo, and you guys heard from him today in person down at Gillette. Do you think that that's – what's the likelihood that that's the last time that we really hear from Mayo as part of the Patriots coaching staff? I think it's a significant possibility. I don't have an exact percent here for you, but it's somewhere, you know, where you just can't ignore it because his contract is reportedly up. I've been told that he will explore opportunities to become a defensive coordinator elsewhere – and a head coach, and he's free to do so because it's for promotion. Like, if he was taking, you know, a job at the same level elsewhere, the Patriots could block him. They can't do that because he wasn't given the title here in New England. This is a guy who's been open about his aspirations. The executive told me last year at the Combine that, look, it's really just experience holding him back. And so he's only been coaching for four years, and that's all levels, not just the NFL. But the impression he makes quickly in these interviews last year with Denver and Vegas, the year before in Philly, and obviously all of his seasons in New England, you know, it's just so impressive on so many different levels that I think he's going to get a shot. It's just a matter of what will the Patriots do to keep him, and that might not even be enough. When you heard from him today, I guess having that time at the podium with you guys down there, and then you hear the way that Bill was talking about both him and Troy Brown, uh, yesterday it was, in dealing with the DeMar Hamlin situation and the ripples in their own locker room, do you get a sense that there's any kind of blessing from Bill about possibly Gerard Mayo moving on, given all the time that he's done here for Bill's staff and the way that Bill feels about him? Yeah, I would say so. And Gerard was complimentary. I remember last year in a Zoom we had with him about the feedback that Bill has given. He does this for a lot of assistants, including before they left, Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, of, hey, when you're going to be a head coach, this is how you handle this situation. It could be injuries. It could be personal situations with players or even the media. So I think he's been taking notes and Bill's been offering feedback. But, again, even if Bill didn't give his blessing to go ahead and leave, there's nothing he can do about it within the league rules because these would be promotions elsewhere. Teams are no longer allowed to block assistant coaches from interviewing for jobs that are above their current you know, pay scale or level. And with Gerard technically being the linebacker's coach, he can go anywhere. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> all right, before we let you go here, uh, Andrew, the NFL came out with their big decision about what to do in the event of uh, various outcomes for teams that have played a differing amount of games. Do you think this is fair for everybody, in particular the Cincinnati Bengals, who don't seem too pleased with it? No, I mean, this is a layup, right? Like, there's inequity because you have teams who have played different amount of games. And so what you're trying to do is resolve that inequity or minimize it as much as you can, but it's always going to be there. There's no perfect solutions here. You know, I think their issue is more with in the event that it comes down to a coin flip for who gets a game between the Ravens and Bengals, which would necessitate a Ravens win on Sunday, a Chargers win on Sunday, and then a Ravens win and a coin flip. Like, then the Bengals are pissed. But ultimately, I think the league has done a fine job. I don't think the neutral site AFC Championship game is a bad idea. The biggest thing is the Kansas City Chiefs are winners because they're all but assured of getting the first round by. And that matters a lot more getting to skip around in the playoffs than any type of home field advantage. So what's your prediction for Sunday? Can you give us a little score? I feel like I tipped my hand in that first answer. (laughs) And then I think maybe my third answer that I gave you. I think this is a Buffalo win. But the thing to watch for me is not so much like, the Bills pull away, which I'll give you, you know, uh, 27-17, uh, okay. is that I, I'm really curious how the energy in the first quarter affects them. I think it'll be a lot like where you see the Super Bowls or even when Brady came back here last year with the Bucks, overthrowing passes, trying to do a little bit too much, but they settle in, and there, there's no way they're going to run out of gas given what happened this week, and I think the Bills pull away is the better team. All right, we'll leave it right there then. Andrew Callahan, Boston Herald, thanks so much for the time today. We appreciate it.
Thanks, guys. Be well. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Once again, Andrew Callahan joining us here on the program. 617-779-7937 is your phone number. When we come back, there is a report out there about a coach in the AFC East whose job may be in jeopardy. We'll tell you who it is next. 93.7. I love you, yeah, man. 93.7 W.E.
Mego here, Sports Radio WEEI. Let's go to the phones. Deuce is in Boston uh, with a thought on the hey, Patriots. How you doing, everybody? Hi, Deuce. What's up, Deuce? Hey, Deuce PK, actually. You, you forgot the PK, but oh, no big Deuce deal. Oh, Deuce PK. We didn't know yeah. it was you. How you What's doing? up, dude? Not bad. No, nothing much. Um, Mego, quick question for you. Mm-hmm. There's two questions I want to ask. We know that uh, the stimulation with DeMar doing better, it's really going to hype up the Bills, but I really don't think the Patriots... They're going to win or lose and get in the playoff because we know that the other teams are going to lose and give, give them a chance to win. So there's a, there's a strong possibility. Deuce, Patriots Deuce, will, Deuce, will Deuce, make- Deuce, Deuce. Yes. You understand what What's you're that? saying right now, don't you? Yeah, they can win and lose. They're still going to make the playoff regardless. Well, of okay, but in order for that to happen, three teams need to win. Like a, a very specific series of events needs to happen. One of them yeah, is that uh, Joe Flacco has to win a game. So I'm not sure you can say that that's some sure thing. But the Patriots have nine lives. But the real question I want to okay. ask is, DeMar, as a player, do you think that the, the NFL is going to give him his full pay? If he never plays again because of his hot condition? Um, you know, it's a good question. Uh, thanks for the call, Deuce. DeMar Hamlin has been in the league two years. This is his second year. I remember with Kevin Everett, um, to, not to bring him up again, but it is sort of applicable to this situation. They kept him on the roster through his third season just so that he'd be eligible for the pension. The the Bills did that. The Bills kept Everett on the team and, uh, you know, didn't didn't waive him and didn't uh, move on from him because if you're on a, in the roster for three years, then you're eligible for the pension, and that means health care and all the other stuff that sort of comes with that, which, if you ask certain players, isn't enough either, but it's the best that they have, and it's all that you can really sort of expect at this point. Um, they could do more for him. Maybe they will. But I would imagine, since there's precedent for this, with this team even, uh, with the Bills, uh, I don't know, I guess it was 15 years ago now, 16 years ago, I would imagine that they would keep him on the roster even if he's not ever able to play football again. I would hope so. It's the think. right thing to do, and it's not a big cost to them in the grand scheme of things. And, I mean, even if you feel like the NFL doesn't usually do the right thing if you're of that mindset, I think the press from this, it's its such a high-profile story. It's, you know, I said the yeah. other day, like, if the – if the Wall Street Journal <laughs> like is writing about it at a high level, then you know it's really crossed all the boundaries of news and information and everything. So I feel like the press fallout from it would just be really bad. Yeah. If you find out like, okay, he's cut and he doesn't get his pension. Yeah, he's putting up like a GoFundMe, you know, exactly. or something. And it's I feel like, like oh. they, they they know enough. <laughs> They've done and they've done it wrong enough times to know that they don't want to be in that position. Yes, uh, they certainly have. I wanted to touch briefly on a uh, on a tweet that I saw, and it wasn't um, it didn't it didn't jump out to me because of uh, who tweeted it or anything like that. Um, if you don't know this, uh, Armando Salguero, who works at Outkick now, I think he used to work for the Miami Herald, um, but uh, that's where he is now. He's a Dolphins beat writer. He had uh, this little piece. About the Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins have certainly been spiraling lately. There's no yes. question about that. Yeah. Except true. for with when the ball leaves the quarterback's hands. Right. <laughs> it's not much <laughs> it's of a spiral Spiraling there. in a wrong way. Um, they have had all sorts of problems. Obviously, the Tua thing is overshadowing all of it, but they've lost a lot of games here lately, and uh, they're coming into this last game with Skylar Thompson starting a quarterback. Um, according to Salguero, Mike McDaniel, Chris Greer, and Josh Boyer's jobs may be at risk. He writes, if they win their season finale and sneak into the playoffs, owner Stephen Ross might look the other way on those five consecutive losses from December into January because it will feel more like a skid than a collapse. Gross. Uh, but if the Dolphins <laughs> go from 8-3 and three to 8-9 and nine and not in the playoffs, everybody's job is at risk. Should Mike McDaniel's job after one season be at risk? No. I don't think so, especially, look, you can say that he is accountable for Tua's second concussion, Mm -hmm. that it came so quickly after the first. You can put him at responsibility and fault in some way for that. My cult favorite classic movie, MacGruber, that he watched and was, like, laughing with me. That's enough, Mike. Uh, Some of this feels like it, it was a little bit of extenuating circumstances for him, but I feel like it would be something more a little bit on the outside. Given their history... And this is really just throwing stuff up against the wall right now, I'm going to say. But given their history of tampering Mm. with a certain quarterback who used to be here. And a certain coach who, Mm -hmm. you know, was going to be part of that package. I'm saying if there's another couple who's coming in tied to each other, Mm. I mean, Stephen Ross has proven that he'll entertain any and all situations with that, with Tom Brady. Yeah. 
So if that's a possibility, then this is just a nice excuse to once again say the coach didn't perform to our liking. Look I don't know what happened. I don't know how you can watch this Dolphins team this year. In particular, what Tua Tagovailoa became this year. He went from a you know Mac Jones bottom twenty quarterback. Like I would he went say from, worse. Yeah, I think he was. He was considered getting benched. Worse than Matt. Yeah, he was. He was considered sort of a and reclamation project. Like he project. was supposed to be getting benched. So. Right. And then Mike McDaniel comes in here, and I know that they added Tyreek Hill. I'm not ignoring that, but I also think it takes more than just, you know, a fast wide receiver to turn to a tag of Iloa from what he was into what he's been this year. I mean, he was an MVP candidate for a lot of the year. He's putting up numbers that are superhuman for him. Mac Jones dreams about numbers like this, and that's not just because Tyreek Hill's there. That's because of the offense. That's because McDaniel, I think, put that offense in a, in a real position to succeed and be successful, which they were. He's not great with the defense, and I think that that's been made pretty clear here, and uh, that defense is pretty soft and doughy. But all in all, you know, I, I would imagine you give you give McDaniels, a quarterback, a step up from Tua, I'd, I'd shudder to think about what he could do with those weapons in that, uh, in that system that he's got there. I think firing him would be nuts, like really like a too. nutty thing to do. Especially because we were just talking about – Gerard Mayo and something I want to return to in a little bit is a little juicy bit that Andrew Callahan gave us there yes. about his thoughts about Gerard Mayo departing. But I, I feel that Mike McDaniel is also exactly the kind of, um, I guess, sought after coach that if you cut him loose, I think he'd be somewhere else pretty quickly. Like the, I know that he doesn't have the pedigree, the resume mm. in terms of uh, the head coaching that some other coaches have been cut loose and then found a job but he's one of these young offensive minds that everybody's looking for like out of the san francisco mold if the I dolphins mean, fired him i'd want i'd be okay with the patriots firing bill and bringing him in i'm not even kidding wow. i'd be i'd be okay with that if the dolphins fire mike Arcan. and the look what he did with tua Look okay. what he did with Tua. You don't can, think he could make Mac a lot better? Can you maybe spend a little time here as an offensive coordinator? Why do you have to fire Bill? I mean, maybe you don't have to fire Bill, but I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying if he made himself available, if Mike McDaniel was available. You would rather have Mike McDaniel right now than Bill Belichick. For the future of the team, yes. For the future of the team. I think that, that is a, uh, that, that's not a, even that hot of a take, to be honest with you. I think Bill's got maybe two like or I'm three more years. I feel like I'm processing it right now. Mike Am McDaniel's I? a young, good coach. I didn't coach. see it coming. You didn't warn me about this. Well, sorry. <laughs> I just Mike, didn't have the Rex you? Ryan set up. So, Christian, you got something to say about yeah. Mike McDaniel. <laughs> I, I'm trying to process how this fan base would handle McDaniel. Going from Belichick to McDaniel. They, like I know that the media would the media be would freaking love him. thrilled. It'd be tough. They'd be, it would be, but the fan base, <laughs> like, this guy's weirdo answers to mm. everything. He's weird. He's, He's definitely super weird. weird. But I'll tell you who's going to like him, Mac Jones. You know, yeah. if Mac, if Mac Jones starts putting up uh, 400 yards, four touchdowns, and, you know, the big QB ratings, then I think we'll all be okay with it. Mac honestly. Jones, though, is like, I mean, Mac Jones is like a rescue puppy at this point. So is you Tua. Know? Like, so wherever, is Tua. whoever comes in next is is, is going to, like, look like, oh, it's heaven. Yeah. It's going to be sitting in their lap. I thought you when, know? I, when I go to pet him, Mac Jones runs away from me. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, no. <laughs> no. Abuse. It's just a playbook. It's just a playbook. Don't no, worry. No, no, Matty P. No. <laughs> No, just, Joe Judge, stop talking to me. He's just skittish around men. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. He's just he's skittish, skittish around offensive coordinators. He's skittish around dumb guys. <laughs> Don't worry about it. 617-779-793. Uh, oh, he's barking. He's barking. No, no, no. It's okay. He's, it's all right. he's been through a lot. He's just he's just getting to see if he likes you or not. Uh, 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. Thank you, Mac. We're going to take a quick football break. When we come back, uh, both the Bruins and the Celtics, victorious last night. Uh, we'll uh, touch on both of them next. The Greg Hill Show. Where are you getting Perception is reality. You're getting it because Ben Volan one time said he was a tennis brat. All right, well, he plays tennis. I mean, we had made those inferences prior oh, to that now, as well. What do you say? You're saying something about all people who play tennis? No, no, no. no I play like a little tennis every once in a while. No, no. Point he's proven. He said he's a... <laughs> Did you miss something? Listen to the podcast presented by City of...
your company needs in a week by Northeast Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health, by Jaws, perfecting the art of fresh, and by Town Fair Tire. For the best prices on tires, nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. We're right back to Arcand and Mego on WEEI. Four o'clock here, Sports Radio WEEI, Christian Arkin, Megan Adelini. It's Arkin and Mego here going until six o'clock. As promised, we're taking a quick football break this hour because both your winner teams were in action last night. And I don't know if you noticed uh, Boston, but they're both pretty good. Uh, the Boston Bruins starting a West Coast road trip uh, started off well with a 5-2 win over the Kings. Trent Frederick uh, picking up the slack there for uh, Jake DeBrus, who's going to be out for a little while. The Celtics also winners last night. A game that had uh, potential MVP implications as uh, Tatum and uh, Luka Doncic going head to head there. But let's go ahead and start with the uh, with the Bruins. Who I'm sorry. I mean, you, you just you look at what this team is doing night in, night out. Guys injured, guys in. Linus Allmark in net. Uh, Jeremy Swayman in net. It doesn't really seem like it matters all that much these days. Uh, they go out there and uh, really uh, just. Um, uh, boat race the Kings there in the second and third periods. Uh, Trent Frederick, an assist away from a Gordie Howe hat trick, had mm-hmm. two goals in about 30 seconds there to put this game out of reach. Uh, can anything stop these Boston Bruins, Megan Adeline? No, I'm really glad that you started off that whole rundown that you went through with an apology. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is how good the Bruins are. It's true. <laughs> no. Uh, what would you think of Frederick with the... Putting his mitts on Lemo last night. I thought it was uh, fine. I think that Frederick's probably your best fighter. I think that he's uh, he's the guy that has to answer. And I know it's not much of this in the NHL anymore. It's not like there's big hits and then everybody sort of settles it anymore. I feel like fights are a lot more random now than they used to be. But if you need someone to go out there and throw, uh, Frederick will do it. And he's probably got the he's probably got the toughest knuckles on the team. He's kind of right around the first, so I definitely thought about it. And when he came up to me, I can't ever say no to him. And I'm not a big fan of him, so every chance I get. I try to do it. I love how hockey players will just be straight up. Like, yeah. I don't like that guy. So, you know, even if they're just Comes stirring the pot. Me, I can't resist. Like, like I got to punch him. <laughs> even, yeah, even if it's just almost like a WWE style thing for the cameras of being like, you know, behind the scenes, it's fine. A lot of times it's not. But their their willingness to just say whatever, like, yeah, that guy sucks. So, you know, any chance I get to punch his punch him out yeah. i'll take yeah and, and he did he took the opportunity and uh, knocked him out the boston bruins they didn't knock him out but the boston bruins uh, won their 30th game in 38 attempts that's the second fastest uh, to 30 wins in nhl history tying the 1944-45 canadiens and the only team that ever got there faster was the bruins back in 1929 so that's like <laughs> So we're, we're going back a hundred years now. That's back when the goalies didn't wear masks. Like that's <laughs> when the goalies wore like glasses, and that was all they had for uh, to protect their face. And the guy who was wearing glasses, everyone else pointed at him and was like, "And I, they hey, nice said, glasses, eh? They said a cat word. <laughs> yeah, like, probably. Look at this. Look at this kitty cat. <laughs> um, the Bruins are ridiculous. Uh, that's that's really the only way to to say it. I can't I can't get over what they're doing this year and how they're doing it. It's really uh, it's really something to see. You kind of just wonder when the, when the other shoe is going to drop. Like you wonder when the magic fairy dust is going to wear off because we know these Bruins. We've been watching these Bruins for a while. We know what they're capable of. We know what their ceiling is. And I think that right now you've got you've got a team that's defying all expectations and and really seems like the sky's the limit. I, that being said, we know these Bruins. 
we know what they are. We know that they need like certain things to happen for them to be really successful. That Stanley Cup run they had in 2017 was great, or uh, 2019 was great, but they they needed all these things to happen in order for them to even get there. You know, the the Lightning had to get knocked off. The Capitals got knocked off. They probably would have lost to one of those two teams. And when it came down to it in Game Seven, they lost to St. Louis anyway. I I want to believe in these Bruins. I want to, but I've been hurt too many times, Megan. I've been hurt too many times by these guys. I know what what how these things tend to end and uh i just i'm i feel like i'm getting i feel like i'm getting hoodwinked right now does i don't that, think does that you should sense? feel that way I, th- I feel like you're still a little skittish yeah because everyone set the expectations set the bar so low for the team at the beginning of the season it's like matt so jones like, with a new offensive coordinator <laughs> you know like, i can't handle how it. long how long can they do this how long can they do this how long can they do this we're in january it's safe to say that this is who these guys are i do wonder what did you make of the Marshan call last night? The unsportsmanlike conduct, slam me a stick and such. He needs to relax is what I because made of Because sometimes that. I feel like it surprises me to see that kind of stuff from Marshan. And I understand being upset about the call, but he's he, he's always, you know, he's always a little... Fiery? I, I, no, I was going <laughs> to say edge. like... Antagonistic? Yeah. yeah. He, he's a little bratty out there with certain things, and he's definitely been an instigator, but... He seems like he's been in more control of himself and more control of himself emotionally, especially during the regular season. Yeah. Than in years past. So to see that, you do wonder sometimes about while everything's going rolling along smoothly like it is right now. Hey, Jake DeBrus goes down with a freaking broken leg in the Winter mm-hmm. Classic, and then next man up mentality, and you just go steamroll on a West Coast road trip. But then to see Marshan kind of slip into some of those tendencies again. Like, I do wonder about some of these old problems, as you said. You know these Bruins, like, that coming out of the DNA, rearing their ugly heads again. You know what's interesting about Marshan is he hasn't really busted out this year yet. He's having kind of a slow year. He's got a lot of assists, but, like, he's not scoring a lot of goals. I think he only scored three goals in December, which is low for him. He's... He started the year a little bit later than some guys, so I understand maybe he hasn't been 100%. But for him and the type of production that we're used to from Brad Marchand, like, I feel like there's another level this team can hit once he starts really you know, scoring goals and being productive, which isn't to say he's holding them back now or anything. But uh, he's, uh, he's, he's a guy who I sort of look at and think that might be a, an ace in the hole. He had a power play goal in the game last night. Um, and if you don't know what we're talking about, there was a uh, play where he sort of came through uh, in between the circles. looked like he got very clearly tricked. Mm-hmm. And he was all pissed off about he was it. Super pissed. Started like slamming his stick, and he then he gets the in the bench, penalty box, and he's like the, screaming. He looks and, like yeah. he looked like Britney Spears <laughs> when she shaved her head, and then she started like you know she had the umbrella outside her car. Wow! And then the paparazzi comes up. Like yeah. he was in the penalty box with his hand up, like paparazzi style. What year is that of Britney? That was like the <laughs> breakdown. Britney. That was this. That, yeah. that was the second iteration of like that, bonkers, Britney. But that's what he looked like to me. Um, Brittany shaved her head in 2008. Yeah, so 2008. A long time ago. simpler times. Uh, that is correct. Um, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have made the, wouldn't have made that connection. But it's, I'm glad that you did. Look like that. He looked. Am I uh, wrong? He looked a little unhinged. He looked a little unhinged. But and he, is that he more settled like down, a, so. Well, that's what I'm saying. He right. settled down. Didn't that see? I don't know. I look at that and I think it was a little more contrived considering what we know Brad Marchand is capable of when he really loses his crap that almost felt like uh and I saw it in the Celtics game too uh with Luka Doncic was was desperately trying to get a technical foul it's like guys we need to wake up and if if this is the stuff I have to do in order to get this team motivated and playing the way we know we're playing then I will break sticks I will take an extra two minutes five minutes whatever penalty I have to do and once again, it ended up working out very well for this Bruins team, which I just looked, have not lost consecutive games one mm-hmm. time this year. The wagon just continues to roll with this team. So, I mean, Arkan, I respect that you're you know, cautiously optimistic because this team has let us down. They have. I don't think he's cautiously optimistic. I think he's worried. I'm scared. That's what it sounds I'm like. I'm scared. He can't let himself be vulnerable like to a, this experience. I'm again. like a cat around like a pond, you know? I'm scared to go in. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm shaking on the shore right now. That's what it is. Like, I feel like there's uh, there's just another shoe that's going to drop here. And I just feel like I'd be a I'd be a bad fan if I didn't if I didn't expect it. That you're, Does you, that make sense? I guess so. Like, so. I feel like I'd be like a, a fair weather Bruins fan who just sort of breezes on in when they're playing really well. And that if I don't sort of acknowledge what this team has been lately, then I'm not, I don't know, I'm not doing that, my job. That, that's a very sad way to go through it life. Is. You can't let yourself love until you've been hurt to know how you're going to react once you have been hurt. I say, let yourself love, Christian. Just open your heart. 
to Bruins. This segment has been very sort of romance novel hasn't it? <laughs> How is that? Uh, Am I making yourself vulnerable? I guess so. I guess so. Uh, Steve is in Maynard. He has a thought. Go ahead, Steve. Steve. Hello. Hi, Steve. Hey, how's it going, sir? It's going all right. How are you doing? I'm um, all right. All right. So I want to get your thoughts on trading Carlo. Let me know what you got. Trading him for who? Just for just to trade him? Anyone. Just get rid of him? Yeah, I'm tired of this kid. He's soft. He, he's big enough that he should be tough on the D end, but he has no backbone. He tries to be an offensive skill guy when he's, you know, pinching it on the boards. He just can't do it. I'm tired of watching this guy. He's a turnstile. All right. Thanks for the call, Steve. Um, I don't know that uh, I would trade Brandon Carlo. I think he's still one of your stronger defensemen. I do think he tries to get a little fancy sometimes, and he does have uh, injury history, which, you know, is something you got to think about. that's not his fault, It's though. definitely not his fault. It's a lot of concussions and bad hits and things like that. Tom Wilson, uh, you know, cleaned his clock a couple years ago, and that wasn't his fault, to be sure. But I also think that, you know, this Brandon, Brandon Carlo just trading him away just to trade him. So then what? Who who are you bringing up? I feel like you I, don't have a ton of guys in your pipeline. Kind of, that's my favorite kind of call, though. Like, call in, trade him for what? Anybody. Anybody. Just get him you out. You guys are the big sports experts. <laughs> He's like, like just, just unload him. Just, exactly. Get him out of here. He's toxic. You have a, a, an incredible opportunity with this team where I was very much looking forward once uh, Charlie McAvoy returned to the lineup to see what a uh, McAvoy-Lindholm lineup looked like because we didn't get to see it at the end of last year when right. Hampus got hurt. And not only have they split them up, but it, you have McAvoy on one line. Uh, Hamp is usually skating on the second pairing. You, and I think having Carlo and Grizzly playing at the level that they're playing at allows you to do that. I don't know why anybody would want to mess around with, with how the, the 3D pairings have gone so far. I wouldn't It doesn't either. make a lot of sense. And Forber, too. Forbert's having a big year. I, I agree with you. I don't Borderline think, career year for Derek Forbert. There's no reason to trade Brandon Carlo unless you just don't like him. And I think that caller made it pretty clear he just doesn't, <laughs> he like, doesn't Brandon Carlo. like him. Yeah, so I'm sorry, Steve. I think uh, I think he's here to stay, and I would I would be an advocate of that too. Um, it's not like Brandon Carlos held them back at all this year. They're having one of the best years any team in the history of the National Hockey League's ever had. And if you don't know, that goes back you know sometimes. So <laughs> nice. I think ten twenty years at the most. Yeah, if someone starts really you know if they start losing games or here's what I'm worried about. The main thing I'm worried about with this team first and foremost is that Linus Allmark's not going to play like this all year, and that's a realistic concern to have because how uh, Linus Allmark it's going to be Dominic Hoshik and Ed Belfort wrapped in one for the entire season. Like, really? Do we all believe that's going to happen? And they have a good backup. I think Swayman's a fine backup. But a big part of why the Bruins have been as good as they are this year is because the goaltending has been unbelievable. And I just feel like that's 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 going to wear off at some point, right? It has to. Yeah. I mean, the, the pace that they're at right now is not sustainable. But they don't have to be at this pace, we right? We were saying the pace they're isn't historic- sustainable two months ago. Yeah, but they're also historically good. So if they slip a little bit, like, is it end times? No. You get into the postseason, you're fine. Yeah, like, have the not playoffs, lost back-to-back games. And then it, it wants, if there's a meltdown that starts in the playoffs, then it's concern time. Yes, absolutely. Um, 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. All right, talk some Bruins there. we got to get to the Celtics as well. That was a big Celtics win last night over the Dallas Mavericks. Jason Tatum making his case for MVP. We'll get to all of that right after trending. <laughs> Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. Well, football fans finally have some clarity on how the playoffs could possibly fall out, at least on the AFC title game. Uh, the NFL owners have voted for the proposed change to the playoffs that include a possible AFC title game on a neutral site. The possibility of a neutral site AFC championship game and a coin flip to determine where a ravens bengals wildcard game would take place. It depends in part on what happens in Week 18. Uh, Lamar Jackson has already been ruled out of the Ravens game against the Bengals. Tyler Huntley was limited at practice. Uh, Good news on the DeMar Hamlin front. He was addressing the team via FaceTime. Uh, Reports indicate that the breathing tube is out and he has spent the morning speaking to various teammates through FaceTime. Uh, We spoke with Andrew Callahan at 3.30. If you missed that, you can always rewind on the Odyssey app or subscribe to the Arcane and Mego podcast uh, on the Odyssey app or wherever you download your podcast. Andrew Callahan says that Gerard Mayo will most likely explore opportunities to be a defensive coordinator or head coach elsewhere. His contract is reportedly up at the end of this season. Uh, The Celtics bounced back against the Mavs last night, 124-95. They continue to play in the 
uh, West Coast. They will be in San Antonio Saturday night. Trent Frederick, as we were just talking about, had a great night against the Kings, scoring two goals in the 5-2 win over Los Angeles. Uh, the Bruins' West Coast trip continues tomorrow night in San Jose at 10.30. The Red Sox, they have officially announced the contract of Justin Turner in order to make room for Turner. Darwinson Hernandez has been DFA'd to make space. And some minor Celtics news. Kemba Walker, old friend and former point guard for the Celtics, he was waived by the Dallas Mavericks today, only appearing in nine games. But the reason this is interesting is that Jason Tatum retweeted that report with eyeball emojis, which can, of course, directly translate to Jason Tatum wants Kemba Walker back on the Boston Celtics. And speaking of Jason Tatum, has he truly become an MVP in this league? Well, I'm Ryan Garvin for Arcan and Mego, and we explore that possibility right after this. The exclusive home for Patriots Monday and Friday. 90-
Corner three contested with two in the shot clock. It's not a good shot, no matter what. Tatum switches to the left hand, crosses everybody over, and that's enough for Jason Kidd. A little after 4.20 here, Sports Radio WEEI, Christian Arkin, Megan Ottolini. That was from uh, the Celtics' win over the Mavericks last night. Pretty easy win. A game that was never really in uh, all that much uh, uh, peril for the Celtics as they uh, put the screws to Luka Doncic and the rest of that Mavericks team. Um, I texted you during the game because uh, (laughs) there was a point where it seemed like Jason Tatum wasn't having a great night. Uh, He was shooting 5 of 17, I think, when I texted you. He had about, I don't know, 18, 19 points, something like that. He wasn't shooting well. And I said, wow, Tatum's having a crap game, and they're still kicking Dallas's ass. Tatum finishes with a triple-double, so uh, clearly I'm an idiot. But uh, that uh, that was a statement game, I would say, a statement win. I was, to paint the picture, I was watching this game at a bar in Dorchester with a martini. So when you sent me that text message, I was like, am I watching this wrong? I mean, the shooting wasn't there. But you could, and this is going to sound maybe a little Bobo-ish, but you can flip that on its head and say that this is where Tatum, we've seen the real growth from two seasons ago. We certainly saw some of this last season and in the playoffs to some extent. But this is only the second Uh, triple-double that he's had in his whole career. And it illustrates, it's not to say that he doesn't have a well-rounded game, but the fact that he could do that on a night when he had stretches of shooting so poorly that he was able to round it out and be a huge force on the floor while just not having it in that one aspect that's the strongest point of his game by far. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a couple months ago, I think it was right before Thanksgiving, I was given some lip to Forsberg and our friends at NBC Sports Boston Mm -hmm. because they were all about Jason Tatum for MVP. Okay. And I was like, holy And you were giving him the business. I was like, guys, it wasn't wasn't Thanksgiving. I think it was maybe 10 days before Thanksgiving. Okay. So that's pre-Arcan. I was like, like, let's pump the brakes. Yep. Yeah, I don't expect you to remember this. (laughs) This is a little bit, this is extremely ridiculous, was my take at the time. Mm -hmm. Now it's January 6th, a notable date for many people. Uh, for many reasons. Yeah, the housewife <laughs> got sentenced today, right? <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, one of the housewives got sentenced today. My wife told me, she's like, January 6th, big day. The housewife is getting sentenced. Is said, this what, a Bravo what the real housewife? What are you talking about? Yeah, one of the Bravo housewives. Which one? I don't know what her name is, but I know what that she scammed, a bunch she, of, she scammed a bunch of old people uh, with like a telemarketing scheme. And she's going what? to jail for like six years. <laughs> and she got sentenced today. And that's the big January 6th joke. Today. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, this day, January 6th, I'm ready to say mm-hmm. MVP is 100% Jason Tatum's to lose at this point. Wow. 100%. There is no reason that he should not have this on lock going through the rest of the season. And you are basing this off of a win over Luka Doncic because Luka didn't look great, or is it more than that? It's more than that. Okay. And so I wrote about this 
well, technically Wednesday night, but it went up yesterday for WEI.com, the website I write for once a week, and about how we talked to Scale about this, but how important it is in these moments when you have a head-to-head between Tatum and a player like Luka, who have been one and two throughout this season, juggling mm. the odds as a, the leader for the MVP battle, that when you have them in a head-to-head game in January, when there's not a whole lot else going on in the NBA world, it's important to show up. And yeah. Tatum didn't show up completely in his shooting, as we just talked about, but he showed up in other ways. And I think it's the kind of game that when the sports writers, the broadcasters, the people who vote on the MVP award are going to think back to and go, huh. And I say that it's his to lose because when you look at these head-to-heads, go back to October when it's Celtic Sixers, and he's taken on Joel Embiid, who mm-hmm. last year at times was MVP. You know, just... He's in the mix this year, too. Exactly. Uh, Tatum bests him. Go into... When he goes up... Every time... I love every time he goes up against Ja Morant because I think Ja is an incredible talent. And it's always just an exciting matchup. Loved the game that they had last spring. But in November, he bests him. Okay, he goes up against Jokic. Bests him. Goes up against Luka. Uh, Right around Thanksgiving, this is when all the MVP talk over at NBC Sports Boston is starting to heat up. So goes and takes down Luka. Goes against Kevin Durant. Jokic beat him. Jokic beat him a couple weeks ago, right? Didn't he beat him Yeah, but I'm I'm going chronologically I'm sorry. Okay. Okay? Can you just let me do my thing? Okay, sorry. So goes up against the Nets. Beats Durant. Mm -hmm. Beats Booker in uh, early December. Beats Giannis on Christmas Day. A huge, huge stage for this, again, for the voters. To look at this, puts up, what was it, like 41 points on Christmas Day and follows that up with another great, I think it was 38 points against the Suns before they sputtering against Golden State and the rest of that up and down road trip and then the skids and everything. Um, And overall, his numbers are just so high, so consistent throughout this season. 31 points a game, four assists, eight rebounds a game, best field goal percentage since his rookie season. When I covered that team, we all sat there going like, holy smokes, we knew that this kid was going to be good, but not this good right away. Yeah. And had a little bit of a come down maybe the season after that. But I just think the way that he's showing up in these high profile games and then doing it consistently on the best team in the league, if he doesn't win it, it's because there's some kind of disastrous slide or an injury or something that happens in the second half of the season. Right now, if you look at the sports books, Jason Tatum and most of them is either second or third. It's Luka first, Giannis second, and then Tatum. Um, a couple others have him ahead of uh, Giannis, but he's not first really, and I don't think too many of them. I'll check the Kia MVP ladder and see what uh, NBA.com has him at. But I do think that last night sort of illustrates a a detriment that may sort of get in his way when it comes to winning this award. And that is that he didn't have a great shooting night. It took him an eight of 22 shooting, a lot of free throws there uh, to get those 29 points. Neither did Luca. Luca went seven of 23 Had 23 points on 23 shots. That's not good. And the Mavericks were blown out by about 30 points. Well, they're a bad team. They're a bad team. (laughs) They're a bad team. And I guess that's sort of the old age old debate here when it comes to the MVP award, which is if Jason and Tatum has a poor night shooting and Jalen Brown has 19 points and Brogdon has 15 off the bench and um, you know Derek White has a nice game Marcus Smart had 15 points like other people on this good team uh, Jason Kidd called him the best team in the NBA last night if other people on this good team can step up then yeah Tatum's good but is he the most valuable Luka Doncic is clearly as valuable as it gets for that Dallas Mavericks team if he has a bad game they get blown out but you're talking about most valuable player as if that's the way that that the votes go. I know. I mean, we t- we talk about this in all in all four of the major sports. Most valuable player. The award has really never been that. It's best player. Yep. Best player this year. And it, I'm not even saying that this is necessarily that Tatum has proved that he's earned this or he deserves this or he has it locked up. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that in these critical moments, I think when uh, the voters are going to look down look down at their stat sheet and look at all these head-to-head matchups and these major moments so far, he's killing in all of them. The only thing that I think might truck him a little bit is these insane 
offensive performances that some of some of these other contenders are having yeah, in these terms of 50 and 60 and so 70 point of course, games. Yeah, yeah, of course, like we just talked about, Luca didn't have a great night last night, but had the 60-21-10 game, which mm-hmm. is all anybody could talk about for like two weeks. Yeah. Then you see Donovan Mitchell putting up 71 points against the Bulls just three days ago. And I like, does Tatum have to put up something like that in order to contend with the kind of more casual voter on their ballot? I don't know, because to your point, like, that's not really a recipe for success for the Celtics when they're winning games. Right. Yeah. When they're spreading yeah, the course. ball around and playing good team basketball. Tatum doesn't need to exactly. take 40 yeah, shots. They, yeah. you, it is great when the Celtics rattle off six or seven passes before finishing the possession, you know? Like, that. that's their recipe for success. It's not the ISO ball that got you... 50 burgers, a 60 burger, whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, in the playoffs two years ago. And that's a good thing. And I don't think that they're going to want to change anything about the way that their offense has been performing this season. They're the best offense in the league. Yeah, I agree with you. I thought Shai Gilgis Alexander was an MVP candidate until he missed a game and the Thunder (laughs) crushed the Celtics in that game. But you look at, you know, Joel Embiid. So you're saying they should trade away some of the good players so that Tatum has a better chance at the MVP. I think that's the best best way to go about this. Absolutely. Um, But yeah, you look at Embiid, you look Luka, Giannis, uh, John Morant's another good one. I mean, Jokic and some of these other guys who have won MVPs before. And in Giannis's case, has won a championship before. And I feel like that sort of carries some weight in the MVP discussion, too. If you're a champion and you've won an MVP and you're in the mix, I know sometimes there's, like, MVP fatigue. LeBron sort of got it, and you, you hear about that with various players sometimes. But, you know, Giannis is a bigger star than Tatum. There's not that many, but he's one of them. And he's right there in the mix, too. Embiid, I'd say, is like in terms of popularity, because it is partially a popularity contest. He's he's pretty close with Tatum, I'd say. Um, Luca's right there, if not more popular. Like all these guys are sort of in the same on the same tier. They're all at the same level. Uh, I don't think that any one of them, just based on their name or their stats or anything, is like a clear cut, obvious favorite right now. I agree with you. It should be Tatum. I think that they're the best team, and I tend to sort of lean towards well, who's the best player on the best team? Like that. That sort of always spells. MVP to me and right now that's Tatum but he also has another guy on that roster who may end up playing himself into the conversation here at some point Jalen Brown's not that far off he's like fifth I think in uh, all-star voting so you know like you've got you've got some guys there and apparently not afraid to go to his coach and shoot around and say I want Luca right give me that big fat butt how about that (laughs) yeah he said give me give me the uh give me pudgy over there give me Luca and uh you know what he played great defense on him I I like your conversation point about the point that you made about somebody being established in Giannis I do feel like Tatum is getting to the point where okay his star has been rising for so long and then he's all NBA at the end of last year it feels like in terms of the voting and the narrative of the league as long as he can keep establishing himself with this level of play then it'll be like okay now it's time he's arrived yeah like um, now he's a bona fide grown-up in the league mm. it feels like it would all make sense yeah and it, i just think that he would have to supremely screw up or melt down in order for it or you know i do wonder about the well, we've never seen jason tatum melt exactly, down before so exactly. that's good right except that in the finals in the last four games of the uh, uh biggest games of his life um 617-779-7937 is your phone number malcolm brogdon spoke a little bit after the game about the team's collective maturity. Listen to this. What does this kind of response, a 29-point win over the hottest team in the NBA, say about this team? Uh, you know, I think it speaks to our maturity. Um, I think some nights, like, okay, see, our maturity lets us down a little bit. But, um, man, when we play the best, we, we really we really do beat the best. Um, we bring our best performances against them. Um, but we got to do this consistently night in, night out. Yeah, they really do because that is a uh, that that was a very Jekyll and Hyde sort of two performances there. That Oklahoma City game was pathetic. Like they looked so bad in that game, and they really just got embarrassed by a young, scrappy, hungrier team. And uh, the Dallas Mavericks are not that. The Dallas Mavericks are kind of a young, scrappy, crappy team, but they also have the superstar. Hey, they're who, a little better than who them, does everything. Right? They're a little better, I guess. But you know, um, the maturity thing I think is interesting. He says this speaks to our maturity, but our maturity also lets us down. Okay, well, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a weird way to say it. Right. I so guess, is it a plus or a minus? You know. Well, I wonder if it's – I'm trying to translate this, so I don't know what he was intending to say, but I would take that as, on the one hand, we're, we're, we've established ourselves, we kind of know who we are as a team, and we can self-govern to some 
in some respects. But on the other hand, like sometimes that little infrastructure within our team falls apart because when we're going up against someone that we have kind of as circled as a scheduled wind in our win in our mind, then it feels like, OK, we can just stroll in here and do what we always do and lean on the offense instead of reading this team for what they are. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I think that the team is a powerhouse. They're a powerhouse basketball team. You ask the teams in the Western Conference, they all say the same thing. John Morant, uh, Jason Kidd last night, the Celtics are the standard. They're considered right now the standard of the entire league. And that's the fact that they've played as well as they have with that sort of, you know, following them around and that sort of target on their back is impressive. It is for a team that I'm not always convinced was there mentally or ready to accept that type of pressure like they've they've handled it very well this year. Uh, 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. Let's go to the phones. Talk to Mike, who is out in Revere. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, hey guys, I just wanted to talk about how it's nice to not have some of the older players, like in you know recent years, um, vying for the MVP. Just of all those names that you said, I think the oldest one is like 27 years old. It's it's no more LeBron. I mean, I love Curry and everything, but he's kind of not fading away. But that team isn't really where it wants to be. But it's just so refreshing knowing that the, the next 10, 15 years, you have such high end talent spread out throughout the league. Eastern and Western Conference, and it's just nice to see some of the younger, younger players for the younger generation um, beginning to take the torch. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm with you there, Mike. I will say this: there's one name who's not young who's lurking right now and may make a push here, and that's Kevin Durant. Uh, Kevin Durant is soaring up these MVP lists, and I think that he has the same sort of Tatum problem as Kyrie Irving's on his team. So it's like, all right, you're very good, obviously, but you do have uh, a... That's a problem Tatum used to have. <laughs> right, exactly. You do have a top 10, top 15 player there uh, running alongside you. Um, as far as the rest of them go, though, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly younger guys. And you even look at the uh, at the All-Star voting, and there's a lot of young players there in the, in the All-Star voting. There's still the Currys and the Durants and all those other people. Kyrie is the leading vote-getter in Eastern Conference guards, which is kind of scary considering the year that he's had like a lot of people still voting for him huh? <laughs> okay. yeah so uh, you bring up the all-star voting and yeah. I, I think this is interesting from the fan side so they're they have the first fan returns out for all-star weekend and feels like you know we talk about the popularity contest Tatum and Brown are both pretty low for being on the best team in the league yeah so Eastern Conference front court right now is Durant Giannis and Bede, and then Tatum comes in at four right ahead of Jimmy Butler. And in terms of guards, it's Kyrie, Donovan Mitchell, uh, James Harden, and then Jalen Brown comes in at four just yeah. ahead of Trey Young. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel, and then it kind of really falls off to me quickly because it goes to Trey Young and DeMar DeRozan. But yeah, I mean, you can't get in front of Harden for the between among the fans. I know the fans aren't going to vote in the MVP or whatever, but it's just like, I it feels like this some of this is still a little bit of disrespect. Yeah, and like there's still the, a lot to your of... point, these guys haven't won anything. Right. All NBA once. You know, Jalen Brown wasn't even all star last year. So it's like it, 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 it they are still under the radar, it seems like for some of the casual fans. Your top four vote getters in total are LeBron, Durant, Curry, and Kyrie. Those are That's all older so players. so lazy, though. Yeah, those are all older players. But, I mean, they're still popular because they've they're been around long enough and built up the cachet, and they're established, and that's sort of how it works. I mean, that's that's all-star voting. Well, it's Kobe right. Bryant and Yao Ming used to get votes when both those guys would be done with season-ending right. injuries. Yao Ming, I think, missed an entire season and still was yeah, <laughs> still leading vote getter in the all-star game. people in the Western Conference. I believe there was some uh, ballot harvesting going on there. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit. That's <laughs> we're, not t we're talking about that on January 6th. Of Stop the steal. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the Yao Ming <laughs> steal. Uh, 617-779-7937 is the phone number. All that being said, um, the Celtics, that was, a, uh, that was an impact win last night. They needed it. They needed it. They were, uh, they were flailing a little bit, and they got focused and uh, were able to beat a team that in the last couple of years – has really had their number. I mean, I can't tell you the number of times. Oh that my God, the KG Luka ceremony. Dinwiddie, yeah, the KG Do you game. That? I was at it that was, game. I yeah. was at that game covering it. And right before, it was like, oh my God, it was like somebody just let out a horrible fart in the room, <laughs> like right before the KG ceremony. It was like Luca just kills you last minute. And then it's like, all right, fellas, come get showered, come yeah. out here and clap for the good players. <laughs> 
You know, you know what sucked too? Of years past. Remember, remember this team? You liked them more than the team exactly. that you just watched. Remember here's Jalen a, Brown? Here's a guy every person in the building adores more than anyone on this team right now. Yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed that whole thing. Except uh, Jalen Brown. Remember Jalen Brown dunked on dunked that guy on Maxie and Kleber. then high fived uh, Kevin Garnett. Right in the front row. It was, it was like, perfection. this it was is the best thing ever. 99% yes. perfection and then the end of the game happened. And then Dinwiddie hit that three. And it's like, oh, come on. And then to cap it all off, while li- literally, I know people get mad when millennials say literally, but this is how it happened in real time. Kevin Garnett is pulling the rope pulling his number up to the Raptors and Tom Brady announces he's coming out of his I know, yeah. 40 day retirement. Everything happened that day. Can you just please leave? clap. <laughs> Thank you, Jeb. Can you just leave KG alone? Can, can you, you give him happen? a minute? I uh, mean, can he at least get the number in the rafters before everybody's looking down at their phones because Twitter's blowing up? Um, my favorite part of that whole night, and this is just because of, I'm a Celtics fan of a certain age, but I think the greatest thing that happened during the Kevin Garnett uh, ceremony was when they put Isaiah Thomas up to say do his little thing because they're both Chicago guys. Uh-huh. So, like, Isaiah Thomas got, and as soon as his face hit the jumbo Boo! Oh, you it was great. Suck. It was the best. If I So I was a little kid back in the 80s when the old garden with the Celtics and the Pistons. I remember that whole place shaking with people going, Sally, you know, just everybody. They hated him. Oh, it was great. Am I old enough for this? I guess I am, You're huh? quoting the 80s Celtics. You're talking about, talking about the 80s Celtics. you say 80s and old garden yeah. in the same sentence, you have to get this yeah, music. I know. My favorite part. I remember the garden back in my youth. Yeah, it used to shake. My favorite and the part rats was run out. Uh, <laughs> Paul Pierce was celebrating like it was his number retirement ceremony. Right. <laughs> and he got up there like... It didn't even seem like, I'm pretty sure it wasn't scheduled because he got up and he had the microphone and he was like, I don't have much to say. I wasn't prepared to say something. I had a speech well, prepared, but I forgot it. I man. think he also <laughs> had to follow Mike Gorman, who made like an incredible yeah. speech. Right. Mike Gorman sat up there and just killed the room. He was so good. And they're like, all right, everybody, here's the truth. Paul Pierce. And all of us in Uh-oh. the media kind of looked at each other and we were like, I don't think he was supposed to be speaking. I'm pretty sure he just volunteered for himself and he was making it like, oh, he's so put upon. Like, oh, I didn't prepare anything for this guys i think he probably had like seven hennessy's in the last two hours before Maybe. that so paul likes to know, party man we uh, know that about him 617-779-7937 there's your phone number a uh, player was recently released by the dallas mavericks and a prominent boston celtic is making googly eyes at him on uh, social media we'll get to that next 93.7 w-e-e-i boston sports original it said we make 35,000 decisions a day. No wonder they don't all come out just right. Like when you pre-ordered those fresh sneakers, that dropped right when you repaid your friend for lunch. It happens. But overdrafts don't have to. Get extra time to cover your overdraft with Citizens Peace of Mind. So you can relax in those sweet kicks and focus on your next 34,999 decisions. Learn more about how to reverse your overdraft fees at citizensbank.com slash peace of mind. Citizens, made ready. Member FDIC. If you need tires, think Town Fair Tire. Thinking name brands? We have them all. Thinking price? We beat the competitors. Free services? We have those too. For the guaranteed lowest price, nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Town Fair Tire. Have you been diagnosed with spinal stenosis? Are you looking for an alternative to painkillers or major surgery? The physicians at New England Spine Care are the region's experts in spinal stenosis, performing minimally invasive procedures that reduce your pain and restore your ability to walk. For 20 years, New England Spine Care has helped thousands of patients with spinal stenosis. They can most likely help you too. Learn more at nespinecare.com. At New England Spine Care, we've got your back. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school, but the good news is it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 400 megabit internet for just $30 a month for two years with no annual contract when they add Xfinity Mobile. And this will get your heart rate up. For a limited time, you'll get $500 back when you add a second mobile line. I got to get this deal. Plus, get the best price when you get unlimited data on both lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? 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 Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Join us at Odyssey.
Sports Radio, WEEI, Christian Arkin, Megan Ottolini. It's Arkin and Mego. Um, there was a... Uh, a tweet? There was a tweet. There was some movement in the NBA. Um, the Dallas Mavericks, upon getting beaten by the uh, Celtics, released Kemba Walker today. His Sad. veteran minimum salary would have been guaranteed tomorrow. So kind of a weaselly move there by Dallas, but... I mean, I guess I understand it. It's not like Walker is uh, is doing much. He had that one game. But um, as most teams that end up signing Kemba Walker figure out, it's tough to have him on the floor in certain situations uh, because his knees are all messed up and because he can't play defense on anybody. Um, when the news was shared on Twitter, a Boston Celtic responded with uh, the eyeball emoji and a couple of shamrocks, and that would be Jason Tatum, who, if you remember from the uh, bubble and from Kemba Walker's uh, previous stint here, very close friends, those two. They were uh, they were boys, and um, I think that you definitely uh, now get to sort of see a test of just how much sway and influence someone like Jason Tatum has. Because you know, there's not a lot of guys out there that you sort of look at who get you know cut or released or whatever, and Tatum starts making googly eyes at him. Uh, the fact that he's doing that. I don't know. I I think that Brad Stevens is going to have to either seriously consider bringing in Kemba, which I don't know why you would do that at this point. I wouldn't bring him in for free, let alone trade something for him. But uh, it's uh, it's it's this is it. Like, how big a star is Jason Tatum? Does he have this kind of sway? Is he a mini GM in uh, in waiting here? Arcan. What? You really think that a googly eye tweet is going to bring Kemba Walker in here? Yes, I think it could. Old squeaky knees, Kemba Walker. It's basically I say that breaking with love. News at He's this a point. wonderful guy. Wonderful he guy. Is. He put up 32 uh, last month in a loss against uh, in, against Cleveland. So people look at that and say that he's not washed. He doesn't fit in with this team at all, other than being Jason Tatum's friend. And I, I'm sorry to say that because again, like he was a great talent a few years ago. And by all accounts, like, wonderful, sweet guy. And yep. I know the UConn people would love to have him here and everything. But it's just, like, I, I don't think that there's any. I think, if anything, that's just Tatum trying to, you know, save face for his guy. Or maybe help build, like, a market for him elsewhere. Yeah, or just say, like, wow, this guy is so good. He's still in the mix. You yeah. know, I'd still want him here. I don't I, think it's anything serious. Like, he's going to go to Brad and be like, hey, can we make some room for Kemba here? I don't know. That wouldn't even fit. They can't even find room for Pritchard right now. Like, Pritchard is on the hot seat every other day. It's true. They got a lot of point guards on this team. you better not touch my son. <laughs> they have a lot of point guards on this Never team. Never talk to me again. He's uh, losing time to Brogdon and Derek White. Smart, White, Brogdon, Pritchard, you know. and then- Hauser. And, I mean, the the in terms of the shooter role. Sure, yeah, and, and Kemba Walker. I mean, listen, he's he's got he's still got some ability. And I, at one point, I thought he was one of the best scoring guards in the league. But at this point, it's just kind of getting sad with him, isn't it? Isn't it sort of just like a sad thing? These teams keep bringing him in for like ten days, and he'll have one good game, and everyone says, "Oh, see, there's Kemba Walker. Look, he's still good." And then it's like, okay, well, now he can't. We can't put him out there anymore. It's I like the Isaiah this, Thomas yeah. tour. Sort I of the same thing. Also. Yeah. Very depressing to watch. All especially love and respect. Don't just don't make this it two point oh. Like don't have them go down to the G League and be playing out some games in the G League and hanging up like crazy numbers and then getting bumped up because somebody has a roster spot somewhere and then we see a one off game and they're whoa Kemba 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 you know and then a cardiac Kemba and then he falls back down like. Sometimes you just got to know your body's out on it. And it, just for the Celtics in particular, we saw against OKC, we saw against the Nuggets what happens when they go, they stray so far away from the defense that they played last yeah. year and that they played last night. Just can't have it. Too much of a liability. Yeah. Sorry I, to say. I remember I Scal came on with us last year, and, and what he said is stuck with me with this group, is if you can't defend your position on this core group of Celtics, it's almost impossible to fit you on the court. And, look, I, I love Kemba Walker, too, and you know maybe he does get an opportunity to play elsewhere. Even with the Celtics, I do believe, have a roster spot after they flipped Noah Vonley, but they were trying to move him in order to not have his $7 million guaranteed. So it's almost like they're going to save that space for somebody might be a little more valuable than, than Kemba Walker. Yeah, and I see people say, well, you know, Malcolm Brogdon, he gets hurt a lot. It might be good to have some insurance for him. That's you have why, insurance for him. That's why he's yeah, also Derek White. a second stringer. Right. You have Derek White and you got Peyton Pritchard. You have a log jam at point guard right now, if, if you want to call it anything. I mean, it's not. There's definitely no room on the roster right now. So if you want to make a move that earmuffs Megan gets Peyton Pritchard out of here or something then you know you bring in Walker then but I don't see any point in uh, in doing that I don't I don't think it was I'm a already serious sad thing. enough like seeing 
Peyton relegated to the garbage time and a blowout historic Come on, loss you wouldn't want to see him and what he could do with 17 points. If like, Greg Popovich was his coach, too, yeah. see him in the black oh, and white of the San God. Antonio Spurs. It's going to happen. I mean, there's no way that Pritchard finishes the regular season at Celtic, right? Um, we'll there's see. not very many pieces that I think they're going to move at the trade deadline or what they're going to try to get and for for trying to shore up probably some big insurance and yeah. they can't find a big to back up Al Horford. But who I'm has sorry, more value? Besides Cornette, right. your, your beloved Cornette. <laughs> I love Cornette. Who has more <laughs> value though, Pritchard, Brogdon, or White? I think Brogdon and White both do. I think they have just like in the in the market. But they have value to the Celtics. Sure, but if you're going to trade one but of them, you can't trade Brogdon. He's been too good, and you can't Brogdon trade Derek White. You can I, trade White. You cannot trade Derek White. Why not? <laughs> oh, if if you're giving me the opportunity to pick between Peyton Pritchard, Derek White, and Malcolm Brogdon, I am not moving Derek White. He has taken massive leaps forward. His jump shot doesn't look so broken and janky, and he fits in with what this team is trying to do. He doesn't call his own number often, and he is hitting the open shots. He's moving the ball. He's defending well. He volleyball spiked the ball off of Spencer Dinwiddie's head last that night. That was a nice play. I mean, he he is exactly what Brad Stevens and I think to an extent Joe Missoula are looking for in a second unit point guard. Okay. I'm not moving Derek White. But he is maybe a third unit guy right now. He's a third stringer at that position. Yeah. If you have a third stringer who's that good, that's when you look to trade somebody because you have value there. But These, right? Unless you have these a are great problems to have with this last roster. guy at second Stringer. But I, I can I ask something that's kind of mm-hmm. weird, weird little detour, but I was talking about it last night at the bar. We're not going into creepy with, corner with now, my right? Dorchester friends uh that I was making at the bar. Uh-huh. Mostly the bartender. Do you feel like um Tatum and Derek White are almost the same size right now? I no. I have been <laughs> noticing this in recent games. Stay you know, stay with me for a second. I'm not talking about in height, but I Tatum's definitely He's definitely like slimmed a little bit since last season, right? And I, I remember in the off season he was talking a little bit about some of the bulk that he was carrying in his shoulders and everything at different points in his career has screwed up his shot and screwed up his follow through. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I know you think I'm crazy. Either Derek White has put a little muscle on and Tatum's shaved a little bit off. Okay. Watch it next time. All right. I'll Again, check. it might be the martinis talking. Well, I know All the bartenders agreed with me. Der- Derek White is a, a new father as of the playoffs, so maybe he's looking to spend more time in the gym these days. Yep. There you go. There's the dad you strength know about that, that comes Arcan. along with that as well. I do. Uh, you wouldn't know it from looking at me, but sure. Um, yeah. It, also, he's like six inches shorter than... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm talking <laughs> about the size. His, I'm talking about girth, the... Girth, yeah. Great martinis. The, not, we're not talking about girth. Good Lord. It's not even 5 o'clock. Will you relax? We're not in the safe zone yet. We're not talking about Gert. <laughs> 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back uh, at 5 o'clock. Reset on the Patriots. Big game for them tomorrow. It's win or go home. A trash bag game, as Gerard Mayo so put it. Uh, we'll get to all that next. Patriots QB, Mac Jones on WEI. Trying to get in position to play another week. That's all you can ask for. They have a great group of guys. Love the guys on the team.
Live on the free Odyssey app. Patriots Friday is brought to you by New England Kubota Tractor Dealers, by McFarlane Energy, the always reliable HVAC and home oil delivery pros at McFarlaneEnergy.com, by Anderson Windows, by New England Spine Care, and by John Sewer and Drain Cleaning, the name to know when your drains don't flow. A U D A C Y. Type that into your app search, then download. This is Arcand and Mego on W E E I. Sports Radio W E E I. Arcand and Mego here with you for one more hour. 617 779 7937. There's your phone number before we head into the weekend. Any big plans this weekend? Football. Football. Pretty much just watching a ton of football. That's right. Might go up to Maine. Haven't decided. Might go watch some football in Maine. Hell yeah. Maine 1 or Maine 2? What? what do you you mean? know, there's two Mains. What are you talking about? There's Ma- there's regular Maine, and then there's like the logging towns up in Maine. It's called Maine 2. I'm talking about Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. It's Maine 1. All so right. is that okay? Maine 1. Southern Maine. That's <laughs> where I might be. Not living up there with like the moose people. Oh, you're going all the way up there, huh? <laughs> Adding up to Maine 2. Yeah, right? man. Can I just pay for my coffee and leave, please? I was once walking Can't down. Can't get that from here. <laughs> this is, yeah. Oh, I like that. There's a pet cemetery in, in Maine. Did you know that? I do know that's a pet cemetery yeah. up there. <laughs> I took a picture of my dog in A lot of history it. in that pet cemetery there's there. There's like up 13 there. retrievers buried in a pet cemetery in Maine. Mean. All those retrievers died under mysterious circumstances, too, don't you know? Yep. Don't go down that road. Uh, 617-779-7937. There's your phone number. Um, it's a Patriots Friday. I feel like we haven't really oh, yeah. made that all that clear today. Yep, Patriots Friday. Oh, now. Yeah. Still doing main voice. <laughs> we do the main voice for this Shout last out, hour. Maine. I don't mind. Um, if you're in Maine, give us a call. 617-779-7937. But um, you have to talk in main voice. Yes, you do. Whenever someone calls from Maine and they sound normal, I get really upset. Anyone else calling from anywhere else? You're really upset about that? I, it bothers me, yes. Jeez. It's not you're what not you, living up to the not expectations not what you people here. are supposed to sound like. You, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> you people in Maine. The is creepy what I mean. people in Maine, too. <laughs> They're pet cemeteries. You're shattering Arkan's illusion of what you really are. I'm not sure I care for this new program, <laughs> W-E-E-I. No. Going to turn it off, though. <laughs> um, I uh, can I give it a try? I don't know what I'm veering into right now. I'm going to give up. That's all right. Just go to Cole Strange. That, that, that's your wheelhouse, Megan. Oh, Pa. <laughs> <laughs> this may be our last time together, Pa. Hold uh, my hand. Give me a little slap on the rump, Pa. <laughs> Uncle oh, Trent told me to jump again. I said, Pa, I says he is, he is incorrect for telling me so. You make me feel safe and motivated at the same time, Pa. Let's win this one for Slater. All right. Okay. <laughs> Cole Strange absolutely I love does the not Strange sound voice. like that, but in my no, voice, he does. It's tr- <laughs> tremendous. The Cole Strange voice is one of my favorite things. I got when ready I joined for the, show, the it's NFL one of my favorite by things. pushing a tractor up a hill. It was 92 well, degrees. <laughs> Pushed it upwards, bu- uphill both ways. 
Um, it is Patriots Friday, and that includes Cole Strange. And uh, this is a this is a game that I think the Patriots have got to be. What, is the line moved at all? By the way, I was wondering about that today. Is all this stuff that's going on with the Bills is that affecting the betting lines? It has so, to, right? This I, is what's really important. It is. <laughs> when I checked yesterday, uh, the Pats were a seven point dog. As I check right now, they are seven and a half point. Wow! Dogs. Wow! Seven and a hook. I'll tell you what, Vegas, they are not uh, they are not accounting for the human element here. I, don't I think, think they opened at seven. Opened at seven, and all this just ticks it up like a half a point. All that really means, I think, not so much that Vegas thinks Buffalo's not going to win by a lot, but I'd say a lot of money's probably coming in on New England. I would imagine that most of the money, if the line opened at seven, most of the money came in on the Patriots, which I'm very surprised by. Really? I'm very surprised by that. There's so many that. goobers out there. On their phones in other states, saying, "Oh, don't don't count out Belichick." True. I mean, do, do you Belichick know how many, underdogs? But thank I think you most, very much. No, I, that's most a real people point. look at the Bills and the Patriots and think the Bills are going to crush these guys. You're how many national pundits have we people. yelled at on this show and all over the station who say, "Wow, this is a really uncharacteristic Patriots team"? True. I can't understand what's going on. It's like we've been saying that for the last twelve and a half weeks, guys. Welcome to the program. Yeah. Um, it's, so uh, maybe nationally, a lot of people still think, "Ah, oh, it's the Bill Belichick Patriots. They could still get it done." <laughs> or at least come within seven. <laughs> at least seven. <laughs> Blown out by multiple come scores. On cover. Um, it's uh, if you don't know, and this is uh, just sort of to reset on the on the news of earlier today. Um, Demar Hamlin had the breathing tube removed and is now speaking. He communicated via FaceTime with his friends, with his uh, with his teammates, and uh, did a message for the entire team. It's been a uh, emotional day, certainly for the Buffalo Bills and for the Hamlin family, and really for everybody who is monitoring this and following along with this because whether you're a Bills fan or not, everybody got affected by this somehow. Everybody who's a football fan and has even a shred of a conscience, you know, is uh, is affected by this and was affected by what they saw and uh, the very real fear that we all had that we may have seen one of the worst things that you can see on television and that, you know, now this guy is talking, he's communicating, he's able to speak and, and ask questions and, and fire up his team and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And it's just, it really does have kind of a, kind of a Hollywood feel to it right now, doesn't it? I mean, it yeah, seems like... Yeah, it's like the like... ending of a Disney movie. Okay, you know, like, it's all coming together, and th- that's great. Like, I don't mean to sound cute about it or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just that now uh, we can freely talk about the football aspect of what's going to happen this weekend and going forward. And for for whatever reason, the NFL has decided to take it upon themselves to just make this utterly overcomplicated, overcorrected, and just bizarrely they're doing too much with the announcement that they made today the nfl got together the owners and everybody got together at 12 today Mm -hmm. and voted on what they were going to do going forward since the bills and Bengals game is canceled it's not going to resume at all not just this week there's no bills Bengals game so what are they going to do with these uneven records that are going to come out of the afc and they decided this they released this they said For this season only, the AFC Championship game will be played at a neutral site to be determined by the commissioner if the participating teams played a different number of regular season games. Very likely that'll happen. And if the lower-seeded team in the championship game could have been the number one seed in the AFC if a full season had been played by the AFC clubs. Mm -hmm. And that unless both participating teams could have been the number one seed in the AFC and host the championship game had they played a full regular season. The game shall be played at the home stadium of the higher seed seeded team. And that's not even getting to the wackiest part of this. So essentially what that says is if it's Bills and Chiefs, if that's what it comes down to, they're going to go out probably to Indianapolis because that's the site that the NFL is obsessed with for everything. Right. And in terms of, at least in terms of distance from kansas city and from buffalo it's roughly 480 490 miles for both of them and they get to be in a dome and there's no advantage there and it's to me i think just hyper i don't know boring and sterile and i don't like that at all i don't like it either it's also sort of going against what the rules normally are which is to go by winning percentage and that also affects this other part this uh bengals ravens thing but just to your point uh for the for the chiefs if they have the same record and they don't go by um, by winning percentage, and they do end up saying, all right, well, just you're both going to Indy and you're going to play there. I do think that while that's maybe the most fair thing to do, it really sucks 
Like, that really sucks to not have a home crowd at Arrowhead or not have a home crowd in Buffalo. Like, those are the two best home crowds there are, really. I mean, in the whole league, maybe Seattle you throw them in too, but, like, those are those are iconic places. And the home uh, field advantage there is a real thing. And it's not only that. It just makes for a more dramatic, more interesting setting and game and everything. And to to sort of remove that, I feel like, is a really bold thing to do. You know, in the interest of fairness, when you could just go by the old rule and go by winning percentage and say, okay, well, we'll just go by our normal tiebreakers, but they're not doing that. So that was the rule. Yeah. And we talked to Tommy Curran from NBC Sports Boston, Patriots Insider, yesterday, and he said, you know, I really expect it to go to the winning percentage rule because that's what's in the rule books. This is where things get really hinky. So this is the second part of what they decided. They decided that if Baltimore defeats Cincinnati in the game between those two teams on Sunday, this coming Sunday, and Baltimore and Cincinnati are then lined up to play one another in a wild card game, wild card weekend. The site of that game will be determined by a coin toss <laughs> supervised by Goodell. I'm paraphrasing here because it's all legalese. So they say, unless both conditions are met, so mm-hmm. Baltimore without Lamar Jackson this Sunday upsets the Bengals, right. and then they're slated against each other in wild card weekend. Which means this probably won't happen, It by probably the way. won't yeah. happen, but the fact that instead of going to, <laughs> once again, they cite the bylaws, the part of their own rule book where they talk about winning percentage. Like you can Google this stuff. It's, it's Article 20 in the Constitution and Bylaws of the NFL. They have this written out, and instead they said, we're just going to try something different, a coin toss. Why not? It's so bizarre, and the Bengals are freaking pissed about it. And I don't blame them. I got I got to pull up these quotes real quick, Arcan, because uh, I got Mike right Flor- Oh, you got it from yeah. Pro Football Talk. Um, this was uh, this is tr- uh, Petralia's transcript. But um, Zach Taylor was asked about this today. They said the playoff proposal couldn't have been received well in the locker room. Uh, have you addressed it with the players today? And he says, "Well, you want to clarify where it stands. What's in front of us is a win this weekend, reclaim the opportunity to have a home field wild card game. That's the task. As far as I'm concerned, we just want the rules to be followed. And when a game is canceled, that you just turn into winning percentage and clarify everything." Everything so we don't have to make up new rules. There's several instances this season where the club is fined or people in our building are fined and we're being told, hey, follow the rules. It's black and white in the rule book. So now when we point out the rules and are told we're going to change that, I don't want to hear about fair and equitable when that is the case. So what this team will do is all we can control is going into the game this weekend and doing our best to win. We're going to channel our energy into that. Have you heard anything on the vote? No. Were you surprised when you heard they were going to do that? Surprised? No. What was your reaction? Opportunities lost for us that we had a chance to control and now we don't. It seems like there are positives for a lot of teams and just negatives for us. He says more, but I mean, strong stuff there from Zach Taylor. So then from the Bengals, because they're the ones who are potentially getting screwed by this, if they have a fluky, weird Week 17 game, which we've seen Mm -hmm. with good teams, great teams before, all you had to do was look back at the times that Patriots have gone down to Miami late in their seasons with those Tom Brady Gronkowski teams. Bengals executive vice president Katie Blackburn wrote a memo to the NFL teams, to all NFL teams, saying, quote, the proper process for making rule changes is in the offseason, and that is not appropriate to make changes to rules on the fly. Apparently, Zach Taylor responded to that, calling it, quote, awesome, (laughs) and to see that, quote, someone has to fight for you. It's clearly not coming from the league. Now, all of this is very hypothetical Mm because, again, Lamar Jackson has been out for a month, if you haven't been paying attention to that. He's not going to play Sunday. They're hopeful that he's going to be back for the playoffs. But even so then, like, if if it turns out that way, stranger things have happened. Yeah. And I understand that we haven't talked that much about what the Bengals' locker room has gone through. Because aside from T. Higgins, who talked yesterday and still looked pretty devastated, those guys were on the field and probably felt some kind of misplaced accountability for everything that happened that night and have been reeling in the uncertainty and the trauma of seeing that and being there and everything more so than any other team in the league besides the Bills. Yeah. And now they have this thrown in their face and it's like, come on, even the hypothetical of this is screwing them in my book. It is. Uh, It's a, it's an unfortunate sort of thing here, but one thing that Zach Taylor has to remember is that they took a vote. 
This was done democratically. It's not like they just said, all right, Roger Goodell is going to unilaterally decide that you have to do this, and if this happens, you have to you know, flip a coin, and we're going to flip the coin. The owners all took a vote. I know it's not perfect, but, I mean, it's the best they can do, and that's what they agreed on. That's the way it works. Like, yeah, you change the rule, but when they have votes like that, it's to change rules in season when something unprecedented happens, and that's what happens. So, I mean, you know, you kind of got to just roll with it, unfortunately, and I do agree. I think they're not uh, really being fair to Taylor and the Bengals, and I think that what you just said is absolutely right. The Bengals don't deserve the same sort of consideration as the Bills, but not too much less than that because they were right there and experienced it all too. And uh, that wall that everyone put up so that the media and the cameras couldn't see it, they were all looking right down at those uh, EMTs reviving this guy in the field. So I feel like punishing them is really not great but they voted on it. You know, what can you say? They all took a vote, and this is what they came up with. Right, and handled themselves with so much grace. And Zach Taylor talking to Sean McDermott, and both of them, you know, the players, the coaches coming together and making the right decision together and going to one another's locker rooms while all of this was happening. And now it's like, okay, Back to this, you know, yeah. all the owners have voted and you might get screwed. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, Joe Burrow's good, though. You should be good. Yeah, he'll be fine. If you want an idea of how the Bengals locker room is reacting to this, I just heard this. So Jamar Chase was finishing up his uh, – he's at his locker – and uh, Ted Karras walks by, and Ted Karras basically shares what his opinion is of this whole voting process. Let's settle it, let's settle it the real way. Yeah. win. Okay, right. there you go, Ted Karras. There you go. He's, he doesn't sound worried. Yeah. F and win. Just win. Just beat Tyler Huntley. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, 617-779-7937 is the phone number. We see your phone calls lined up. Hang on. We'll get to you right after the trending. Now, here's what's trending on WEEI. The Patriots' injury report for their 1 p.m. game at Buffalo has been released. Jonathan Jones, Jacoby Myers, Jalen Mills, Brendan Schooler, and Jonu Smith have been designated as questionable. Meanwhile, Miles Bryant, Devon Godchow, Marcus Jones, Devontae Parker were all full participants in practice with a a full 53 squad uh, at practice today for the Patriots. As we were just talking about, the NFL owners, they have voted for the proposed change to the playoffs that includes a possible AFC title game on a neutral site, the possibility of a neutral site AFC championship game, and a coin flip to determine where a Ravens-Bengals wildcard game would take place depends in part on what happens in Week 18 probably most notably talking about the Bengals taking on the Ravens, where Lamar Jackson has already been ruled out of that game. Tyler Huntley has been listed. uh, He was limited in practice today. Meanwhile, good news on the DeMar Hamlin front. He was addressing the team via FaceTime. The breathing tube is reportedly out. He spent a good portion of the morning talking to his teammates and then eventually the entire group via FaceTime. Uh, We spoke with Andrew Callahan at 3.30. If you missed our hit with Andrew Callahan, you can always use the Rewind feature on the Odyssey app, or you just subscribe to the Arcan and Mego podcast on the Odyssey app wherever you get your podcasts. According to Andrew Callahan, Gerard Mayo will explore opportunities to be a defensive coordinator or even a head coach elsewhere as his contract is reportedly up at the end of this season. Celtics had a good bounce back win against Dallas last night, 124-95. They will be in San Antonio on Saturday. Trent Frederick had uh, two goals in the deciding 5-2 win over the Kings in Los Angeles. The Bruins' West Coast trip continues tomorrow night in San Jose at 10.30. And the Red Sox have officially announced the contract of Justin Turner. In order to make room for Turner, the corresponding move was to DFA relief pitcher Darwinson Hernandez. I'm Ryan Garvin for Arcand and Mego, and we return right after this. The Six Rings Post Game Show. What's up, Pat?
Radio WEEI, Arcan Mego here with you for about 40 more minutes. It's off to the weekend, a weekend full of football. Now let's go to the phones. What do you say? 617-779-7937 is the phone number. Then we'll get to some of the really horrible quarterback matchups you're going to see this weekend. Um, what do you think? Should we go to Maine or Florida first? Let's start with Maine. Let's go to Maine. We Matt's asked in for Maine. the Maine calls. Hello, so. Matt. Uh, how you doing? Good, you? Doing good there, Matt. <laughs> What's on your mind there, huh? <laughs> well, what do you think... How do you think everything would unfold if they ended up having that game in a tie instead of doing the whole vote for everything? Uh, we sort of talked about that, and there was discussions about that, about it being a tie and just calling it a tie and moving on from there. But, Matt, I'll tell you, I don't think that's totally fair either because that implies that the game was played and completed and neither team won, and that's not true. I mean, they had to, they had to suspend it. So that affects your record in a way that maybe that wouldn't be fair to them and would give an advantage to the Chiefs, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Yeah, that's the only that's the only thing I'd say there. I don't know if that's more or less fair than this coin flip thing, but like I can see why they maybe nixed that idea. Yeah, no, it, but it's unfortunate turn of events. You know, watching it live, seeing it, it's, you can't help but hold your breath on what happened and wish the best for everybody. Matt, can you call the show every day? <laughs> can I show? <laughs> I don't know about that. We uh, well, love the if you could, I love I love talking to a guy from Maine. Thanks for the call. I uh, appreciate you uh, chiming in. Let's go down to Florida talk to David, who is uh, in Florida. Hi, David. Howdy, partners. What's, What's up, up? Good David? Afternoon. You know, to, to, a few things, but to show how just freakish and crazy and bizarre that, that this incident was, look, uh, go back and watch the Drew Bledsoe hit that put him out and that started Brady's career. Almost the same thing, the same, the same approach, the same situation. Forty-five degree angle gets hit in the same place. Yeah, I mean, and he had a horrible injury too. But I mean, that just it, it shows just. So I mean, understandably, everybody is so understand so so traumatized by this mm-hmm. and concerned. Uh, I mean, but you, you just hope that, but long term, everybody still understands that this is still such a freakish and rare occurrence and uh they're able to put that consider that and put that under perspective thanks david um, yeah thanks for the call david bledsoe went back into that game didn't he i'm pretty sure bledsoe went back into that jets game after uh, mo lewis knocked him out i think he ended up coming back out again i may be misremembering this but i could have sworn he went back into that game it, they didn't know how serious it was until afterwards and uh obviously that was a very uh serious thing he could have died um but you know that that's a little different it's not like everybody stopped and was like oh my god drew bledsoe's down like you know it was it wasn't the same kind of scene but i i know what he's talking about yeah and to the i think the point that the caller was trying to get to or dance around there a little bit cuz didn't want to come out and say it like the nature of the game is not going to change from this mm. so just to be clear that's not they're not going to there's not going to be rule changes. Maybe there will be some kind of equipment change. I've like heard that, you know, batted around a little bit. But the the stuff that we're ta- that we were just talking about is the implications for the immediate games coming up, the playoffs coming up. I don't think this is going to alter the playoffs going forward or seating or anything like that. It's just extremely wild that Goodell might be overseeing a coin flip to decide if one of the league's best teams and best young quarterbacks is going to have home field advantage or not. I know. Let's go, guys. I <laughs> uh, get the cameras in there. Maybe he can have it in his basement. Remember when he did his uh, the draft from his basement? That was probably the most likable he's been in the last 15 years, right? <laughs> I think everybody was everyone just was happy like, to see him. Like, oh, this like, is kind of normal. Whoa, look at Goodell. He has a finished basement like me. Yeah. Nice. Look at that recliner. Oh, he's got M&Ms. Cool. Wow. Wow, what a regular <laughs> Commissioners guy. Commissioners just like us. <laughs> All right.
Let's go. Okay, let's go, everybody. I'm down in my bay. I'm down in my man cave. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, let's go, Viking Woo! fans. Let's flip that coin, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Roger. <laughs> this is a really scary impersonation. Though. Um, yeah, I know. It doesn't even. It's not what he sounds like <laughs> uh, <laughs> at all. Um, Greg Hill this morning talked to Devin McCourty, and uh, McCourty, I thought, had some pretty good insight into uh, what it's like to be on the field when something like this happens, and how you have to just sort of go through it. It's eye opening. He called it chilling to witness. But uh, here's here's Devin McCourty from this morning. We know the dangers. I would just say it's. You, it would be hard to go out there and play if you thought about, you know, what we witnessed Monday night every time you stepped on the field. So there's no doubt about it. We we definitely take that for granted. And I would say there's a little bit of, for us as players, being, you know, somewhat a little crazy going out there and competing and playing, um, knowing some of those dangers. Because, you know, I think in our minds we always think, like, man, that, that just won't happen. So, I think it was definitely eye-opening, you know, for all of us as players to sit there and watch that and um, to just see, you know, life and death now uh, be a part of the game. You know, I think was it was very chilling um, to witness that. So, you know, I would definitely say there's some type of wake-up call. I just don't know as a player, like, what you do, it's, it's hard to say, like, man, I'm going to do this now um, because I was such a routine play. That's one thing that I, I was sort of thinking about, you know, this weekend – it's going to be so much emotion. It's going to be a lot of positive stuff. Obviously, it's going to be positive. This guy woke up. He's talking. He's FaceTiming with the team. People weren't sure if he was going to have brain activity. You know what I mean? Like They weren't sure if he was going to live through this. And now it seems like he's recovering very swiftly, first of all, and also in a, in a way that you know is uh, neurologically and sort of physically all um, on the up and up. That being said... You know, there's there's also sort of the other side of this coin, and Devin McCourty talked about it a little bit there. If there's at any point this weekend, you know, in Buffalo, if uh, there's a big hit, if some guy gets his bell rung, if someone doesn't pop back up from a hit like right away, all that good feeling and all that sort of, you know, positivity, that's going to be there, no, no doubt about that. But there's also going to be the sort of eggshells of, ooh, well, what if someone else takes a big hit? And obviously nothing like DeMar Hamlin, but just, you know, we've seen this with Tua this year and guys who have, you know, torn ACLs or uh, busted their ankles. Remember Matt getting carried off the field? Like, if a guy if a guy goes down and doesn't get up right away, that's going to be, that's going to be very, very uh, tense, uh, more so than maybe ever in the history of the NFL, like, for, for anything. So there is obviously a lot to celebrate, and everybody's happy that the game's being played in Buffalo and that they're all going to be pumped up about that but you know he he sort of brings that up it's it's so chilling you know everything that we that, that everybody experienced like that trauma still is there and uh it's not just going to go away because they're playing in a football game I guess absolutely I think it'll be it'll help them a lot to be home to be at high mark yeah. and be in as you pointed out a couple minutes ago one of the best atmospheres in terms of a fan base in the entire league um the juice that they're going in with is going to be crazy like, this team, I do think, is going to be super hyped up, obviously, on a lot of positive motivation and inspiration and everything. I don't know if this is <laughs> if this is appropriate to say. I wonder if, for one player, that plays into the Patriots' hands a little bit, and I'm thinking about Josh Allen. Mm. Because Josh Allen is absolutely one of the top quarterbacks, many would argue the best quarterback in the entire league right now. But we have seen him be fallible earlier this season. We saw a stretch where suddenly it looked like one year one, year two, Josh Allen at times with him trying to bring out the heroics for his whole team, trying to do too much, particularly in the red zone, like making some boneheaded judgment calls, throwing picks. And if you do that against the Patriots defense, who I don't think is as good as the Bills' offenses, but if you do that against a Patriots defense that can get pick happy and return that for a touchdown, and then you're talking about, okay, this awful, awful Patriots offense is getting one of their beloved defensive special teams touchdowns that they thrive on. Right. (laughs) And so... Or defensive, there's something, just not offensive touchdowns. Exactly. (laughs) But, you know, that they've stayed in the games because of those. And so some of it might play a little bit into your hands. Uh, Mike Giardi had a great report from uh, NFL media earlier today. I think he's been posted up in Buffalo like all morning. I think Mm -hmm. he started at like 6 a.m. with good morning football or something. Uh, But he talked about this mindset that they might have that it might not be completely working in in the Bills' favor. I don't really think they know how they're going to react and how they're going to feel 
and, and how much they're going to have playing in terms of energy and preparation. And look, they've admitted they're playing for DeMar, and that's what he would want. Uh, that's, as Mario Hamlin said, that's what he would want. Finish your goals. Go after what you set out to be. Sean McDermott said we've overcome a lot of obstacles, and we have to overcome this one. But I, I am really curious to see how this team re-energizes itself as they have to get ready for a game. It's, I, I, it's very difficult. I, I, can't, I can't imagine what they're, what they're going through trying to do it, and I think they kind of gave us a window into the conflict of emotions and energy that, that's necessary for this. They've had two fewer days of practice in the Patriots. That's another thing to consider. Not that it matters that much. They're, They're playing the Patriots, though. So I we're mean, talking to Andrew Callahan. He says the same Patriots that were that were around December third. Right, and the only touchdown that team scored was that screen to uh, Marcus Jones. Who it was the first time he'd ever been out there on that side of the ball. So right. it was like. Who saw this coming? I mean, it was like one of the flukiest. It was almost like a trick play. For He's them. my offensive MVP. Yeah, uh, might be the, the defensive and special teams MVP as well. We have the injury report. You heard Ryan uh, read it to you during trending, but real quick, just to uh, in case you missed it, Jonathan Jones questionable. As is Jacoby Myers, Jalen Mills, Brendan Schooler, and Jonu Smith, uh, Miles Bryant, Devon Godshaw, Marcus Jones, Devontae Parker, all full participants. Great news about Parker. Great news about Jones. Um, the uh, other side of that coin, though, and this was just uh, tweeted out a little while ago. I believe Field Yates had it. Um, Jack Jones and Jake Bailey have both been moved from the reserve injured list to the reserve suspended by the team list. With these first half highlights. <sighs> Miss that guy. Um, yes, doesn't mean that they have been suspended by the team. It just means that they've been moved to this list so they won't count towards uh, roster limits because they weren't going to be back from their injuries on time, which is too bad about Jack Jones. I think we sort of knew this already about um, about Bailey. Pilardi's no great shakes or anything like that, but if they're punting a lot, then this game's probably over anyway. You know? <laughs> it's a big if. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say, this. well, <laughs> if they're punting a lot. You know, uh, mm-hmm. interesting caveat on the the uh, they had to s- stop you the, know? the designation on Jake Bailey and Jack Jones. Um, according to Pat's cap, that's Miguel Benzin. Yes, uh, he tweets a couple minutes ago: suspended players do not get paid a salary, so Jake Bailey and Jack Jones will not get paid this week. Wow! Uh, by being suspended, Jake Bailey voided the guarantee on his 2023 salary. The Patriots could cut him next month and create fifty five thousand dollars in cap space. I'll tell you wow, what: that's- fifty five thousand, huh? I mean, that's it. But just to, and that might be a situation like the caller earlier, just trade Carlo, get him out. Yeah, right. I don't know. Cause I'm sorry, Jake Bailey, that contract is aging like, you know, milk. Yeah. It doesn't, it has not been good. And Plardy is certainly not the answer. I think you got to go back to the drawing board with that one. Yeah. You got to go find the new punter. Um, yeah. We'll see. Uh, let's go to the phones here. 617 779 7937 is the phone number. Let's go democratically. It looks like uh, Russ in Connecticut's been waiting the longest. He wants to uh, talk to Mega. Go ahead, Russ. Hey, Mago. I uh, love your rant for Cincinnati, okay? Um, what I would like to see, it'll never happen, but I'd like to see the yays and nays on the uh, owner's votes today. What do you think of that? I like that, That'd be nice. Russ. You know what? I, thanks for the call, Russ. They're never going to do it. But I'd love to see the yays and nays. I'd love to see the minutes from that meeting, sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can guess. Like, Baltimore's like, yes, yes, coin toss, coin toss. Definitely. Where does Dan Snyder vote? <laughs> That's um, my number one question. Do they even let him? Dan Snyder votes for chaos, I would imagine. Like, <laughs> so no matter do, what the most so chaotic thing toss. is. Yeah. <laughs> so he's definitely pro. T- he's I would pro love coin that. toss, sure. Yeah, I'd imagine. Where do you think Kraft comes down? Um, Kraft is the owner of a team that's 500. I don't know. I mean, he'd probably, he'd probably think anything that puts a worse team into the postseason that his team might play, a la the Baltimore Ravens, is good for him, right? Wouldn't he, so wouldn't he say, yeah. You don't yeah. think he's thinking the best interest of the league? No. Setting a different precedent. <laughs> Best interest of the league. Let's go to Jim Irsay. Oh, Damn it, Jim. We told you not to bring your guitar to this. <laughs> Before I vote, man, I just want to play a little tune I wrote. <laughs> this it's about being all alone. <laughs> this one's for the coin. <laughs> yeah. oh, you've got a shiny head on one side. Before let's... we go to the coin flip, let's now go to Jim Irsay with a new original song. Jim Irsay does like the national anthem. Girl, you... <laughs> can't confirm playing guitar harder doesn't make you a better player just well, you don't have to strum so hard not always Irsay. but for jim ursay it does uh six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven tom's in the car hi tom 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 tommy tom tom in the car We're gonna put you on hold there tom 
All right, Tom. Uh, let's back. try Mike in Boston. Hi, Mike. Tom. Hey, guys. Happy New Year. Hey, Mike. Happy New Year. Okay, what, what, I, what I came up with was I think if they gave both those teams a win, now there's a reason for Buffalo to play this weekend. Because if Kansas City wins and I'm Buffalo, I'm McDermott, I sit my guys and say, you know what? They screwed me out of the bye. I'm taking it this week. I hear you, Mike. And I thought about this this morning. That's just, there's just no way that they sit even in the first half. Like, there's just no way after what's happened and what the team has gone through and being at home the first game after the like, days after this happened. I understand some people might say that's the smart thing to do, but there, there's just no way. Mm. Do you yeah. think that they sit the first half? I mean, <laughs> it's just that I would be so that would be disappointing. That would be ridiculous. That would be sad. Yeah, that would be that would go against like the, every instinct and every sort of thing that these guys are, are doing all the time. And I just, I don't know. I don't, I understand wanting to, wanting to, you know, see a certain outcome. And I wonder, understand wanting to have everything be as fair as it possibly can. But you have to remember, like, you can't just, you can't just set it up like that for one team to be uh, completely in a, in a disadvantage. And I think that that's, you know, an important thing to remember here. Uh, let's go to Sean in Arlington. He wants to set me straight. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, Sean. Uh, so, sorry, I'm a little late on the uptake because I didn't know your phone number. So, uh, you were talking about Drew Bledsoe, though. Yes. And um, I, I think I remember that game going a little differently. He didn't go back into that game. He didn't go back. Um, yeah, okay. I, for some reason, thought no, he did. But yeah. he, I remember a trainer went up to him. He was going to stay on the sideline. And the trainer went up to him and said, you don't look right. You got to come with me right now. And yeah. They went to oh, the hospital. they thought he had a concussion, I think. And they, yeah, that's right. And yeah. they took him. They took him and off the, the sideline. He didn't go back in the like, game. You don't even look right. Yeah. And so you got to come with me and let's go. And, and that's left. when they found out he had the last or whatever. I forget exactly what the thing. But thank you, Sean. Thank you for uh, for correcting anyway, the record thank there. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Good recall. Uh, yeah, good recall. I Yeah, he didn't go back in the game, but he was on the sideline. So, like, it was different from Hamlin is what I was trying to say there. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean. Um, 617-779-7937. In case anyone else didn't get the number, <laughs> that's what it is. If you want to call in and uh, correct me about Patriots history, which, you know, by all means, uh, feel free. <laughs> um, so there you go. All right, we got uh, one more segment to go here. Before we get to the weekend, we got uh, just before the show, Ryan Garvin's favorite new segment. We'll uh, come right back right after this. 617 Four, se- seven, 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 four. Don't worry about it. They know it. Six, one, seven, whatever the number is. 93.7. W-E-E-I. Boston Sports Original. If you need tires, think Town Fair Tire. Thinking name brands? We have them all. Thinking price?
This is Arcand and Mego on WEEI. Sports Radio WEEI. It's Christian Arcand, Megan Ottolini here, Arcand and Mego. We got a few minutes left to go, uh, but before we do, the Drew Bledsoe did he or did he not go back into the game? He got oh knocked God. out the Tom Brady game, Mo Lewis game. Uh, I wish I could just look it up and, and figure it out, but I haven't been able to do that. Uh, Tony is in Woburn. and he has a theory. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, um, I was uh, reminiscing about Tom Brady a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. so I went back to look at his look at uh, some of the history, and I watched that game when Bledsoe got hit, and Bledsoe did. Go back into the he game. He did go back in the game. I'm looking at the game summary right now. He threw a pass to Mark Edwards after he got knocked out. Two series later. Yes, yes he did. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. I knew uh, I was I knew I remembered that. Yeah, you were right, and Sean was wrong. Yes, yes Sean. Sean. Yes, Sean. Sean in ah. Abington or wherever you were from. Arlington. Arlington questioning me. Close. You should go back to Arlington with uh Pat Connaughton. <laughs> it's the only person I can think of from so Arlington. I'm actually looking at nice. I don't actually think Drew Bledsoe played in that game. You told him. You don't think what? Nothing. That was a dumb joke that nobody heard. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for Except that. Thousands of listeners. Much, much appreciated. Um, the uh, the the Patriots. I, I think we all agree have uh, have little chance in this game. But if they were to have a chance, Megan, uh, how what possible path to victory could you see for this team? So I outlined the possibility of Josh Allen uh, getting ahead of his skis yes. and just having all the emotion factor into some of the judgment calls he makes, particularly in the red zone, which you've seen them do before. Uh, what I'm worried about is just. Seeing an Andrew Callahan from the Boston Herald, who we spoke to a couple hours ago, did not um, make me feel any better about this. But seeing this conservative, conservative approach that they're going to take on offense again, the screen passes and just the same old like handoff to Ramondre, handoff to Damian Harris, you know, okay, three and out, let's go. Like all we can do is depend on our defense to possibly put a score up or special teams to to get a fluky touchdown or, you know, that them just to contain Josh Allen and keep the score down and maybe, maybe the Patriots offense will be able to replicate something like the two competent drives that they had against the Dolphins. Yeah. And that that's the playbook that they're going to throw out there. And that's just not what I want to see. Like even beyond, okay, if they somehow win this game and go into the postseason, you know, this isn't baseball. It's not hockey. Like, once you're in there, it's not like, hey, anything can happen. It's much more like the NBA, where it's like your path is kind of carved out for you at this point with the kind of team that you are this year, and I just don't think they're going anywhere. So I'd rather just see a little grip and rip. Like, I'd like to see something from some of these offensive guys. I'd like to see more Taekwon Thornton out there. I'd like to see Kendrick Bourne utilized in the ways that we saw him utilized last year on yeah. jet sweeps and trying to get yards after catch. And if it's just these boring, boring play calls, which it's going to be, and this extremely conservative approach, it's just, it's going to be like going to the dentist's office again for another Sunday appointment. 
Yeah, uh, that's that's a good way of putting it. These games and uh, no, the cane doesn't work on my mouth. I don't are, know why that is. Are you serious? I'm impervious to it. I had a root canal. It was one of the and worst. And the Novocaine didn't work. It didn't work. Wow. It was hor- it, for some reason. The, oh man, or the lidoc- dentist must really suck for you. Lidocaine, whatever it is, yeah. has never worked for me. <sighs> wow. It's awful. Immune to Novak. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Um, in the first game against the Bills, Ramondre Stevenson got targeted eight times in the passing game. He only carried it ten times uh, you know, on the ground, but he got targeted a lot. They were trying to get him the ball. They were trying to run that same kind of offense that Callahan was talking about, and it did not work. If you fall behind early against the Buffalo Bills, you can't run the ball, and you can't be conservative. You just can't. you got to take shots. And the only shot that they took that worked was the uh, Marcus Jones screen. Right. That was the only touchdown they scored the whole game. Literally nobody had ever seen it before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like they invented a new player. So who's that guy? Who's 25? What? And uh, there he goes. Next thing you know, he's a blur in the end zone, which was a great play, by the way. Yeah. And I like, you know, I'm glad that he's playing and all that. But that's, you know, what you had to rely on to score any points against this team. And, uh, you know, it's hard to sort of shake that memory, even if the Bills uh, since then have had some shaky games. They've won most of them. I hate to tell you, even the shaky games, they still ended up on the on the winning side of. And with that. Uh, it is time for the almost end of the show, which is brought to you by Shaw's, the official supermarket of the WEEI Red Sox Network. Some quick programming notes I would like to say. I will be back tomorrow morning with Chris Scheim on the producer show nice. from 8 to 9, followed by Ken and Curtis. And then, of course, Christian Arcand uh, bringing up the rear at 1 to 4. Megan, where can the listeners hear you tomorrow? Tomorrow? What are you talking about? Oh, well, well, I mean, I'm doing radio. And On a bar stool. Our kid's doing maybe radio. I figured you'd be doing radio, there, yeah. too. You can maybe hear me walking around Maine with my Siberian Husky. Oh, oh yeah, I'll be up in Maine, too, though. Huh? Yeah. So something big happened in sports two days ago that I was not aware of, and maybe uh, this is something that we could uh, start spending some time on, but the World Championship Dart uh, Final was two days ago between, I believe, the two gentlemen were Michael Smith and Michael Van Gerwen. And let me tell you, it was about for the ages. In fact, I have a couple of the final calls from this event. Let's, of course, start with the English call. You can tell by the way they're scoring, there may be nothing in it. They may both be on nines. Michael may miss and Michael may hit. They're both on nines. They're both on a nine. This is insane. Come on now. Wow, the World Championship final. Michael Van Gerwen. He's on a nine data in the world final and just misses double 12. Over to you, Michael Smith. One man misses, does the other man get? I have never seen the like. Come on, Spully Boy. Yes, double 12. That is the most amazing leg of arts you will ever see. might be a little hyperbolic goosebumps the, the best leg of darts we have ever seen i like the guy i can't spake i can't <laughs> spake now on a scale of one to ten I, I mean that's probably like a solid eight eight and a half as far as excitement goes maybe even a full niner but we can do better than that i give that a niner the the english were good you know who is better though who the italians <laughs> I've never really experienced FOMO in my life until just now listening to that. Like, I feel like I missed a major moment in sports. Did you notice something there? 
the uh, play-by-play guy and the color commentator both were doing the same call at the same time. Can you imagine if Buck and Aikman were both at the same time? Like, he's at the five, he's at the three. I've never heard that before. Triplamenti. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Imagine Jack and Brick and they both like call the goal at the same time. Like that'd be awesome. Both were good. I am partial of. That was that was pretty intense. Have you guys ever played darts with someone who was like really nasty at darts? Yes. It no. sucks. It sucks. I'm just happy if someone. I can reach the, the the board from all the way on the other side of the they bar. They always slow play you too. Yeah. Like they always kind of like they don't let you know. That oh, it's a hustle. Good. If they walk up to the line and turn their foot sideways, you're gonna lose. <laughs> That's how you know you're gonna lose. If they walk up to the line that you're supposed to shoot from and they turn their foot side like a pitcher, you know, on the mound, you're done. You're gonna get smoked. <laughs> I'm not. As I reflect on this, I'm not good at any bar games. Really? At all? Huh? Like I can't play. Uh, foosball, can't play uh, pool. darts, can't play pool. Papa for shot, anything. Oh, I'm good at Papa shot. That's a good. That's a bar I game. I do Papa shot. That's that not counts. like a real. That's not like a grown up bar game though. That's like Beacon Hill Pub bar game. Uh, Sullivan's board? Taps a grown up bar. It is. It is the grown up bar. Sully's. It certainly is. And right. there you have it. That was the almost end of the show, which leads us, of course, to the end of the show where we will be followed by Rich Keith. That's right. Rich Keith coming up next. Uh, Mego. Great week as always. Uh, we'll talk you, to you, you on too. Monday. I'm back tomorrow at 1 o'clock after the uh, aforementioned producer show. And, of course, Curtis and Ken Laird. We'll talk to you then. Goodbye.
Friday is brought to you by 110 Grill by Arbella Insurance. Arbella, here for New England, here for good. By Catches Law Group, New England's personal injury pros at catcheslaw.com. By Time Out Market, Boston's best eating and drinking destination in Fenway, all under one roof. By Twisted Tea, keep it twisted, New England. And by FindMassMoney.com. It's fast, easy, and free. This hour of the Rich Keefe Show is brought to you by East Coast Metal Roofing. The Rich Keefe Show starts now on WEEI. This is the Rich Keefe Show. It's not the Keefe Rich Show. It is my favorite show because it is my show. It's the Rich Keefe Show. All right, here we go. A Friday edition of the Rich Keefe Show. The first ever Friday Rich Keefe Show here on WEEI. Taking it up until 9 o'clock tonight. Then we'll hand things off to Boomer and Valenti as they preview a week 18 in the NFL, which was certainly uh, up in the air a couple of days ago as far as how many teams would play, would the Buffalo Bills play, this Bills-Patriots game would it go off. And, uh, oh, boy, has it. And we finally got the really positive news. It, and it was trending in this way. But still, you, you knew that you, you weren't out of the woods yet. There was a long way to go for DeMar Hamlin. But the breathing tube has been removed. He continues to make progress. And he even FaceTime his team today, which at this point, I think all but seals the Buffalo Bills going on a long run and ending with a, a Super Bowl victory. I think they are they are the team. The Patriots need a win this Sunday. Something that we haven't really even discussed much this week. Right, like this week has been dominated by Demar Hamlin. Then you know Rafael Devers jumps in here, signs a three hundred thirty-one million dollar extension. So we did a lot of Rafael Devers as well. And oh, by the way, the Patriots have a win in their in scenario on Sunday afternoon in Buffalo, which they have no chance. They have no chance. If anybody thinks they have a chance, I am all ears, and I will take your call at six one seven seven 